पंद्रह सौ प्री लोडेड गानो वाला की पैड फोन धमाकेदार साउंड के साथ कारवा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम राम हरे हरे सो मेनी पीपल हैव सो मेनी ओपिनियंस ऑफ लॉर्ड कृष्णा सम पीपल टेल ही वॉज अ ग्रेट पॉलिटिशियन अ किंग और अ काउहर्ड बॉय और अ मजिशियन अ योगी सम पीपल ऑल्सो अंडरस्टैंड एम ए सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड एड अदर्स एज मैनिफेस्टेशन ऑफ इमपर्सनल एनर्जी सो वॉट इज द परफेक्ट ओपिनियन इन दिस रिगार्ड शुड बी अंडरस्टूड फ्रॉम अर्जुना हु हर्ड द ग्लोरीज ऑफ द लॉर्ड फ्रॉम इज लोटस माउथ इन सेल्फ सो विदाउट गेटिंग कन्फ्यूज विद सो मेनी इंटरप्रिटेश भगवद गीता लेट एस सी वॉट इज अर्जुनस कंक्लूजन आफ्टर हियरिंग without delay let's get started with chapter 10 opulence of the absolute this session is dedicated to his divine grace ac bhakti vedan swami prabhupad our spiritual master and the founder and acharya of the worldwide hari krishna movement let's see verse number 1 shri bhagavan vacha भूय एव महाबाहो शृणु मे परम वच यम प्रियमाणा वक्ष्या हित काम्यया द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड सेड माय डियर फ्रेंड माय टी आम अर्जुना लिसन अगेन टू माय सुप्रीम वर्ड विच आई शैल इम्पार्ट टू यू फॉर योर बेनिफिट and which will give you great joy important word used in this verse is priyamanaya yatte ham priyamanaya because arjuna is very dear to krishna that is why this knowledge is being revealed to him so in order to understand this knowledge this qualification repeatedly has been stressed by lord krishna भक्त वसी में सखा चेती अनसूय वे वन शुड बी नॉन एनवियस वन शुड बी डिवोटेड टू कृष्णा वन शुड बी फ्रेंडली टू कृष्णा सखा चेती प्रिय माणाय वन शुड बी वेरी वेरी डियर टू कृष्णा देन दिस नॉलेज विल बी रिवील द क्वेश्चन नाउ कम्स हाउ टू बिकम डियर टू कृष्णा दैट ऑल्सो लॉर्ड कृष्णा हैज बीन मैंशनिंग अ डिवोटी इज वेरी डियर टू मी and that was a conclusion of previous chapter also man mana bhav mat bhakto madhyaji maam namaskur this is most confidential knowledge become my devotee always think of me bhakta ativ me priya ha devotee is very dear to me but among all kinds of devotees there is this special devotee who is most dear to krishna nobody has been so dear nobody shall ever be so dear as this devotee who is this devotee so this very great uh, secret this is explained at the end of bhagavad gita this confidential knowledge which we discussed in previous chapter krishna will repeat again and after that krishna says in 18th chapter ya imam paramam guhyam guhyam means confidential knowledge paramam top most confidential knowledge mad bhakteshu vidhasyati one who explains the secret of bhagavad gita to others to my devotees na cha tasmat manushyeshu kaschin me priya krittamah nobody is dearer to me than the one who explains this confidential knowledge to others bhavita na cha me tasman nobody has been nor shall anyone be ever more dear to me so the entire secret of understanding bhagavad gita is becoming dear to krishna and who is dear most to krishna one who preaches this knowledge to others so thus i request that let us realize this knowledge very nicely very carefully how to realize this also krishna will further explain very nicely in the coming verses so let us try to understand 
जन्म सार्थक करी कर परोपकार एंड लेट अस बी बिनेविलेंट एंड स्प्रेड दिस नॉलेज टू अदर्स बाय रियलाइजिंग एंड स्प्रेडिंग दिस नॉलेज वी बिकम मोस्ट डियर एंड आवर स्पिरिचुअल लाइफ रीचेस न मे विदुस्सुरगण प्रभव न महर्षय अहम आदि देवा महर्षीण चर्वश नीदर द होस्ट ऑफ डेमी गॉड्स नॉट द ग्रेट सेजेस नो माई ओरिजिन और इन एवरी रिस्पेक्ट आई एम द सोर्स ऑफ द डेमी गॉड्स इन द सेजेस द एंटायर सिविलाइजेशन हैज कम फ्रॉम डेमी गॉड्स द पावरफुल कंट्रोलर्स ऑफ द यूनिवर्स बट कृष्णा इज टेलिंग न मे विदु विदु मीन्स नो न मे दे डोंट अंडरस्टैंड मी सुरगणा महर्षि नाम द ग्रेट सेजेस एंड ऋषिज हु हैव गिवन अस सच वंडरफुल लिटरेचर्स इन द फॉर्म ऑफ उपनिषद पुराणास वेदास तो द ग्रेट महर्षिज डू नॉट नो एंड द देवतास द सुप्रीम कंट्रोलर्स ऑफ द यूनिवर्स दे ऑल्सो डू नॉट अंडरस्टैंड मी अंडरस्टैंडिंग कृष्णा इज सो डिफिकल्ट अहम आदि ही देवा नाम I am their source, but they do not know that. And what to speak of ordinary devatas? The king of the devatas is Lord Indra, the controller of rains. He possesses the most powerful weapon, Vajra. Krishna will explain in this chapter. Indra also thought, "Oh, this is just an ordinary cowherd boy in Vrindavan, and people have stopped my worship." so krishna wanted to as we have seen in bhagavad gita he has been telling people do not worship other devtas because the result is temporary just worship me for eternal return to the kingdom of god and thus krishna dissuaded the vijvasis from worshiping indra and when indra got to know he became infuriated this ordinary child and people i will just show them what is the result of not worshiping me and then he flooded the entire vrindavan and finally krishna lifted govardhan and indra came to his senses he is the source of my powers he is supreme personality himself similarly brahma when aghasur the great snake demon was killed brahma also got bewildered people are telling that supreme lord has incarnated but without knowledge how can he incarnate he appears to be a small boy but yes his powers are mystical so let me test who is he so brahma also could not understand he kidnapped all the friends of krishna and the cows and calves of krishna and uh, finally he realized and brahma it is told very beautifully as we discussed previously so just for a moment as we have discussed brahma took them away and kept them in yog nidra in some far off place away from this planet and he had gone away just for a moment and when he came back he saw all those friends have come again now brahma got confused I have just kidnapped them how come they have all manifested again and it is being explained in the shastras that just it was one moment of time for brahma but in that one moment one year had passed on this planet earth as we understand in the relativity that if you travel at the speed of light and come back after 10 years other people who are living on this planet would have aged much more than you maybe 40 or 50 years and we can see how this is written 5000 years ago 5000 years ago people are witnessing this phenomena that just for a moment brahma lives on the topmost planet of the universe he goes away he comes back and then one year has passed on this planet so thus we can just uh, appreciate that these things are not imaginary phenomena before understanding relativity one might have had difficulty to understand but now we understand it is a scientific phenomena so brahma also could not understand and who is brahma brahma is the creator of this universe all the planets all the bodies that we have our destinies are created by brahma nobody is smarter more intelligent than brahma vedas have been given to us by brahma but brahma also could not understand thus it is told vedeshu durlabha madurlabha atma bhakta this mind body everything has been created by krishna so if krishna wants we can know him if he doesn't want how can we know this instrument is under control of krishna only maya dhyakshena prakriti entire nature is under control of krishna 
So thus Krishna tells Name Vidu Surgana, here Arjun more confidential glories of mine, the Devtas and the Rishis also do not know me. But because you are my devotee, dear devotee, I am explaining this knowledge to you. So thus Brahma gave the process. What is our capacity when Brahma could not understand? So we should not try to understand God. So this logic in the Vedic philosophies compared to frogs in the well. Technically, it is called Kupumanduk Nyai, means frog in the well logic. A frog in the well, can you imagine how do cities look like? And uh, which are other species? There is a very huge animal, giraffe, there are elephants and tigers and so many other species are there. Frogs may have experienced a very limited species in the well. And a very limited perspective of the world, they cannot imagine. Similarly, we are not even frogs in the well, we are just situated on this planet which is but a speck of dust in the universe. What understanding do we have of the universe and what to speak of the creator of universe, so many universes. That the frog in the well cannot understand anything about the world. Similarly, we cannot expect to understand the world or the creator of the world. The only way is if the creator himself reveals this knowledge to us. So thus Brahma told, Jnane prayasa mudapasya namanta eva with folded hands he came and begged pardon. Krishna, please forgive me. I try to test you, my Supreme Lord. So then he gave the process, Jnane prayasam udapasya. Give up this Jnan prayas using your mental speculation if you want to understand God. Jnane prayasam udapasya. Please understand, if a dog tries his level best, can a dog understand trigonometry? Algebra, Calculus, Quantum Mechanics, Optical Physics, no dog cannot understand. Dog's brain does not have the capacity. So why we are having blind faith, this is called blind faith, on our brains that with this brain I can understand everything of the world. So actually this is called blind faith. I have blind faith on my brain, with this I can understand everything. So Brahma is telling the wisest person, Jnane Prayasam, Udapasya, give up the mental effort to know God and Namanta Eva, offer your respects to God, become very humble. You may not understand God, but you understand that God exists, that is a fact. Because I see these wonderful eyes are there, they are wonderful camera. And there is proper arrangement how to just focus on the retina. The curvature is so right from the birth. Did the atoms and the cells decide? Let us arrange in this curvature because there is a retina. Some cells are discussing to form the retina. And then there is shutter, there is cornea, pupil, how to control the intensity of light and so many wonderful mechanisms are there. And then there is some dust and then auto cleansing phenomena, the drains are there and the dust is ejaculated. And then the image which is formed that is inverted in nature. There are optical nerves, there are encoders and decoders. So that image is inverted in the exact 180 degrees. So how somebody got to know that no image is going to be inverted, let us uh, turn it 180 degrees. So this is a wonderful phenomena, these are cameras, can a camera, now we are recording this session in a camera, can it manifest on its own? And these are the most wonderful cameras. Then the image is converted into an electrical signal. So there are encoders and then there are wires just like we have wire to send electrical signal. So we have wiring which carry electrical signals. It goes to the spine. From spine it goes to the brain. On a brain there is decoder. In this way we are able to visualize the world. There are rods and cones. They maintain perfect ratio so that we can see colors as it is. Such amazing phenomena is happening within our eye and it is, we have not discussed anything. People spent so many years to just understand the mechanism of eye. We can understand somebody has created this wonderful machine. This wonderful supercomputer by which we can manufacture computers. Who has done this wonderful assembly of the gray cells here? So somebody is there, this we can understand. So I should simply bow down, become very humble. I am helpless, I have limited perspective of the world which is allowed by my mind and senses. So Brahma is telling, Namanta eva become humble, Jivanti san mukharitam bhavadiya vartam, 
Lead your life as per the direction of the self-realized souls. Sthane sita shuti gatam hi punsam tanu van mano bhi. So tanu, vak and mana with mind, body and speech one should completely surrender unto Krishna namanta eva. My God, please let me know what is your instruction. Because he is supreme controller, he is our best well-wisher, we should surrender unto him and ask him what is best for me? How to attain real happiness? What is the truth of life? So this surrenderance to the degree we execute it, in that proportion knowledge is revealed. With mind, body and speech we should surrender and Shruti Gatam simply keep on hearing. Ye prayaso ajit jitopi ta istri lokyam. By this effort, the person who is prayaha ajita, who is almost unconquered, becomes conquered by whom by his devotees out of his great love he agrees to be conquered and his perfect understanding is revealed so the perfect knowledge can be achieved when a person surrenders completely to the god and simply lends one's ears to understand this perfect knowledge from god or to the people who have realized this knowledge from god otherwise krishna has mentioned here even the demigods and great rishis do not have knowledge about me Yomamajammanadimcha Vetti Lokamaheshwaram Asamuda Samartyeshu Sarva Papa If Pramuchyate. He who knows me as the unborn, as the beginningless, as the Supreme Lord of all the worlds, he undeluded among men is freed from all sins. So we are not able to understand God because of sinful life. So doubts will remain as long as we are covered by the reactions of sinful activities. Now here Lord Krishna is telling if anybody is able to understand, one is convinced that yes, he is anadim, Lord is beginningless and he is ajam, he is not born. What is the meaning of not born? Because we are also not born, soul is eternal. Not born means Krishna does not undergo a phenomena of birth. It means when the soul picks up the dress that is termed as birth. So Krishna is free from this phenomenon of taking dresses over him. It means when Krishna comes here, he does not take any external covering on himself. He is complete spirit inside and outside. There is no difference between body and soul of Krishna. Krishna does not take any body which is made up of matter. That is why he is ajam. He does not take birth. He becomes manifest. That is why technically it is called avir bhav. He manifests himself. He becomes visible. And then he becomes unmanifest, invisible. That's it. There is no birth and death for Krishna. So if one understands Krishna is ajam, Krishna does not take birth. And Krishna is anadi. Krishna has no origin. He is the origin of everyone. He is freed from all sins. So there are nine steps to spiritual perfection. It starts with Adav Shraddha. Adav Shraddha means just like if you are hearing this Bhagavad Gita for the first time, then you might become little inquisitive. This sounds interesting, very logical, authoritative. Let me try to understand more. This is called Shraddha. Adav means the beginning is little Shraddha, little faith. Let me try to understand what this knowledge is. And with this little faith, when a person advances further, then he associates with the devotees. This is the second step that is called Sadhu Sangha. And then when one associates with the Sadhu, he eventually tries to follow the practices of Sadhus. That is called Bhajan Kriya. One takes initiation from the spiritual master. Initiation means formal acceptance of spiritual master as one's guide, one surrenders unto such guru. And then he starts practicing devotional life only after initiation. Initiation means the beginning that is actually the beginning of spiritual life. Before that it is all preparation. So the sadhu sangha association of devotees is very very important to maintain always even after initiation. All our desires and convictions are simply because of the association that we have. And when a person starts executing devotional practices by being initiated from a bona fide spiritual master, 
he reaches fourth stage that is called anarth nivritti one becomes freed from all unwanted habits anarthartha means which makes sense anartha means nonsense anything which does not help us to become immortal to realize our spiritual position to gain platform of unlimited happiness that is called anartha in other words anything any effort done on material plane for material enjoyment more than keeping the body and soul together that is called anartha so all such anarthas unwanted habits especially sinful habits meat eating intoxication gambling illicit sex one becomes freed from these pillars and then one comes to the platform of nishtha nishtha means firm faith till then confusion will be there so this is right or wrong sometimes i think it is very right it is perfect sometimes i get confused this may be just uh, one of those theories that people have so this confusion will remain as long as a person is sick confusion will be there about the taste of food similarly as long as we are infested with sinful tendencies and activities clarity about spiritual life will not come so if we are not very disciplined we are not careful to avoid sinful activities then we will remain confused so this four stage is difficult to cross because we are habituated to breaking the regulative principles but by rigid following of bhajan kriya spiritual practices under the guidance of spiritual master one is able to cross over this stage and when one is freed from unwanted habits and drives then one becomes firmly established nishtha one can not only protect his faith and understanding one can even convince others and after nishtha comes ruchi ruchi means taste till then we have to practice as a matter of duty taste might not be there just like the small child it cries to go to school doesn't like to go and slowly when he becomes mature on his own he or she starts studying very nicely of course this is a crude example you don't get such taste in studies you're doing it for some results name fame money and some people yes do have research aptitude but uh, in krishna consciousness you start getting real taste unlimited taste and this ruchi when it is intensified it becomes asakti asakti means very strong attachment as people cannot start their day without tea or without cigarette people are addicted to so many things in a similar fashion a person gets addicted very strongly attached to spiritual practice one cannot do without executing spiritual life initially you have to force yourself because spiritual master is telling as a matter of duty i have to execute and then when the anarth nivritti we have crossed so we have to be patient we have to see am i still addicted to material enjoyment am i still sinful i am captured by unwanted habits then please be patient all the doubts will not be cleared now in this stage but a stage is there which is called nishtha firm faith and then ruchi then taste will come so we have to wait for that before that taste may come sometimes if we commit sinful activities taste will go away spiritual life will appear boring and burdensome also but when ruchi comes whenever you execute it there is taste as a healthy man eats nice food item there is taste and then asakti one becomes strongly attached to such practices cannot do without it and then one reaches the stage of bhava bhava means emotions then this attachment becomes so advanced that one starts feeling emotions as a young man and woman spontaneously they are attracted to each other mind gets captured in a similar fashion krishna's name form qualities features they capture the mind and a person starts feeling emotions for god and when the emotions are intensified that stage is called prema love of god and that is a perfection of one's life then a person is completely freed from the laws of nature then one's life is completely successful so these are the gradual stages of spiritual advancement so here krishna is telling sarva papai pramuchyate one only who is freed from all the sins can understand in fact that krishna is ajam krishna is anadim he is not taking birth and he is the origin of everybody all those who take births this clarity will come when we are freed from sins so we have to be patient it takes some time to get cleared of the sins buddhir gyanam sammoha shama satyam damashamaha 
सुखम दुखम भवो भावो भयम चा भयमे वचा अहिंसा समता तुष्टिस तपोदानम यशो यशः भवन्ति भावा भूतानाम मत्त एवा पृथक विधा इंटेलिजेंस नॉलेज फ्रीडम फ्रॉम डाउट एंड डिल्यूजन फगिवनेस ट्रुथफुलनेस सेल्फ कंट्रोल एंड कामनेस प्लेजर एंड पेन बर्थ डेथ फियर फियरलेसनेस नॉन वायलेंस एक्वनिमिटी सैटिस्फैक्शन ऑस्टेरिटी चैरिटी फेम एंड इनफेमी आर क्रिएटेड बाय मी अलोन कृष्णा इज मैंशनिंग हियर वी सी गुड क्वालिटीज एंड बैड क्वालिटीज एंड ही इज द सोर्स ऑफ बोथ If one is intelligent, then this intelligence is bestowed by Krishna. Knowledge. If somebody is having knowledge, now what is knowledge? Knowledge does not mean what we perceive as reconfiguring the matter. That is taken as shilpa gyan. Knowledge means the ability to discriminate spirit from matter. Otherwise, it is called shilpa gyan. What is shilp? Shilp means just like uh, ordinary work. A mason is there; he's putting one brick from here to there. Or, uh, you know, somebody is uh, simply cooking the food. That does not need great deal of knowledge. You have to mix few spices here and there. Similarly, somebody can call himself very advanced technologist. What is that? That is also nothing. Simply putting some chip here and there, putting one electron from this orbit to another orbit. and that is called technology it is simply reconfiguring the matter it is an art but it is not called knowledge what is knowledge vedas define is as ability to distinguish spirit from matter from there the knowledge begins because this world is temporary this happiness and distress is illusory a person needs to be woken up from dream and then the real life starts similarly all this knowledge of this material world is but temporary this is not called real knowledge when a person understands i am spirit different from matter that is called knowledge the beginning of knowledge freedom from doubt and delusion this is also created by krishna so because krishna has created freedom from doubt and delusion all the doubts will be cleared when krishna is pleased with the devotional service forgiveness this is very important and truthfulness if one needs to advance in spiritual life similarly self control and calmness nowadays nobody is taught these qualities one has to be self controlled people think the more i lose my control and joy in any whimsical way my mind suggests that will make me happy no that does not make one happy the more one is self controlled the more one will be satisfied more one will be calm and peaceful pleasure and pain this also we do not understand immediate pleasure is taken as pleasure but we have to understand sweet poison is not very good thing to consume even though it may appear sweet in the beginning in a similar fashion anything which is conducive for spiritual advancement should be considered as pleasure sometimes getting up early in the morning and taking bath it may be troublesome but it should be executed fasting on certain days recommended in the vedas could be troublesome but one should tolerate hunger and execute such fasting even though such things appear to be pain we should understand that is actually pleasure because i am advancing in spiritual life i am treading the path of unlimited happiness on the other hand material enjoyment which is immediately very very pleasurable that is actually poison that is causing my repeated death this sense enjoyment is creating karma for me unlimited material desires and i am creating my entanglement i am creating many many deaths births old ages and diseases for myself so the so called enjoyment which people hanker after in this material world should be taken as pain if it is not for krishna consciousness of course in krishna consciousness as we discussed it is full of pleasure so sukham kartum avyayam you sing and dance for krishna singing and dancing is allowed you socialize on festivals and discuss about krishna that is allowed socializing is allowed you want to go on tours and trips that is allowed but go to see the places of krishna connected with krishna the holy places pilgrimages you want to eat nice dishes offer to krishna any that is allowed but any enjoyment in which krishna's pleasure is not involved 
such enjoyment should be taken as pain because it puts one into more illusion and misery in the long term birth death both are created by krishna fear fearlessness non violence equanimity satisfaction austerity so all these qualities are very very important now we do not understand non violence also properly what is non violence creating misery for anybody that is called violence now people think if i give people objects of material benefits parents are thinking oh let we were deprived of so many things in our childhood let us give whatever our children want and this is properly taking care bringing up children no this is not proper care this is actually violence you are making them addicted to sense objects and thus putting them straight on the path of repeated births and deaths had we given the right knowledge we would have taken them to immortality thus the scriptures are telling janani na sasyat pita na sasyat guru na sasyat bandhur na sasyat na yad mochyate samupeta mrityam one does not have right to become father mother spiritual master or relative if you cannot deliver your dependents from the clutches of death simply feeding children is not taking care of children animals also feed their young ones their cubs so simply feeding that is done by nature's arrangement parents are not having any special credit for it but credit is there for spiritual life so this is the duty proper taking care of children means stopping their death otherwise do not produce children this is against the laws of nature produce children only if you can take them to become immortal so thus this is very important this is called real non violence equanimity a person should always remain equipoised one should not get elated in case of material happiness not get distressed in case of material distress satisfaction one should always remain satisfied with whatever is attained by the grace of lord as per our actions of previous life and save time for spiritual advancement austerity voluntarily accepting discomforts is important for purification of consciousness charity so it is enjoined in the vedas at least 50% of one's income should be spent for charity for welfare work for others this is the nature's way and we can see it as common sense the grains the fruits which the plants produce we consume them they don't consume it the woods produced by the trees we consume it similarly the strong person should use his strength to protect the weak intelligent men should use their intelligence to guide the people who are ignorant this is the way the nature has created this wonderful universe every person has some special ability with that one should help others who do not have that ability in this way there is perfect balance in the nature so those who are earning must give 50% of their charity if we want to abide by the laws of nature for welfare work and those who are wise they know which is the best welfare activity the best welfare activity is krishna consciousness other welfare activities they just pertain to body they are anyway being taken care by laws of nature but if we spread krishna consciousness we can save people from unlimited sufferings fame and infamy are created by me alone महर्षय सप्तपूर्व चो मन वस्तथा मद्भावसा जाता ये लोक इम प्रजा द सेवन ग्रेट सेजेस एंड बिफोर देम द फोर अदर ग्रेट सेजेस एंड द मनुज प्रो जेनेटर्स ऑफ मैन काइंड आर बॉर्न आउट ऑफ माई माइंड एंड ऑल क्रीचर्स इन दीज प्लैनेट्स डिसेंडेड फ्रॉम देम महर्षय सप्तपूर्व we would have heard of saptarishis if we are having little touch with the vedic knowledge there are seven great sages and there are their seven planets we see the constellation of seven planets like a big spoon in the sky so these great sages and accompanied by four other sages they are called chatusanas the four sons of brahma followed by 14 manus so these are the patriarchs of all of us human and non human species have descended from them so it is not that 
less intelligent beings evolved into more intelligent ones no but the most intelligent beings have created other intelligent and non intelligent beings etam vibhutim yogam cha mama yo veti tatvatah so vikalpena yogena yujyate natr sanshayah he who knows in truth this glory and power of mind engages in unalloyed devotional service of this there is no doubt aham sarvasya prabhavo mattas sarvam pravartate iti matva bhajante mam budha bhavas samanvita i am the source of all spiritual and material worlds everything emanates from me the wise who know this perfectly engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their hearts so here krishna is telling aham sarvasya prabhavo matta sarvam pravartate everything spiritual or material is emanating from me and buddha those who are learned bhajante ma buddha bhava samanvitah so this word is very important bhajante and bhava samanvitah so some people tell bhajante or devotional service the path of bhakti is meant for people who are less intelligent they cannot follow the path of gyan but here very clearly krishna has told gyan he takes many many births and bhakta quickly gets realized on this path of knowledge and thus bhajante bhajante he is telling the people most wise people buddha means most learned bhajante they engage in my service because i am the ultimate truth and how do they engage in my service bhavas samanvitah with great as we have discussed there are various stages nine stages of spiritual perfection and eighth stage is called bhava feeling transcendental emotions for krishna so feeling transcendental emotions with great love those people who are wise they are worshiping me as aham sarvasya prabho as the source of all the spiritual and material worlds so this is krishna the source of everything that we see around us and what we do not see as well macchitta matagat prana bodhayantah parasparam kathayantascha mam nityam tushyanti charamanti cha the thoughts of my pure devotees dwell in me their lives are surrendered to me and they derive great satisfaction and bliss enlightening one another and conversing about me so what are the activities of the great souls who have realized the absolute truth mat chitta mad gad prana their lives are surrendered unto me their consciousness is absorbed in me and bodh yanta parasparam mutually they are discussing the knowledge of mine and my glories so these are the activities of perfectly realized souls they spend all their time just in discussing topics related to krishna so one may ask that how do we understand that krishna is the source of everything material and spiritual worlds because uh, we see that krishna appeared 5000 years ago but before that how to understand uh, some people tell vishnu incarnated as krishna so yes it is understanding that vishnu incarnated as krishna but the bhagavat school tells shrimad bhagavatam the conclusion of all the vedanta sutras ete chaansh kala punsam krishna stu bhagwan swayam various incarnations are listed rama adi murti shukalaniye mena tishtan nana avatara makarod bhuvaneshu kintu in brahma samhita also it is mentioned rama adi murti shukalaniye mena tishtan rama varaha adi etc so many incarnations are there but krishna swayam samabhavat paramah pumanyo krishna himself is the supreme personality of godhead same thing ved vyas after all we have not seen any incarnations all this knowledge we get from the vedas knowledge of lord shiva goddess durga uh, lord ganpati and everybody lord krishna vishnu so that is why if we have to reach some conclusion we have to ask ved vyas who has given us all this knowledge so maharshi ved vyas is writing after mentioning these incarnations in bhagavatam ete chaansh kala punsam all these other names forms he has mentioned 
इनकारनेशंस ऑफ मत्स्या फिश लाइक इनकारनेशन टॉट इज इनकारनेशन नरसिम अवतार सो ए ते चांश कला पुनसाम दे आर अंशाज और पोर्शन ऑफ द अंशाज टू मीन्स बट कृष्णा भगवान स्वयं बट कृष्णा कृष्णाज नेम इज ऑल्सो लिस्टेड देयर बट कृष्णा इज नॉट एक्सपेंशन और वन अंशा वन फ्रैगमेंट कृष्णा इज भगवान स्वयं कृष्णा हिमसेल्फ इज द सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड सो ऑल दो देर इज नो डिफरेंस ऑल दीज फॉर्म्स आर कृष्णा ओनली जस्ट टू रिलिश वेरियस प्लेजर्स एंड टू रेसिप्रोकेट द डिवोटीज हु वॉन्ट टू वर्शिप कृष्णा इन पर्टिकुलर फीचर कृष्णा टेक्स ऑल दीज फॉर्म्स इट इज ऑफेंसिव टू थिंक वन फॉर्म इज मोर पावरफुल अनादर फॉर्म इज लेस नो दे आर ऑल इक्वली पावरफुल देर इज नो डिफरेंस बिटवीन वन फॉर्म एंड अनादर फॉर्म ऑल दीज इनकारनेशन आर कृष्णा ओनली एंड द एग्जाम्पल इज गिवन इन ब्रह्म संहिता अगेन दीपार्चर एव ही दशांतरम अभ्युपेत्या दीपायते विव्रत हेतु समान धर्मा जस्ट लाइक दीपा लैंप इज देयर और कैंडल इज देयर फ्रॉम वन लैंप और कैंडल मैनी मैनी कैंडल्स कैन बी लिट एंड ऑल ऑफ देम विल हैव इक्वल एल्यूमिनेशन बट स्टिल दे इज वन ओरिजिनल कैंडल फ्रॉम विच अदर्स वर लिट एंड दैट ओरिजिनल कैंडल इट इज टोल्ड इज कृष्णा यस तादृग ए विच अ विष्णु तया विभाती देर आर सो मेनी विष्णु फॉर्म्स थ्री विष्णु फॉर्म्स वी डिस्कस्ड इन कोर्स ऑफ आर डिस्कशन दे आर एग्जिस्टिंग इन दिस मटीरियल वर्ल्ड एंड इन स्पिरिचुअल वर्ल्ड देर आर अनलिमिटेड विष्णु फॉर्म्स फोर हंड्रेड फॉर्म्स एंड ऑल दीज विष्णु फॉर्म्स इट इज बींग टोल्ड यस तादृग ए विच अ विष्णु तया विभाती वन हु एक्सपैंड हिमसेल्फ इन मेनी मेनी विष्णु फॉर्म्स जस्ट लाइक फ्रॉम वन कैंडल मेनी कैंडल्स कैन बी लिट ऑल आर हैविंग इक्वली पावर That is the position of Krishna. He expands himself into many Vishnu forms. Yes, yehi kanishvase ta kala mathav lambya jivanti lom vilja jagannand na tha. Vishnu mahan sa iya yes se kala visheshu govinda madhi purusham tamaham bajami. Nishvase ta kalam. The period of exhalation is the life span of Brahma. Brahma's life, as we discussed in the eighth chapter, is three hundred and eleven trillion years. More than that. and this period of 311 trillion years is the time of one breath of lord mahavishnu from whose body so many universes are coming out and vishnu mahan sa iha yasya kala visheshu that mahavishnu is kala means expansion of whom govindam supreme lord krishna govinda adi purusham who is the origin of all persons maham bhajami i worship that person brahma is telling so you can read uh, in the purport of this eighth verse very nicely from the atharva ved so some people tell please show me where in vedas krishna's name is there so many places this mantra that we chant hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram ram ram, ram hare hare so here krishna word comes krishna's name it is from krishna yajurved and here it is atharva ved yo brahmanam vidhati purvam यो वै वेदांश च गापयति स्म कृष्ण वेदांश गापयति स्म कृष्ण वन उगे वेदास्ट टू ब्रह्म ही इज कृष्ण सो एक्चुअली दिस इज द रियल अंडरस्टैंडिंग सो वाई डू पीपल टेल दैट लॉर्ड कृष्ण इज कमिंग फ्रॉम विष्णु एंड नॉट वाइस ए वर्षा बिकॉज एज वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इफ यू हैव बीन फॉलोइंग अप वेरी क्लोजली द भगवदगीता सेशंस Lord Vishnu is present in this material universe and one of the three Vishnus the devatas approach when there is some disturbance here in this material universe and uh, he tells that yes i will come i will help and through that lord vishnu who is called kshirodakshai vishnu all the manifestation all the incarnations they appear here and when lord krishna comes here lord balram when he comes they also come from kshirodakshai vishnu and you will hear description in the vedas that there are two hairs on the chest of lord vishnu one is black one is white and they incarnate as krishna and balram so one may think oh just see this is also in the vedas clear explanation is there from these hairs the incarnations have come and but here we understand that gapyati sma krishna krishna is explaining the knowledge to brahma and uh, from krishna mahavishnu is coming who is sustaining all the material universes So how do we understand this fact? So the understanding is 
Krishna appears through Shirodakshai Vishnu, but he can appear directly as well, just like Narsim Dev incarnation. He appeared through pillar. There is no need of father and mother also. And sometimes he appears through father and mother, as in the case of Devaki and Vasudev. So Lord Krishna can appear from anywhere. Entire world is his energy. He can become visible anywhere. And he is visible anywhere and everywhere for pure devotees. And thus when Hiran Kashyapu asked Prahlad, you are always telling God, God, where is your God? He told he is everywhere. Because it is a fact, God is present in every atom, but non-devotees, materialists, we cannot see. So when uh, he told he is everywhere, he is in this pillar also, let me kill your God now, let me see. And just to keep the words of his pure devotee, Lord Krishna appeared as Narsing Dev out of the pillar. So he can appear through pillar, he can appear through Deviki, or he can appear through Shirodakshai Vishnu. So pillar does not become father of Krishna, Devki does not become mother of Krishna. And Shirodakshai Vishnu does not become the source of Krishna. Krishna has chose to appear through various forms. In this way, the conclusive truth of Vedas is very very confidential. So one has to understand from proper Vedic references under the guidance of proper spiritual master. But there is no difference. Uh, Krishna, Vishnu, they are all same personality but still we have to understand who is the original personality and we have seen good amount of Vedic references and that is why it is told in the Vedas further Ram Ram Rameti Rame Rame Mano Rame Sahasra Nama Tat Tulyam Ram Name Varanane Lord Shiva is telling to Goddess Parvati Ram Ram Rameti if you chant Ram 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 then this is equal to Sahasra Nam Tat Tulyam there are thousand names of Lord Vishnu. People chant Vishnu Sahasranam. So Lord Shiva is always chanting uh, Lord Ramchandra's name. He is instructing Mother Parvati, Varanane, O oh, Goddess who are having very beautiful face, chant Ram, Ram and Ram. This is equal to Sahasranam Tulyam. This is equal to chanting 1000 names of Lord Vishnu. And Trir Avritti to Yatphalam, by chanting three times Lord Rama's name, the same result is attained which a person can get by chanting once the name of Krishna. So this is the version of the Vedas. So it means by chanting one Krishna, one gets the result of chanting Ram, Ram, Ram and that is equal to chanting thousand times the name of Lord Vishnu. So in this way also we can understand how Krishna is the source of all other forms. And like this, the references are unlimited, but time is limited. Maybe in course of our other sessions, we will see more references. But here, this is very important and that we will see also in the next chapter. Krishna will show his 400 form and then he will show his 200 form. Telling this 200 form, Devtas also cannot see. Because Devtas cannot go beyond the material universe. And 400 form is visible in material universe, Lord Vishnu. And 200 form of Lord Krishna, Goloka Ev Nivasati Akhilatma Bhuto that lives in spiritual world. Devtas are conditioned being like us. They don't have access to spiritual world. So thus all these wonderful uh, explanations we will discover more in course of time. For now we can understand Aham Sarvasya Prabhu Krishna is the source of everything. All the incarnations, all the expansions, all the material universes and the spiritual planets. Tesham Satata Yuktanam Bhajatam Preeti Purvakam Dadami buddhi yogam tam yena maam upayanti te Tesham satata yukta naam bhajatam preeti purvakam Dadami buddhi yogam tam yena maam upayanti te To those who are constantly devoted and worship me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. Machitta Madagat Prana Bodhayanta Parasparam Those who are always conversing about me, taking pleasure in my topics. And to those great souls who in this way are constantly engaged in my service. Tesham Satat Satat means always. Yuktanam who are always engaged in Bhajatam. Bhajata means rendering service. 
how preeti purvakam with great love the dami buddhi yogam tam so this buddhi yoga word we discussed in second chapter also this buddhi yoga means action in krishna consciousness that is a topmost intelligence when a person is most wise he understands krishna is aham sarvasya prabhu the source of everyone everything so all the action should be done for his pleasure now how to act on a step to step basis in the pleasure of krishna that lord krishna guides from the heart to the people who are always engaged in his service this is our only hope of spiritual advancement in this age of kali yuga if you want to understand god about reading all the vedas and books so even though it is possible by finishing such readings but it was possible in previous ages that too it takes a very very long time and people are having very long life and now our life span is very less and our memories are so poor today we read something and by the evening we will forget so where is the question of proper analysis for proper analysis intelligence to work nicely we need to be shruti dhara shruti dhara means in vedic culture people were simply learning the disciples would simply hear once from the spiritual master and for the rest of the life the topics are committed to their memory they will never forget it so in this way just by once hearing they will be able to keep in the memory and thus they would be able to analyze the things very nicely now if you are always forgetting where is the question of applying proper logic today we discuss this we get convinced tomorrow we may get confused because we forget the logics the discussions so there is no hope of coming to proper conclusion of vedic knowledge by reading the vedas today because we forget the things so for people like us who are not shruti dharas not having perfect memory analysis will not work right so please do not get confused when we are not able to understand anything confusion is natural we keep on forgetting and by analysis even if a person is like brahma having perfect memory still brahma gets confused what to speak of us so thus this is the process this is the hope and that is satat yukta nam bhajatam priti purvakam always constantly one should engage in the service of krishna under the guidance of spiritual master then dadami buddhi yogam tam even though the person is very less intelligent as krishna mentioned in previous chapter pap yonaya people who are less intelligent less qualified if they take shelter of mind they can also attain the ultimate destination so it does not matter if we are less intelligent we have to simply engage constantly in the service of krishna and then dadami buddhi yogam tam i give him the buddhi yoga how to act in krishna consciousness in my service so that upayanti te at the end they can come to me so thus the life becomes very simple and there is a great secret krishna is telling the way to by analyzing we will understand what is the right course of action but step to step basis krishna is guiding us what can be better if god is guiding us what we have to do is just maintain constant engagement in the service of krishna and how we can do it so that is very simple as krishna has explained in the second chapter and after that third chapter fourth fifth chapter what we have to do is we have got certain skills and qualifications they have to be used in the service of krishna we have to work the way our mind and body uh, work naturally find any convenient job business vocation and the results offer to krishna and meanwhile while we are engaged in that job we should always try to chant krishna's name and think of krishna and try to develop knowledge of krishna simply by following this process one is constantly engaged in the service of krishna and then the right knowledge from the heart is revealed. तेषावाकंपाथम अहम अज्ञानज तम नाशयामी आत्मस्थो ज्ञानदीपेन भास्वता आउट ऑफ कंपैशन फॉर देम आय डिंग इन देर हार्ट्स डिस्ट्रॉय विद द शाइनिंग लैंप ऑफ नॉलेज द डार्कनेस बॉर्न ऑफ इग्नोरेंस अहम अज्ञान जम तम द डार्कनेस विट इज अज्ञान जम बॉर्न ऑफ इग्नोरेंस i destroy because i am seated in the heart so krishna is very compassionate upon such devotees who are always glorifying him engaged in his service to such great souls thus it is very simple the subject matter is so nice so interesting bodhayanta parasparam 
find another person and keep on discussing this knowledge and engage always in service of krishna desham to such great souls krishna destroys nashyami atma bhavastho all the ignorance so when krishna wants to destroy ignorance then uh, where is the question of not getting enlightened krishna gives all knowledge so this is the easiest process so rather than uh, waiting life after life to gradually develop your body and intelligence and understand krishna let us engage with whatever little intelligence and strength we have in his service and then he will guide step to step basis and he will destroy ignorance from the heart so usually we think unless we use discrimination we apply logic reasoning we cannot get proper knowledge but this is not correct we see all the species are having knowledge of maintaining themselves their young ones eating mating sleeping defending this knowledge is there for everybody how to create shelter how to defend themselves how to raise their young ones get arrange food store food all these things this knowledge is given so knowledge is given by krishna from the heart so without applying using our speculation simply if we engage in krishna service all knowledge will come without any extra need of analyzing and speculating with our imperfect brains but still one should not become lazy because uh, yes it is a fact simply if we chant if we hear satisfy some house of krishna all the knowledge will be revealed but in this age of widespread ignorance and agnosticism some person may come tomorrow and challenge our beliefs and we may get shaken up and leave our practices so thus it is important that we should not be lazy in understanding krishna so that very firmly we are established in krishna's service otherwise in good faith if a person takes up the process then success is assured but so that we don't get deviated off the path we need to cultivate knowledge of krishna also side by side arjuna uvacha param brahma param dhama पवित्रम परम भवान्षम शाश्वत दिव्यम आदिदेव अज विभु आहुस्वामृषय सर्वे देवर्षिनारदस्तथा असी तो देवलो व्यास स्वयं च्रवीषि मे अर्जुन सेड यू आर द सुप्रीम ब्रह्म द अल्टिमेट द सुप्रीम अबोड एंड प्यूरिफायर द एब्जुलू ट्रुथ एंड the eternal divine person you are the primal god transcendental and original and you are the unborn and all pervading beauty all the great sages such as narada asita devala and vyasa proclaim this of you and now you yourself are declaring it to me so this is the conclusion of arjuna after hearing bhagavad gita so far what is that परम ब्रह्मा परम धामा पवित्रम परमम भवान वी आर ऑल ब्रह्म अहम ब्रह्मास्मि तत्वमसी यू आर दैट वी हैव हर्ड दिस सफिशिएंटली बट कृष्णा इज परम ब्रह्मा दिस स्पेशल वर्ड इज यूज्ड फॉर कृष्णा सो वी आर इन्फिनिटेसिमल एटॉमिक स्पार्क्स ब्रह्म स्पार्क ऑफ ब्रह्म एंड कृष्णा इज परम ब्रह्म इन्फिनिट ब्रह्म ही इज द सोर्स ऑफ ऑल इन्फिनिटेसिमल ब्रह्म्स ऑल द लिविंग एंटिटीज so krishna is supreme infinite spirit param brahma param dhama and we have discussed sufficiently everything in material and spiritual world is resting on krishna so krishna is supreme abode everything is resting on him his energy param thus he is called param dhama the supreme abode pavitram paramam bhavan he is supremely pure if anybody comes in contact with krishna they become purified immediately even the demons when they are killed by krishna they become liberated immediately so all the problems in life are because of impurities lust anger greed so when you maintain constant contact with krishna especially in kali yuga such contact can be maintained by chanting his name kali kale naam roope krishna avatar naam naam akari bahudha nij sarva shakti krishna has taken incarnation in the form of his name all the potencies of krishna are invested in the name so by always chanting and hearing the name of krishna which is very easy to do one is in constant touch with krishna is supremely pure just like an iron rod in constant touch with fire becomes fire like starts emitting heat and light 
our entire mind and body becomes purified of material dirt and it becomes spirit like starts behaving like spirit as iron rod starts behaving like fire and when the mind and body start behaving like spirit we can experience our spiritual nature bliss uh, eternal life and unlimited happiness and the laws of the nature surroundings don't impact us so pavitram krishna is supreme purifier paramam bhava pavitram paramam bhavan yourself purusham shashvatam divyam you are purush but you are not purush like us who take birth and die you are shashvat shashvat means eternal so arjuna is perfect student of bhagavad gita we should take his conclusion arjuna is concluding you are eternal person you are not an energy you are eternally a person always you are a person and you will always remain a person purusham shashvatam you have never taken birth you will never die purusham shashvatam divyam how is it possible we see persons take birth and they die no because you are divyam you are spiritual on spiritual platform it is possible and adi devam you are the not any other devata you are adi devam the origin of all the devatas ajam vibhum again the word is used ajam so many times krishna has told i am ajam arjuna is also telling ajam ajam means one who does not take birth does not accept bodies so krishna does not accept body he has not accepted a body sitting in the womb of devaki krishna is always like that in that form that is spiritual form of krishna which appears like matter so that we can see him ahustvam rishaya sarve devarshir naradas tatha and all the great sages rishaya sarve devrishi narad asito devalo vyaso these are great vedic authorities asit and deval are less known if we have uh, Uh, if you are not into the vedic knowledge but everybody definitely knows ved vyas the author of mahabharata shrimad bhagavatam compiler of all the vedas so arjuna is quoting not because i am your friend so i am doing flattery to you oh you are unborn you are god just like friends may sometimes speak of each other you know so do not think it is a friendly glory but all the great sages speak such of you that you are परम ब्रह्मा परम धामा एंड स्वयं चय ब्रवीषि में यू योर सेल्फ मर्सीफुली हैव डिक्लेयर्ड स्पोक इन द सेम नॉलेज टू मी सो ऑल द ग्रेट सेज एज अथॉरिटीज ऑफ एब्जोलूट ट्रुथ दे टेल कृष्णा इज ओरिजिन ऑफ एवरीथिंग कृष्णा इज ओरिजिनल पर्सन परम ब्रह्मा परम धामा ही इज इन्फिनिट स्पिरिट सोर्स ऑफ एवरीथिंग ही इज इटर्नली अ पर्सन एंड अर्जुना द परफेक्ट स्टूडेंट ऑफ भगवद गीता हैज कम टू द सेम कंक्लूजन krishna is also telling the same thing i am god then why we are uh, spending time uselessly all the authorities have told krishna has declared this bhagavad gita has been accepted as authority by every uh, authorized sage so if you want to save time we can accept it and start practicing this very nice process which is mentioned here of buddhi yoga or bhakti yoga and there is no loss chant the name of krishna engage in service of krishna मे यन्मा वदसि केशव न हि ते भगवन्क्ति विदुर्देव न दानवा ओ कृष्ण आई टोटली एक्सेप्ट एस ट्रुथ ऑल दैट यू हैव टोल्ड मी नीदर द गॉड्स नॉ डीमन्स ओ लॉर्ड नो दाय पर्सनैलिटी अर्जुन इज एक्सेप्टेड एवरी थिंग दैट कृष्ण टोल्ड बिकॉज अदर अथॉरिटीज हैव स्पोकन ऑफ द सेम थिंग अबाउट कृष्ण एंड nobody knows you vidur devana danava the devs do not know you the gods and the demons also do not know you only a person who is a devotee can know you perfectly swayam evatmanatmanam vethatvam purushottama bhut bhavana bhutesha deva deva jagatpate Indeed, you alone know yourself by your own potencies, origin of all, Lord of all beings, God of gods, O supreme person, Lord of the universe. Vaktum arhasya sheshe na divya hi atma vibhutaya ha ya bhir vibhuti bhir lokan imas tvam vyapyatishthasi. Please tell me in detail of your divine powers by which. 
you pervade all these worlds and abide in them. Katham vidyam aham yogins tvam sada parichintayan Keshu keshu chabhaveshu chintyo si bhagavan maya How should I meditate on you? In what various forms are you to be contemplated, O blessed Lord? Vistarenatmano yogam vibhutim cha janardana Bhuya kathaya triptirhi Rinvato nasti memritam Tell me again in detail, O Janardhan, Krishna, of your mighty potencies and glories, for I never tire of hearing your ambrosial words. As it has been concluded here, Mat chitta matagat prana bodhayanta parasparam man mana bhavmat bhakto Maya sakta mano ye maam Steady concentration of the mind on Krishna is what is being prescribed here as the ultimate knowledge. Now Arjuna knows Krishna as a supreme person, but ordinary people cannot know his spiritual form. So ordinary persons who are captured by material energy, how can they always think of Krishna? Because they are enamored by the material opulences. So how Krishna has manifested himself in the material world? Arjuna is telling Krishna to kindly explain so that ordinary people, advanced people directly Premanjana charita bhakti vilo chanena santas sadai vridayeshu vilo kayanti Those who are in love of God, always they are seeing the form of God within their hearts. Krishna becomes visible to them out of his mercy. But ordinary people cannot practice such meditation. So what ordinary person can do? For the sake of poor people like us, Arjuna is putting forth this question. How can an ordinary person meditate on you, think of you, O Krishna? Please explain your glories. Shri Bhagavan Vacha Hantate Kathayashyami Divyahi Atma Vibhutayaha Radhanyata Kurushreshtha the Blessed Lord said, Yes, I will tell you of my splendorous manifestations, but only of those which are prominent, O Arjuna, for my opulence is limitless. So everything is Krishna's opulence, what we see around us. But the prominent opulences Krishna is now going to explain. Aham Atma Gudakesha Sarva Bhutashaya Sthitaha Aham Adishcha Madhyamcha Bhutanam Anta Evacha I am the Self, O Gudakesha, seated in the hearts. I am the Self, O Gudakesha, seated in the hearts of all creatures. I am the beginning, the middle, and the end of all beings. Adityanam aham vishnur jyotisham raviranshuman marichir marutam asmi nakshatranam aham shashi Of the Adityas, I am Vishnu. Of lights, I am the radiant sun. I am Marichi of the Maruts. And among the stars, I am the moon. So these are glorious manifestations. There are Dvadash Aditya, 12 Aditya demigods sons of Aditi. Among them, Lord Vishnu is the Supreme. Of lights, I am the radiant sun. And sun, as we know, is very, we all see sun as very effulgent. As soon as you see this glorious manifestation, so effulgent, one should understand this is Krishna, Krishna's manifestation. I am Marichi of the Maruts. Maruts are the demigods who control the heavenly spaces, winds. And Marichi is the most prominent among them. He is also manifestation of Krishna. And among the stars, I am the moon, Krishna is telling. Moon is the most illuminating among the stars, nakshatras. And Krishna is telling, as soon as you see moon, you should remember, oh, this moon is also manifestation of Krishna's energy. Vedanam sam vedosmi 
देवास्म वासव इंद्रियाण मनश्चास्मी भूतानामस्मी चेतना ऑफ द वेदास आय एम द साम वेद ऑफ द डेमी गॉड्स आय एम इंद्रा ऑफ द सेंसेस आय एम द माइंड एंड इन लिविंग बीइंग्स आय एम द लिविंग फोर्स रुद्राण शंकरश्चास्मी वित्तेशो यक्ष रक्षसा वसूना पावकस्मी मेरुशिखरिणाम ऑफ ऑल द रुद्रास आई एम लॉर्ड शिवा ऑफ द यक्षास एंड राक्षसास आई एम द लॉर्ड ऑफ वेल्थ कुबेरा ऑफ द वसूस आई एम फायर अग्नि एंड ऑफ द माउंटेन्स आई एम मेरु सो दिस डिस्कशन इज नॉट ऑफ दिस प्लैनेट बट ऑफ द मैनिफेस्टेशंस ऑफ द एंटायर यूनिवर्स so there are 11 rudras of the 11 rudras lord shiva is the top most rudra most prominent of the yakshas and rakshasas i am the lord of wealth kuvera kuvera is the treasurer of the demigods of the vasus i am fire vasus they are another category of demigods and agni is most powerful and prominent among them krishna is telling that is also my manifestation and there are so many mountains and the tallest mountain is mount meru krishna is telling that is also my manifestation purodasam cha mukhyam mam vidhi partha brihaspatim senani nam aham skandah sarasamasmi sagarah of priests o arjuna know me to be the chief brihaspati the lord of devotion of generals i am skanda the lord of war and of bodies of water i am the ocean maharshi nam bhriguraham giramasmi ekam aksharam yagyanam jap yagyosmi sthavaranam himalayah of the great sages i am bhrigu of vibrations i am the transcendental om of sacrifices i am the chanting of the holy names japa and of immovable things i am the himalayas now when we read this description i am i am i am ocean i am himalaya i am moon so one should not think if a person does not have proper understanding one may think krishna is energy or the material energy these are manifestations of matter moon himalayas water but then krishna is telling i am person also i am bhrigu i am sun so some people think that some total of everything that is there in the universe that is krishna krishna is not a person ultimately krishna wants to tell everything that you see around you that is krishna so this is not the proper understanding proper understanding because krishna at the same time arjuna has concluded you are purusham you are a person shashvatam divyam you are always a person so krishna cannot be matter which is spread everywhere when krishna tells i am ocean himalayas and etc it means achindya bheda bhed as we have been discussing there is no difference between energy and energetic at the same time there is difference sun and sunlight are one unit because there is no separate existence of sunlight without sun or sun is existing without its light it's not possible so thus they can be said as one at the same time we cannot tell that sunlight is exactly same as sun so when krishna is telling this is me it means this is my energy in that sense krishna is telling so all these are manifestation of krishna's energy just like the leaves the twigs the branches are all tree but still tree is tree it is the complete whole so this is the way in which we are supposed to take this explanation it is me means it is my energy because energy is non different from me so very important word used here is yagya naam jap yagyo asmi there are so many yagyas there is yagya of dravya which means offering grains into the fire sacrifice or giving charity of material goods that is called dravya yagya there is gyan yagya when somebody reads the vedas that is also sacrifice of one's intelligence one's time energy it takes lot of effort so that is also sacrifice and following brahmacharya that is also sacrifice 
In this way, so many sacrifices are recommended in the Vedas. But among all the yagyas, so these yagyas, as we have discussed enough, are not just required for spiritual advancement, but also for maintaining a comfortable material life, for getting the natural resources. Yagya is required. So, of so many yagyas which Krishna has described, the most powerful yagya is Japa Yagya, chanting the holy names of the Lord. So thus, uh, what the process we are following, it is highly recommended in all the Vedas in Bhagavad Gita also. So we remember in 9th chapter verse number 14, Krishna mentioned Satatam Kirtayantumam, always keep on chanting my name. Here Krishna is telling Yagyanam, I am the chanting of the holy name. So chanting of the names is being given so much stress. So thus we should follow this chanting always Satatam throughout the day. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. There will be no material scarcity and we'll make perfect spiritual advancement. This Japa is the topmost Yajna. More than reading the Vedas, more than Tapasya, more than following Vrata, standing in neck deep cold water, more than doing 7 day, 10 day, 1 month of fasting, more than anything else, simply chanting the holy names. Greatest Yajna. Ashvatha Sarva Vrikshanam Devarshinam cha naradaha, Gandharvanam chitra rathaha, Siddhanam kapilo munihi. Of all the trees, I am the holy fig tree, and amongst sages and demigods, I am Narada. Of the singers of the god Gandharvas, I am chitra ratha, and among perfected beings, I am the sage Kapila. Uchaya shavasam. Ashwanam Vidhimam Amritod Bhavam Airavatam Gajendranam Naranam Cha Naradhipam Of horses know me to be Uchai Shrava, who rose out of the ocean, born of the elixir of immortality. Of lordly elephants, I am Airavat, and among men, I am the monarch. So these descriptions are given of various famous personalities or animals in the universe. So it might take a lot of time if we described every personality, the great sage Bhrigu, the most powerful sons of Brahma, who went and kicked Lord Vishnu on his chest. That is why those who make deities, they have this footprint on Lord Krishna's chest. So that impression is of Lord Bhrigu's feet. He is very, very powerful sage. But time is very less. And anyway, we don't see these personalities as other powerful personalities uh, they can witness. But anyway, we have seen monarch. It is described here. So whenever we see king or prime minister or powerful rulers, we can immediately think of Krishna. That Krishna has invested their potency in them. That is why they have rose to such power. So in this way, we should always try to think of Krishna. So as far as Airavat and Uchayashrava are concerned, they came out of the churning of ocean of milk. We know Lord Shiva, he drank poison and nectar was given to the demigods. In that churning, one horse also came out and elephant also came out. So these are their names, Uchayashrava and Airavat. So if time permits, we will discuss sometimes about all these great personalities, Lord Kapila, who is uh, incarnation of Krishna himself, who explains Sankhya Yoga to his mother Devahuti and uh, Devarshi Narad, we all know. He is the incarnation of Bhakti potency of Lord Krishna. He is a spiritual master of entire universe and that of sage Vedavyas also. Ayudhanamahambhajram dhenu namasmi kamadhuk rajanashchasmi kandarpaha Sarpanamasmi Vasukihi. Of weapons, I am the thunderbolt. Among cows, I am the Surabhi, givers of abundant milk. Of procreators, I am Kandarpa, the god of love. And of the serpents, I am Vasuki, the chief. Anantaschasmi Naga Nam, Varuno Samaham. Pitranam Aryamachasmi Yamasayamatamaham Of the celestial Naga snakes, I am Ananta, of the aquatic deities. 
I am Varuna. Of departed ancestors, I am Aryama. And among the dispensers of law, I am Yama, Lord of Deaths. Prahaladaschasmi daityanam kalaha kalayatamaham Mriganam cha mragendroham vainate yascha pakshina Among the daitya demons, I am the devoted Prahalad. Among the subduers, I am time. Among the beasts, I am the lion. And among birds, I am Garuna, the feathered carrier of Vishnu. Pavana pavatamasmi Rama shastra bhritamaham Jashana makarashchasmi Rotasamasmi jahnavi Of purifiers, I am the wind. Of the wielders of weapons, I am Ram. Of fishes, I am the shark, and of flowing rivers, I am the Ganges. Sargana madirantascha madhyam chaivaha marjuna adhyatma vidya vidyanam vada pravadatamaham. Of all creations, I am the beginning and the end, and also the middle. O Arjuna, of all sciences, I am the spiritual science of the self, and among logicians, I am the conclusive truth. Aksharana makarosmi dvanvasamasi kasyacha aham evakshaya kalo dhataham vishvato mukha. Of letters, I am the letter A, and among compounds, I am the dual word. I am also inexhaustible time, and of creators I am Brahma, whose manifold faces turn everywhere. Mrityu sarvaharaschaham udbhavascha bhavishyatam Eti shrirvakcha narinam smritir medhadritikshama I am all devouring death and I am the generator of all things yet to be. Among women, I am fame, fortune, speech, memory, intelligence, faithfulness, and patience. So death is an established truth. Nobody can avoid death. So when we see death happening, we should understand this is also the energy of Krishna, arrangement of Krishna. And these are the feminine qualities, fame, speech, memory, intelligence, faithfulness, patience. Any woman becomes glorious by having one or more of these qualities. So when we see such qualities, then we should understand this is also Krishna, manifestation of Krishna's energy. Brihasam tathasam nam gayatri chandasamaham masanam margashirshoham Ritu nam kosuma karaha. Of hymns I am the Brihat Sam, sung to the Lord Indra, and of the poetry I am the Gayatri verse, sung daily by the Brahmanas. Of months I am November and December, and of seasons I am flower bearing spring. So, Gayatri verse is the topmost verse of the Vedic literature. And it is meant to be chanted by advanced souls, either Brahmanas, Brahmana means Brahma Jana Atiti Brahmana, who has realized that he is not the body but spirit soul. So such Brahmanas can chant Gayatri or the Devtas who are very sattvic in heavenly bodies. So these days we see many people, they just read Gayatri mantra and start chanting, but it will not be effective. Gayatri mantra has to be chanted by proper qualification, Satyam, Shama, Dhamma. Mind should be perfectly controlled, senses should be controlled. Truthfulness, forgiveness, jnanam, vijnana, mastikyam, the knowledge of self different from matter, self realization. One should be very, very advanced in these qualities. And then one can chant Gayatri and make advancement. So, because people are not very sattvic in Kali Yuga, it's very difficult to find Brahmana. That is why this Hare Krishna Mahamantra is given. So it more than compensates Gayatri, it does not matter if we cannot take benefit of chanting Gayatri, 
Hare Krishna Mahamantra will give all the results that are attainable by chanting Gayatri. There is no difference between the two, chanting Gayatri or Hare Krishna Mahamantra. But Hare Krishna Mahamantra is very merciful incarnation, which even the least qualified people can also chant and make perfect advancement. Masana Marg Shirshoham, November, December are considered the best because people harvest their crops in this season. And of course, we know the spring is uh, very, very nice. It's very pleasant condition. So when we see such pleasant conditions, such seasons, because uh, these things, they easily captivate one's mind and attention. Oh yes, it is very nice month. We will collect grains now. Oh, it is very nice weather. So, so amazing. So we can immediately remember, oh, this is also creation of Krishna. Dyutam chalayatam asmi Tejas Tejas Vinamaham Jayosmi Vyavasayosmi Satvam Satvavatamaham I am also the gambling of cheats and of the splendid. I am the splendor. I am victory. I am adventure. And I am the strength of the strong. Vrishni Nam Vasudevosmi Pandavanam Dhananjayaha Muni naam apyaham vyasaha, kavi naam ushana kavihi. Of the descendants of Vrishni, I am Vasudev, and of the Pandavas, I am Arjuna. Of the sages, I am Vyas, and among great thinkers, I am Ushana. Ushana, the great thinker here, is the spiritual master of the demons. He was very very wise person and thus he is also a representation of Krishna's energy. Dando Damayatamasmi Nitirasmi Jigishatam Maunam Chaivasmi Guhyanam Gyanam Gyanavatamaham Among punishments I am the rod of chastisement, and of those who seek victory I am morality. Of secret things, I am silence, and of the wise, I am wisdom. Yachapi sarva bhutanam, bijam tadaham arjuna, natadasti vinayatsyan, maya bhutam characharam. Furthermore, O Arjuna, I am the generating seed of all existences. There is no being, moving or unmoving that can exist without me. So we see trees, trees are bearing fruits, fruits are again having seeds and from that seed again comes a tree. How did this all start? It all started from the seed. So who gave the original seed of all the species of life, plants, trees, crops and that in the embryo for the development of human beings? So Krishna is telling, I am the seed of all the existences. So any wonderful manifestation we see around us and we wonder about the origin, from where came the original seed? So Krishna is telling, I am the original seed. Nantosti mama divya naam vibhuti naam parantapa eshatuddeshata prokto vibhuter vistaro maya O mighty conqueror of enemies, there is no end to my divine manifestations. What I have spoken to you is but a mere indication of my infinite opulences. Yad yad vibhuti masatvam shrimad urjitam evava tat tad evava gachatvam mamate jonsha sambhavam Know that all beautiful, glorious and mighty creations spring from but a spark of my splendor. So even though we cannot conceive of Krishna's spiritual form in our heart always, Krishna is telling any beautiful thing you see around you, any mighty thing that you notice around you, it is manifestation of my splendor. So tomorrow if we find some beautiful flower around us, we should think, oh, this is also Krishna's energy. Krishna is a wonderful creator. If we see any beautiful man, woman, any educated, very erudite man or woman scholars, we should understand oh, this is also manifestation. Their brain, mind has been designed by Krishna. Otherwise, nobody could have been so learned. We see any nice composition of poetry, we should understand this is Krishna's manifestation. 
any nice technology we get enamored oh this is also krishna's intelligence how krishna has created all these wonderful phenomena so anything beautiful splendorous we should immediately think of krishna so in this way indirectly if we start thinking of krishna one day we will reach sufficient purification by which we can directly think of krishna athava bahu nayate na kim gyate na tavarjuna विष्टभ्याम कृष्णम एकांशे नास्थितो जगत बट वॉट नीड इज देयर अर्जुना फॉर ऑल दिस डिटेल नॉलेज विथ अ सिंगल फ्रैगमेंट ऑफ माई सेल्फ आई परवेड एंड सपोर्ट दिस एंटायर यूनिवर्स सो कृष्णा इज टेलिंग अर्जुना वाई यू आर आस्किंग वॉट इज द नीड ऑफ ऑल दिस डिटेल जस्ट लाइक वी हैव अ कार We need not understand all the details, intricacies of car manufacturing. We need to know how to use the car to reach our destination, our goal. In a similar fashion, this world is very, very complex, unlimitedly complex. One cell is more complex than a metropolitan city in its rush hour. So, one cell we cannot understand how somebody has installed, developed a city in such a small unit called cell, and self-replicating city. can one city in new york produce another new york same building same houses same offices same traffic same water same gas same everything it is impossible but that is self self replicating city what is this arrangement so many cities are required they make up this wonderful complex machines our bodies so krishna is telling what is the need arjuna of all these things you have to think of me and just understand this entire material manifestation mam tejo ansha sambhavan anshaha ansha means from one fragment of mind entire universe is pervaded and sustained and that is parmatma manifestation lord krishna in the form of parmatma andantarast parmanu chayantarastham govindamadi purusham tamaham bhajami he has entered into anda brahmanda the supreme egg universe and paramanu he has entered within the atom also so every atom is able to maintain its integrity its form structure because parmatma is there present inside so all the body's units are sustaining because parmatma is sitting in every body so thus with one fragment krishna is telling entire material world is pervaded and is sustained the so one fragment of mine is so powerful so there is no end to my glories arjuna so there is no need of such detailed explanations just think of me and become my devotee so these are some introductory opulences of krishna these opulences are meant so that we can increase our affection on krishna and thus when we understand the glories of any person automatically we like to discuss about that person we want to meet that person and establish relationship with that person So if we get convinced about the glories and opulences of Krishna it will be very easy to become devotees of Krishna which is the purpose of explaining all these opulences and now the next chapter universal form a very unique vision is given to Arjuna where he is able to see entire universe including past present and future sitting in one place how was that manifested we will see in the next chapter thank you so much for hearing please keep on chanting always Hare Krishna Arjuna uvacha mad anugrahaya paramam guhyam madhyatma sangitam yat vayoktam vachastena Mohoyam vigato mama Arjuna said I have heard your instruction on confidential spiritual matters which you have so kindly delivered unto me and my illusion is now dispelled Bhavapya yauhi bhutanam ऋत विस्तरशो मया वत्तः कमलपत्राक्ष 
Mahatmyam Apichavyayam. O Lotus Side One, I have heard from you in detail about the appearance and disappearance of every living entity as realized through your inexhaustible glories. Evam etad yathatatvam atmanam parameshwara drashtum ichchami te rupam aishwaram purushottama O greatest of all personalities, O supreme form, though I see here before me your actual position, I yet wish to see how you have entered into this cosmic manifestation. I want to see that form of yours. So we have to read these things very carefully. If we read the first line of this verse, Arjuna is mentioning evam etad yathatatvam. Etad, this roop, this form which I am seeing in front of me, this is yathatatvam, even though I am perceiving you as it is, your original form. Yet I wish to see how you have entered in this cosmic manifestation. Ashwaram roopam, Ashwaram means opulences. So Arjuna has agreed that Krishna, the form which I am seeing here in front of me, this is Yathatatvam, as it is I am seeing you. So these words are important. So it is not that Krishna is somebody else who is there within the body of two-handed Shamsundar form, who was a chariot driver of Arjuna. This is a very wrong understanding. Krishna is not supreme person in the form of soul residing within the two-handed Shamsundar form, but the original form of God as it is, is two-handed form only. Evam etad yathatatvam. So as you are, I am seeing you. But still I want to see other form which is Aishwaram Rupam. How you have pervaded the entire universe. So what does it mean? It means just as the soul is present in this body and it is pervading in the entire body in the form of consciousness. Similarly, as we have discussed in the previous chapter, Lord enters in this universe, in this material world, and so many universes, they develop. So unless the consciousness is present, body does not develop. In a similar fashion, the universes will not develop, manifest so many variegated forms, unless God has entered into it. So just like we have got this form, so we can show this form to anybody who desires to meet us. In a similar fashion, Krishna has got so many forms, his original form Arjuna is seeing, but this universal form which is developed when Krishna enters in the form of Vishnu in the material world, that is also Krishna's form. That form although is accepted temporarily. All the other forms, Krishna forms, so many Narayan forms, they are eternally situated in the spiritual world. And they manifest here in the material world for some time and then they again disappear. In the spiritual world, they are permanently situated. But the Vishnu form of Krishna, it is temporary. When the material world is exhibited by the material energy, this universal form is shown. And then, uh, even though it is transcendental form, it is under the control of time factor. In time, it is displayed and then in time, it is finished. So that in future, no ordinary person can claim that yes, I am also God. As in the West, they say India is a factory of producing gods. Because so many saints, when they went to the West, they started claiming I am God. So hardly they were able to find a person who tells the knowledge of God and tells that I am representative of God, I am servant of God. Everybody claimed I am God. And you do this my process, my course, you will realize you are also God. So God is not so cheap controller of all the planets, solar systems, so many universes. So in order to save such people from such manufactured gods, Arjuna asked. So tomorrow if somebody claims in future that I am Krishna or I am God, I am incarnation, then we should kindly request them, can you please show me your universal form? Your body of entire universe, can you please show it to me? Then we can accept that you are God. So otherwise anybody can claim, any madman can tell that I am God. So in order to save the people, Arjuna is very very advanced devotee, he is pure devotee of Krishna. So there is no need to see such forms. Pure devotees are not interested in seeing the opulence of Krishna. 
in material world we have a relationship with somebody because we know oh that person is very opulent from a person who doesn't have opulences his family members also don't care for him friends don't care for him but in the case of god it is the other way around god is actually satisfied when somebody worships him in the absence of knowledge of the opulences that is pure devotional service i want to serve you worship you simply out of love so thus very advanced devotees like arjuna they are not interested in seeing such opulences that is why krishna did not show him to arjuna also but now for guiding the common people who may get misguided in future by the false incarnations cheaters arjuna is requesting krishna so that in future people may not doubt oh he was only a friend so he was flattering his friend uh, krishna or king uh, always engages in diplomacy so there could be a diplomatic intent behind praise of krishna in order to remove all such doubts of flattery of diplomacy and any other factor Arjuna is requesting that please Krishna kindly show your universal form. Manyase yadi tachakyam maya drishtum iti prabho yogeshwara tato me tvam darshayatmanam avyayam If you think that I am able to behold your cosmic form oh my lord O master of all mystic power then kindly show me that universal self so this attitude is very nice manyate yadi tat shakyam if you think i am capable sometimes people they challenge that can you show me god so once when uh, shri prabhupada was challenged in similar fashion can you show me god because prabhupada is talking about god So Prabhupada told, "Yes, I can show you." And then Prabhupada pointed towards his all sannyasi other disciples, "But you have to become like them. Then I will show you." So then people shy away. If you want to see a big man, you have to be qualified. The heads of the state, of government, they don't meet ordinary people. So if you want to see God, yes, you can see, but there is qualification required. Ordinary people cannot understand. Kunti Marani is telling. तथा परम हंसा नाम मुनी नाम अमलात्म नाम भक्ति योग विधान कथम पश्य महिस्त्रिय तथा परम हंसा नाम द मोस्ट एडवांस पर्सनैलिटीज आर कॉल परम हंसा हु आर बियॉन्ड वर्ण आश्रम सिस्टम सो वेन अ पर्सन टेक सन्यास देन ऑल्सो यू कैन जस्ट अंडरस्टैंड इफ ही इज अ परफेक्ट सन्यासी दैट आई एम नॉट द बॉडी ग्रेजुअली यू कैन कम टू दैट प्लेटफॉर्म बट अनलेस समबडी इज परम हंसा कंप्लीटली बियॉन्ड द क्लचेज ऑफ नेचर one cannot understand the personality of god tatha param hansa naam muni naam amal atma naam so the most advanced sages param hansas munis means very very thoughtful sages amal atma naam means those who are completely pure in the heart there is no lust and there is no greed in the heart bhakti yog vidhanartham they understand you by following the regulative principles of bhakti yoga kunti maran is telling कथम पश्य में हिस्त्री आई एम अ वुमेन आई हैव सो मेनी वर्ल्डली अटैचमेंट्स तो हाउ विल आई अंडरस्टैंड आई एम अटैच टू वृष्णीस कुंती मरानी स्टेलिंग आई एम अटैच टू पांडवास सो मदर साइड एंड द साइड ऑफ हजबेंड वुमेन हैज टू रिलेशनशिप्स सो इधर फ्रॉम द मदर साइड और फ्रॉम द चिल्ड्रन साइड हजबेंड साइड बोथ दीज अटैचमेंट कुंती मरानी स्टेलिंग प्लीज कट माई अटैचमेंट as long as a person is materially attached there is no question of realizing god so first of all we need to have complete material detachment complete purity of heart one should be very very intelligent very thoughtful and one should be beyond the control of laws of nature and then by executing bhakti yoga following the rules and regulations very very strictly one can understand the supreme personality of god so one has to become very qualified thus arjuna is not impudent like modern people without any qualification they want just like a small child even if he or for that matter any other species dog wants to understand calculus trigonometry can we help him understand no it's not possible it is not capable so before we challenge that please show me that we should understand what is my capacity 
Arjuna being very advanced personality he is having all the good qualities like humility and he is telling manya se yadi tat shakya if you think that i am capable then you please explain it to me this is the mode in which we should understand krishna we should approach the spiritual master not in a challenging spirit shri bhagavan vacha pashya me parth rupani शतशो अथ सहस्रश नाना विधा दिव्या नाना वर्णाकृती च द ब्लेसिड लॉर्ड सेड माय डियर अर्जुना ओ सन ऑफ प्रिथा बिहोल्ड नाउ माय ऑप्युलेंसेस हंड्रेड्स ऑफ थाउजेंड्स ऑफ वेरी डिवाइन फॉर्म्स मल्टी कलर्ड लाइक द सी पश्यादित्यान वसून रुद्रान अश्विनौ मरुतस्तथा बहून्य दृष्ट पूर्वाणी पश्याश्चर्याणी भारत ओ बेस्ट ऑफ दी भारत सी हियर द डिफरेंट मैनिफेस्टेशंस ऑफ आदित्यास रुद्रास एंड ऑल द डेमी गॉड्स बिहोल्ड द मेनी थिंग्स विच नो वन हैज एवर सीन और हर्ड बिफोर इह कस्थम जगत्कृत स्नम पश्याद सचराचर मम देहे गुडाकेश यच्चान्यदृष्टुमिच्छसी वट एवर यू विश टू सी कैन बी सीन ऑल एट वंस इन दिस बॉडी दिस यूनिवर्सल फॉर्म कैन शो यू ऑल दैट यू नाउ डिजायर एज वेल एज वट एवर यू मे डिजायर इन द फ्यूचर एवरीथिंग इज हियर कंप्लीटली so nobody has been able to see everything of the universe or even of this planet in one place but by the mercy of the supreme who has created everything this vision was made possible for arjuna so krishna is telling arjuna you can see everything that you may desire to see sitting in one place arjuna is able to see all the universes there are so many universes and all the universes including past present and future because time is also energy of krishna so arjun was able to see all the universes arjun was able to see past present and future so how is it possible it might be difficult for us to comprehend who can but perceive three dimensions but we have to understand that the world is not just made up of three dimensions as uh, if we consider living entities who can only perceive two dimensions for them if they want to conceive a sphere a cuboid they can never do so it is not possible so if a sphere passes from their plane they will have different understandings different perceptions of it when the sphere is just those who know a uh, little basic mathematics and projections they might be able to understand so if the sphere passes the plane let us uh, assume there is a world which is only in two dimensions and the living entities cannot perceive anything beyond the two dimensions that plane so when the sphere is touching that 2d plane they will perceive it as a point and when the sphere is passing from that plane then that point will expand as a disk and then when the circle has crossed 50% then they will tell oh the disk is shrinking and finally it will become a point and when the sphere has completely passed their plane they will tell oh it has vanished the disk has vanished but actually the sphere was never a disk because they can only perceive disks two dimensional forms they are defining it as a disk but sphere is sphere it is not possible in two dimensional perspective to conceive what is sphere for example now we see three dimensional objects there is length width and height as we can see of this book or of any object whatsoever if somebody tells us can you perceive fourth dimension so we cannot conceive what can be fourth length breadth and height that's it so our brains are not designed to conceive of any dimension beyond the three length width and height 
So in a similar fashion, the 2D living entities cannot perceive of anything, any object which is having three dimensions. So in a similar fashion, we may tell Krishna or oh, Krishna is an ordinary human being. He is having two hands and two legs and like that. And uh, Krishna's body is growing and all these things we will tell, but that is not fact. Reality is very, very different. And for instance, we tell that our body is growing, but Vedas do not tell our bodies are growing. Vedas tell our bodies are changing every moment. Just like we see in a movie hall, so many frames, it is called motion pictures, so many pictures, they are in motion. They pass in the front of projector. Uh, sometimes I think the rate is up to 50 or 30 frames per second. 50 or 30 small frames, small pictures, they pass very swiftly. And so we think the hands and legs are moving. On the screen we see dynamism, the video. What is video? Video is nothing but collection of many, many small photos, small pictures, individual static pictures, which pass very quickly. In second, in a similar fashion, we are changing our bodies every moment. So likewise, scientists can have so many subject matters of research and discovery if they read the Vedas, so proper research can be carried out on this. Now they are telling we are changing our bodies every seven years, every cell of the body is changed. So Vedas is telling no, not seven years, every moment you are changing your body. Next moment our body has become changed, although it appears like the previous body. Just like the next picture has come in the front of projector. And that picture is completely different from the one which has passed previous to it. It is completely different. But we think, oh, the hand is moving, hand is not moving. There is one picture where hand is like this, then hand is like this. And we see the motion of hand. Actually, we are seeing so many frames passing. In a similar fashion, we are seeing so many bodies passing. It is a state of flux that we are in. Likewise, our perception of the world is very different from the reality. That is why Krishna told, Gyanam te hamsa vigyanam idam vakshyami asheshataha. I will explain you phenomenon and I will explain you noumenon. What you perceive is happening and what actually happens. So what actually happens, only Krishna can tell us. That is his creation. So thus a sphere is sphere. We can never understand the two-dimensional living entities. They will tell it is Oh, uh, disc has taken birth, it is point-sized, then disc is increasing, disc is growing, disc is shrinking, that is never disc. What is growing and shrinking is simply passing a sphere through your plane. So we should never try to define reality as per what we are perceiving. So sitting in one place, by Krishna's mercy, Arjuna was able to see everything. Just like if a person rises above that 2D plane, one can see everything what is existing on that two-dimensional world simply by rising above in higher dimension. In a similar fashion, uh, by Krishna's mercy, an ordinary living entity also becomes capable of such perception. How was this perception? Let us try to understand. From whatever we can understand as per the revelation what Sanjay also was able to see, so exact vision is not possible. As far as possible, he has tried to relate to us the things. Natumam shakya se drashtum ane naiva svachakshusha divyam dadami te chakshuhu pashyame yoga maishwaram But you cannot see me with your present eyes. Therefore, I give to you divine eyes by which you can behold my mystic opulence. So as we have been discussing, our eyes are designed to perceive the world in a certain way. So now Krishna is giving Divyam Te Chakshuhu, divine eyes to Arjuna, by which he will be able to see divine vision is given to Arjuna. Sanjaya Uvacha Eva Muktva Tato Rajan Mahayogeshwaro Harihi Darshaya Masa Parthaya Paramam Rupa Maishwaram Sanjaya said, O King, speaking thus, the Supreme, the Lord of all mystic power, the Personality of Godhead displayed His universal form to Arjuna. Aneka Vaktra Nayanam Aneka Adbhuta Darshanam Aneka divya bharanam 
दिव्यानेकोद्यतायुधम दिव्यमाल्यांबरधरम दिव्यगंधानुलेपनम सर्वाश्चर्यमय देव अनंत विश्व तो मुखम Arjuna saw in that universal form unlimited mouths and unlimited eyes it was all wondrous the form was decorated with divine dazzling ornaments and arrayed in many garbs he was garlanded gloriously and there were many scents smeared over his body all was magnificent all expanding unlimited this was seen by arjuna दिव सूर्य सहस्र भवेदुगपदुत्थिता यदि भासदृशी सासस्त महात्म इफ हंड्रेड्स ऑफ थाउजेंड्स ऑफ सन्स रोज अप एट वंस इन टू द स्काय दे माइट रिजेंबल द फल्जेंस ऑफ द सुप्रीम पर्सन इन दैट यूनिवर्सल फॉर्म सो ऑल दो इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल टू डिस्क्राइब एग्जैक्टली because we cannot conceive but still he is comparing the situation to what we have seen here we have seen one sun so he is telling you can just imagine if hundreds and thousands of suns rise in the sky what would be the effulgence such as the effulgence coming out of that universal form of the lord tatra ekastham jagat kritsnam ravi bhaktam anekadha apashyat dev devasya शरीर पांडवस्तदा एट दैट टाइम अर्जुना कुड सी इन द यूनिवर्सल फॉर्म ऑफ द लॉर्ड द अनलिमिटेड एक्सपैंश ऑफ द यूनिवर्स सिचुएटेड इन वन प्लेस ऑल दो डिवाइडेड इन टू मेनी मेनी थाउजेंड्स तो अनलिमिटेड यूनिवर्सल अर्जुना इज एबल टू सी सिटिंग इन वन प्लेस तथा सा विस्मया विष्टो ऋष्टो मधनजय प्रणम्य शिसा देव कृतांजलिभाषत देन बिविलर्ड एंड एस्टॉनिश्ड हिज हेयर स्टैंडिंग ऑन एंड अर्जुना बिगेन टू प्रे विथ फोल्डेड हैंड्स ऑफरिंग ओबीसेंसेस टू द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड अर्जुना उवाच पश्या देवास्तव देवदेहे सर्वास्तता भूत विशेष संघान ब्रह्मणमीशम कमलासनस्थम ऋषिश्च सर्वानुर्गाश दिव्या अर्जुन सेड माई डियर लॉर्ड कृष्णा आई सी अ सिंबल टुगेदर इन योर बॉडी ऑल द डेमी गॉड्स एंड वेरियस अदर लिविंग एंटिटीज I see Brahma sitting on the lotus flower as well as Lord Shiva and many sages and divine serpents. So at the bottom of the universe Garbhadakshaya Vishnu is lying on the Vasuki bed and on top of the universe is uh, Lord Brahma himself who is sitting on the, who is manifested on the lotus flower. So thus we can understand Arjuna was able to see everything in the universe. Aneka bahu darvaktra netram pashyami tvam sarvato nanta rupam nantam na madhyam na punastavadim pashyami vishveshwar vishvarupa O Lord of the universe I see in your universal body many many forms bellies mouths eyes expanded without limit there is no end there is no beginning and there is no middle to all this kiritinam gadinam chakrinam cha tejo rashim sarvato deepti mantam pashyami tvam durniriksham samanta deepta nalarka dyutim aprameyam your form adorned with various crowns clubs and discs is difficult to see because of its glaring effulgence which is fiery and immeasurable like the sun tam aksharam paramam veditavyam tam asya vishvasya param nidhanam tam avyaya shashvat dharma gopta 
सनातनस्तम पुरुषो मतो में यू आर द सुप्रीम प्राइमल ऑब्जेक्टिव यू आर द बेस्ट इन ऑल द यूनिवर्सेस यू आर इन एग्जॉस्टेबल एंड यू आर द ओल्डेस्ट यू आर द मेंटेनर ऑफ रिलीजन द इटर्नल पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड अगेन सी सेम वर्ड हैज कम इन द लास्ट लाइन सनातनस्तम पुरुषो मतो में What is Arjuna's conclusion when he has seen this form? He is telling Sanatana, you are eternally Purusho Mato Me. So you are the supreme person, eternal person. So nowhere it is being mentioned that one energy is there. Arjuna is not telling, oh Krishna, I am seeing just one energy spread everywhere. He is telling so many forms, and I am seeing that you are eternal personality, Sanatan. There was never a time when you were energy and you have become a person. No. Krishna is telling Sanatan means always eternally you are a Purush. It is not that you were energy that energy has descended in the form of a Purush and you will be dissolved after this form disappears. No. So please always we have to understand this very important point because some people have told ultimate truth is simply one energy. This has brought a catastrophe in the life of people. catastrophe or disaster in the life of people now nobody takes interest in spiritual life because we all want happiness we all want relations we want interactions we like to eat we like to watch beautiful forms we like to hear nice music we like to talk we like to socialize and all these activities so we have to understand ultimate truth cannot be simply dead energy in activity if soul is so much active within the body now within the body we are conditioned if the soul goes in the body of tree cannot even move just in one place one has to stand in human form of life there is more freedom in the form of devtas higher form freedom increases much more so even though one is conditioned by the body you find in jail a prisoner who is having very heavy iron shackles and still he is shaking his hands and legs so you can just imagine if he gets free how much active he will be So within this body, the soul is so active. When the soul leaves the body, how can it become inactive energy? No, the soul becomes much more active outside of this body. So we have to understand this important point. The sensual perception activity is the perception and activity of the soul. Eyes are just like cameras. So how does this philosophy make sense? That soul is not a person. Soul is simply some energy. like electrical energy it is sitting within no so this body is not the soul is not just like battery which you put in a robot and then the robot starts walking and talking and all such things like that the robots do not have feelings but we have feelings we are thinking we have uh, thinking feeling willing perceptions so these feelings are because we are not just like one battery we are person and actually we are having perceptions which are received through this body now the eyes are just like cameras if the soul has no capacity to see a blind person cannot see even through the best of the cameras best of the lenses a person needs to have capacity to see then camera lens binoculars microscope can be used to perceive the world so the soul has got capacity to see so it is able to see through these eyes you remove the eyes put another set of eyes soul will start seeing through those eyes in a similar fashion through this skin the soul is feeling the touch sensation if the soul has no faculty of touching you give the best of the skins very active skin soul will not be able to perceive touch if the soul does not have capacity to hear you give best of the ears soul will never be able to hear you give the best of the earphones best of the musical devices speakers and you play it to the person who is deaf one cannot hear the earphones make sense only when a person has capacity to hear so it is simple to understand right this body is a machine and we have got the capacity i can hear the voice through my phone i can hear the voice directly because i can see if i am deaf i don't have sense of hearing you bring the best of the things gadgets with best sound quality i will not be able to hear so the soul has capacity to hear to see to socialize to talk to joke now the question is 
these feature soul has got because they must be present in the super soul in the origin so unless the origin has got these qualities the products cannot have it so origin should have all those things which we have plus many things which are not present in the soul ocean should have everything that is present in a drop and many things which are not present in the drop but at least whatever is present in the drop should be present in ocean the salt which is present in the drop should be present in ocean other chemicals which are present in drop must be present in ocean in a similar fashion all the features that we have we have borrowed from our origin devesha jagan nidhanam he is devesha he is the controller of all the lords controller of all the demigods he is their origin adi devam so origin should have all the features so god is a person we have tendency to construct a house to live in a nice uh, big palatial building this tendency is coming because god also should have this tendency we have tendency to socialize with our friends and family because god also has got this tendency we produce children so that we can live together with our children and have a nice family life because god also should have this tendency so we are all children of god so it is very simple to understand god expects that we should live with god very happily in a loving relationship and that is the purpose of creation that brings ultimate satisfaction to god and brings satisfaction to us also so if we tell spiritual life means one energy and we have to simply go and merge this also can be done krishna is very merciful if you do not want active spiritual life krishna is such a merciful kind father he is telling you don't want to serve me you simply want to merge and remain in zero activity that state also i will provide but you will realize you are not satisfied even in that stage so for ordinary people who want activity there is great hope that spiritual life is full of much more activity and those activities are completely full of pleasure so for this we have to understand read the literatures like bhagavad gita where in every other shloka it is written purusha purusha anadiradir govinda sarv karan karanam the cause of all causes the energy which is there everywhere as krishna will tell brahmano hi pratishtaham that brahma jyoti is situated on me not that i have come from brahma jyoti that is not fact so here again sanatanastvam purusho mato me you are sanatan purush you are eternally a person anadi madhyanta anant viryam anant bahum shashi surya netram pashyami tvam dip हुताश वक्त्रम स्वतेज सा विश्व मिदम तपंतम यू आर द ओरिजिन विदाउट बिगनिंग मिडिल और एंड यू हैव नंबरलेस आर्म्स एंड द सन एंड मून आर अमंग योर ग्रेट अनलिमिटेड आईज बाय योर ओन रेडियंस यू आर हीटिंग दिस एंटायर यूनिवर्स द्याव पृथिव्यो रिदमंतरम ही दृष्टवाद्भुतमुग्रम तवेद लोकत्रयथित महात्म ऑल दो यू आर वन यू आर स्प्रेड थ्रू आउट द स्काय एंड द प्लैनेट्स एंड ऑल स्पेस इन बिटवीन ओ ग्रेट वन एज आई बिहोल्ड दिस टेरिबल फॉर्म I see that all the planetary systems are perplexed. Ami hitvam sur sangha vishanti kechid bhita pran jalayo grinanti swasti tiyukva maharshi siddh sangha stuvanti tvam stuti bhi pushkala bhi. All the demigods are surrendering and entering into you. They are very much afraid. and with folded hands they are singing the vedic hymns so arjuna's vision was not a dream that arjuna is hallucinating over there because others were also able to see and sanjay is describing this thing that in other planetary systems everybody who was qualified with spiritual vision they were able to see this universal form of the lord so this is the explanation of sanjay so not only arjuna was able to see sanjay also was able to see and also he was able to see that in other planetary systems also other devotees are also some people are getting fearful afraid they are running away some people are offering their respects 
So in this manner, we can understand it's not a hallucination because others in different planets are also able to perceive. Rudraditya Vasavoye Chasadhya Vishveshvinau Marutashchoshma Pascha Gandharva Yaksha Surasiddha Sangha Vikshante Tvam Vimsmi I'll repeat. Rudraditya Vasavoye Chasadhya Vishveshvinau Marutashchoshma Pascha Gandharva Yaksha Surasiddha Sangha Vikshante Tvam Vismitashchaiva Sarve The different manifestations of Lord Shiva, the Adityas, the Vasus, the Sadhyas, the Vishvadevas, the two Ashwins, the Maruts, the four fathers and the Gandharvas, the Yakshas, Asuras, and all perfected demigods are beholding you in wonder. So different species of life in different planets, they are able to see this form in wonder. Rupam Mahatte Bahu Vaktra Netram Mahabaho Bahu Bahu Rupadam Bahu Daram Bahu Danstra Karalam Drishtva Loka Pyavyatitas Tathaham O mighty armed one, all the planets with their demigods are disturbed at seeing your many faces, eyes, arms, bellies and legs and your terrible teeth and as they are disturbed so am I. Nabas prisham deepta maneka varnam Vyatananam deepta vishala netram Drishtva hitvam pavyatitantaratma Dritim navindami shamam cha vishnu O all pervading Vishnu, I can no longer maintain my equilibrium. Seeing your radiant colors fill the skies, and beholding your eyes and mouths, I am afraid. Danstra karalani chate mukhani Drishtvaiva kala nalasan nibhani Disho na jane nalabhe cha sharma Prasida devesha jagan nivasa O Lord of the Lords, O Refuge of the Worlds, Please be gracious to me. I cannot keep my balance seeing thus your blazing death-like faces and awful teeth. In all directions, I am bewildered. Ami chatvam dhritarashtrasya putra Sarve sahaiva vanipala sanghae Bhishmo drona suta putra stathasau Sahasmadiyai rapiyodha mukhyae Vaktrani te varamana vishanti Vaktrani te varamana vishanti Danstra karalani bhayanakani Kechid vilagna dashanantareshu Sandrishyante churni tairuttamangai All the sons of Dhritarashtra along with their allied kings and Bhishma, Drona and Karna, and all our soldiers are rushing into your mouths, their heads smashed by your fearful teeth. I see that some are being crushed between your teeth as well. As Krishna told before displaying this form to Arjuna, you will be able to see whatever you desire. So Arjuna was desiring to see the outcome of the battle. So thus Arjuna is seeing that all the soldiers are entering into the mouth of this universal form. And uh, all the elements of the opposing party including the most powerful warriors Bhishma, Drona, Sutaputra, Karna, all of them are going to die including the soldiers of the Pandava side. But Pandavas only will remain. So this future Arjuna is able to see. Yatha nadinam bahavom buvega Samudram eva bhimukhadravanti Tatha tavami naraloka vira Vishanti vaktrani abhivijvalanti As the rivers flow into the sea, so all these great warriors enter your blazing mouths and perish. 
यथा प्रदीप्त ज्वलन पतंगा विशति नाशा समृद्ध वेगा तथा नाशा विशति लोकास्वा वक्त्राणि समृद्ध वेगा I see all people rushing with full speed into your mouths as moths dash into a blazing fire. Leliya se grasmana samantal loka samagran vadnay jwalad bhi tejo bhira purya jagat samagram vasastavogra pratapanti vishnu O Vishnu I see you devouring all people in your flaming mouths and covering the universe with your immeasurable rays scorching the worlds you are manifest Akhya hi me Akhya hi me ko bhavan ugra roopo namostu te deva var prasida vigyato michchami bhavantam adyam नहीं प्रजाना तव प्रवृत्ति ओ लॉर्ड ऑफ लॉर्ड सो फियर्स ऑफ फॉर्म प्लीज टेल मी हु यू आर आई ऑफर माई ओबेसेंस अन टू यू प्लीज बी ग्रेशियस टू मी आई डू नॉट नो वॉट योर मिशन इज एंड आई डिजायर टू हियर ऑफ इट श्री भगवान वाचा कालोस्मी लोक क्षयकृत प्रवृद्धो लोकान समाहर्तमिह प्रवृत्त ऋते पिवाना भविष्य सर्वे ये वस्थिता प्रत्यनीकु योधा द ब्लेसिड लॉर्ड सेड टाइम आई एम डिस्ट्रॉयर ऑफ द वर्ल्ड्स एंड आई हैव कम टू एंगेज ऑल पीपल विद द एक्सेप्शन ऑफ यू द पांडवास ऑल द सोल्जर्स हियर ऑन बोथ साइड्स विल बी स्लेन तस्मात्मुत्तिष्ठ यशो लभस्व जिवा शत्रून भुंश्वराज्यम समृद्ध मय वैते निहता पूर्व निमित्तमात्रसव्यसाचि देर फोर गेट अप इन प्रिपेर टू फाइट आफ्टर कॉन्करिंग युअर एनिमीज यू विल एंजॉय अ फ्लरिशिंग किंगडम they are already put to death by my arrangement and you o savya sachin can be but an instrument in the fight dronam cha bhishmam cha jaya dritham cha parnam tathanyan api yodh veeran maya hatan stvam jahi ma vyatishtha yuddhyasva jeta si rane sapatnan the blessed lord said All the great warriors Drona, Bhishma, Jayadratha, Karna are already destroyed. Simply fight and you will vanquish your enemies. So thus every plan here is made by the supreme personality of Godhead. So these verses are very very important. Nimitta matram bhav sabya sachan. We can only become an instrument. Everything is happening. not a blade of grass moves without the will of the lord as the head of the state decides now we have to wage a war now all those people who follow the directions they fight they are given gallantry awards medals and so many other benefits if the head of the state decides we have to make this road do this development in the country these should be the policies those people who abide by that who come forward to help the government in that effort they are recognized for their duties and they are given good posts money and all success but if somebody tries to go against the will of the state or that of the ruler then one will be frustrated so we have to understand first what is the mission of the lord and then try to act according to that mission then our life will be glorious otherwise if we have our own calculation like arjuna was planning arjuna was thinking if i do not fight then they will continue to live arjuna had his calculation if i do not fight then they will continue to live and then we will have a happy life my soldiers are there alive the soldiers on the other party will be alive and uh, then they will take care of their families children dharma will be established arjuna was putting forth so many logics and it is it appears logical also 
that if this all these people are killed the men and the elderly people of the society who will be there who will protect the dharma pass on this tradition this knowledge who will protect women what will happen to the society but arjuna was not knowing all of them were destined to be killed that is what krishna told all of them have been destined to be killed as per my plan now you can take the credit by being an instrument so whatever is going to happen nobody can stop it as per the direction of material energy things will happen so we should never plan anything for material happiness keeping our spiritual life aside those plans are not going to work but we should understand what is krishna's ultimate mission and that is to give this knowledge to the people and if we dovetail the activities of our life according to that plan then our life is glorious so otherwise if arjuna would not have followed krishna he would not have got the glory of defeating such great fighters who were many many times more powerful than arjuna arjuna would not have been able to rule over the world in this planet and there is no question of any other enjoyment whatsoever because all of them anyway would have been killed so it would not have been possible for arjuna either to get fame as a great warrior who was able to defeat the people who were many many times more powerful than him he would not have been able to enjoy the kingdom he would not even have been able to enjoy the relatives they anyway would have been killed and he would have become inglorious to disobey krishna he would have fought not according to the instructions of krishna but then he would have created karma for himself he would have undergone many many repeated births and deaths so thus we should not think oh let me save some time and this time i can invest in my material well being no sir that time is anyway going to go away from us we should not think oh let me save this money this resource i'll use for my enjoyment no so that is why the shastra tell 50% of your income one should spend for the welfare of others so if we are uh, krishna conscious we should understand this is the best welfare activity we should use for that otherwise also for welfare purpose we should use this is how the world has been designed the intelligence should be used to guide the people who are less intelligent so it is the responsibility of all the intelligent people they should understand what is truth because less intelligent people cannot and explain them what is truth so that they can understand just like now also we see some intelligent people who can do research so there is uh, some virus some disease they want to find out the cause and then by their research work they are able to help many many people who could not do research and all those ordinary people do not have capacity do not have time do not have resources to do such research so those who can do research should help people who cannot now there is attack on the country so those people who have strength who have weapons who have training should defend others who cannot fight in this way one skills resources should be used in the service of others in this way the nature is balanced very nicely this we have discussed many times before so please i request one should never never have this tendency that is why krishna has told dure na hi avaram karma this is abominum abominable mental i repeat do rena hi avaram karma this is abominable mentality that let me enjoy everything how just see everyone is doing that whatever they are earning they want to win. this is not right so the vedas are telling if you want to have a nice life 50% of your income should be used for welfare activity and if you are wise we should use for the best welfare activity spreading this confidential knowledge by which people can get permanent happiness so otherwise that money will cause distress to us that will cause disease and we will spend in the fees of the doctor or uh, some legal case will happen lawyer may take away or some other disturbances can happen or we'll spend in sense gratification which gives evanescent pleasure for a while but we are never satisfied so thus it is being told we should understand plan of the lord and then become just an instrument in that plan because whatever is happening as per the plan of the lord lord's plan will always be successful so if the devotee follows that not only materially he is very nicely taken care but there is also spiritual success in every respect sanjaya uvacha 
एतश्रुवा वचनम केशव से कृताजलिर्वेपम कि नमस्कृत भूय एवाह कृष्ण स गदम भीत भीत प्रणम्य संजय से टू धृत राष्ट्र ओ किंग आफ्टर हियरिंग दीज वर्ड्स फ्रॉम द सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड अर्जुन ट्रेम्बल्ड Fearfully offered obeisance with folded hands and began falteringly to speak as follows: Arjuna uvacha sthane rishi kesha tava prakirtya jagat prarishyatya nurajyate cha rakshansi bhitani disho dravanti sarve namasyanti cha siddh sangha. O oh, Rishikesh, the world becomes joyful upon hearing your name, and thus everyone becomes attached to you. Although the perfected beings offer you their respectful homage, the demons are afraid, and they flee here and there. All this is rightly done. So important verse which is used here is Jagad Prahrishyati Anurajyate Cha. The world becomes joyful upon hearing your name, and thus everyone becomes attached. So there is so much joy in chanting the names of Krishna. It is this pleasure which we have to discover. So all the kings who are very very rich, and recent example we have Gautam Buddha, born in princely order, but then he renounced all such opulences. So these words are very important. Jagat prahrishyati anurajyate cha. by hearing your name it fills everyone's heart with joy so hearing chanting about krishna is the source of extraordinary happiness to get this happiness to get this brahma sukha unlimited happiness people the great kings who are very very rich they would renounce everything as mera bhai asang payo ji maine naam ratan dhan payo i have got this valuable jewel of singing the glories of your holy name but in our state in conditioned state of life when we think i am the body then pitto patapt rasana se narochikano jaundice patient we have discussed the example we'll find it bitter but we have to practice just keep on chanting and hearing always throughout the day as much as possible and slowly when our material addictions are getting washed off when our heart is almost purified then we will develop a very strong faith and when we develop the strong faith that faith transforms gradually into taste and then this holy name will be so much present now we are trying to arrange so many things for our pleasure but all those things first of all if we are not able to arrange we are in stress and even if we have it the demand is always more now i want 1 million then i want 2 million dollars then 10 million dollars heart is never satisfied and just imagine if you develop taste in chanting the names of krishna anywhere and everywhere you can just chant and absorb yourself in unlimited happiness is it not very very logical way of remaining blissful you need not arrange anything you can simply chant and hear the names of krishna and you are absorbed in immense bliss so this is what is the aim of life to develop but it takes some time one has to practice some austerity is required cleanliness is required four regulative principles we have to follow please the spiritual master work hard for krishna sacrifice for krishna and then when we get the taste of this holy name then we will realize there is nothing more pleasurable than this kasma chate na nameran mahatman gariya se brahmano pyadi karte anant devesh jagann nivasa समक्षरम सत असत तत् परम यत ओ ग्रेट वन हु स्टैंड अब इवन ब्रह्मा यू आर द ओरिजिनल मास्टर वाई शुड दे नॉट ऑफर देअर होम इज अप टू यू ओ लिमिटलेस वन ओ रिफ्यूज ऑफ द यूनिवर्स यू आर द इनविंसिबल सोर्स द कॉज ऑफ ऑल कॉजेज ट्रांसेंडेंटल टू दिस मटीरियल मैनिफेस्टेशन इट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट द वर्ड विच इज यूज हियर ऑल द वर्ड्स आर इम्पॉर्टेंट and this new term which we have read here is sat asat tat param yat sat and asat means cause and effect so you are both beyond the cause and the effect of this material world which we see 
so krishna's body is not the effect of any fusion of chemicals male and female gametes you are beyond the cause and effect our bodies are the result of some cause and effect of this world so very clearly arjuna is again stressing the nature of krishna's body it is transcendental vam aksharam sat asat tat param yat kamadi deva purusha puranas kamasya vishvasya param nidhanam vetasi vedyam cha param cha dhama vayatatam vishvam anant roopa you are the original personality the godhead you are the only sanctuary of this manifested cosmic world you know everything and you are all that is knowable you are above the material modes or limitless form the whole cosmic manifestation is pervaded by you vayuryamognir varuna shashankah prajapatistvam rapitamahascha namo namaste stu sahasra kritvah punascha bhuyo pi namo namaste you are air fire water and you are the moon you are the supreme controller and the grandfather thus i offer my respectful obeisances unto you a thousand times and again and yet again namah purasta dat prishtha taste namostu te sarvata eva sarva ananta virya mita vikramastvam sarvam samapnoshi tato si sarvah obeisances from the front from behind and from all sides o unbounded power you are the master of limitless might you are all pervading and thus you are everything sakheti matva prasabham yaduktam he krishna he yadava he sakheti ajanata mahimanam tavedam maya pramadat pranayena vapi यच्चावहासाथमसत्तोसी विहारशय्यासन भोजनेशु एकोथवापी अच्युत तत्सम तत्मेय आई हैव इन द पास अड्रेस्ड यू एज ओ कृष्णा ओ यादवा ओ माय फ्रेंड विदाउट नोइंग योर ग्लोरीज प्लीज फगिव वॉट एवर आई मे हैव डन इन मैडनेस और इन लव I have dishonored you many times while relaxing or while lying on the same bed or eating together sometimes alone and sometimes in front of many friends please excuse me for all my offenses So this is very important Arjuna was a very close friend of Krishna they are lying together on the same bed playing together sometimes Arjuna would make fun of Krishna and now he is seeing what is krishna's opulence so there are various stages of relationship the relationship of krishna it begins with dasyaras so there is very nice shloka in shrimad bhagavatam ittham satam brahma sukhanu bhutya dasyam gatanam par daivatena maya shritanam nar darakena साकम विजहरु कृत पुण्य पुंज इट मीन्स कृष्णा द सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉडहेड इज परसीव्ड एज ब्रह्म ज्योति बाय सम सेजेस इत्थम सताम ब्रह्म सुखानुभूतिया दे थिंक दिस इज इमपर्सनल एनर्जी हु हैज टेकन दिस फॉर्म दास्यम गतानाम परदैवतेना अदर्स हु आर एनलाइटेंड मोर एनलाइटेंड दे एक्ट एज सर्वेंट्स ऑफ द गॉड and they perceive you as the supreme personality of godhead paradaivatena so your devotees who render loving service to you perceive your supreme personality and yet others who are very foolish maya shritanam who have taken shelter of illusory energy of krishna who are under control of this material nature naradarakena they think you are an ordinary human being but all of them they do not know sakam vijharu krita punya punja this is explained in context of the cowherd boys krishna's friends who are playing with krishna just like an ordinary playmate and sometimes they carry krishna on their shoulders sometimes krishna is carrying them on his shoulders 
they laugh at krishna they make fun of krishna they tease krishna so all these people cannot imagine here arjuna is frightened he is offering respects from all the sides front back and everywhere and he is uh, with folded hands he is offering various prayers but these people they do not offer prayers to krishna they make fun of krishna the gopis are there in vrindavan they scold krishna like anything they chastise krishna somebody scolding god a form so fearful that all the powerful warriors of all the sides they are entering within his mouth getting smashed in between his teeth so how somebody can ride on his shoulder and make fun of him and be very so intimate like this so this is the most exalted form of devotional service that is why it is revealed in the shastra as krishna is telling the bhakti which is in knowledge of my opulences does not satisfy me that is the bhakti which is happening in the vishnu loka krishna is having his narayan form 400 forms in the spiritual world tripad vibhuti there are so many planets and because this material world is a reflection we will see in the 15th chapter urdh moolam adoshakam ashvatham prahur avyayam this material world is a reflection we are telling that this is illusion but illusion should be based on reality in dream we talk with some people we meet with many men we eat we touch we laugh because there is existence of such people and phenomena in this world gross world thus this gross world if we are calling it illusion on what basis this world is manifest if everything is simply energy the origin why energy has taken the shape of man woman male and female species and so many species why energy would ever take the form of dog an elephant giraffe fish so in spiritual world these forms are existing the spirit has got all these forms krishna has got all these forms and all these forms are reflected in this material world it is perverted reflection just like we have computer games they are perverted reflection of the reality that we have here here we want to drive cars we want to sometimes fight and the same activities you can repeat in the computer game that is simulation same thing krishna mentions urdh moolam adha shakham this material world is reflection of the original reality so you have to go to the original reality so in the spiritual world in a similar fashion just like we have here living entities family societies it exists but they are permanent they are eternal and they are existing just to give pleasure to krishna krishna is the center of all the relationships and in all the so many vaikuntha planets lord narayan is the presiding personality lives there with four handed forms with a club and discus in his hand lotus flower and conch shell and no ordinary person can have four handed forms is all opulence are there so many servants are there around his majesty is there so in this great knowledge of his opulence some devotees like to worship that form like narad muni spiritual master of ved vyas he likes to worship god in this form of opulence so that is personal choice also god has many forms any form can be worshiped but krishna tells the worship which is done in opulence it does not satisfy me and this tendency is also natural as many people tell when they become successful they suddenly they see people are just uh, mobbing around them they are getting calls they are trying to be friendly people want to have relationships some powerful people who are in office they would get the gifts on festivals and other important days as soon as they retire nobody cares for them so in this material world if a person is opulent then automatically he or she will attract people around them but they also know that these people are coming to me for opulence not just for myself for my love for my relationship thus krishna tells this kind of bhakti does not actually satisfy me the real bhakti is done when a person is forgetful of the opulence of krishna thus in vrindavan people do not recognize here when krishna came in vrindavan there is vrindavan in spiritual world also the topmost planet so there the devotees are in forgetful state they do not know that krishna is supreme lord so the state is same of a person who is very ignorant and the state is same for the very elevated paramhansa both behave like madmen very exalted paramhansa they may also behave like madmen like bharat maharaj who was ruler of the entire world 
he had to become deer and his next life because of small attachment to deer so in the second life which he took he became a madman voluntarily even though he was very wise he was aware of his past to birds but he understood if i show some wisdom here again they will entangle me in the affairs of this material world so he started behaving like a madman and like this all the great many great personalities who would renounce they would become indifferent just sometimes roaming without clothes and sometimes behaving madly so that people do not disturb them nobody likes to talk to madmen and they understand if i talk nicely behave nicely people will come to me and uh, i will feel oh they love me i will have affection for them and nobody has affection for a mad person so thus any love any affection that we see in this material world that is because of these external designations opulences that we acquire and people understand i am here just for a short while the shukde goswami he was having all the siddhis but moved out of his house he was not willing to come to this material world and when he came to the material world he walked out immediately they are very cautious not to have entanglement in this material world otherwise repeated birth and death will take place so the most ignorant person who is become mad by excessive material desires sometimes they are found in the mental hospitals they are also mad so the situation of this material world miserable state it is felt by the people who are in between those who are highly tamasic they don't feel even though they are suffering but they do not understand that they are suffering they are so much in ignorance and those people who are paramhansas very elevated spiritualists they are also not feeling the pangs of this material existence it is meant for people who are in between not highly in ignorance nor very very advanced in spiritual understanding in a similar fashion those who are in ignorance they do not know krishna is god and even those people who are very advanced they also do not know krishna is god then why do they serve krishna so they have cultivated knowledge of god so it does not mean that okay so krishna is satisfied if somebody does not know i will not know about krishna i will not bother about this philosophy no we have to understand philosophy because when we understand these opulences we become attached to krishna and in this attachment when we start serving krishna then attachment becomes spontaneous and that we can see even in this material world people may get attracted because of opulence but even though sometimes the opulence is not there i married a very beautiful life partner they met with an accident but still i have some affection for them crude example i am giving so in a similar fashion even though we are getting attracted to krishna because of the opulence we are engaging in the service but under the guidance of proper spiritual master we have to aspire for a stage where this service this attraction becomes spontaneous then i don't bother whether krishna is having opulence or not my only desire is just to serve krishna and when i reach that spontaneous level of affection then we can actually understand who is krishna otherwise it is not possible to know krishna so thus this is a very high state of affairs worship of krishna it is very very confidential knowledge of lord vishnu lord vishnu is uh little more accessible if we worship with rules and regulations very nicely then we can attain the service of lord vishnu but unless we develop this spontaneous attitude we cannot attain worship of krishna so thus even those people who are worshiping lord narayan acting as a servants they do not know that there is another class of devotees who ride on the shoulders of god sakam virjaru krit punya punja that is mentioned in bhagavatam this is the most elevated state of affairs so arjuna was situated on that platform of friendship so he was mocking at krishna making fun of krishna sometimes alone sometimes in front of other friends so now as soon as he seeing the opulence that is why krishna does not show opulence to his devotees when yashoda saw so many universes in the mouth of krishna he started thinking oh krishna is supreme personality but krishna made her forget to so if yashoda knows krishna is supreme personality then that affection motherly affection will not be there so krishna wants that i am taking care of the whole world somebody should take anxiety for me for feeding me for dressing me for taking my care that gives satisfaction to krishna so thus that knowledge of opulence when it was shown to arjuna arjuna started offering respects begging pardon so this krishna does not want to happen with the most exalted devotees thus most exalted devotees they do not 
bother krishna is god or not i just want to serve krishna spontaneously i love doing this seva this is the most perfect state of spiritual affairs which was exhibited by the virjavasis pitasi lokasya characharasya tamasya pujyasya gurur gariyan natvat samo asti abhyadika kutonyo You are the father of this complete cosmic manifestation, the worshipable chief, the spiritual master. No one is equal to you, nor can anyone be one with you. Within the three worlds, you are immeasurable. Tasmat pranamya pranidhaya kayam Prasadayetva mahamisha midyam पितेव पुत्र सखे सख्यु प्रिय प्रियासी देव सोढ़ यू आर द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड टू बी वर्शिड बाय एवरी लिविंग बीइंग दस आई फॉल डाउन टू ऑफर यू माय रिस्पेक्ट्स एंड आस यू मर्सी प्लीज टॉलरेट द रॉन्ग्स दैट आई मे हैव डन टू यू एंड बेयर विथ मी एज अ फादर विथ हिज सन और एज अ फ्रेंड विथ हिज फ्रेंड और अ लवर विथ हिज बिलवेड अदृष्टपूर्व ऋषिस्मी दृष्ट भयन च प्रव्यथि मनो मे तदेव मे दर्शय दूपम प्रसीद देश जगन्निवास आफ्टर सीन दिस यूनिवर्सल फॉर्म विच आई हेव नेवर सीन बिफोर आई एम ग्लैड एंड बट एट द सेम टाइम माई माइंड इज डिस्टर्ब विथ फियर देर फोर प्लीज बेस्टो योर ग्रेस अपॉन मी and reveal again your form as the personality of godhead o lord of lords o abode of the universe kiritinam gadinam chakra hastam ichhami tvam drashtu maham tathaiva te naiva rupena chatur bhujena sahasra baho bhava vishva murte o universal lord i wish to see you in your four armed form with helmeted head with club wheel conch and lotus flower in your hands i long to see you in that form shri bhagavan vacha maya prasanne na tava arjune dam rupam param darshitam atma yoga tejo mayam vishvam anantam adyam yan me tvat anyena na drishta purvam the blessed lord said my dear arjuna happily do i show you this universal form within the material world by my internal potency no one before you has ever seen this unlimited and glaringly effulgent form na veda yagya dhyanay na danay na chakriya bhir na tapo bhir ugrae evam rupa shakya aham niloke द्रष्टुम त्वद अन्येन कुरु प्रवीरा ओ बेस्ट ऑफ द कुरु वॉरियर्स नो वन बिफोर यू हैज एवर सीन दिस यूनिवर्सल फॉर्म ऑफ माइंड फॉर नीदर बाय स्टडिंग द वेदास नॉर बाय परफॉर्मिंग सैक्रिफाइसिस नॉर बाय चैरिटीज और सिमिलर एक्टिविटीज कैन दिस फॉर्म बी सीन ओनली यू हैव सीन दिस सो दीज एक्टिविटीज आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर स्पिरिचुअल रेवल्यूशन न वेद यज्ञाध्याय नयर न दानयर Veda reading the Vedas is very very important. Yagyas performing sacrifice is very important. Danair giving one's wealth in charity is very very important. Na cha kriya bhir na tapo bhir ugra tapasya voluntarily accepting discomfort. One has to take so many discomforts to make spiritual advancement like chaturmasya we have discussed. one has to eat very simple food sometimes without using hands just take directly from the floor you do not shave and take cold water bath always sometimes he has to stand neck deep in water sometimes he have to sit surrounded by fire in hot sun in this way so much of tapasya is recommended voluntarily one should learn how to take discomforts so these discomforts when voluntarily taken of course under guidance of scriptures if we do without guidance of scriptures these activities they give pain to the lord in the heart 
because he's our father ultimately so if the son is unnecessarily torturing himself father mother would feel bad but if the son is executing hard work in his career then they feel happy which is benefiting him for advancement in his life thus tapasya guided by the scriptures krishna becomes satisfied in that so tapasya is important but if you do whimsical tapasya any day i am fasting for any reason i am fasting such things are not recommended fasting should be done only for spiritual advancement of life not for any other reason other tapasya also should be guided by the vedas but tapasya is important thus doing parikrama we go to pilgrimage spots sometimes we do parikrama means circumambulate the entire dham the pilgrimage spot sometimes there are very uh important manifestations of krishna like sham kund is there the holy lake radha kund is there govardhan is there the great mountain which is another manifestation of krishna we circumambulate them and it is quite a distance of many kilometers sometimes 11 kilometers 25 kilometers and people do happily execute take this austerity sometimes there are some scars and other disturbances on the feet sometimes they feel uh very much disturbed by the weather conditions many unfavorable situations but still they execute that now of course we have many conveyances earlier people would walk so it would take many many months to reach that place chaitanya mahaprabhu on his foot he started from bengal he went down to deep into south india and then he came upwards towards maharashtra then he went again to jagannath puri so for many months he was traveling on foot so so much tapasya was recommended in the vedas nowadays we do not know this so even though tapasya has been minimized in kali yuga but this tapasya we should take it is very important so reading the vedas is important tapasya is important swadhyay very important dana giving charity one's own possessions and wealth that is very important they help us to understand spiritual life but by executing these things no one is able to understand and see this universal form they are not sufficient for this one needs to have bhakti for krishna then lord krishna mentions mate vyatha ma cha vimuda bhavo drishtva rupam ghoram idrin mamedam vyapeta bhi prita mana punastvam tadeva me rupam idam prapashya your mind has been perturbed upon seeing this horrible feature of mind now let it be finished my devotee be free from all disturbance with a peaceful mind you can now see the form you desire sanjaya uvacha ityarjunam vasudevastathoktva स्वकं रूपं दर्शयामास भूय आश्वासयामास च भीतमेन भूवा पुनः सौम्य वपुर्महात्मा संजय से टू धृत राष्ट्र द सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉडेड कृष्णा वाई स्पीकिंग डस टू अर्जुन डिस्प्लेड हिज रियल फोर आर्म फॉर्म एंड एट लास्ट ही शोड हिम हिज टू आर्म फॉर्म एंड दस एनकरेजिंग द फियरफुल अर्जुन So Arjuna wanted to prove to the world just see this personality before me is not just my friend he is the person he is the time factor who is all pervading he is a universal form so many universes that is his body and also he is the four-handed narayan form who enters in this universe to take this universal form thus he requested i have seen universal form the form of time and now please you show me your four handed form so that people understand you only are narayan so krishna showed that somya rupam that four handed form now krishna is explaining something very important please hear attentively arjuna uvacha drishtvedam manusham rupam tav somyam janardana idani masmi samvrittah Sacheta prakritim gataha. When Arjuna thus saw Krishna in his original form, he said, "Seeing this human-like form, so very beautiful, my mind is now pacified, and I am restored to my original nature." Shri Bhagavan Vacha, 
सुदुर्दर्शमदम दृष्टवानसी यम देव अप्यूप नित्यम दर्शन कांक्षिण द ब्लेसड लॉर्ड सेड माई डियर अर्जुन द फॉर्म विच यू आर नाउ सींग इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू बी होल्ड इवन द डेमी गॉड्स आर एवर सीकिंग द ऑपरचुनिटी टू सी दिस फॉर्म विच इज सो डियर so first krishna has explained this universal form which out of love i have shown to you nobody has seen this before na veda yagya adhyayanair cha danair it cannot be seen by reading the vedas by giving charity by doing tapasya and all these things bhakti is required to see this form this is very difficult to behold now krishna is telling This form is so durdarsham. Durdarsham means which is difficult to see the universal form. Now this form which I have shown you, he showed his four hundred form. Now manushim rupam, as it is explained here, drishtvedam manusham rupam tava somyam janardana. So this manusham rupam, the two hundred form which is so pleasant, Krishna is telling. So durdarsham idam rupam, this rupa form, drishtvana siyan mama. This form is so durdarsham. It is very very difficult. much more difficult than the universal form also deva api asya rupasya nityam darshana kankshina always the devtas also they are hankering to see this 200 form so here krishna is revealing that this 200 form is the most difficult form to see it is the origin of all other forms and as we have discussed in previous chapter also so many references are there ete chaansh kala punsam krishna stu bhagavan swayam All others, Sri Mad Bhagavatam mentions in the first canto that all the others they are kala, they are partial expansions, plenary portions, anshas. But the original form is Krishna. Krishna is to Bhagwan Swayam. He is Swayam Bhagwan. So Krishna takes so many forms, but the original form is this two-handed form. So this is very very confidential because as we have discussed, Vishnu is to three nirupani. पुरुषाख्यानी अथो विदु द पुरुष अवतारास आर थ्री इन नंबर थ्री विष्णुस कारणोदक्षाय विष्णु गर्भोदक्षाय विष्णु एंड क्षीरोदक्षाय विष्णु सो द देवतास कैन अप्रोच द क्षीरोदक्षाय विष्णु दे कैन सी द फोर हंड्रेड फॉर्म्स दैट ऑल्सो नॉट एवरी टाइम दे विल स्टैंड ऑन द बैंक ऑफ द क्षीर सागर दे विल चैंड पुरुष सूक्त प्रेयर्स एंड सम टाइम्स दे हियर द वॉइस ऑफ द लॉर्ड सम टाइम्स दे आर एबल टू सी द लोटस फीट सम टाइम्स दे सी द लॉर्ड and sometimes no transmission happens like 5000 years ago kansa is giving so much trouble they went there they want relief but no response then lord brahma sat in meditation and then because brahma is pure devotee of krishna he got instruction from krishna that don't worry tell them i am going to descend so this is the situation but still they can sometimes see the lord he is manifest but krishna is not found within this universe all the conditioned souls including devtas we are there in this universe only we cannot cross go outside but krishna goloka eva nivasati akhilatma bhuto he lives in golok vrindavan golok vrindavan is the topmost planet of vaikuntha loka the description is given in brahma samhita description is there in shrimad bhagavatam the description is there in uh, brahmand puran lord ganesha is explaining that Above all the Vishnu Lokas, you'll find Golok Vrindavan, and there is nothing beyond this dham, this planet, where Krishna lives in his two-handed form. And in all the other Vaikuntha Lokas, one can only worship up to Dasya Rasa. So there are five Rasas, five kind of relationships which one has with Krishna. One is relationship in neutrality, that is called Shanta Bhav. When we come to the temple, we see the deities, we appreciate the spiritual advancement, we appreciate the form of Krishna. that is shant neutrality passive there is no active service just like fans are there fans are not rendering any service to celebrity but passive service they become so delighted when they see them and obviously the celebrities also they enjoy this when the cricketers would enter the stadium and they would roar and shout their names and they feel jubilant and when they retire they miss that feeling so the fans they give pleasure without actively engaging in service this is called shant rasa the relationship with god begins from there that is good but one needs to advance more if you are really a fan go and do something practical for 
the pleasure of your for your personality for the supreme personality that is called dasya rasa carrying out the orders and in vaikuntha loka the service is restricted up to this level shant rasa dasya rasa because narayan you cannot put your hand around his neck he is supreme lord the king of the kings so with distance in awe and reverence worship is done and there is some rasa of fraternity friendship but that also with distance with awe and reverence close friendship is not at all there that is also very very rare but in golok vrindavan advanced rasas friendship in great intimacy as we saw here sakam vijaru krit punya punja we are playing with krishna making fun of him and then there is one higher rasa which is the actual platform from which lord chatanya he told this is the real service which lord krishna appreciates so much he appreciates everyone there is no difference krishna loves all his devotees equally whether a cow calf is there or shrimati radha rani is there but still if we analyze from a neutral perspective there is difference among the rasas for example a man likes his son his daughter his nephews niece uncles aunts cousins brothers sisters parents and so many relationships are there and a man would uh, like to always have all these relationships but still if we analyze the most intimate relationship is the relationship with one spouse that is most intimate and that gives great pleasure to the heart if this pleasure is not there in life other relationships are okay but a man wants this relationship in a similar fashion although krishna likes to be served in all these relationships at the same time the devotees do not like to change their positions also just like the daughter would not like to become mother of the father or wife of the father or brother of the father a daughter would like to remain daughter of father son would like to remain son of his father so they all like their unique relationship they are completely satisfied in that and krishna also wants all these uh, relations but if we analyze there is one relationship which is very intimate which is most desirable and that is relationship with the spouse so thus beyond this relationship of fraternity friendship is called vatsalya rasa till there krishna is taking care now on vatsalya platform krishna is being taken care so this is the platform on which nand maharaj yashoda mai they serve krishna they are always anxious so krishna has been fed or not so krishna uh, uh, must be in difficulty or some demon has kidnapped krishna they are so much anxious they are fainting so they are always worried oh krishna why mother yashoda is scolding krishna uh, when he gives butter to the monkeys because krishna may go hungry monkeys may eat all the butter so she is getting angry that my son will remain hungry so she is scolding so krishna gets great pleasure in this the time controlling everyone i am chastising a miscreants somebody chastises me in love oh i get so much of satisfaction so i am taking care of the whole world somebody is taking care of me or oh, this is so nice so rather than asking god for service we should try to give service to the god rather than requesting krishna please take care of me always we should have faith that krishna anyway is taking care of us we are his part and parcel we automatically take care of our finger we take care of our children that is natural we need not ask we need not be selfish and lose faith on krishna that krishna might have got busy somewhere so we are suffering here no krishna is all knowing omniscient all powerful he can give all protection so whatever krishna is doing devotee satisfied if i am suffering it is okay i am happy it is okay but krishna i want to take care of your service only please always engage me in your service this is devotee's demand request only request so vasalya rasa and higher than vasalya rasa parental love is madhurya rasa conjugal relationship so this is the rasa which is most intimate and all these rasas higher rasas they are available sakhya rasa vasalya rasa and madhurya rasa they are available only in golok vrindavan the top most planet of the vaikuntha loka the spiritual world so this is the pleasure which was exhibited by the gopis in vrindavan which was experienced by the gopis in vrindavan thus chaitanya mahaprabhu told ramya kachit upasana vraj vadhu vargena ya kalpita 
the highest worship is the worship which is done by the gopis of vrindavan so we should follow the footsteps once when krishna was in difficulty he had some sickness so nobody was able to cure it so now they asked lord you are only the lord you please tell us what is the remedy you know everything so he told if you bring the dust of the lotus feet of my devotees put it on my head that will cure me now various devotees were asked but everybody was hesitant dust from my feet i put on god's head i will go to hell this is the biggest uh, sin that a person can do one needs to take dust of lord from his, uh, on his head i give dust from my feet to lord i will go to hell no no i cannot do this finally when gopis were approached they told oh please take it take truck loads of it and please does not matter if krishna is getting well we are ready to suffer in hell for unlimited births eternally but let krishna get well so this is devotee's desire let me suffer does not matter in the service of krishna but if krishna is pleased in this manner let me execute this service this is the mood of the devotees so thus this is very great uh, very confidential revelation so durdarsham idam roopam this two handed form of krishna it is found only in golok vrindavan in the spiritual world and once in a day of brahma that form is visible here on this planet in vrindavan what we see 5000 years ago so this two handed form manusham roopam so durdarsham idam roopam this is most difficult to be seen so this revelation is there in bhagavad gita also that this form is the top most this is the highest because the highest rasas also are available only in this form not in other forms and deva apya sirupasya nityam darshana kankshina thus when krishna was there in the womb of devaki all the devatas they came lord shiva lord brahma everybody is uh, offering their prayers because this form is very very rare to be seen nityam darshana kankshina devatas can see sometimes narayan form but this two handed form is very rare once in a day of brahma only they can see this so they are very eager to see whenever there is time for appearance they come and they offer their prayers with folded hands so if we read bhagavad gita carefully so many important revelations we will find here na ham vedaya na tapasa na dane na na chejjaya शक्य विदो द्रष्ट दृष्टवानसी मं यथा द फॉर्म विच यू आर सींग विथ योर ट्रांसेंडेंटल आईज कैन नॉट बी अंडरस्टूड सिंपली बाय स्टडिंग द वेदास नॉर बाय अंडर गोइंग सीरियस पेनेंसेज नॉर बाय चैरिटी नॉर बाय वर्शिप इट इज नॉट बाय दीज मीन्स दैट वन कैन सी मी एज आई एम सो दीज वर्ड्स आर रिपीटेड यू सी न वेद न तपसा न दाने न so universal form cannot also be seen by vedas dan and tapasya but other forms can be seen by worship but this formality of worship those people who go to temple and without any affection they are simply doing worship as a matter of rule and regulation so by worship you cannot see this two handed form of krishna this is very rare thus even though we worship radha krishna in the temple but the worship standards are of lakshmi and narayan because radha krishna cannot be uh, worshiped unless a person reaches spontaneous level we just discussed spontaneous level when a person simply is thinking of god day and night and wants to engage in the service of god that is spontaneous worship then radha krishna can be worshiped otherwise radha krishna's deities in the temple they accept the service in the mood of lakshmi and narayan and thus the rules and regulations which we follow for worshiping radha krishna in the beginning that is also the pancharatrika vidhi given to worship lakshmi narayan forms lakshmi narayan forms is with so many rules and regulations like a king you have to be very punctual very clean so many formalities to be observed but in service of krishna no formality like sanatan goswami one of the immediate disciples of chaitanya mahaprabhu he was having madan mohan dt so these deities are also another incarnation called archa avatar just like there is avatar of lord krishna which appears like a human being the form that we see in the temple even though they are carved out of wood and stone they are not wood and stone they are krishna himself krishna has used our hands maybe to exhibit those forms but those forms are completely spiritual they appear like wood and they appear like stone but to pure devotees 
they are as good as uh, Krishna who is there in the spiritual world and he walks with them, talks with them. Thus, Sanatan Goswami, he was carrying the Madan Mohan deity. Madan Mohan deity was carved by Vajranath, the great grandson of Krishna. So who tells that these things are mythology? We have Madan Mohan deity. It is being worshipped in Karoli, in uh, Rajasthan. You go there. Go in Devji deity is there in Jaipur. Gopinath ji is there also in Jaipur. These deities are carved by Vajranath. So deities are real. So the person who carved them, got them carved, he is also real. He is great grandson of Krishna, Vajranath. There is historical reference. So Krishna is a real personality, but divine personality. So this Madan Mohan deity, one of the deities, was being carried by Sanatan Goswami, who was staying under different trees. He was moving around, sannyasi, writing books and like that. And he would hang the deity of Madan Mohan on a tree, and then he would describe uh, the Vedic literatures, write them, compile them, chant his names. In this way, he would do his work. And then whatever little things he needs to eat, those things he would offer to Madan Mohanji. So one day Madan Mohanji told the deity, which appears like a stone, Sanatan, every day you are giving me dry chapatis, please give me a little salt also. So Madan Mohanji, simple request, so Sanatan Goswami told, my dear Lord, I have got so much of seva to do, I have to write all these books, today you are asking me salt, tomorrow you will ask ghee, I am a sannyasi, how will I arrange all these things? So please be satisfied with that. So this is called spontaneous love. You need not observe many standards, having a nice throne, charmer, vyanjan and peacock fan, all these things. You hang Krishna on a tree, hang on your neck, offer him dry chapati, not very delicious food stuff. Krishna is satisfied by pure love. No rules and regulations. So Krishna can be worshipped on this spontaneous platform. So by formal worship, eat jaya, it is being mentioned here. By following rules and regulations and this thing, you can see other form, but you cannot approach Krishna, two-handed form. That is only by rules and regulations, one can approach Narayan, four-handed form. But without, when a person reaches spontaneous platform, only then. So all these words are very important. You notice, each jaya, this word has been added to see this two-handed form of Krishna. It cannot be seen even by formal worship. With great love, spontaneous love worship, Temple worship is important, but with great love, spontaneous love, it has to be done. Now let us see the final verses. Bhaktya Tvanyaya Shakya Aham Evam Vidhurjuna Gyatum Drashtum Chatatvena Praveshtum Cha Parantapa My dear Arjuna, only by undivided devotional service can I be understood as I am standing before you and can thus be seen directly. Only in this way can you enter into the mysteries of my understanding. So here Krishna has told Bhaktiya tu Ananyanya Shakya. So by not formality, your mind is somewhere and you are offering the lamp and this thing with great love. So deity worship is very important. We should do every day, but we should do it with great attention and with great love. Bhaktiya tu Ananyaya without any ulterior motive, only then Krishna can be known. So it does not mean, please do not neglect all these things. Okay, tomorrow onwards, I will not read Bhagavad Gita. I will not read Vedas. I will not engage in tapasya. I will not give any charity. No, these things have to be done. But we have to do these things with great love. Just like we spend money out of love for our family members. So in that love, we should try to spend for Krishna. We have to read Vedas for the pleasure of Krishna to understand Krishna so that I can serve Krishna very nicely. Tapasya should be done also only for the service of Krishna, not for any other ulterior motive that I have this personal agenda. So no, not for that. So all these things we have to execute for the service of Krishna under direction of spiritual master. So now this last verse of this chapter, this is called the essence of Bhagavad Gita. So please hear very carefully all the words which are very very important. Mat karma krin mat paramo mat bhakta sang varjitaha nirvaira sarva bhuteshu yasma meti pandava My dear Arjuna, one who is engaged in my pure devotional service free from the contaminations of previous activities and from mental speculation 
who is friendly to every living entity certainly comes to me so krishna is telling mat karma krin mat parmo so what is the essence of bhagavad gita mat karma krin one should do karmas for krishna service krishna karma as we have discussed whatever skills we have got we have to use it for krishna we want to make skyscrapers make a skyscraper temple for krishna so that everybody can come and participate in the service of lord we want to do business do nice business for the benefit of krishna you have no skills you can just cook cook very nice things for krishna same perfection and pleasure can be achieved so nowadays people are suffering because they think by engaging only in a particular way i'll be happy only if i enter the topmost institute of the country in the topmost government position in the topmost corporate position then i will be happy in my life this is complete misconception complete misconception our happiness is related to it is directly proportional to how much we are pleasing god that's it this is the relationship yatha tarur mul nisheshanena tripyanti tatra skand bujop shakha if this finger these fingers feed any other mouth apart from this one fingers will not get nourishment so we have to understand our relationship with the supreme so we are part and parcel of supreme only when we serve the supreme we will get nourishment the happiness which we are seeking so we need not change our position that krishna will stress again in the 18th chapter of bhagavad gita sve sve karmani abhiratah in one's own occupation sam siddhim labhate narah siddhi means perfection sam siddhi means top most perfection so it is so simple and so nice we need not worry and i don't have the skills but i am somehow struggling we need not worry whatever skills we have or we don't have to our capacity patram pushyam krishna is telling offer me water offer me leaf i'll be satisfied with that mat karma krin what is required is engagement in the service of krishna you know cooking cook for krishna you know cleaning clean for krishna you cannot do anything you can simply use your tongue chant the names of krishna sing for krishna spread the message of krishna preach explain to others so just we have to do mat karma krin and we can experience this it is practical so i request all of you so uh, now by krishna's grace there are so many opportunities so many places where practically devotees can come and uh, under proper guidance they can engage in the service of krishna so please try to see that practically in your life automatically there is no uh, need to argue when there is some practical thing available the taste of pudding is in eating it so you taste it and then you will realize automatically then all the debates will get silenced there would be no need mat karma krin the success is whatever skills we have got orientation we have got we should serve krishna in that capacity so don't take stress don't take anxiety just try to implement this thing and then mat parmo now i am engaged in service of krishna for what so that i can continue my material uh, happiness here so that krishna makes me successful in my some uh, sense gratification here we will have sense satisfaction automatically senses will not demand any separate satisfaction they will always be satiated but service of krishna should only be mat parmo for krishna so association of krishna in the spiritual world is the topmost aim for the spiritualist so krishna should be made the ultimate aim of all the activities so one should engage in the service of krishna so that only a person can attain go and live with god personally and this was very well known to people in uh, especially in this aryavarta where people were following sanatan dharma that is why the snakes and ladders it is called moksha pati in sanskrit moksha pati means ultimately you have to attain moksha freedom from this birth and death that was known to people and it was called vaikuntha palli how to reach vaikuntha vaikuntha means the place where there is no anxiety and thus lord vishnu uh, is called venkateshwar that is from vaikunth eshwar lord of vaikuntha so when is to ultimately reach the association of lord vaikunteshwar venkateshwar in the vaikuntha vaikunth palli so the ladders they are virtues tapasya dan swadhyay yagya 
and the snakes they represent vices lust anger greed deceit falsity adultery intoxication all these things so child also knows these things have to be avoided this is where if you do tapasya then the ladder will take you to certain planet if you do another tapasya charity it will take you to some different result so the child knows everything the laws of karma if i do this activity the result is that i go to this planet and ultimately the result is vaikuntha i have to go so mat parmo attaining my association i should be the aim of life of all the activities that you are doing mat bhakta sang varjita thus you have to engage in my service and sang varjita avoid the association of non devotees the non devotees having a consciousness if we associate with them intimately then we will pick up their qualities so just like it is very practical we see now also children are always being cautioned by their parents don't associate with bad children those who are not studious those who are uh, not having good manners those who are into bad habits do not associate with them so in a similar fashion those people who are completely unaware of the aim of life they are into bad habits sense gratification and other addictions the whole world is actually addicted so this sense enjoyment which we have made the aim of life it is nothing but addiction it is not required but we artificially keep on increasing our dependence on the resources which is not required in the first place so if we associate with people who are addicted to unnecessary enjoyment that is not recommended so sang varijita is very important so now by krishna's grace we have so many devotees we should try to live in the community of devotees and socialize only with the devotees this is important yes we should be very respectful to everyone because lord is present in the heart of everyone we should not be disrespectful even to the animals maintaining very good behavior one should avoid because they are having disease even our family member we quarantine them if they get diseased right we care for them but if we approach them too closer we will also get diseased so for the time being let us maintain some distance take care of them with some distance so we do preach them do try to help them to come out we should try to do that as we will see krishna mentions that but we don't intimately mix with them we intimately mix only with the devotees nirvaira sarvabhuteshu then one should be friendly to all living entities nirvaira vaira means enmity nirvaira means no enmity friendly what is the meaning of friendly not just formality i am your friend real friend means who goes and helps the friend in distress so the whole world is in distress it is told in shrimad bhagavatam the greatest calamity that can happen to a person the greatest loss that can happen to a person is not losing one's life we think if life is lost everything is lost no because we know we will take another body is bus changing of dress so one should not cry for death the greatest loss is not loss of wealth is not loss of anything but it mentions the greatest loss is forgetting the lotus feet of krishna for one moment because we do not relish the nectar which devotees enjoy on spiritual platform when they are completely pure when their heart is cleansed completely of lust and greed like the gopis they are cursing that brahma does not know how to make the bodies why he has made eyes to blink because when we blink the eyes we close for a fraction of moment and then we miss the sight of krishna and we curse why these eyes need blinking so they cannot tolerate missing krishna's vision even for the fraction of moment for the blink of an eye this much pleasure devotees derive when they see behold the beautiful form of krishna through their eyes or within their heart so forgetting the lotus feet of krishna for one moment is the biggest loss they are telling him so people are so much suffering every moment they are being harassed because they cannot think of lotus feet of krishna always and obviously the basic miseries are there death is there repeated death old age disease and because of ignorance we have created so much unwanted stress in our life so nirvaira means we should preach krishna consciousness give them these simple instructions mat karma krin please engage in the service of krishna mat parmo may krishna the ultimate aim of life satatam kirtayantu maam always chant krishna's name so these simple teachings we can spread to others there is no loss why don't you try this please please try this thing and you will see that it is very sublime nirvaira sarvabhuteshu yas samameti pandava 
certainly such a person comes to me mam eti he will come to my abode so it is important to engage in service of krishna so this is very practical it is not some theory so if we do not have knowledge of bhagavad gita we'll see oh wonderful philosophy but then we do not know how to apply it but here it is very simple mat karma kran engage in service of krishna mat parmo make going back to live with krishna ultimate aim of life mat bhakta thus engage in his devotional service sanga varjita avoid bad association who are non devotees no idea about aim of life nirvaira sarva bhuteshu you have to work for the welfare act in a friendly manner for all living entities the spreading krishna consciousness is must for going back to godhead one has to act for the welfare of others gyanis and yogis they don't do welfare they go and sit in the himalayas they will read the vedas vedanta disregard entire material world as illusion they will not uh, help others but helping others is very important so one who helps others nirvaira sarva bhuteshu yas samameti pandava he will come to So please just read this again and meditate how we can implement in this life and we are always there to guide how this can be practically implemented in life and then within this human body only when this body is purified by executing this there is unlimited bliss always within the heart so this was the crux of this chapter we have seen that the two handed form of krishna which was shown to arjuna that is the top most that is most confidential and from that form expands narayan from from that expands the universal form and further now uh, as some people in person is they tell that this universal form is supreme that has been very very clear but still there can be some lingering doubt whether that impersonal path is better or this devotional path is better So now directly very very clearly Arjuna puts for this question always there has been this debate impersonalism versus personalism so if you have read Bhagavad Gita very carefully you would have come to the right conclusion still if there is some lingering doubt that will be cleared now Arjuna is putting forth now direct question Arjuna who is supreme one who worships impersonal form your energy which is spread everywhere or the devotee who always worships your personal form the answer will be given in the next chapter very nice important chapter devotional service so thank you so much for hearing till now i request just never forget this fundamental principle to always chant the holy names of krishna and never forget him till meet very soon hari krishna अर्जुन उवाच एवं सततयुक्ताये भक्तास्वा पर्युपासते ये चाप्यक्षर अव्यक्त के योग अर्जुन इंक्वायर्ड विच इज कंसिडर टू बी मोर परफेक्ट दोज हु आर प्रॉपरली एंगेज्ड in your devotional service or those who worship the impersonal brahm dhan manifested so it's a direct question arjuna is attached to the personal form of god he has been playing with that two handed form and when he saw universal form in the previous chapter his position as a very intimate devotee of lord krishna got disturbed and he started offering respects on all sides So Arjuna has always been attached to the two-handed form only, which he requested Lord Krishna. I am afraid my mind is bewildered seeing this form. Kindly show your original form. But there has also been a class of transcendentalists who worship the impersonal energy, which is also one feature of Krishna. That impersonal energy is situated on the personality of God, but some people tell no, energy is the absolute. and the forms are secondary so arjuna wants to have his position very clear here i am attached to your personal form but please tell me decisively which is better worshiping the energy or worshiping your form which i am attached to so you can see also the words very clearly satat yukta ye bhakta stvam paryupasate whether bhakta your devotee is better who is satat means always devotee has no other business 
but always he is engaged in the service of Krishna. Whereas other class of transcendentalists, what do they do? Aksharam avyaktam. Avyakt means which is unmanifest, aksharam, which cannot be described, cannot be captured by the senses. So which among the two is better? So let's see what Lord Krishna replies. Shri Bhagavan Vacha Maya Vesh Mano Yemam Nitya Yukta Upasate Shraddhaya Parayopetas Teme Yukta Tamamata The Blessed Lord said, He whose mind is fixed on my personal form, always engaged in worshipping me, with great and transcendental faith is considered by me to be most perfect. So just see, it cannot be more clearer than this. Mai Aveshya Mano Yamam, Mai Aveshya Chetasam, these words Lord Krishna is using very, very regularly in the Bhagavad Gita. Whose mind is Mai Aveshya attached to me. Nitya Yukta Upasate, always he is engaged in Upasana, worshipping me. So this is Lord Krishna's verdict. Shraddhaya Parayopeta, with great faith, one who is a bhakta, devotee, he is best according to Krishna. Yetvaksharam anirdesham avyaktam paryupasate sarvatragam achintyam cha kutastham achalam dhruvam Saniyam Yendri Agramam Sarvatra Samabuddhayaha Te Prapnuvanti Mameva Sarva Bhuta Hiterata Lord Krishna explains, Tu, Tu means but. But those who fully worship the unmanifested, that which lies beyond the perception of the senses, the all-pervading inconceivable, fixed and immovable, the impersonal conception of the absolute truth by controlling the various senses and being equally disposed to everyone, such persons engaged in the welfare of all at last achieve me. So both ways are ultimately going to Krishna. One path is direct, another path is indirect. In this path, what a person is supposed to do? Aksharam anirdeshyam avyaktam paryupasate. So this feature is aksharam. It is beyond the perceptions, unmanifested avyaktam. And if you want to advance on this path, then Saniyam yendriya gramam. First of all, the indriya senses have to be controlled perfectly. So perfectly that all the sensual activity should be completely stopped. Just like a child is completely absorbed in a virtual game, a computer game, he cannot perceive reality unless he stops playing the game because his senses are engaged over there. In a similar fashion, as long as our senses are engaged in this illusory world, one cannot perceive reality. One cannot understand the existence of spirit or the super spirit, super soul. So when all the actions of the senses are stopped, one stops hearing all the voices outside, hears Omkar from within, and one tries to search the super soul within himself, stops seeing all the external forms, stop talking, stop eating. All the sensual activity should be stopped. That's a very difficult task. Can we imagine a person who is not doing any sensual activity, not eating, not sleeping, not talking? Yes. Even though it is tough, but this stage has to be achieved. And once the sensual activities are stopped, one can understand the presence of super soul which is present everywhere. That is reality. Super soul is reality. These forms are illusion. The same matter. Food which we have eaten, it has got deposited here in our body. Now our body has got certain form. This form is not ours. We are the souls within the body. These forms keep on changing. We had childhood form, young form, old form. Then next life we can take animal form or demigod form, tree form. So these forms are not reality, reality is spirit. So activities on this illusory platform should be stopped. Then one can understand the presence of super soul, soul everywhere. Saniyam yendriya gramam 
சர்வத்திர சம புத்தயா அண்ட் தென் ஒன் பிகம்ஸ் ஈக்வலி டிஸ்போஸ் டு ஆல் த லிவிங் என்டிட்டிஸ் சர்வத்திர சம புத்தயா பிகாஸ் ஹீ ஸ்டாப் சீங் த அவுட் வர்ட் ட்ரெஸ்ஸஸ் டைகர் லயன் கேட் டாக் பிளான்ஸ் வெஜிடபிள்ஸ் ஹி ஜஸ்ட் சீஸ் த ஸ்பிரிட் சோல் இன் சைட் அ கம்பெனிட் பை த சூப்பர் சோல் தே பிராப்னுவந்தி மாமேவா தே ஆல்சோ அட்டெயின் மீ சர்வ பூத ஹிதே ரதாக அண்ட் ஆல்சோ தி ஹேவ் டு சர்வ பூத ஹிதே ரதா மீன்ஸ் தே ஆர் எங்கேஜ் இன் த வெல்ஃபேர் ஒர்க் of all the living entities so some people tell so called spiritualists it is very dangerous now so many cults have popped up and they tell actually uh, spirit is completely different from body that we also agree that is fact but they tell spiritual activities are different from bodily activities you can eat meat very nicely and then you can advance in spiritual life also because eating is for the body spiritual life meditation is for spirit yes that is fact matter is different from spirit but now we are conditioned by this body you can ask such people who tell you eat everything you can do anything and at the same time you can advance in spiritual life no complete regulation of mind and body is required because now we are conditioned by our mind and body that is why the spirit soul is same in the dog's body and in our body also why dog cannot make spiritual advancement on its own because the body is not suitable so now we are conditioned by this body so such spiritualists do they get affected if they touch fire yes so can we tell them you sit on fire and do meditation no we have to be cautious similarly don't they eat anything they get affected by hunger pangs yes so we are getting affected by this body as long as we are getting affected by the body we have to discriminate but there is a class of very advanced spiritualists who are called avadhutas who have completely realized that i am different from the body they can do anything and everything on the external platform but this is very high very elevated platform just like the example is given among the associates of lord chaitanya so many were there on that platform 3 days they would stay within water we will die if we stay more than couple of minutes under water but they would remain completely absorbed in samadhi meditating on radha krishna and within the water after 3 days they would come out they would start dancing completely unaware of what has happened they are called avadhutas so unless somebody is so much advanced that bodily changes are not affecting him prahlad maharaj you give him poison he took poison and then poison turned nectar no effect on the body so till that stage is attained one has to consider one has to follow the rules and regulations one must have a satvik conduct in one's life so you cannot eat meat sarva bhuta hi tera ta one has to be engaged in the welfare of all the living entities the same spirit soul is in the body of a goat hen or xyz why we are discriminating so that is not a uh, proper conduct one has to see equally sarvatra samabuddhaya all the living entities on same platform irrespective of the body and one must engage in the welfare of all the living entities in this way when the senses are under control they are following rules and regulations seeing everyone on equal platform te prapnuvanti maameva they also at last attain me so although both will attain krishna one is a very short process in this life you can be successful in another indirect process of worshiping the impersonal brahm it will take as krishna has mentioned previously बहूनाम जन्मनाम अंते ज्ञान मान माम प्रपद्यंते बहूनाम जन्मनाम मेनी मेनी बर्थ्स इट टेक्स एंड देन व्हेन दे आर सफिशिएंटली प्यूरिफाइड व्हेन दे कम अक्रॉस अ प्योर डिवोटी बाय हिज एसोसिएशन दे कैन एडवांस इन डिवोशनल सर्विस लाइक द फोर सन्स ऑफ ब्रह्मा फोर कुमारास चतुसनास दे टुक मेनी बर्थ्स टू अटेन परफेक्शन बट ध्रुव महाराज हु टुक टू डिवोशनल सर्विस ही अटेन परफेक्शन विद इन सिक्स मंथ्स so one is direct process but another is indirect but if they stick to their process they also will attain krishna in the end so lord krishna is telling the first process is best because this takes a very long time and another reason lord krishna mentions here klesho dhikata raste sham avyakta sakt chet sam avyakta hi gatir dukham For those whose minds are attached to the unmanifested, impersonal feature of the supreme advancement is very troublesome. 
to make progress in that discipline is always difficult for those who are embodied so there are two classes as we have discussed gyanis and bhaktas the gyan yogis usually they worship the impersonal form of the supreme they worship the energy they try to meditate on the energy and the bhaktas they meditate on the personal form of the lord so the path of spiritual advancement will be very very troublesome for those who have got attached to avyakta unmanifest energy of the supreme lord klesho adhika taraste sham avyakt asakt chetasam avyakta hi gatir dukham so their complete path is miserable lord krishna is telling here to make progress in that discipline is dehavat bhir avapyate for those who are embodied it's very difficult for them to follow so first of all it is very difficult to understand this impersonal feature energy which is spread everywhere without any discrimination whatever we are seeing it is only brahma and uh, understanding the non perceptual feelings getting attached to some impersonal energy is so difficult we get attached to people personalities very easily so thus when you see god's form standing in the temple which is another incarnation he is god only who has taken the form of wood or stone x y z they are authorized forms the example given is crude example that of letter box if you put letter in a post office now of course we don't put letters like that earlier when we are putting the inland letters hard copies then either you go to the post office or you go to a letter box the end result is same the letter box that red box is acting in exactly the same fashion it is acting like a post office that is authorized if somebody thinks so let me also make a form which looks like red and i'll paint it like that and put letter over there that will not go it will not work because that is not authorized similarly the archa vigraha the forms of the lord which are carved out of stone or wood or glass sand all these are authorized if they are done as per the scriptures under guidance of pure devotee and if a person worships them it is exactly as worshiping the supreme personality of god it there is no difference so if we worship such forms present in the temple and we get attached to them it is natural getting attached to a person is very natural for us but getting attached to some energy it is so difficult that is why they sometimes imagine the forms of krishna lord shiva goddess durga lord ganpati sun god they tell you can imagine any form ultimately the truth is energy only but you cannot attach yourself to energy and unless attachment is there for the supreme spirit you cannot make spiritual advancement you will get attached to matter so in order to facilitate such attachment to energy you imagine any form and uh, once you are attached to that form you are on spiritual platform you understand you are not the body then you give up meditation on that form also because anyway that is illusory so thus sometimes the impersonalists also may sing bhajans and they may do kirtans and they may meditate upon the forms of lord krishna lord rama lord shiva but their understanding is all these forms are also illusory they are not real so thus it is very very troublesome either they will uh, do such misrepresentations that these forms are illusory and try to do some stop gap arrangement till the time we get liberated let us meditate on this form others they try to meditate upon the impersonal feature so krishna is telling kleshah adikataras tesham their path is very troublesome because they have to understand non perceptual feelings get attached to some energy very tough over and above that they have to artificially control the senses the material activities of the senses should be stopped but devotee by engaging the senses in spiritual service of krishna automatically stops their material activities so impersonalists they have to stop eating completely go sit down in the jungle reduce your eating like dhruv maharaj he was taking some fruits and berries then he was taking just dry leaves then he was drinking just water once in a week then he was just inhaling air and then inhalation of air also he stopped finally so if one is able to do that it is very very tough very very troublesome whereas devotee he also stops his material eating because whatever he is eating is 
prasadam the food which is offered to krishna that is spiritual and he eats as a matter of service so that is why devotees don't tell i am eating prasadam we tell i am honoring prasadam prasadam is another form of krishna spiritualized food so i am honoring prasadam when we eat we say that so thus devotee also controls the eating on material platform in a very simple way by spiritualizing one's eating a devotee has tendency to fight to control one's tendency stuff so impersonalist has to stop the activities but devotee will fight if fighting tendency is there but he or she will fight for krishna like arjuna is fighting here in this way, bhakti yoga is very easy simply the activities are brought to spiritual platform activities need not be stopped but if you have to tell you stop all the activities such path is very troublesome so such strict control of the senses artificially repressing them suppressing them and uh, thus it is very troublesome and ultimately because the truth is that absolute is a person and the impersonal feature is one of the aspects of that personality of absolute truth so eventually you have to understand the personality then a person cannot give up the impersonal understanding so again it is troublesome in this way overall this path is very very troublesome in the beginning and in the long run also ye tu sarvani karmani mai sanyasya matpara ananye naiva yogena mam dhyayanta upasate तेषाहम समुद्धर्ता मृत्यु संसार सागरा भवामी न चिरा पार्थ मैयावेशित चेत पवन हु वर्शिप्स मी गिविंग अप ऑल इज एक्टिविटीज अन टू मी एंड बीइंग डिवोटेड टू मी विदाउट डिविएशन एंगेज इन डिवोशनल सर्विस एंड ऑलवेज मेडिटेटिंग अपॉन मी who has fixed his mind upon me o son of pritha for him i am the swift deliverer from the ocean of birth and death sarvani karmani mai sanyasya matparaha so krishna now is giving contrast from the previous process which is so much full of troubles so this other class of transcendentalists what do they do sarvani karmani mai sanyasya they give up the activities but they give up the activities for krishna not simply giving up and not doing any activity no so real sanyas means giving up the activities for krishna or unto krishna as krishna tells so they will act this is called mai sarvani karmani mai sanyasya mat paraha they are attached to krishna attached to me mat paraha so those who give up their activities unto me they are attached to me अनन्य नव योगे न मं ध्यायत उपासते विदउट एनी डिविएशन दिम आर ऑलवेज थिंकिंग ऑफ कृष्णा ध्यायता ऑलवेज दे आर मेडिटेटिंग ऑन कृष्णा इन ऑल द एक्टिविटीज दैट दे डू तेषाम अहम समुद्धर्ता मृत्यु संसार सागरा दिस वर्ल्ड इज कॉल मृत्यु संसार संस्कृति मीन्स रिपीटेड बर्थ एंड डेथ सो ये रिपीटेड बर्थ एंड डेथ हैपन्स इन दिस वर्ल्ड दिस इज ओशन ऑफ मिजरीज so from the ocean unless a person is air lifted even the best of the swimmers cannot cross similarly we have fallen in this ocean of death so krishna is the swift deliverer for his devotees whose minds are attached to krishna they work only for the satisfaction of krishna in the other process they have to make this body mind very perfect suitable so that they can transfer themselves to any location that they desire but a devotee doesn't have to wait to reach such perfection even if a devotee does not know how to transfer the soul among the chakras and raise it to the head and then from the brahma randra it is busted here the top of the head and the soul reaches the desired location in the spiritual world so devotee need not wait for that process which yogis follow because krishna is the swift deliverer so is it not the better process tesham aham samudharta mrityu sansar sagarat aham samudharta i am the swift deliverer in other process gyan yog dhyan yog they depend upon their own prowess their own physical mental capacity but here devotee doesn't have to wait to develop the capacity so if the capacity is there that is very good if they know the art 
If they does not know, it does not matter because Krishna will deliver them. So this is the best process. When Krishna takes charge, when Krishna is willing to take anybody who can stop because he is the topmost power. So thus, this is the best process as Lord Krishna has recommended. Bhavami na chirat partha. So in the previous process, we have seen bahunam janmana mante. It takes many, many births. And here chirat means long time. Na chirat means not long, very short time. Bhavami na chirat partha. Gyan yogis will take many, many births. And a bhakti yogi will not take long. Very shortly, I will deliver him. So the only condition Lord Krishna is mentioning is Mai Aveshit Chetasa, Mai Aveshi Mano Yamam, mind should be attached to Krishna. So thus one should always chant the holy names of Krishna, engage in service of Krishna under the guidance of his pure devotee spiritual master. This is the way of getting attachment for Krishna. Attachment for Krishna is the property of lovers of Krishna, his pure devotees. When they are pleased with anybody, they can immediately bestow this attachment upon such sincere disciples. So serving the lotus feet of such a spiritual master who is attached to Krishna is the secret for getting one's mind attached to Krishna. Otherwise, artificially, one can read the books, one can do anything, one can chant the names also. Such attachment will not develop. So it so happened that the great king, as I briefly mentioned before about Maharaj Bharat, who was ruler of the entire planet and then he had to become deer. And from deer, when he took next birth, he understood my mistake was attachment to one deer cub. And thus, even though I was spiritually very advanced, I had to take birth as an animal. Ordinarily, those who follow the path of spiritual life, they get at least a human form. But I did such gross mistake that I had to take this animal form. But by Krishna's mercy, he was able to remember his past two births. So he behaved like a madman, Jad Bharat. And because he was behaving like a madman, uh, some people would actually consider him less intelligent. So once a king was going on his palanquin and he needed one palanquin carrier. So he told his men to go and search out for a suitable healthy man who can carry the palanquin along with others. So then Jad Bharat was healthy and uh, he was like a madman and he will not resist. And when they told you, please come, he went along with them. And then they told him, you carry the palanquin. He was completely dependent upon will of Lord, understanding everything happens by. Of course, we should not artificially imitate him. We should try to plan our day, protect ourselves. But very exalted souls who can perceive the presence of God in every activity, they can practice such absolute dependence. We should not artificially imitate. If we drink poison, we will die. But Prahlad Maharaj can drink poison, Mirabai can drink poison, it can happen with them. So we should understand our position and try not to drink poison. I am not so advanced. But uh, Bharat Maharaj, Jad Bharat, he was very advanced. Whatever people will tell him to do, he will do. He will not uh, rebel. Uh, once the decoys caught him and they wanted to sacrifice him in front of Goddess Chandi, Kali, he agreed. Just like an animal, they were about to kill him. But then the deity of Goddess Kali broke apart and Kali appeared and killed all the decoits. Because ultimately she is also Vaishnavi, energy of Krishna. She could not tolerate that. So he was so much surrendered. You want to kill me? Okay. If Krishna wishes, I will die. Anyway, this is just a change of dress. And now I am serving Krishna, meditating on Krishna. If thinking of Krishna, I die, my next life is also successful. But I repeat, unless we are on that platform, we should not imitate such activities. An ordinary devotee, other devotees, they understand this body also belongs to Krishna. I should try my level best to protect my body for the service of Krishna. So when he agreed to go to carry the palanquin, then he was a devotee ultimately. So while carrying the palanquin, he was jumping, hopping a bit and the king was getting disturbed inside. So he scolded him once, twice, still Jair Bharat wasn't responding to his chastisement. Then finally king came down, he told, don't you realize that you are a palanquin carrier, you do not know how to do it by your hopping, jumping and giving disturbance to the king. And that he was doing because there were so many ants. So a devotee doesn't even want to kill an ant because an ant or a human being or a demigod, he sees everyone on equal level. Why should I give trouble to my brother who is in diff different dress? 
and ant bodies are just a different and a small dress but the soul is same which is sitting inside so that ants don't get trampled he was hopping and jumping a bit and then bharat maharaj because anyway he was paramhansa most advanced spiritualist he gave such instructions ultimately kings were all very pious all were approved by the brahmanas so uh, he was also having some spiritual knowledge so when he heard this statements of jad bharat he understood i have committed a great mistake he is most advanced spiritualist so immediately fell at the feet he begged pardon and then he asked him after offering so much glorification and prayers please tell me what is the secret of this consciousness the consciousness which you are carrying krishna consciousness always absorbed in thoughts of krishna every moment all the great transcendentalist sages munis they are hankering for this consciousness this is the perfection of life the dhyan yogis they have to sit in one place and somehow they are able to concentrate only the most advanced spiritualist walking talking eating sleeping drinking they are able to do this activity always this perfectional platform how you have attained this consciousness mai yavesh mano ye maam constant absorption in krishna's thoughts so then he spoke this beautiful shloka he told rahu ganaye tat tapasana yati na ched jaya nirvapanat grahatva na chhandasa naiva jalagni surya vina mahat pad rajo vishekam it means rahu gana o king rahu gan his name was rahu gan rahu ganaye tat this consciousness tapasana yati cannot be attained by tapasya you do lot of tapasya you stop eating drinking and you take all physical mental discomforts you cannot attain this consciousness by tapasya tapasa nayati by becoming sanyasi you cannot uh, do this na chejaya nirvapana grahadva you leave your house or you do worship ijjaya you keep on worshiping but by worship also you will not attain this na chandasa you read all the vedas purana scriptures very nicely you become expert in following brahmacharya you cannot attain this consciousness naiva jalagni surya er jal agni surya so this is unique tapasya in chilly winters chilling temperatures you keep yourself neck deep in water now we will die of course we should not practice that but earlier people were having strong bodies and minds so in such waters pinching cold water they would stand neck deep in it and then when it is very very hot jalagni surya they will burn agni all around and then under hot sun they would sit in scorching agni so even if person does all these kinds of very severe austerities this consciousness cannot be attained so by reading vedas you cannot attain brahmacharya you cannot attain leaving your house you cannot attain becoming sanyasi you cannot attain by doing any tapasya you cannot attain worship you cannot attain then what is left so you told vina mahat pad rajo bishekam raj means dust mahat pad means the dust of the lotus feet of great devotees pure devotees abhishek means unless you smear yourself with the dust of the lotus feet of devotees in other words unless yes the dust of lotus feet of devotees is also powerful that is why when we go to temples we touch the steps and put on our head some people do not know why am i doing this i am doing this because i am putting the dust all the devotees are passing over those steps and i am taking the dust of the steps of the devotees some very advanced devotees pure devotee also would have passed if their dust i take on my lotus feet then i get spiritually advanced and it also means following the rules and regulations very very strictly completely surrendering oneself one can smear oneself with somebody's dust it means one is completely surrendered sold out to that person so vina mahat pad rajo bishekam unless somebody is completely surrendered he is very strictly he or she is very strictly following the rules and regulations of mahat pad of the uh, lotus feet of great devotees pure devotees this consciousness cannot be attained same thing prahlad maharaj is telling prahlad maharaj status also was like this so exalted Uh, snakes uh, snake bite nothing happens you throw him from mountain nothing happen you put him under the hail storms nothing happens you attack him with deadly weapons nothing happens hiranyakashipu did tapasya for hundreds of years and then he got such 
amazing powers and this small 5 year old child was able to defeat all his powers so he surprised what is the source of your power so thus prahlad maharaj also tells the same shloka that this consciousness cannot be attained matir na krishne parato sato va krishnamati he uses this word matir na krishne this krishnamati cannot be attained by people who are very much attached to this material life निष्किंचना नाम ना व्रणीत यावत मही असाम पाद रजो अभिषेकम सेम वर्ड्स ही यूजेस पाद रजो अभिषेकम मही असाम यू हैव टू टेक द डस्ट ऑफ द लोटस फीट ऑफ ग्रेट डिवोटीज सो प्रहलाद महाराज वॉज फॉर्चुनेट टू कम इन एसोसिएशन विथ नारद मुनि द इनकारनेशन ऑफ भक्ति शक्ति ऑफ कृष्ण ऑफ स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर ऑफ एंटायर यूनिवर्स सो ऑनलेस समबडी कम्स इन कॉन्टैक्ट विथ सच प्योर डिवोटीज एंड सरेंडर्स एंड टू दैम फॉलोज द रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशन वन स्टडी ऑफ द वेदास one can read bhagavad gita very nicely one can worship lord in the temple very nicely but it will not be effective unless these things are done under the guidance of pure devotee unless one surrenders to a pure devotee that is why lord krishna also told in the very beginning to arjuna getting this spiritual knowledge is the result of all the rituals that you follow and to understand this knowledge what you have to do is chapter 4 verse number 34 tad vidhi pranipatena pari prashnena sevaya tatvadarshina you have to surrender to tatvadarshi render service unto him surrender unto him and ask questions so approaching tatvadarshi is pure devotees mahat pad rajo bishekam is the common factor everywhere and the only factor then everything becomes effective then our study of vedas our tapasya our worship everything becomes our chanting it becomes fruitful so ultimately a person has to reach this platform and this lord krishna also will explain in the 13th chapter acharya upasanam worshiping the acharya yo devotee yo mat bhakta samay priya such devotee is very dear to me worshiping him this is very important element of knowledge so this condition should be met always mai yavesh mano yamam mind should be completely absorbed in krishna and krishna tells tesham am samuddharta to those who are always thinking of me in all the activities their activities dedicated just to me i will deliver them very soon from this ocean of birth and death now lord krishna starts describing the yoga ladder the top most platform of yoga then after that if you cannot do that you cannot even do that what is the next level fourth rung like this very clearly lord krishna will be mentioning so all our doubts which path is better which is best which is subordinate it will be very very clear now so please hear carefully mai eva man adhatsva mai buddhim niveshaya nivasishya si mai eva ata urdhvam na sanshaya just fix your mind upon me the supreme personality of godhead and engage all your intelligence in me thus you will live in me always without a doubt so here krishna is mentioning mai eva man adhatsva mai buddhim niveshaya if mind and intelligence are absorbed in krishna then a person is living in krishna a person is living in the spiritual world even though his body may appear to be acting on the material platform but that person is completely liberated on spiritual platform this is called jivan mukta stage as a sleeping person appears to be present here in this world but he is completely unaware he might be having some pain in the body some fever some other uh, problem but he is completely unaware aloof he is not troubled by the physical troubles he is on subtle plane when he is sleeping or dreaming in a similar fashion even though the body is visible and visibly eating sleeping acting in this world but such a person mai avesh mano yam mai eva mana adhatsva whose mind is absorbed in krishna and intelligence also such a person lord krishna is explaining here nivasishyasi mai eva he is living in me only he is living on the spiritual world physical pangs material pangs do not affect him anymore so this is the perfection this is what lord krishna is recommending to arjuna absorb your mind and intelligence in me there is no doubt about it now this is not easy how much we are able to think of krishna we are getting disturbed by the external changes so lord krishna tells if you cannot do this constant absorption in my thoughts then ath chittam samadhatum 
न शक्नोषि मयि स्थिरम् अभ्यास योगे न ततो मामिच्छाप्तुम् धनंजय माय डियर अर्जुना ओ विनर ऑफ वेल्थ if you cannot fix your mind upon me without deviation then follow the regulated principles of bhakti yoga in this way you will develop a desire to attain to me na shaknoshi mai sthiram you cannot do this then what you should do abhyasa yogena tato you practice the regulated principles of this yoga bhakti yoga then what will happen mam ichcha tum dhananjaya now we may not even desire to attain krishna consciousness to think of krishna always so by following the rules and regulations of bhakti yoga intense desire to have attraction for krishna to engage in krishna service will awaken in the heart and then by doing that person will be able to absorb oneself in the thoughts of krishna so top most is always absorption in thoughts of krishna second is regulated principles of bhakti yoga now uh, one metal i cannot even do this regulated principles getting up early in the morning chanting the names of krishna offering him aarti giving him something to eat and uh, dressing him and observing fasts on certain days like this many rules and regulations are there i cannot follow even that that is somehow troublesome then lord krishna is he is very merciful he tells abhyase pya samartho si मत्कर्म परमो भवा मदर्थम अपि कर्माणि कुर्वन् सिद्धिमवाप्स्यसी इफ यू कैन नॉट प्रैक्टिस द रेगुलेशंस ऑफ भक्ति योगा देन जस्ट ट्राई टू वर्क फॉर मी बिकॉज़ बाय वर्किंग फॉर मी यू विल कम टू द परफेक्ट स्टेज मदर्थम अपि कर्माणि सो वन कैन नॉट डू दिस चैंटिंग और संकीर्तन or worshiping lord early in the morning fasting so many other things then engaging oneself in the service of krishna is what is recommended here madartham for my sake api karmani kurvan siddhim avapsyasi if you do this then you will also come to the perfect stage gradually you will be able to follow the rules and regulations and then eventually your mind will become fixed on me So how to work for Krishna this we have seen in the last verse of 11th chapter also mat karma krin mat parmo mat bhakta sang varjita mat karma krin krishna karma so uh, what is krishna karma krishna has this karma of spreading this knowledge yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata when people forget the path of religion righteousness the right path of uh, attaining love of god going back to god then i come here to give this knowledge so spreading this knowledge is krishna's work and to spread this knowledge we need everything we need organization we need uh, so many resources financial resources so if one has money one can contribute money to such an end if one has got any skills one knows the art of civil engineering you can please come and render services by constructing the establishment for krishna if you have your other skills i am very expert uh, floor cleaner come and clean sweep the floor of krishna that is also krishna karma i do not know much i just grow vegetables then grow vegetables for krishna bring and offer them to krishna whatever activities you are doing i just know how to cook cook for krishna krishna karma one should do work for krishna all one skills can be used for krishna so those skills if done if used for krishna then that also brings a person to spiritual perfection this is third level after that now i cannot even do that because of ignorance i do not know that i have to do it or sometimes a person may have different affiliation affiliation to different faith or there could be restrictions of family society distance geography then how one is able to do if it is not possible then lord krishna mentions अथय तदप्यशक्सि कर्तमश्रिताकर्मफल तत कुयतात्मवान्फ हाउ एवर यू आर अनेबल टू वर्क इन दिस कॉन्शियसनेस देन ट्राई टू एड गिविंग अप ऑल रिजल्ट ऑफ यूर वर्क एंड ट्राई टू बी सेल्फ सिचुएटेड यू कैन नॉट डू दिस जस्ट गिव अप द रिजल्ट ऑफ यूर वर्क दैट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट 
So, if one does not know that the aim of life is Krishna, absolute truth is Krishna, the work should be done for him, the result of the work should be offered to him, then other activities are recommended here. Because it needs elevation in consciousness to know that. So, what are other activities? Then philanthropic activities, working for social interest, national interest, and general welfare, physical welfare, although that is not very high form of service because service should be eternal, it should be giving permanent relief to people. But if such knowledge is not there, that is also recommended. Feeding people, giving uh, support to people in the form of finances or infrastructure or XYZ, old age homes, hospitals, educational institutions, teaching some skills, helping people in general. So these are also recommended. Such activities when performed nicely, but one should know how to work for others. One should know, one should learn to give up the results of activities. This is bare minimum that one has to do for spiritual advancement. Now in between also there are few steps. What are those? Lord Krishna explains. Shreyo Hijnanam Abhyasa Jnanadhyanam Vishishyate Dhyanat karma falat tyagas tyaga chantiranantaram. If you cannot take to this practice, then engage yourself in the cultivation of knowledge. Better than knowledge, however, is meditation, and better than meditation is renunciation of the fruits of action, for by such renunciation one can attain peace of mind. So, this could be a little confusing if you compare with the previous verses. So, I'll explain what does it mean. Shreyo hi jnanam abhyasat From the practice of giving up the results of one's activity, what Lord Krishna just mentioned is jnanam, cultivating knowledge. But unless a person gives up the results of the activities for others, so minimum 50% should be given up for others. As I have told before also, this is the formula. So this is practical thing. Ideal is one should just keep body and soul together. That was what brahmanas were doing. They will not save one grain for the next day. Just they will somehow arrange maintenance for that day and they practice dependence on the Supreme Lord. Brahmanas will not save anything at all. Just they will keep body and soul together. But it may not be practical for everyone. So God gives very practical instructions. If we are thinking that something is written which is very difficult to understand, not practical, that means we might not be understanding from the right source or not under proper guidance. The knowledge mentioned in Vedas is there to be understood and to be implemented. Under proper guidance, in proper source, it should be understood and implemented. So one has to act in this consciousness. One must give up the results of one's activities. But because God is practical, he tells, not everyone can be expected to become Brahmana immediately and just live by keeping body and soul together. That is why others, they have this formula of using 50% minimum for Krishna's service. 25% of wealth should be kept for emergency purpose because in household there could be emergencies. And in 25% of the income, one should be able to meet his expenses, regular expenses. So our living standard should never exceed more than 25% of income. 25% is bank reserve and 50% should be used for Krishna. This is practical. And ideal, you can aspire to reach a stage where you are just living by keeping body and soul together. Rest, everything is going for Krishna. Now this 50% also could be tough. So you can start with minimum uh, 30% or 20% or at least 10% or whatever is possible for you. You are in great financial crunch. At least give one dollar, one, one rupee for Krishna. Start with that minimum. But something we should start, we should fix it. And gradually we can aspire to reach more and more and reach this recommended of minimum 50%. So this should be done for Krishna by giving the results of one's activities. Even if one gives for general welfare work, which is the first rung of this yoga ladder, then one's intelligence and mind becomes purified. Then one can understand the spiritual subject matter. That is why it is told, Shreyo hi jnanam abhyasat. Better than this practice of giving up the results for general welfare work is jnanam, the path of knowledge. And higher than the path of knowledge is jnana dhyanam vishishyate. 
when a person advances in knowledge then automatically one learns to meditate so process of meditation is better than that of cultivating knowledge gyana dhyana vishishya se and higher than meditation is dhyanat karma phalatyagas so one may ask what is this better than karma phalatyag is gyan better than gyan is dhyan and better than dhyan is again karma phalatyag no these karma phalatyagas are different giving up the results for general people and giving up the results for krishna so better than meditation is giving up the results for krishna so you can just imagine dhyan and gyan are so tough one has to give up the family life do such great tapasya brahmacharyas must strong celibacy in mind body and deed and then uh, we just understood the process of ashtang yoga dhyana it is so difficult sitting in one place without any motion without eating sleeping stopping all that so difficult but higher than that more powerful than that is karma phalatyagat giving up the results of activities for krishna so if one learns somehow one gives the results of activities for krishna that is better than dhyan yoga also this is the verdict here you read it dhyanat karma phalatyagas yaga shantir anantaram one gets unlimited peace so you can practice this give up the results for krishna and then you see shantir anantaram we are looking for peace peace and war both are created by krishna happiness and distress both are created by krishna to give up the results of activities for krishna practically you will experience anantaram shanti antar means interval without any interval constant peace one will be able to even householders will be able to relish the consciousness of a sanyasi if they follow the practical uh, principles of bhakti yoga and give up the results for krishna minimum 50% then consciousness of sanyasi anantaram the peace for which we were always hankering we will find that peace so here very beautifully krishna has explained this yoga ladder so the bottom most rung is engaging in one's duties brahman kshatriya vaishya shudra was the vanashrama system now whatever job business occupation we have we can do that but give up the results for general work if there is no higher sense but if we can follow gyan then that is better understanding what is truth by reading the vedas upanishads bhagavad gita higher than that is dhyan the process of meditation on the super soul within the heart higher than that is giving up the results for krishna yaga shantir anandaram higher than that is lord krishna has mentioned madartham api kontya working for krishna so what is the difference between giving up the results of activities for krishna and working for krishna so one does not exactly want to work for krishna krishna is telling you do this activity no i, I am attached to that activity but i will give the results to you just like one son is telling no father i don't want to work with you but i will give you maintenance i will give all my money to you but i want to do this kind of job i want to live away from you so this is also better at least he supporting the family supporting the father parents but uh, a better more obedient child would say yes father you will please tell me what should i do you want me to be here i will be here with you no problem so that is higher stage so giving up the results of krishna means a person is attached to the results he will enjoy and give up for krishna also but higher than that is working just for krishna under the direction of krishna and higher than that is engaging in rules and regulations of bhakti yoga getting up early in the morning brahm murta taking bath at least twice a day and worshiping uh, the lord in the temple uh, chanting doing kirtan offering food to the lord regular reading of the scriptures and uh, higher than that the topmost level is always the mind is absorbed in thoughts of krishna intelligence is absorbed in krishna service all the limbs are completely engaged in service of krishna for one moment a person does not forget krishna this is the topmost platform so in this way gradual elevation is sought in spiritual life so very clearly krishna has explained this this is called yoga ladder everything is yoga so a person is expected to keep moving upwards but when a person stuck at some level then he is known by the respective rank when has got stuck at the gyan level he is called gyan yogi when has got stuck 
एट ध्यान लेवल ही इज कॉल्ड ध्यान योगी अदरवाइज योगी मीन्स ही शुड बी प्रोग्रेसिव शुड कीप ऑन मूविंग अपवर्ड्स एंड फाइनली ही शुड रीच मई एव मन आदस्व मई बुद्धि निवेश या माइंड इंटेलिजेंस कंप्लीटली एब्जॉर्ब इन अद्वेष्टा सर्वभूता मैत्र करुण एव निर्मो निरहंकार समुख सुख क्षमी सतुष्ट सतत योगी यतात्मा दृढ़ निश्चय मयि अर्पित मनोबुद्धि यो मद्भक्त समे प्रिय one who is not envious but who is a kind friend to all living entities who does not think himself a proprietor who is free from false ego and equal both in happiness and distress who is always satisfied and engaged in devotional service with determination and whose mind and intelligence are in agreement with me he is very dear to me now krishna is explaining the position of this topmost yogi personalist devotee is better than impersonalist now what is his position so krishna is explaining advesta sarvabhuta naam he is not envious of anybody as we discussed we are all envious of each other even within the family there is enviousness oh brother is earning more than me sister is earning more than me sometimes there is envy there is envy everywhere among the community members neighbors friends relatives we cannot see others advancing that is why we all are working hard we cannot see ourselves lagging behind but a devotee does not fall for this mindless competition i am eternal this temporary competition that too this competition takes place in a society where there is envy there is no love so advesta devotee is not part of this dveshta this enviousness maitra karuna evacha he is very very friendly very very compassionate to all the living entities compassionate means he sees that everybody is suffering only because of lack of this knowledge so he tries to spread this knowledge this is the best means of showing compassion nirmamo nirahankara he does not have any sense of mama proprietorship because nirahankara he does not have ahankar false ego that i am the body so i am not the body so this body uh, belongs to krishna anything which i have produced from my body that also does not belong to me my children don't belong to me my property wealth does not belong to me everything belongs to krishna so if neighbor's money is stolen shall we get disturbed not at all similarly such a person whether he gets money he loses money is not at all disturbed he is always equally poised of course for the service of krishna he will try his level best to protect the body to protect the money but if it goes despite our best efforts to save it for krishna that means it is krishna's plan so he is not disturbed at all cashier will try his level best to keep proper track of notes count it protect it from general people if there is robbery in the bank then what can be done cashier's job will be intact he will not be scolded for that so sometimes when krishna plans it uh, things may be there things may not be there but devotee is always equipoise that is why it is told sam dukha sukha kshami in dukh and in sukh he is always sama he is always equipoise santushta satatam yogi such a person is always satisfied in every circumstances now we are taught never to remain satisfied what is the civilization one should learn the art of remaining satisfied in every circumstances whatever is happening outside i am not affected by it yat atma drid nischaya why is not affected by it because with great determination he is working just to advance in one's krishna consciousness just like a child or a student who is writing examination uh, sometimes uh, it could be troublesome it could be very hot there in the examination hall the conditions may not be proper the seating arrangement would not be most comfortable but still he writes the exam because he is completely focused on the objective why one is here one is not sitting in the exam hall to have a very luxurious setting to have the best of their conditioners to have best of the music inside no one is there to clear an examination similarly we are here to clear the examination one need not take many more births and deaths one needs to become immortal in this human form of life so one should be completely focused dhrida nishchaya with great 
endeavor one should advance on this path with great determination so thus a devotee is always equally poised in happiness or in distress because one understands nothing belongs to me something is coming something is going i will do my level best but then it is happening as per krishna's plan so he is equally poised so the sort of equanimity is very important so these qualities we might feel why krishna is repeating again every other chapter krishna tells santushta always remain satisfied sama dukha sukha kshami we have understood why again again he is repeating because it is very important to develop these qualities a materialistic society does not tell they tell the other way around get disturbed in misery become elated when you become uh, successful and remain dissatisfied so that you keep working hard all these wrong concepts are being fed so we have to develop these qualities thus krishna is repeating and mai arpit mano buddhir mind mano buddhir mano buddhir krishna is repeating use your intelligence not for arranging your material opulence that will anyway come as per destiny whatever is there don't worry about it so use your intelligence how we can engage more in the service of krishna and mana mind also should be absorbed in me mind and intelligence should be absorbed in me yo mad bhaktah such a bhakta means devotee same priya such a devotee is very dear to me so now there is no doubt now we will see in every shloka krishna is mentioning yo mad bhakta same priya such a bhakta is dear to me bhakti man me priyo naraha such a devotee is very dear to me so if somebody reads bhagavad gita one cannot come to any other conclusion but bhagavad gita it is so clear where is the question of anything else but unfortunately people have not read even one shloka or its explanation in the bhagavad gita or even if they read they read some other uh, they they get misled so many commentaries are there they are not able to read find the perfect bhagavad gita of disciplic succession otherwise it is so clear right can anybody interpret it it is very clear from the verses the word itself yasmano dvijate loko lokano dvijate chayah harsha marsh bhayo dvegae mukto yas sach me priya he for whom no one is put into difficulty and who is not disturbed by anxiety who is steady in happiness and distress is very dear to me so this is very important qualification of a devotee yasma no dvijate loko one who is not cause of anxiety dissatisfaction fearfulness disturbance for others is a devotee and one who never comes into fearfulness anxiety or disturbance by others one does not disturb others and one is not disturbed by others that is a devotee so it is not that one has to arrange all the external circumstances to become free from anxiety fear depression disturbance no one simply has to work upon oneself we do not know this we often think other people are responsible for miseries in my life you know i am responsible because of my low consciousness if i elevate myself in krishna consciousness then nobody will have any capacity to disturb me and at the same time the devotees are also not cause of disturbance anxiety fearfulness for others so this important thing we have to keep in mind and we have to practice of course we need not practice all these things separately these qualities will develop automatically by practicing devotional service but one must try one must aspire to attain these while practicing devotional service anapeksha shuchir daksha udasi no gatavyatah sarvarambha parityagi yo mad bhaktas same priya a devotee who is not dependent on the ordinary course of activities who is pure expert without cares free from all pains and who does not strive for some result is very dear to me yo narishyati nadveshti na shochati na kankshati shubha shubha parityagi bhakti man yas same priya one who neither grasps pleasure or grief who neither laments nor desires 
and who renounces both auspicious and inauspicious things is very dear to me so just see every verse krishna is mentioning bhakti man ya same priya bhakti man ya same priya the devotee is dear to me bhakta te tiva me priya the devotee is dear to me so krishna very clearly wants to tell mai yavesh mano ye ma nitya yukta upasate who is always upasate worshiping me mind absorbed in me attached to me he is very dear to me devotee is very dear to me because he is having all these qualifications so there is no doubt that only a devotee bhakti yogi is dear to krishna most dear to krishna na rishyati na dveshti same qualifications of equanimity because he understands this material world is illusion in illusion there is no need of being happy or coming under stress so na rishyati na dveshti neither grasps pleasure or grief na shochati na kankshati does not aspire for anything does not lament for anything because he is thoroughly convinced presence or absence of anything does not make me happy or under stress but presence or absence of krishna consciousness makes me happy or in distress one who has krishna consciousness can remain happy despite all material odds one who does not have krishna consciousness cannot be happy despite all material comforts so coming and going of material pleasures pains opulences or people does not impact him at all so this is wrong education that you will be happy when you attain something thus everyone is working very hard to attain something if they don't attain they are in uh, lamentation shochati and if they attain somehow that happiness is also not satisfying to the heart this is propaganda uh, that if you attain this you'll be happy movies will do propaganda they lived happily ever after no one has lived happily ever after it is not possible to live happily ever after one can be happy only in krishna consciousness unless the water is being poured on the root leaf cannot be happy so one cannot be happy without serving god and loving god so propaganda movies they do happily ever after and then people wonder have i got into wrong marriage have i got a wrong person let me change the person this is wrong and all the other uh, companies will tell this is very nice job uh, there is job satisfaction one thinks let me change the job i'll be happy no sir it is not possible it is just propaganda the coaching institutes will do propaganda you crack this examination and then you see you are so happy such name fame recognition those who have cracked such examinations they see there is not much difference in life maybe i should do something more this is just propaganda just propaganda so that is why who have attained all these top positions are not satisfied in their lives so that is why devotee does not hanker for anything he knows what is the use of hankering i just need to keep my body and soul together and work to advance in krishna consciousness and if anything goes away any anyway, that is not cause of my distress na shochi does not laments shubha shubh parityagi we want to do good things and we want to avoid bad things but devotee is willing to do all the bad things also if it is required to be done for krishna for bad things usually a person has to suffer so if one kills another living entity one has to suffer but here we see arjuna became ready to kill everybody anybody we saw in the previous discourse how gopis they gave the dust of their feet to be put on krishna's head one will go to hell if one puts the dust of one's feet on god's head but gopis told no if krishna becomes well he comes out of his fever by taking this dust let us go to hell and suffer let krishna become well so thus a devotee is willing to do anything in auspicious for krishna and he is willing to give up all auspiciousness also for krishna for him krishna's pleasure only matters thus such an attitude when somebody possesses bhakti man same priya he becomes very dear to krishna समशत्रौ च मित्रे तथा मनापमान शीतोष्णा सुख दुखेशु समसंग विवर्जि तुल्य निंदास्तुतिर्मौनी संतुष्टो ये न केनचे अनिकेतस्थिमतिर्भक्तिमान मे प्रि नर one who is equal to friends and enemies who is equally poised in honor and dishonor heat and cold happiness and distress 
fame and infamy who is always free from contamination always silent and satisfied with anything who doesn't care for any residence who is fixed in knowledge and engaged in devotional service is very dear to me so devotee is not enemy of even one's enemy because one knows if any enemy is casting aspersions trying to do something bad to me that is a result of my own karma there is no use of uh, harboring any bad sentiments about even the people who act in a reverse way as per general perspective for a devotee everything is favorable somebody is creating physical mental troubles it is good one takes it as purification as a means of detachment from material world material opulence somebody offers he uses that for service of krishna so from devotee's perspective everything is good just like krishna told to arjuna nimitt matram bhav savya sachin become an instrument in the fight nobody is going to return back alive from this battle now if you want credit then you become instrument in a similar fashion happiness and distress due to us will come to us they are simply instruments what is the use of being angry upon the instrument that creates more karma more bad karma so thus a devotee does not take offense even from one's enemies he is equally poised sama shatrau cha mitre cha in a same fashion the friendly behavior is also as per the karma the devotee is always equally poised for friends as well as enemies only in illusion somebody is perceived as friend somebody just like in a drama somebody will act as villain somebody will act as hero they could be friends outside in real life so even starts believing that yes if somebody is your opponent like arjuna is there his opponents are there one has to kill but all this thing should be done as a matter of duty without thinking the other party is my enemy so in a similar fashion one needs to do duties very nicely if one has got body of mother then son's body should be taken care very nicely daughter's body should be taken care of very nicely but one should understand the son daughter mother is only temporary drama as per the roles we have got machines we have got we have to play the part one should not get carried away thinking this is reality so thus the devotee in his consciousness is equally poised friends or enemy the feelings are generated only in illusion he does not have any animosity or special affection he is equally poised to all sees everyone as part and parcel of god as soon as one sees in any living entity one offers respect because lord as parmatma is sitting within the heart of friend of enemy of animals so any living entity we see we should offer respect immediately as we offer respects to temple this is a disposition of devotee sama shatrau cha mitre cha tatha man apamane o man an apman it is also for the body if somebody has got uh, is sitting in a dull machine then the machine anyway will behave in a dull manner if somebody tells you are a dull person dullard one should not be disturbed my machine is dull somebody is not beautiful no i am not souls are all beautiful but my body is ugly so i don't get disturbed i don't mind so somebody is praising or criticizing it is only for the body i take a nice body and the body is so good looking and somebody praises me oh you are looking so nice i should not get carried away so the devotee is completely undisturbed by man and apman the whole world is hankering for man trying to avoid apman in this illusion they are taking so much of stress and anxiety in life all because of illusion that i am this body the devotee is equally poised in pleasure in pain in man apman in praise or in criticism shri toshna sukh dukheshu in material pleasure or material grief in heat and cold devotee is also equally poised he is always focused on his service to krishna not deterred by heat cold happiness or distress tulya ninda stitir mauni same thing santushtu yena kena chit always one is satisfied in every circumstances aniketa sthir mate aniketa means one who does not care about residence for service of krishna one can accept residence under a tree also or one can live in palace also does not matter wherever krishna service is required devotee is willing to live he does not care about residence so all these things make a devotee very dear to krishna so all these qualities we can note and we should aspire to develop spiritual life is so nice simply if we desire we will attain it material life if we desire we may or may not attain in this life everything depends upon karma if we have strong desire nature will inspire us to do right karma 
and then after a certain number of lives or whenever it is possible once we have done sufficient karma we will get that result but ultimately any result means more birth and death so spiritual life similarly whatever you desire you can attain even in this life there is no destiny controlling spiritual affairs so if you want to develop this wonderful consciousness we can do it so one should aspire to have these qualities so it is that is why being stressed because unless we develop these qualities we don't advance really so one should aspire and engage in service of krishna engagement in service of krishna will bring forth all these qualities automatically separately we need not do any other endeavor just krishna's service ye tu dharma amritam idam yathoktam paryupasate श्रद्धा मत्पर भक्तास्ते तीव मे प्रिया ही हु फॉलोज दिस इम्पेरिशेबल पाथ ऑफ डिवोशनल सर्विस एंड हु कंप्लीटली एंगेज इज हिमसेल्फ विथ फेथ मेकिंग मी द सुप्रीम गोल इज वेरी वेरी डियर टू मी तो कृष्णा हैज एक्सप्लेन सो फार सच अ डिवोट इज डियर टू मी ही इज वेरी डियर टू मी नाउ कृष्णा इज मैंशनिंग अतीव मीन्स वेरी वेरी डियर टू मी who is very very dear to krishna ye tu dharma amritam idam who follows this imperishable path of devotional service who completely engages himself with faith shraddha dhana mat parama making me the supreme goal so one should not simply get stuck in these qualities or engage in bhakti for some other motive one should just have krishna only as the ultimate aim of life once whose aim of life is krishna and who follows this path such a devotee is very very dear to krishna and then there is one devotee who is most dear to krishna nobody has been dearer here krishna has mentioned various qualities you don't get disturbed by happiness and distress you are dear to me don't care about residence you are dear to me and you uh, don't hanker for anything don't lament for anything you are dear to me but there is one qualification krishna tells that krishna mentions at the end of bhagavad gita nobody has ever been dearer to krishna and nobody in future also shall ever be so dear to him as this person who is this person 18th chapter krishna writes so entire bhakti yoga is being dear to krishna the more we become dear to krishna pleasure in devotional service spiritual life comes we get all the knowledge who am i what is god what is our relationship everything follows automatically simply one has to become dear so the person who is most dear to krishna krishna mentions at the end of gita is na cha tasman manushyeshu kaschin me priya kritamah ya imam paramam guhyam mad bhakteshu abhidhasyati one who explains this knowledge to other preaches to others this is a secret first secret is to understand bhagavad gita and second secret is to spread this knowledge to others and then we become most dear to krishna so with this ends this very important chapter devotional service these very important verses are chanted just 20 verses in many many ceremonies abhijekam ceremonies in all the temples because all the confusion is completely sorted out in the topmost position the topmost personality is completely very clearly without any doubt explained in these verses so let us try to assimilate let us try to develop these qualities with this the sandwich portion the stuff the most important matter is there in between the bread loaves of the sandwich so similarly in bhagavad gita the most important section has been very carefully preserved in the middle that is bhakti yoga the middle six chapters first six chapters karma yoga we have studied now last six chapters gyan yoga this gyan yoga uh also is very important because if you follow simply bhakti yoga that is very nice just you can engage in service of krishna but as we have discussed we are prone to use our discretion and deliberation in this age and culture also is not so strong if somebody gives some false arguments we may deviate and leave the path so that we become firmly fixed on this path this process of gyan yoga understanding analyzing the path of extricating oneself from this material nature how living entity gets trapped all this knowledge is very very helpful and important let us understand this wonderful how what is this nature how does it behave how does one get trapped how to come out of it this wonderful knowledge will be explained henceforth so very soon we'll meet with chapter 13 thank you
थैंक यू सो मच फॉर हियरिंग कीप ऑन चैंटिंग ऑलवेज हरे कृष्ण अर्जुन उवाच प्रकृति पुषम चेत्र क्षेत्र चेदिमिछा ज्ञान ज्ञेय च केशवा श्री भगवाच इद शरीर कौंते क्षेत्र मिथ्यधीयते एतुति तम प्राहु क्षेत्र तद्विद अर्जुन सेड ओ माई डियर कृष्ण आई विश टू नो अबाउट प्रकृति नेचर पुरुष द एंजॉयर एंड द फील्ड एंड द नोअर ऑफ द फील्ड एंड ऑफ नॉलेज एंड द एंड ऑफ नॉलेज The blessed Lord then said, "This body, O son of Kunti, is called the field, and one who knows this body is called the knower of the field." Kshetra, Kshetra Gya, Gyanam Gyeyam. These are very important terms in the Sankhya philosophy, which analyzes the existence to understand the absolute truth. Krishna begins explaining Kshetra and Kshetragya two very important terms Kshetra means field just like the farmer has a field farmer has got liberty you put the mango seeds you get mango fruit you put bitter gourd you get bitter fruits In a similar fashion this body is called kshetra or field of activity for the living entity Actually anything happiness or distress that we are experiencing everything comes out of this field called body It doesn't matter what is happening in the whole world ultimately it is a body which is required for any experience good or bad in this world Somebody could be playing very nice soothing music but if a person is deaf he will not be able to enjoy there could be very beautiful form in front of us but if the eyes are not working properly we will not be able to see the form somebody can bring the most delicious food stuffs but if we are sick we will not be able to relish the taste and if all the senses stop working in the body then for us the world does not exist i will think only i exist so thus our experience anything good or bad depends upon this body this is very important the same living entity in the body of pig relishes stool in this body stool is very nasty abominable for us so all our experiences they depend upon this body so this is a great science this body is our field actually not the whole world so depends if we have sown the seeds of sattva guna in this body then we will get knowledge mind control sense control happiness enlightenment If we have sown the seeds of rajoguna in this body then we will get anxiety unlimited sensual desires and hard work and if we have sown the seeds of tamas mode of ignorance what we will get is depression and procrastination always keeping dirty low moods criminal mentalities all such things will manifest everything depends upon what kinds of seeds we are putting in this body and we should not think that the consciousness as many modern scientists they believe although not all now there has been great research in the field of consciousness and some leading scientists they are agreeing that consciousness is not secondary so long many were believing that consciousness is secondary to matter matter configures itself in a certain way and then consciousness is manifest but now they are telling no it is the other way around the consciousness is primary and matter is secondary 
the brain is not the generator of consciousness rather the brain receives the consciousness so this distinction is very very important first of all to make any advancement in spiritual life to understand what is the spirit if i think i am only this body consciousness has no separate existence then we cannot take even first step in spiritual life that is why krishna first of all explains to arjuna kshetra and kshetra gya there is a field which we have and we are kshetra gya gya means to know knower of the field we are different so it is very important to understand who we are and if we have uh some time and a cool mind some sanity then we can understand any intelligent man with little deliberation can understand that he is different from the body because the body is continuously changing the skin is continuously changing the blood is continuously changing bones bone marrow everything it is being produced of food that we eat so the old cells they die and the new cells replace them everything in the body liver gets replaced lungs are heart heart transplantation also happens kidneys everything all the organs of the body can be replaced and by nature's way also they are actually getting replaced because old cells are dying and new cells are taking their place so scientists uh, what they discovered is actually the brain cells they almost stay till the time of death that is what they have done research on and they tell so we are brain actually because i remember when i was small although my body has completely changed the cells have changed but i remember and then when i grew young and now that i am old i remember all these things so who am i who is remembering who is experiencing so they came to the conclusion by some research work and understanding the signals the neuro signals in the body that when you sing this portion of the brain is activated when you eat this portion of the brain is activated from here the signal is coming here the signal is going so they thought that the consciousness is the result of some activity of the brain and actually we are the brain so some of the people they thought if i can preserve my brain and somehow i can put it i can manufacture robots or some bodies then i can continue to live on eternally but this is not same thinking lord krishna is telling kshetra gya knower of the field is different from the field knower of the body is different from the body just like the power the animation in any robot or uh, any toy it is there because of the battery the external source without it there is no animation in a similar fashion the energy in this body is because of external source small spiritual spark which is called brahm so we can understand with an analogy just like we are playing computer game so one can analyze very nicely that virtual character of the game when that character has to jump then unique signal is coming from the keyboard you press this key the character would jump you press another key character would duck you press another key the character would crawl you press another key the character would shoot so it does not mean that the consciousness which the character is displaying it is coming because of the keyboard no there is a conscious person who is passing the signals using the keyboard in a similar fashion this brain is simply like keyboard or a computer through which a conscious personality the spirit soul is passing signals the character is not behaving in a conscious manner on its own that virtual character is being controlled by a real person outside in a similar fashion in this body we can so we can very nicely analyze from where the signal is coming where is it going but we have to understand it is simply an interface between the actual player and the virtual character so just like a person is mistaken to think that the keyboard is the cause of animation and activities of the virtual character it is ignorance to think that the brain is the cause of all the activity brain is but another organ which is not present in many many conscious entities and you can google also there was a frenchman who was a civil servant and he got 90% of his brain cells dead and vanished 
it got replaced by some fluid in the brain so he was surviving very nicely with decent iq with just 10% or less than that of the brain cells remaining his brain was almost gone but he's doing all the functions nicely so that is why this theory uh, the scientists started doubting that what is this consciousness who am i so long we are thinking that brain is responsible for the activities this front portion back portion this lobe that bowl cerebral cortex and so many technologies terminologies uh, they have been used to describe the functions of the brain but this person has got nothing of it just few cells are remaining with entire brain being filled by some liquid but he is performing functioning very normally so there have been like this many other case studies also there have been examples in the vedas also how people are following all the normal duties with a different head so thus we have to understand how a person is functioning without brain and what to speak of this person there are many many entity species which do not have brain at all just like the trees trees are conscious but trees do not have brains it means consciousness is not a function of brain jellyfish starfish and so many species are there which do not have brains but uh, these species they do activities of eating mating sleeping defending very nicely without brain so consciousness is not a function of brain it is very easy to understand but we also understand i am that consciousness and to be more precise the source of consciousness i see i walk i hear so who am i so i am not the brain we have understood from the these examples of the frenchman of so many species so this is what i should think who am i i am nothing of this body this body changes i have been observing so from where have i come in this body why have i come in this body who is the person or the what is the system which is putting so many personalities in so many yantras machines around us which we call bodies so what is this going on in this world human life is meant for this inquiry not like animals you give animal the objects for eating mating sleeping defending an animal is happy just chasing them entire life that is why it is told in human form of life athato brahma jigyasa you should inquire if i am not the body why have i been put into this body why am i suffering from diseases and death which are happening to the body if i am not the body i need not bother with all these things why am i trapped in this body getting so much of harassment this is the purpose of human form of life this is vedic culture so krishna mentions very clearly kshetra this body's field your happiness distress everything is because of this body your perception of the world is just because of this body so you should not depend upon this body in its current state to get knowledge because as we discuss somebody has got a different body he will have different perception of the world altogether the pig has a different perception of the world we have a different perception of the world the same taste is different for us so the real knowledge this body will not give us because all of us have different bodies a blind man will see forms do not exist but that is not fact a deaf man will tell sound does not exist but that is not fact so that is why in the vedas it is mentioned one should not depend upon this body to directly perceive knowledge body creates illusions hallucinations many times then lord krishna explains क्षेत्रज्ञम चापी मां विद्धि सर्व क्षेत्रेशु भारत क्षेत्र क्षेत्रज्ञान यज्ञान मत मम नाउ दिस इज इंटरेस्टिंग कृष्ण टेल्स ओ साइन ऑफ भरत यू शुड अंडरस्टैंड दैट आई एम ऑल्सो द नोअर इन ऑल बॉडीज एंड टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस बॉडी एंड इट्स ओनर इज कॉल्ड knowledge that is my opinion now krishna is explaining what is knowledge so in this verse krishna explains you are the knower of the body but kshetragyam cha cha means and cha means also kshetragyam chaapi mam vidhi please know that i am also kshetragya but a special kshetragya i am a special knower of the field what is the speciality 
क्षेत्रज्ञ चापि माम विद्धि सर्व क्षेत्रेशु भारता आई एम कॉन्शियस ऑफ ऑल द क्षेत्र ऑल द बॉडीज बट यू आर कॉन्शियस ऑफ जस्ट दिस बॉडी नाउ आई नो वॉट इज हैपनिंग इन माई बॉडी आई एम कॉन्शियस सम बडी टच इज आई फील इमीडिएटली बट आई डो नॉट नो वॉट इज हैपनिंग इन योर बॉडी आई कैन नॉट गेट द सेंसेशंस बट कृष्णा इज टेलिंग आई हैव द सेंसेशंस आई हैव द नॉलेज ऑफ ऑल द बॉडीज ऑल द फील्ड्स सर्व क्षेत्र भारत सो देर आर टू क्षेत्र ज्ञास द इंडिविजुअल सोल एंड द इन्फिनिट सोल एंड बोथ आर देयर विद इन दिस बॉडी सो समाइम्स पीपल गेट कन्फ्यूज दैट सोल इज सेम एज सुपर सोल सो वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड एंड इफ यू डोंट अप्रोच अ प्रॉपर स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर वी आर बाउंड टू गेट कन्फ्यूज बिकॉज मेनी टाइम्स सेम टर्मिनोलॉजीज आर एक्सप्लेन द सुपर सोल इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड आत्मा परमात्मा समटाइम्स इज सिंपली कॉल आत्मा and individual soul is also called atma and atma also means body atma also means mind so people sometimes thinks uh, atma and mind it is one and the same thing sometimes people think atma and parmatma is one and the same thing because same word is being used similarly the word brahm the word brahm indicates individual soul the word brahm indicates super soul parmatma and the word brahm also at times indicates this material nature so in vedas it is mentioned in this purport of this verse the reference is given bhokta bhogyam preritaram cha matva sarvam proktam trividham brahmam etat trividham brahmam etat there are three kinds of brahm the individual soul the super soul and the material nature because it is explained in the veda sarvam khalvidam brahm Krishna is supreme Brahm, and from him the energy which is coming out that is also called Brahm. Now this material world is simply transformation of that energy. Actually, there is nothing but Brahm only in the existence. But this Brahm is behaving differently in the material world for the conditioned living souls. So it is important to give it a different name, and we give it the name Prakriti. So one should not get confused. One should take shelter of proper bona fide spiritual master. the prime minister can be also called indian an ordinary citizen can also be called indian both are indians but it does not mean that person is prime minister or both are one person no in the in a similar fashion indian is an identification in a similar fashion brahma is identification that i am different from this matter which i am seeing around me spirit is called brahm so just like if i am telling you are indian i am indian it does not mean i and you are one and the same because of not taking shelter of proper spiritual master with krishna has repeatedly stressed he will stress again in the upcoming verses people get confused i am brahm and god is also brahm so i am god or you have to go and merge with god become one with god all these uh, wrong concoctions they take place so here krishna tells very clearly cha means all cha means and i am different i am and you are not the same arjuna क्षेत्र चापी मां विद्धि सर्व क्षेत्र भारत ऑल दो आई एम द क्षेत्र बट आई एम यूनिक बिकॉज आई एम कॉन्शियस ऑफ ऑल द फील्ड ऑल द क्षेत्र एंड क्षेत्र क्षेत्र ज्ञानम यश तज ज्ञानम मतम ममा नोइंग द फील्ड एंड द नोअर ऑफ द फील्ड बोथ द इंडिविजुअल सोल एंड सुपर सोल दैट इज कॉल्ड नॉलेज तत्त्र यच्चयाद्रिच यदिकारीयत सच्चो यभाव्च तत्सन मे शृणु नाउ प्लीज हियर माय ब्रीफ डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ दिस फील्ड ऑफ एक्टिविटी एंड हाउ इट इज कॉन्स्टिट्यूटेड व्हाट इट्स चेंजेस आर वेन्स इट इज प्रोड्यूस्ड हु दैट नोअर ऑफ द फील्ड ऑफ एक्टिविटीज इज एंड वॉट हिज इन्फ्लुएंसेस आर now krishna will give details what is this field what constitutes this field which means this body what is this material nature what is the origin what are the interactions what are the transformations krishna will give very nice knowledge rishibhir bahudha geetam chhando bhir vividha prathak ब्रह्म सूत्र पदैश्चैवाश्चित दैट नॉलेज ऑफ द फील्ड ऑफ एक्टिविटीज 
and of the knower of the activities is described by various sages in various vedic writings especially in the vedanta sutras and is presented with all reasoning as to cause and effect so krishna is explaining various sages have described this knowledge of kshetra and kshetragya body and knower of the body in various writings but of all of them the most important is vedanta sutra which is called brahma sutra also brahma sutra padaischaiva hetu madbhir vinishchita krishna is telling hetu madbhir means cause and effect why this vedanta sutra is important because it is called nyay prasthan nyay prasthan means giving logic so in vedanta sutra the absolute truth is explained very very logically with explanation of cause and effect so sometimes people follow the religion but there is no philosophy that leads to fanaticism as we are seeing in the world around us people are affiliated nicely to many religions but when philosophy is not there then they become fanatic and that creates lot of disturbance in the society so some people on the other hand they want to shun the religion they tell religion is blind faith it is uh, not based on any rational so i just want to speculate on my own what is absolute truth so it is not possible just like if a person without understanding taking help of scientists wants to understand what is the sun what is the moon he will think they are small balls not even ball disk to our eyes it appears just like a disk or a plate so some shiny plate shiny disks are there in the sky we will think their actual size we will never be able to comprehend earth will always appear flat to us so we take help of the knowledgeable people scientists on our own if we speculate it may take a very long time just like after many many years of speculation people actually came to understand what is this world actually the world is not flat sun and moon are very big not just small balls or disks so like this various perceptions we developed after a very long time so if you want to understand god now we are discussing just about few planets and stars if you want to understand about the creator of the universe then it is very very difficult it will take many lifetimes of speculation so thus krishna tells instead of wasting so many lives now of course parmatma is there in the heart he will guide help us to continue our research but why do we want to suffer from unlimited deaths old age and disease take help of religion what is religion the codes given by god the scientific codes dharmam tu sakshat bhagavat pranitam so these instructions which are given by god if we follow scientific instructions they help us to come to the spiritual platform and proper understanding of self and the supreme self god the purpose of creation everything is revealed very nicely so just like we take a user manual it becomes very easy to operate the machine otherwise we will not be able to operate advanced machines or we will spoil the machines in a similar fashion if we don't take help of religion we will spoil ourselves that is why despite so much of technological advancement because people are going away from religion actual religion only distress is increasing in society we are messing up with the machines with the nature with our bodies so thus religion is required and philosophy is also required philosophy without religion is mental speculation will lead us nowhere and religion without philosophy is fanaticism so religion has to be backed up with philosophy that is why the young generation today they are not taking interest in religion because there is no philosophy no science behind it and that is bhagavad gita that is vedanta sutra everything is explained very very logically that is why it is appealing to many many educated and young minds now so krishna is telling understand this thing from vedanta sutra that is the most authorized way of understanding what is body what is the knower of the body what is this material nature what is this consciousness and vedanta sutra also can be difficult to understand that is why it is recommended in kali yuga to read bhagavatam bhagavatam is the explanation of vedanta sutra mahabhutanya hankaro buddhir avyaktam eva cha indriyani dashaikam cha pancha chendriya gochara ichchadvesha sukham dukham संघाटेतना धृति 
एतत्क्षेत्र सामसेन स विकार उदाहृत द फाइव ग्रेट एलिमेंट्स फॉल्स ईगो इंटेलिजेंस द अनमेनिफेस्टेड द टेन सेंसेस द माइंड द फाइव सेंस ऑब्जेक्ट्स डिजायर हेटरेड हैप्पीनेस डिस्ट्रेस द एग्रीगेट द लाइफ सिम्टम्स एंड कन्विक्शंस all these are considered in summary to be the field of activities and its interactions so here krishna is giving the analysis of this field in the most basic constituents we cannot tell the body is made of some proteins amino acids dna rna this is also a uh, not fundamental explanation fundamental means those things which are making the smallest building blocks of the body not the cells but even the atoms within the atom all these elements are present which are those elements panch bhutani the five great elements earth air water fire sky we have discussed how fire within the atom has been discovered in the form of nuclear energy now if the science advances they might be able to discover other elements also the water and uh, uh, space ether air everything they can find it may not be present in the form we perceive it here fire is present in subtle form fire is present in gross form and we can understand now just like the induction cookers are there now there is no visible fire but you can cook your food it means that heating element that fire is present in invisible or subtle form in this way fire can be present in many many forms but it is present there in a similar fashion within the atom also water sky ether everything is present and intelligence is also present mind is also present and false ego another energy which makes us believe i am the body that is also present within the atom so 5 plus 3 subtle mind intelligence and false ego man buddhi ahankara these are the eight elements then 10 senses five knowledge acquiring senses eyes nose skin tang these are called knowledge acquiring senses and then these are called gyanendriya then karmendriya means executive senses which have functions to perform like arms and legs these are also considered senses in the sankhya philosophy arms legs voice the vocal cords genitals and anus these form 10 senses and there are sense objects for the knowledge acquiring senses vision is a sense object taste is another sense object so in this way five sense objects so put together so many elements 24 elements are present and the aggregate when all of these are combined together we get this body and when these elements interact the result of interaction is life symptoms sometimes it can be visible sometimes it is not visible there are some bodies in which just like earlier the scientists were not able to understand that trees have life because they are standing at one place they are apparently not talking not walking not showing such metabolisms they thought trees do not have life so a person may show life symptoms may not show life symptoms but life is different from life symptom so the symptom of life is actually the interaction of the elements of this field and hatred desire happiness distress all these things are created when the sense objects interact with the senses sometimes that is desirable sometimes we hate it i don't want this experience few things give pain few things give pleasure all this is because of interaction of the elements of this field so once the living entity gets trapped in this field then helplessly he will feel desire and hatred pleasure and pain and whole life one will be forced to run to increase the pleasure to mitigate the pain in this way helplessly the material nature pushes pulls the living entities and a living entity undergoes to rigorous hard work and creates more and more desires and produces more and more bodies in this way gets trapped in the cycle of karma so the life symptoms happiness distress desire hatred these are all the field of activities and their interactions even the convictions that we have just like a rabbit a rabbit is having so much of tamaguna as soon as it is attacked by a lion or predator it closes its eyes when he sees no hope of running away 
and then it becomes happy things oh line is gone but line is not gone it has closed the eyes this is called tamasic conviction so when people drink they want to go for some entertainment to forget the miseries of life this is because of the tamasic conviction about life satvik conviction is different satvik person understands i am not the body i am spirit soul so he or she is not affected by these all these bodily changes external troubles and when a person very much advances in spiritual life then he is least bit affected by the uh, so called pains of this material world and when a person becomes a devotee he develops the art to get pleasure from the pains inflicted by the material world the example given is as a mother is lifting the child in her arms definitely the arms are feeling load but the mother mother gets so much i'll repeat but the mother gets so much of pleasure even though there is some uh, pain for the arms but there is higher pleasure in a similar fashion a devotee because his only ambition is to engage oneself in the service of god all the pains are also very very pleasant for the devotee so this is the consciousness the devotional consciousness krishna consciousness which if a person acquires yasme sthito na dukhe na guru na api vichalye even the greatest misery is not misery rather that misery is transformed into ecstasy just like the misery of lifting the baby in the arms gets transformed into ecstasy for the mother so just imagine what is devotee's life we should aspire and work hard to get this consciousness and that is what lord krishna is kindly giving through these beautiful verses of bhagavad gita Now Lord Krishna explains how a person can get to this knowledge of body and the shetragya two shetragyas which are different from the body In which school should we take admission what is the process what are different standards or classes by which a person elevates oneself on this platform of knowledge that Krishna is kindly explaining now so please hear very carefully अमानिदंभिंसाजव आचार्योपासन शौच धैर्य आत्म विग्रह इंद्रियाषु वैराग्यम अनहंकार जन्म मृत्युजरा व्याधि दुख दोषादर्शन असक् तिरनभिश्वंगारग्रहादिषु निमचिष्टानिष्टोपत्तिषु मयि चान्योगे नक्तिरव्यभिचारिणी विवक्तेशन संसदी अध्यात्म तत्वर्शन एस्तज्ञानी प्रोक्त अज्ञान यूमिलिटी प्राइडलेसने नॉन वायलेंस टॉलरेंस सिंप्लिसिटी अप्रोचिंग अ बोनाफाइड स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर क्लेनलीनेस स्टेडीनेस एंड सेल्फ कंट्रोल renunciation of the objects of sense gratification absence of false ego the perception of the evil of birth death old age and disease non attachment to children wife home and the rest an even mindedness amid pleasant and unpleasant events constant and unalloyed devotion to me resorting to solitary places detachment from the general mass of people accepting the importance of self realization and philosophical search for the absolute truth all these i thus declare to be knowledge and what is contrary to these is ignorance so this is the process of knowledge this is real knowledge we are not concerned with relative knowledge much unless it helps us to advance on the path of real knowledge relative knowledge is who am i i am barrister i am doctor i am engineer how long shall we remain we shall leave the body everything will go away or oh no i am indian i am american i am pakistani i am chinese 
how long will this identification remain it will change with the body so this is relative knowledge who am i means i am different from all these designations this is very important so to understand this absolute knowledge my absolute identity different from the body identity of the supreme personality the origin of entire existence we have to follow this path and this path of knowledge begins from the first step of humility and it is mentioned in all the bona fide religions lord jesus also told the kingdom of god is meant for meek and humble so humility is always is always recommended everywhere islam also means submission so being submissive and being humble it is recommended everywhere all the messengers of god have given this very crucial important step be very humble this field is giving you some knowledge which you think is absolute but it is not it is simply the interaction of its elements as we discussed if a person has all the senses unfunctional in his body then one will not be able to tell any form any taste any perception whatsoever but will the world stop existing no for him the world is not existing because of the senses which are not functioning so we have to understand this body cannot give us real knowledge this body will give us temporary knowledge and the knowledge which is relative which is my perception a color blind person will give different perception of colors which may not be actual fact which is not so we have to understand this body is not capable of getting perfect knowledge so to follow perfect is it simple to understand we have to have, be very very clear thus a person becomes humble i am dependent on this body to understand the world but i cannot be sure this body the perception created by the body are relative if i change body i will have a different understanding of the world so to get absolute knowledge this is the process first of all become humble that i have to find a person who knows absolute knowledge the literature in which absolute knowledge is mentioned because my body will simply give me perceptions which may not be real i can never be sure so become humble first of all and after humility then pridelessness non violence now non violence is also very important to understand and actually i should explain humility also real humility because it should not remain just uh, a session in which we are reading and then we forget these things we should apply we have to come to the platform of real knowledge this should not be just like hearing any other subject matter politics or some other uh, material sciences so this is meant for practical application in our life by which we come to platform of knowledge and we gain unending happiness so humility sometimes uh, if a person is walking with uh, folded hands and always bowing down speaking softly we think that is humble so very nicely it is explained in bhagavad gita itself what is humility humility means not being anxious to get the satisfaction of being honored by others because any praise or criticism it pertains to this body if i am wearing a mask somebody tells oh you are very beautiful or oh, that is for the mask or oh, somebody tells you are ugly that is also to the mask why should i get affected by it i am ultimately wearing a mask i should not get in gladdened by hearing the praise nor should i get disturbed by hearing the criticism that is not me that is my mask external dress in a similar fashion the intelligence that we have that is also part of this field the appearance that we have qualities that we have or the faults that we have all these things pertain to the field and i am shetragya different from the field so why should i fall for this deception this is a big deception of this material nature we are getting affected by praise and we are trying to avoid criticism and thus we work hard entire life if we are traveling sitting in a train or a plane or a bus we don't mind if people don't praise us don't know about us why we don't mind because i understand i am here for a short while then why am i impressing everybody in this world here also i am there for a short while i am eternal living entity because i do not understand this eternality i think this world is a big big uh place and i am meant here to live a big time 
almost eternally it's a long life it is there because we do not realize my eternal existence so a person here should remain unconcerned one who understands eternity i'll repeat one who understands eternality this world is but a flash small flash so one should save time not work very hard just to get some praises in this world working hard for to avoid criticism all these things will come and go one should know things will i will pass things will continue nobody can stop material happiness and distress they are concomitant factors they will come and go one should save time so that one should not get more such material distresses in future so one who is not anxious to get the satisfaction of being honored by others that person is called a humble person non violence also people think that if i kill somebody harm somebody then that is called non violence satisfaction of the body sense gratification is taken as good work and harm to the body is taken as bad work so we have to rise above this bodily concept sometimes harming the body is good for us who is shetragya different from the body just like on the battlefield of kurukshetra so many people were there the devotees were there the demons were there apparently two different activities were happening bhagavatam explains the devotees were being protected by the lord and the demons were being demolished killed by the lord but actually everybody who was there on the battlefield of kurukshetra same thing was happening both the parties were being elevated to salvation devotees or demons so devotees were acting as an instrument in executing the mission of lord and thus fighting leading this life of virtue in devotional service they will be elevated to the spiritual kingdom the demons by their acts they will degrade themselves so they were being killed and because they were dying in the presence of krishna they were getting completely purified and they also were getting salvation they also were getting liberated which is possible only after great great tapasya of many many lifetimes they got immediately by being killed in the presence of god so thus actually the same activity happens god is all merciful the anger of god and the love of god are the same that is why he is called absolute person there is no relativity in the person of god so this point is very very important now we just want comfort of body and if i can give comfort of body to others that is taken as benevolence and hardship of body is taken as punishment but no vedic culture means tapasya give hardship to your body so that you can make spiritual advancement so thus non violence means not doing violence to the soul sometimes violence to the body is actually benefit for the soul same is the case with capital punishment it is told in the vedas if a murderer is not killed in this life next life he has to suffer so much so in this life if a person is killed then he is purified of the sins these are the laws of nature otherwise the laws of nature will punish the murderer very much in the next life now we think of oh, this life is all in all anyway there is no next life let him live there, let there be life imprisonment or imprisonment for a long time this is kindness this is not kindness this is punishment so vedas mention the administrator or the king if he imparts he or she imparts capital punishment on the killer that is mercy upon that person he is saved from future so many suffering which are going to come so in the ignorance of this separate existence of kshetra and kshetragya people commit such blunders in the name of non violence there is violence committed so real non violence means spreading this knowledge of spiritual life to others in this way all the miseries can be solved then tolerance is also very important as we discussed we should not get so much disturbed by the flow of happiness and distress which is anyway going to happen and whatever limited time we have in this human body that should be saved to become immortal so one should learn to tolerate the ongoing happiness and distress so tolerance is important and simplicity arjavam we all know what is simplicity we should not be duplicit and when a person is having these qualities one is a suitable candidate to approach a bona fide spiritual master that is called acharya upasanam approaching a spiritual master or worshiping the spiritual master 
this is the next very important element in the spiritual knowledge but unless somebody is humble even if one approaches spiritual master that will be fruitless that is why lord krishna mentioned if you have been hearing previous uh, episodes previous chapters krishna mentioned in fourth chapter pranipaten pari prashnena sevaya pranipatena humble submission is very much required if a person is arrogant inquiries to spiritual master will not be fruitful the person should be simple person should be tolerant person should be prideless humble non violent and when one approaches spiritual master then all the inquiries will be very very fruitful about absolute truths so approaching spiritual master is next element of knowledge because we discussed we cannot depend upon perceptions created by the body which change even within this body or when we change different body perception sometimes can be totally different so we have to approach spiritual master who is not having relative perceptions who are liberated who are not controlled by the urges of this body such a person is qualified to become spiritual master and we should approach such person to get knowledge then when we approach spiritual master follow his instructions we become clean shaucham that is next step of knowledge if a person is unclean he might have read all the books of knowledge but as per krishna that person is living in ignorance because what is the use of accumulating so much knowledge here and that knowledge might give him some money and fame here but all this will be left behind and that person can go on to become animal in next life because people are talking so much about law of attraction and manifestation so that is fact nature is made to fulfill our desires now if the nature notices this person lives in a very dirty fashion nature will give animal body there is no need to take bath you live like that always in a dirty fashion so everything nature is noticing all our thoughts all our actions so shaucham is the next step so to maintain shaucham it is explained in the vedic culture one should take bath every day bare minimum is once standard is two recommended is thrice those who are sincere spiritualists they take three times bath in a day as soon as they get up in the morning before sunrise then in the afternoon and then in the evening because water not just purifies our external body it purifies our mind also that is why after bath we feel very good we get mental happiness also so water purifies the mind as well so mind purification people do not know for purifying the mind we need water we need uh, to see greenery lawns and plants we need space now people are living in metros in small rooms small space with no plants around no greenery that is creating lot of mental diseases so that is why the vedic way of life is perfect the varnashrama system is very perfect for material happiness and ultimately spiritual salvation so shaucham is important we have to be very very clean then we can come to the platform of spiritual knowledge so external cleanliness is maintained by taking bath regularly as we discussed and internal cleanliness is obtained by always thinking of lotus feet of krishna or chanting hari krishna maha mantra continuously internal cleanliness means lust and greed is the dirt within the heart so we have to get free from this lust and greed and for this this lust and greed is the effect of rajas and tamas mode of passion and ignorance in the body how much ever moral science we study it will not help unless we are constantly thinking of god within our heart or chanting his names god's names are purely spiritual shuddha satvik and so is his form so we have to think of god we have to always chant his names and then lust and greed will not disturb us in this way external and internal cleanliness should be maintained this is next level of knowledge and then when we follow this shaucham next level what happens is steadiness sthairyam atma vinigraha steadiness and self control comes what is steadiness steadiness means initially uh it will be difficult to come to the platform of firm faith and following the rules and regulations with great determination will slip down at times so our spiritual life will not come to a platform of steadiness unless shaucham is attained we are free from all the addictions all the bad habits lust and greed of the heart external cleanliness therium means firmness steadiness in the spiritual life then a person becomes very very determined and unless this determination is there 
tangible advancement in spiritual life will not take place determination to follow the rules and regulations is very important and then self control self control means one should not get carried away by the demands of the senses now satisfying the sensual demand is considered perfection of one's life success of life you know person is becoming more and more entangled addicted to those sense objects which are not required in the first place so self control senses should be satisfied only to maintain body keep body and soul together for spiritual advancement then when we advance in self control steadiness then comes renunciation of the objects of sense gratification when a person understands what is reality i am not the body unnecessary satisfaction of the senses entangles me in repeated birth and death when a person starts relishing spiritual happiness then this mundane sense pleasure sense objects become distasteful and rather detestful and automatically a person renounces so i should see am i renouncing the objects of sense enjoyment in this world then i am advancing in knowledge then absence of false ego the more we enjoy the senses in this world the more i see beautiful forms which are not required to maintain the body the more i eat food which is more than required for keeping body and soul together the more i hear sounds and music which is more than required for keeping body and soul together then i am making false ego more and more stronger it will be impossible for me to understand that i am different from this body so when we restrict the sense enjoyment then automatically person becomes freed from false ego then perception of the evil of birth death old age and disease janm mrityu jara vyadhi dukha dosh anudarshanam now people are wasting time to solve some temporary problems of life i have to travel from this city to that city how can i speed up my means of transport for this all the research is going on we travel slowly or we travel very fast that is not the main problem the main problem is birth death old age and disease this has to be solved death is miserable diseases are miserable old age is great misery and of course all this happens because of birth so birth has to be also stopped so this is the real challenge before science this stage has to be attained so one should not waste time in solving some temporary artificial problems of life we should try to solve birth death old age and disease when a person understands these are the real miseries of my life the aim of life is to get freedom from these four things then that is knowledge otherwise it is ignorance solving some temporary problems non attachment to children wife home and the rest so it does not mean that a person should have no feelings for the family members a person can rather cultivate the family members in krishna consciousness simply morning and evening if we chant the hari krishna chant the names of god and we have some discussion on scriptures like bhagavad gita shrimad bhagavatam we worship the deity in our house and offer prasadam to the deities means food item to the deities and we take the remnants simply if we follow these four things then our family life can be very very happy otherwise family life is the source of all miseries these people do not know this is another perception created by this body oh now you have studied nicely you have got a nice business job now you have a family and you will enjoy but life becomes more miserable so unless a person is advanced very advanced in spiritual life family life is hitvatma patam griham andhukupam the shastras describe like a dark well which is covered by green grass once a person falls down in that dark well abandoned well he may keep on crying shouting nobody can help that person that is materialistic family life full of miseries the miseries keep on increasing so this knowledge is so important people think oh my love of my life if i marry i'll be happy and what happens if we marry if we don't marry there is trouble if we marry still there is trouble the same object of love becomes object of hatred and a person starts hating the same person and one wonders why this is happening this is the nature of this world in this way the living entity is getting cheated in all the species of life we discuss always the moth thinks let me just go to fire i'll enjoy burns itself 
thus one should not depend upon the interactions of this field its elements one should get real knowledge from the shastras from spiritual master but if we follow the simple process chanting and in kali yuga chanting and hearing the names of god that is why all the religions they recommend always chant morning and evening twice at least we chant sing it is very simple to perform discuss just like now we are discussing try to understand with reason and logic not with uh, blind faith and worship the deity in the house offer the food stuffs and eat that actually entire thing uh, our spiritual life the beginning is the tongue this is very important as we discussed uh, sense control one may wonder senses are so difficult to control how shall i do it the secret is mentioned in the vedas the secret lies in jivva adav adav means beginning jivva means tongue tongue has two functions to chant and to taste so if we can control this sense organ tongue we can control mind we can control belly we can control reproductive organs we can control everything all the other senses so control just tongue two functions tasting and talking so talk about krishna the names of names of god i'll repeat so talk about krishna the names of god and taste the remnants of food which is offered to god as we have discussed in third chapter verse number 13 it is very very important tasting prasad yagya shishta is very very important very scientific an entire spiritual life will develop all the sense control will happen automatically and these four things if a householder follows even in household life one will be happy otherwise how much ever we may try to earn money you go and meet various counselors that counselor himself is fighting with his family members nothing is going to work next is so here it is mentioned non attachment to the family members if they are non devotees if they are non devotees then a person should uh leave the house and follow the spiritual life very nicely sometimes people think that is uh, running away from responsibility no just like a person runs away to office to attend to the duties so that one can help the family if a person goes away from family after 50 years so normally in kali yuga everybody is not advised to take sannyas from the beginning because training is not there but after 50 years of age and rather sannyas should be taken only by very advanced spiritualists but man prastha is very important after 50 years of age husband and wife can live in a place of pilgrimage or live in the temple around the temple and focus completely on the spiritual life detachment from the family members that is very important so such uh, things are recommended the detachment is required if the family members are not favorable but if the entire family is devotee then there is no need to leave then a person can live with the family members and advance in spiritual life but if the family is not favorable it is advisable to leave and follow spiritual life very nicely that will be good for the person and will be good for the family members also for a while uh, they might miss the association of family member but they will all be able to attain immortality even if one of the family member can attain perfection in spiritual life resorting to solitary places okay before that is even mindedness amid pleasant and unpleasant events constant and unalloyed devotion to me now when a person is so much advanced he uh, for spiritual advancement is willing to detach himself from the temporary association also then he becomes even minded among the pleasant and unpleasant events but to attain such a platform one needs to engage oneself in unbreakable devotional service that is called jeevan mukta stage artificially we cannot do it somebody comes and chastises us criticizes us speaks bad words how much ever we can try to convince ourselves it is just compression rarefaction of the air why should i get bothered people keep on talking we get affected by it but when a person is jeevan mukta on the spiritual platform as a person on the mental platform is not able to hear at times what the lecturer spoke professor spoke or what the boss spoke in the meeting because one was on mental platform absorbed somewhere else so when a person is absorbed on spiritual platform all the changes of this material world pleasant and pleasant on the physical level do not affect one 
but to reach on that spiritual platform one needs to engage in constant devotional service just like the iron rod in fire that is why it is told satatam kirtayantu maam if always it is not possible to engage in service at least this seva chanting always can be done by constantly chanting the names of krishna gradually we come to spiritual platform then nothing disturbs us then constant and unalloyed devotion unto me this is most important after following all these steps one has to come to this platform constant and unalloyed devotion to krishna then resorting to solitary places when a person is having constant and unalloyed devotion to god then he does not want to mix with the materialists detachment from the general mass of people general mass of people who are ignorant actually mad a person who thinks himself as somebody else in a different identity that is called a madman sometimes we see some mad person is controlling traffic on the street he is thinking he is a traffic policeman but that is wrong that is not his identity some mad people in the asylum will act as doctor somebody in a different manner so they are misidentifying themselves so anybody who misidentifies oneself is a mad person so now everybody is identifying oneself with their designations of the kshetra i am man i am woman i am tall i am short i am indian i am american these are all wrong designations so that's when a person understands everyone is mad he becomes detached this is advanced stage of knowledge and then accepting the importance of self realization otherwise uh, the normal aim of a materialist is to enjoy the senses but here a person enjoys no self realization understanding my real identity is important tatva gyanartha darshanam and then one philosophizes one does philosophy to understand what is tatva gyan what is absolute truth now we have philosophy about a uh, mundane uh, girl and boy relationship the philosophy about leadership the philosophy about treating people nicely in your company and so many such philosophy philosophies of uh, managing finance and trade but a person who is advanced in knowledge does philosophy for understanding tatva gyan absolute truth so these are the various steps of knowledge which a person has to transcend it's just like a staircase and it begins with humility so please read all these qualities nicely and try to apply in the life now the time is less maybe we'll try to find out another forum by which we can discuss how to practically implement all these things in our life gyeyam yat tat pravakshyami yaj gyatva amritam asnute anadi mat param brahma na sat tan na saduchyate i shall now explain the knowable knowing which you will taste the eternal this is beginningless and it is subordinate to me it is called brahm the spirit and it lies beyond the cause and effect of this material world now krishna is explaining what is knowable knowledge is meant to know something what is that thing and that is brahm if you follow this process step by step what we discussed ultimately the knowledge of brahm has to be attained and what will happen if we get this knowledge amritam ashnute we will taste nectar what is nectar it is a heavenly liquid which makes one eternal it is very very tasty it makes a person full of bliss so when a person gets this knowledge he becomes blissful and gets an eternal life so that is the advantage of getting knowledge of brahm brahma gyan and what is this brahm krishna tells anadi mat param brahma first of all it is anadi there is no beginning of this brahm everything has got a beginning but this brahm has no beginning it is eternal so that is why all of us the living entities are eternal nobody can trace that at this point of time the living entity came out from god the god is eternal the living entity his part and parcels are also eternal we are infinitesimal god is infinite that is the difference but all of us are anadi eternal anadi mat param brahma so brahm as we discussed are of uh three categories and mainly it refers to atma and parmatma so here the first line describes atma 
बिकॉज इट इज बींग एक्सप्लेन मत पर ब्रह्मा इट इज सबॉर्डिनेट टू मी नासत तन नासत उच्चते इट इज बियॉन्ड द कॉज एंड इफेक्ट ऑफ दिस मटीरियल वर्ल्ड सो अगेन कृष्ण हैज टोल्ड नॉट जस्ट द नोर ऑफ द बॉडी क्षेत्र गया और द ब्रह्म इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द फील्ड इट इज समबडी कैन टेल यस इट इज डिफरेंट बट इट इज प्रोड्यूस बाय द फील्ड कृष्णा इज टेलिंग यर नो इट इज डिफरेंट एंड इट इज नॉट प्रोड्यूस बाय द फील्ड इट इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द कॉज एंड इफेक्ट ऑफ दिस मटीरियल वर्ल्ड इट इज नॉट द इफेक्ट ऑफ दिस मटीरियल वर्ल्ड सो दिस इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ सब ऑर्डिनेट ब्रह्म नाउ कृष्णा विल एक्सप्लेन अबाउट द सुपर सोल परम ब्रह्म पाणिपाद तत्तोक्षी शिरो मुखम सर्वतश्रुतिमल्लोके आवृत्य ठति एवरीवेयर आर इज हैंड्स एंड लेग्स इज आईज एंड फेसेस एंड ही हियर्स एवरीथिंग इन दिस वे द सुपर सोल एग्जिस्ट्स so what does it mean that the eyes hands legs heads of super soul are everywhere it means because super soul is actually the proprietor of this body and we are but tenants in this body we have been given control of this body for a short time and he is the proprietor so because he is the proprietor and bodies are there everywhere in the universe that is why it is being told here his hands and legs are there everywhere सर्वेन्द्रिय गुणाभासम सर्वेन्द्रिय विवर्जित असक्त सर्वृच्च निर्गुण गुणभोक्त द सुपर सोल इज द ओरिजिनल सोर्स ऑफ ऑल सेंसेस येट ही इज विदाउट सेंसेस ही इज अनअटैच्ड ऑल दो ही इज द मेंटेनर ऑफ ऑल लिविंग बीइंग्स ही ट्रांसेंड्स द मोड्स ऑफ नेचर and at the same time he is the master of all modes of material nature sarvendriya gunabhasam sarvendriya vivarjitam so this is uh, very important he is the original source of all senses yet he is without senses now when we read this word sarvendriya vivarjitam we come to a conclusion oh it means uh, the super soul is uh, simply some energy because person or energetic means one should have senses here it is being told sarv indriya vivarjitam he is devoid of all senses so devoid of all senses means yes just see god is not a person god is energy parmatma is an energy only but we have to understand asaktam sarva bhrichayava nirgunam gunabhoktra cha it is mentioned here he is unattached although he is the maintainer of all living beings a dead energy cannot maintain anybody maintainer has to be conscious just like the mother is conscious now child needs this now child needs that here i have to protect the child here i have to feed him or her in this manner maintainer has to be conscious the most difficult task is to maintain person has to be very conscious and respond in real time creation is easy destruction is also easy maintenance is very difficult so he is maintainer dead energy cannot maintain anything so how to understand this he does not have senses and his maintainer maintainer must be conscious so that is why we need the help of proper spiritual master to understand these facts this will be clarified also and in previous verse also we have seen it is mentioned sarvata shruti mal loke sarvam avritya tishthati he hears everything so energy cannot hear a person can hear sarvata shruti mal loke he hears everything it is being told so he hears he maintains but he does not have senses so how is hearing without the senses so actually the senses are you can call small uh, machines or equipments just like we have sensors here in this world there is one sensor which senses the weight and bases that it will send a unique signal to the circuit when weight crosses this limit raise an alarm when weight is less you uh, this indicator should glow up and then there is another sensor which detects fire and then it raises fire alarm there is shower and so many things so in this way we can create sensors similarly krishna has created senses but 
Krishna does not need all these things in his body because in the body already all these things are present. Just like we create robots, and these sensors to make them active, we need to put some chips, diodes, transistors, cameras, wirings. But the creator does not have wiring. Creator does not have camera installed in his body. But the creator also can see. The creator also can walk, talk, and sense. How? Because he has got different system. within his body he does not need these artificial robotic senses to perform the function which robots are performing in a similar fashion krishna can do all these things krishna can talk krishna can walk krishna can eat krishna can laugh krishna can hear but through his spiritual body that is why it is explained in the brahma samhita written by lord brahma he tells angani yasya sakalendriya vritti manti angani means the limbs of the body Angani yasya yasya means whose limbs of the body are so amazing. Sakal indriya sakal means all indriya means senses. Vritti manti means they can perform the actions. So every limb of the body, sakal indriya can perform the actions of all the indriyas. This is the nature of spiritual body. So the spiritual body can perform all the senses of watching, hearing. talking tasting all the functions thus krishna can see with his hands krishna can eat with his ears this is the nature of spiritual body angani yasya sakalendriya vritti manti so here when it is being mentioned sarvendriya vivarjitam that he is devoid of senses means these material senses which are required to get perceptions in this body these are not present in super soul because the spirit has got already all the functions of the senses inbuilt in all the limbs of the spiritual body thus one can maintain the supreme brahm can maintain the supreme brahm can hear supreme brahm can accept supreme brahm can walk without the legs these legs these machinery bones and all are not required the spirit soul spiritual body can perform the functions of these mechanical legs that we have got here bahirantasch bhutanam अचर चरम सूक्ष्म दूरस्थम चाति के द सुप्रीम ट्रुथ एग्जिस्ट्स बोथ इंटरनली एंड एक्सटर्नली इन द मूविंग एंड नॉन मूविंग इज बियॉन्ड द पावर ऑफ द मटीरियल सेंसेस टू सी और टू नो ऑल दो फार फार अवे ही इज ऑल्सो नियर टू ऑल नाउ दिस वर्ड इज इंपॉर्टेंट सूक्ष्म tad avigyayam krishna has told now i am going to explain to you gyayam which is to be known the object of knowledge and the object of knowledge brahma krishna tells it is avigyayam it cannot be known this is again contradictory krishna tells gyayam yat tat pravakshyami yaj gyatva amritam ashnute you will taste nectar by knowing the gyayam gyayam is knowable now krishna tells knowable is avigyayam unknowable what is this it means Yes the brahm has to be known but brahm is avigyayam unknowable using the present senses so these senses also have to be spiritualized so this religion is meant these rules and regulations that we follow are meant to spiritualize our body when the body is spiritualized then we can perceive spiritual existence then we can see spirit we can hear spiritual sound we can have spiritual taste otherwise we will function only in this material world so that is why the gyayam is avigyayam knowable is unknowable on material platform so this word is very important so he is avigyayam not to be known by the material senses he is beyond the power of material senses to see or know although far far away he is also near to all so although the god is situated in permanent abode everything is in control of god so nobody can destroy the abode of god that is called sanatan dham so thus he is situated in his dham which is far far away but as parmatma he is present in the heart he is very near as well so in this way the same person is very far and near as well in this way all the contradictions can be adjusted in the absolute truth avibhaktam cha bhuteshu विभक्त इव च स्थित भूत भर्तृच तेयम ग्रसिष्णु प्रभ विष्णु 
Although the super soul appears to be divided, he is never divided. He is situated as one. Although he is the maintainer of every living entity, it is to be understood that he devours and develops all. Super soul appears to be divided. So when we hear that the super soul Paramatma is present in all the living entities, moving and non-moving. So we may think of oh, different different Paramatmas are there in every heart, in every living entity. So he appears to be divided. That is why again contradiction. Avibhaktam chabhuteshu vibhaktam ivachasthitam. So he is avibhaktam. He cannot be divided, but he appears to be divided. So thus contradictions are deliberately mentioned here to help us understand who is God. He is completely different. His personality is completely different. Because people are not able to understand how these contradictions are there. They simply make it very simple. Oh, God is energy. Because these things are not possible. God is simply energy. Because a person cannot have all these features. But spiritual person has these features. So thus here it is explained. An analogy is given uh, in the Vedas, just like the moon can be reflected or the sun can be reflected in different uh, vessels of water. One may think, oh, every vessel of water has a moon. But no, moon is not divided. Moon is one only. It is being reflected in so many different water reservoirs. In a similar fashion, God is one only, but he can expand himself to be present in all the living entities. But he is not divided, he is one. Jyotisham apitaj jyotis tamasaf paramuchyate gyanam gyayam gyan gamyam ridhi sarvasya vishthitam. He is the source of light in all luminous objects. He is beyond the darkness of matter and is unmanifested. He is knowledge, he is the object of knowledge. And he is the goal of knowledge. He is situated in everyone's heart. So ultimately, Paramatma is knowledge. He is the goal of knowledge. And he is situated in everyone's heart. And he is always noticing the desires as it will be explained further. As is the desire of the living entity. The living entity wants to enjoy material pleasure. Paramatma inspires him to enjoy material pleasure. And to enjoy material comforts, one need to do proper karma. He gives inspiration from the heart how to do right karma. If it is not possible to enjoy in this life, next life he continues with the soul, goes in the next body and then again reminds. So you wanted to enjoy in this way, I have given you facility now. Now you enjoy. We want to forget God, he will give best of the atheistic arguments. And if you want to remember him, he will give best of the theistic logics. He is very kind father who fulfills all the desires of the living entity. But we need to understand from that most intelligent father, what is my best interest? And that best interest is to engage in loving relationship with that father who is living in the heart. Iti kshetram tatha jnanam Gyeyam choktum samasataha Madbhakta etad vijnaya Thus the field of activities, the body, knowledge and the knowable have been summarily described by me. Only my devotees can understand this thoroughly and thus attain to my nature. So this is called science of God. How nicely it is being explained. Unless we understand in this manner what is God, so either we will not be able to understand him or there would be fanaticism. So this science is the object of human form of life to understand. But who can understand? Krishna mentions Mad Bhakta Etad Vigyaya. Only Mad Bhakta, my devotee can know. If we have to have knowledge about a person, we need to have relationship with the person. And a devotee only has got a loving relationship with the Lord. So only devotee can understand the science of God perfectly. Others will get confused and bewildered. Prakritim purusham chaeva vidhyanadiyu bhavapi vikaranscha gunanscha eva 
विद्धि प्रकृति संभवान मटीरियल नेचर एंड द लिविंग एंटिटी शुड बी अंडरस्टूड टू बी बिगिनिंग लेस द ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन एंड द मोड्स ऑफ मैटर आर प्रोडक्ट्स ऑफ मटीरियल नेचर सो दीज टू वर्ड्स नेक्स्ट कृष्णा इज एक्सप्लेनिंग अर्जुन आर सिक्स थिंग्स क्षेत्रम क्षेत्रज्ञम प्रकृतिम पुरुषम ज्ञानम एंड ज्ञेयम सो प्रकृति एंड पुरुष नाउ लॉर्ड कृष्णा इज एक्सप्लेनिंग वॉट इज दिस प्रकृति एंड पुरुष प्रकृति मीन्स वन हु इज एंजॉयड और द मटीरियल नेचर एंड पुरुष मीन्स द एंजॉयर सो कृष्णा इज एक्चुअली पुरुष गोविंदम आदि पुरुषम तमाम भजामी इन द टें चैप्टर अर्जुना केम टू द कंक्लूजन आफ्टर हियरिंग भगवद गीता परम ब्रह्मा परम धामा पुरुषम परमम भवान योर सुप्रीम पुरुष पर्सन पुरुष मीन्स एंजॉयर प्रकृति मीन्स एंजॉयड जस्ट लाइक इन अ कंपनी द एम्प्लॉयर इज पुरुषा एम्प्लॉय इज प्रकृति टू बी एंजॉयड सो द कंपनी इज रनिंग फॉर द प्लेजर ऑफ द एम्प्लॉयर एंड एम्प्लॉयर गवर्नस डिक्टेट्स द टर्म्स गिवस ऑर्डर्स and the employee follows the order but both of them enjoy both of them are eager to work over there the employee wants to serve the employer employer also wants to serve the employee but employer is the master employee is subordinate this position is always there and if the employee becomes envious then he leaves the company he or she leaves the company and then there is no more enjoyment that is our relationship with god this very important thing we forget we think i am purusha purusha means enjoyer this material world everything is meant for my enjoyment no it is meant for enjoyment of god but we should not be envious just like we are not envious of our employer we want to work in good big companies and in this fashion when we work nicely we are properly remunerated and both the employer and the employees they enjoy this relationship in a similar fashion in a house also we can see the head of the family father can be predominator and the children a proper son or daughter they will always follow the instructions of their parents they will not tell now you are subordinate you follow my instructions so normally we give respect and that is what is to be done so although in a family also there is somebody who is predominator others are predominated but both of them enjoy they are living for each other but if sometimes the son becomes envious he leaves the father and goes away father is very rich he wants to give all comforts to the child but the child should not become envious that is a position that is a relationship between us and god now here we have come in a mood to enjoy but that is not our position we are always prakriti we are enjoyed we are always subordinate that is why now here also we are subordinate we are subordinate to somebody we have to serve someone to get happiness without serving we cannot be happy here either we have to find uh, some boss outside we have to serve or we have to go and we have to serve uh, as we discussed the boss has to serve the employee then only boss can be happy the businessman has to serve the customers then one can be happy if nobody is there in the family people keep pets they serve the pets then they get pleasure so service is important or we serve the senses we follow the dictates of the senses so our position is that of prakriti subordinate now we should find out who is the best master i think it is clear we cannot be master it is artificial if i think i am master i will control then there would be troubles in life because of this mentality i am anyway subordinate i am serving anybody somebody man or animal or my senses whims of my mind body whatever mind demands i immediately satisfy then i can be happy but krishna is not like this krishna is purush so just like ram navmi festival is there we see uh, how or even janmashtami all these festivals why do we celebrate so that we can understand uh, the signs of god how lord ram chandra he was about to be coronated as the king of ayodhya as soon as father told he have to go to jungle 14 years immediately told yes father i will go so he is not under control of senses he is controlling the senses Krishna is there enjoying with his wives and then as soon as it is brahm murta in the morning 3 o'clock Krishna will leave the bed and the wives will curse the morning but Krishna is not attached Krishna is having complete control of his senses Bhishma Pitama told that Krishna was dancing with the girls in the middle of night playing his flute 
but he was able to control his senses perfectly if i was there in krishna's position and somebody accused of krishna as a woman hunter krishna told no don't call krishna's affairs as mundane affairs of boy and girl in this world krishna danced in the middle of night with the gopis because that was the desire of the gopis they wanted to have that relationship with krishna so krishna reciprocated but there is no question of any mundane gross pleasures being enjoyed over there that is completely spiritual activity but bhishma told that control was not possible would not have been possible even for me i am celebrated as the greatest brahmachari greatest celibate controller of senses in the world but i would have fallen down in that situation this is krishna so krishna can have perfect control over his senses when he wants to enjoy he can employ his senses but we are on the other hand subordinate to our senses our mind subordinate to other living entities this is not krishna's position so krishna god is actually enjoyer and we are enjoyed so in this way if i understand jeev krishna das e vishwas kar le to ar dukh nahi when i start planning how to please god how to please god then automatically i get so much of pleasure in life when the hand decides i will feed this body now and will get automatically nourishment this very important science is missing how much have we planned in our life to think of pleasure of god not much so if we do that if we lead our life just to give pleasure to god and the greatest pleasure god gets in when somebody spreads this knowledge to others which can relieve the living entities from all troubles so in this way if we dedicate our resources our skills our talent our time to spread this message that will be the greatest service to god and automatically our life will be happy materially as well as spiritually this important position has to be understood that we are prakriti our happiness lies only when we plan the enjoyment of supreme purush but because here now in this world we have come in the mood of enjoyment this purusha refers to the living entities here because we are in the mood of purusha so now krishna is explaining this prakriti and purusha and what do we enjoy here the material nature the resources so prakriti here refers to this material nature and purusha refers to the living entity all of us material nature and living entity should be understood to be beginningless now people wonder what is the origin of this material nature prakriti which works in such an wonderful engineered fashion wonderful automation male female attra- get attracted to each other and uh, the gametes fuse to chemicals fuse and then there is a new machine which is coming out developing automatically what is this wonderful system what is this ecosystem who has made it how it has come so krishna is explaining it is eternal sometimes it is manifest sometimes it is unmanifest but this energy is eternal material nature is eternal and what about living entities there was some uh, chemical reaction and living entities have sprung up no the living entity is also eternal so all this research krishna has simplified it in this verse prakritim purusham chaiva viddhi anadi ubhavapi both of them are anadi both of them are eternal vikarasya gunashaiva viddhi prakriti sambhavam their transformations and the modes of matter are products of material nature karya karan kartritve hetu prakriti ruchyate पुरुष सुख दुखा भोक्तृत्वे हेतुच्यते नेचर इज सेट टू बी द कॉज ऑफ ऑल मटीरियल एक्टिविटीज एंड इफेक्ट्स वेर एज द लिविंग एंटिटी इज द कॉज ऑफ द वेरियस सफरिंग्स एंड एंजॉयमेंट्स इन दिस वर्ल्ड सो दिस इज ऑल्सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट श्लोका nature can only be responsible for the changes in the field the world around us it is said to be the cause of all material activities and effects but happiness and distress is not created by nature that is created by us just like the judge does not create happiness and distress for any person sometimes judge will award compensation sometimes judge will give punishment rigorous punishment to be hanged till death so the person is responsible for that happiness or distress in a similar fashion material nature will produce all the transformations now whether i will take pain from those transformations or pleasure 
that depends on us so that is why all our pains and pleasures are created by us alone in ignorance of the reality of spiritual pleasure purusha prakriti stho hi bhungte prakriti jan gunan karanam gun sangosya sad asad yoni janmasu The living entity in material nature thus follows the ways of life enjoying the three modes of nature. This is due to his association with the material nature. Thus he meets with good and evil among various species. So here the law of transmigration is explained by somebody gets a good body bad body karanam guna sango asya guna sanga if we associate with sattva guna we eat sattvic food we live or associate with sattvic people we read sattvic literature hear sattvic sounds speak sattvic sounds then we are associating with sattva guna then next body will be urdhva gachanti we will go to higher planetary systems where we have a very very long life the distress of death old age disease is very less and the bodily sensual strength is very strong and we can enjoy happiness we can have greater knowledge and if we associate with rajoguna tamoguna mode of passion and ignorance then we can uh, take birth as a wretched human being and maybe a diseased body we will get or we will move glide down to lower animal species of life or other insects reptiles aquatics or trees depending on in what proportion i am associating with the modes of nature thus in order to have a good life person should always be satvik in order to transcend this material nature person should be shuddha satvik always associate with spiritual subject matter उपदृष्टा भर्ता भोक्ता महेश्वर परमात्मे चाप्युक्त देहे अस्मिन् पुरुष पर येट इन दिस बॉडी देर इज अनादर ट्रांसेंडेंटल एंड जॉयर हु इज द लॉर्ड द सुप्रीम प्रोपराइटर हु एग्जिस्ट एज द ओवर सीयर एंड परमिटर एंड हु इज नोन एज द सुपर सोल Now again, as Krishna told previously, Shetragyam Chapi Mam Vidhi Sarvakshete Shu Bharata. You are knower of the field, but I am also knower. I am knower of all the fields. Similarly, here Krishna is mentioning, Upadrista Anumanta Cha Bharata Bhokta Maheshwara Dehi Asmin Purusha Paraha. Para means transcendental, one who is not affected by the laws of this nature, Prakriti. We are affected by the laws of nature. Now we are conditioned souls. But Krishna is Parah Purusha, means he is transcendental. Although Krishna is living as Paramatma in the heart of a pig, but Krishna is not living in the filthy drain. Although pig could be loitering in the drain, Krishna is transcendental. Although he is present in the heart, he is not affected by the surroundings. That is called Parah Purusha. That Krishna mentions. What is the role of this Parah Purusha? Dehe Asmin, who is also living within this body. The role of that Purush is. we are here to enjoy the fruits of this field why this other purusha is here what is he doing he is upadrishta anumanta cha so very this is called science of god just knowing god is great does not help us to increase our spiritual life much unless we know how god is great why he is so great so here krishna mentions upadrishta he is overseer observing the actions of all the living entities that is power of god that is called omniscience he is conscious of all the living entities upadrishta he is the witness what we desire parmatma facilitates oh you want this do this karma you want to have this logic okay take it understand the subject matter you want to forget this okay take forgetfulness forgetfulness remembrance knowledge everything is coming from god and then anumanta sanctioner without sanction of god not a blade of grass can move so he is present as witness and sanctioner in the heart helping us to enjoy this material world bharta bhokta maheshwara he is the bhokta supreme enjoyer and he is bharta he is also master supreme master he is the supreme proprietor and his name is paramatma we are atma or anu atma and he is called paramatma the supreme soul parmatma eti chap yukto So if you read Bhagavad Gita, everything is so clear. Atma is different, Paramatma is different, 
वी आर पुरुष बट देर इज पर पुरुष देर आर टू सोल्स विद इन द बॉडी सो एंटायर थिंग इज वेरी क्लियर जस्ट वी हैव टू केयरफुली अटेंटिवली हियर भगवद गीता फ्रॉम प्रॉपर सोर्स एंड देन अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ मैटर स्पिरिट सुप्रीम स्पिरिट गॉड मटीरियल वर्ल्ड स्पिरिचुअल वर्ल्ड एवरी थिंग विल बी वेरी वेरी क्लियर येत्ति पुषम प्रकृति च गुण सह सर्वर्तमानी न स भूयो भी जायते वन हु अंडरस्टैंड दिस फिलोसफी कंसर्निंग मटीरियल नेचर द लिविंग एंडिटी एंड द इंटरक्शन ऑफ द मोड्स ऑफ नेचर इज श्योर टू अटेन लिब्रेशन ही विल नॉट टेक बर्थ हियर अगेन रिगार्डलेस ऑफ हिस्स प्रेजेंट पोजिशन ध्यान आत्मनि पश्य केचिद आत्मात्म अन्ये सांख्येन योगेन कर्म योगेन चापरे दैट सुपर सोल इज परसीव बाय सम थ्रू मेडिटेशन बाय सम थ्रू द कल्टिवेशन ऑफ नॉलेज एंड बाय अदर्स थ्रू वर्किंग विदाउट फोटिव डिजायर अन्नेजान श्रुवा नेभ्य उपासते तेपी चाति तरंत्येव मृत्युम श्रुतिपरायणा अगेन देर आर दोज हू ऑल दो नॉट कॉन्वर्सेंट इन स्पिरिचुअल नॉलेज बिगिन टू वर्शिप द सुप्रीम पर्सन अपॉन हियरिंग अबाउट हिम फ्रॉम अदर्स बिकॉज ऑफ देयर टेंडेंसी टू हियर फ्रॉम अथॉरिटीज दे ऑल्सो ट्रांसेंड द पाथ ऑफ बर्थ एंड डेथ दिस इज आर सिचुएशन सो प्रीवियस verse mentions some people try to understand this subject matter of brahm self realization by following sankhya by working without fruitive desire karma yoga or by the mystic yoga process meditation but some people are not educated in these paths but these people also become successful simply by hearing from authorities so this is our situation those who are not advanced in spiritual understanding like most of us now in this age we can simply hear from authority a person who has seen the truth if we simply hear from them we also surpass mrityam shruti parayana by hearing we also surpass repeated birth and death yavas sanjayate kinchit satvam sthavar jangamam kshetra kshetragnya sanyogat तद्विधि भरत ओ चीफ ऑफ द भारतास वट एवर यू सी इन एग्जिस्टेंस बोथ मूविंग एंड अनमूविंग इज ओनली द कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ द फील्ड ऑफ एक्टिविटीज एंड द नोअर ऑफ द फील्ड समम सर्वेशु भूतेशु तिष्ठन तम परमेशरम विनश्यत्व विनश्य तम यश्यति स पश्यति one who sees the super soul accompanying the individual soul in all the bodies and who understands that neither the soul nor the super soul is ever destroyed actually sees samam pashyan hi sarvatra samavasthitam ishwaram nahi nastyatmanatmanam tato yati param gatim when you see is the super soul in every living being and equal everywhere does not degrade himself by his mind and thus he approaches the transcendental destination prakritya eva cha karmani kriyamanani sarvashah yav pashyati tathatmanam akartaram sa pashyati one who can see that all activities are performed by the body which is created of material nature and sees that the self does nothing actually sees so this is called real vision if i think somebody is doing something that is not fact whatever happiness and distress one is destined to get in this life one is forced to engage in the activities as per the laws of nature as soon as we get this body now we are under control of nature we will feel hunger we will be forced to work hard to mitigate our hunger that work will also depend upon our body the skills the nature the inclination which we have acquired so as the living entity is just a passive worker 
if one has got the body of dog one will be forced to eat certain kind of eatables one will be forced to search for certain kind of eatables one will be forced to talk in a certain language in a certain way so we are passive we are forced just like once a criminal is arrested he becomes passive worker he does not want to break stones he is forced to break stones he does not want to walk tread that path or corridor one is forced to walk in a similar fashion as per the bodies the living entity is forced to work so actually material nature is working it has got certain plan and the living entities bases their machines are acting helplessly under the control of nature so one who sees this is actually the seer yada bhut prithag bhavam ekastham anupashyati tat eva cha vistaram brahm sampadyate tada when a sensible man ceases to see different identities which are due to different material bodies he attains to the brahm conception thus he sees that beings are expanded everywhere this is the beginning of spiritual life brahm bhuta prasanna atma when a person comes to the level of brahm what is that brahm when he ceases to see different identities what does it mean he sees everyone is same person only no he ceases to see different identities which are due to material bodies prithak bhavam prithak bhavam means different identities or different natures dog is having certain nature camel is having certain nature people are having different natures so when we see different identities due to different natures that is illusion seeing different identities is not illusion we are all unique people having unique identity as a spirit soul but that identity is because of the nature of the spirit soul not because of the nature of this body so when we stop discriminating basis the body oh this is camel this is dog this is man this is woman then we have attained the brahma conception we understand that the beings the spirit souls only which are same in nature they are all spiritual in nature not less intelligent more intelligent ugly beautiful they are all spiritual in nature and when we see that there are all these dresses around me one should stop seeing these different material identities then that is called brahma conception then a person is always very happy always very jolly this is the result of properly following the instructions of spiritual master then what is this vision that is further explained anaditva nirgunatva परमात्मायम अव्ययः शरीरस्थोपि कौन्तेया न करोति न लिप्यते दोस विद द विजन ऑफ इटर्निटी कैन सी दैट द सोल इज ट्रांसेंडेंटल इटर्नल एंड बियॉन्ड द मोड्स ऑफ नेचर डिस्पाइट कांटेक्ट विद द मटेरियल बॉडी ओ अर्जुना द सोल नीदर डस एनीथिंग नॉर इज एंटेंगल्ड यथा सर्वगतम सौक्ष्म्यात आकाशम नोपलिप्यते सर्वत्रावस्थितो देहे तथात्मा नोपलिप्यते द स्काय ड्यू टू इट्स सटल नेचर डज नॉट मिक्स विथ एनीथिंग ऑल दो इट इज ऑल परवेडिंग सिमिलरली द सोल सिचुएटेड इन ब्रह्म विजन डज नॉट मिक्स विथ द बॉडी दो सिचुएटेड इन दैट बॉडी यथा प्रकाश यत्ये कह कृत्स्नम लोकम इमम रवि क्षेत्रम क्षेत्री तथा कृत्स्नम प्रकाश यति भारत ओ सन ऑफ भरत एज द सन अलोन इल्यूमिनेट्स ऑल दिस यूनिवर्स सो डज द लिविंग एंटिटी वन विद इन द बॉडी इल्यूमिनेट्स द एंटायर बॉडी बाय कॉन्शियसनेस सो जस्ट लाइक द सन इल्यूमिनेट्स द यूनिवर्स the soul illuminates the body because of consciousness so consciousness is not because of brain it is because of soul it comes through brain in our body it functions like that so this is very important point very clearly krishna is i repeat so this is very important point very clearly krishna is mentioning here the source of consciousness is this brahm it is not the brain or any other organ or cell within the body क्षेत्र क्षेत्रज्ञ 
अंतर ज्ञान चक्षुषा भूत प्रकृति मोक्षम च ये वे दुर्यांति ते परम वन हु नोइंगली सीज दिस डिफरेंस बिटवीन द बॉडी एंड द ओनर ऑफ द बॉडी एंड कैन अंडरस्टैंड द प्रोसेस ऑफ लिबरेशन फ्रॉम दिस बॉन्डेज ऑल्सो अटेन्स टू द सुप्रीम गोल सो दीज वर्ड्स आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट हियर अंतरम ज्ञान चक्षुषा अंतरम मीन्स द डिफरेंस द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द मटीरियल बॉडी एंड स्पिरिट हैज़ टू बी सीन इज इट सो इजी कैन वी जस्ट सी लाइक दैट वो हैव सीन बाई माई माइक्रोस्कोप हियर स्पिरिट इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द बॉडी नो दैट इज वाई इट इज टोल्ड यर नॉट बाई दीज चक्षूज बाय ज्ञान चक्षुषा बाय द आईज ऑफ नॉलेज ऑल दो आई सी द सन इवन नाउ एज अ डिस्क बट विद ज्ञान चक्षुषा आई सी द सन एज अ स्पीयर विच इज मच मच बिगर दैन अर्थ ऑल दो आई सी वॉटर इन द डेजर्ट विद ज्ञान चक्षुषा आई सी वॉटर इज नॉट देर इट इज टोटल इंटरनल रिफ्लेक्शन सो नाउ ऑल्सो वी अप्लाई द ज्ञान चक्षुषा इन अ सिमिलर फैशन इट हैज टू बी सीन फ्रॉम ज्ञान चक्षुषा डायरेक्टली आर मटीरियल बॉडी इट इज अविज्ञेयम एज वी हैव सीन इट इज डिजाइन टू परसीव ओनली मैटर सो अनलेस दिस बॉडी स्पिरिचुअलाइज येस अ स्टेज इज पॉसिबल If by following rules and regulations very nicely we spiritualize our body, then we can see spirit. Actually, so long that stage is not attained, Gyan Chakshusha, we should start our spiritual life by Gyan Chakshu. As soon as we see our body, we know there are cells, there are protons, neutrons, electrons. Although these Chakshus do not see Gyan Chakshusha, but when one becomes advanced scientist in the lab, can see these things, can see cells within the cell. in a similar fashion when we advance in spiritual life it becomes perception factual perception but initially gyana chakshusha by understanding from those who have seen we should not get trapped in this illusion just the whole world is just thinking the dress is actually the person no gyana chakshusha it is different the person is different and when a person understands this process of knowledge which we have seen amanittam abdam bhitva mahinsak shanti rajavam humility pridelessness accepting the spiritual master then one also becomes free from this bondage of birth and death so let us start seeing this world as spirit souls completely different from matter and the spirit has to be taken out from this repeated entanglement in matter so this chapter is very important please again revisit and hear the elements of knowledge try to apply in our life all those steps so that we can advance to understand this atma tattva This chapter requires great deliberation, great contemplation, and by this we can begin to understand the spirit soul different from matter, different from this body, and that marks the beginning of spiritual life. Very soon we will meet with chapter fourteen, the three modes of material nature. Till then, please keep on chanting always as much as possible. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram. राम राम हरे हरे श्री भगवान वाच परम भूय प्रवक्ष्या ज्ञाना ज्ञान मुत्तम यज्ञावा मुनय सर्वे Param Siddhim Ito Gata. The Blessed Lord said, "Again, I shall declare to you the supreme wisdom, the best of all knowledge, knowing which all the sages have attained to supreme perfection." Param Siddhim Ito Gata. Siddhi means perfection. Perfection of human life does not entail getting lot of money, a very big house. or very attractive life partners etc because we have seen enough people those who have attained all these things still find their lives imperfect so these are not perfections but hallucinations of perfection the vedas explain and it is the realization of the liberated personalities when we understand i am not the body but spirit soul completely different from this bag which is made up of Three dhatus, cuff, pith, and bath. Then that is the beginning of 
perfection of human form of life. Aham Brahmasmi, I am spirit soul. And this stage is called Brahma Bhuta stage. Brahma Bhuta Prasannatma Na Shochati Na Kangshati. Then a person is always jolly. This is the symptom. So any person who is not always jolly, that person is not liberated. So this is first step of perfection. Then perfection increases to second realization which is called Paramatma. Realizing, witnessing the presence of Supreme Lord in our heart who is present in every atom in this universe. And then the realization actually becomes perfect when one realizes the source of the spiritual energy which is all-pervading, who is the source of Paramatma present in the heart, the original form of God. That is Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That is called Bhagavan Realization. Brahma, Paramatma and Bhagavan, the Absolute Truth is known in these three different phases. So by knowing this knowledge, Param Siddhim, Siddhi means perfection, one can attain to topmost perfection. So this is the knowledge which Lord Krishna has been explaining so far in Bhagavad Gita, but it has been presented here in a more effective manner. Idam Gyanam Upashritya Mama Sadharmya Magata Sarge Pinopa Jayante Pralaye Navyatanticha by becoming fixed in this knowledge, one can attain to the transcendental nature, which is like my own nature. Thus established, one is not born at the time of creation, nor disturbed at the time of dissolution. So the happiness or distress that we experience in this life depends upon the nature of body we have acquired. Some bodies by nature are very weak, are diseased. The body of a bear feels very hot even though he is living in the poles. That is why he dives deep into water to get relief from the heat. But we will freeze as we enter the polar region. So our happiness and distress depends upon the nature of body we have acquired. Now one should think, what is the most perfect body which should be acquired which does not face distress at all? Is it possible to have such body? Yes. That body belongs to Lord Krishna. Dehi deha vibhedoyam neshware vidyate kvachit. There is no difference between body and soul of Krishna. So there is no birth, death, old age, disease. And here Krishna is telling mama sadharmyam agataha. Sadharmyam means one also attains Krishna's nature. Dharma also means nature. So Krishna's nature is eternal, full of knowledge and full of bliss. So we also become very blissful, we become eternal, we are eternal, we realize our eternal aspect and we become full of knowledge. Mama yo nirmahad brahma tasmin garbham dadhamyaham sambhava sarva bhutanam tato bhavati bharata So Lord Krishna now is explaining how the living entity gets entangled technically in this material world and what are the means of liberation. So what is this material world? The big scientists are perplexed. Lord Krishna explains here. The total material substance called Brahm is the source of birth and it is that Brahm that I impregnate making possible the births of all living beings, O son of Bharat. Mama Yonir Mahat Brahma so the Vedas explain there are two portions in this entire existence. One is called Ekpad Vibhuti or 25% of the existence. Another is Tripad Vibhuti which consists of 75% of existence. Tripad Vibhuti is called the spiritual world which forms the majority. And most of the living entities live in the spiritual world where there is no embarrassment of birth, death, old age and disease. But Ekpad Vibhuti is meant for the living entities who want to compete with God, who want to become God. In spiritual world, the philosophy is people are very, very humble. They want to become servant of servant of servant of God. Everyone wants to serve other living entity. 
So how beautiful society would be if everyone is willing to serve the other person. But here we want to enjoy the services of other people. What to speak of general people? This phenomenon occurs in our families also. If there is any disagreement, then there is separation even among the family members. There are fights and arguments because we want to enjoy other service here. Everything should be for my satisfaction. In spiritual world, everything should be for Krishna's satisfaction and for satisfaction of Krishna's devotees. So those who want to become like God, those who think everyone should serve me, they are given chance to become God in this material world which is called Ekapadavi Bhuti, material energy. And what is this material energy? It is nothing but transformation of spiritual energy. Krishna is absolute truth. Satchidananda Ghana Sarveshvareshvaro Dadhatu Concentrated Satchidananda And the energy which is emanating from Krishna is also Satchidananda But this energy gets transformed into material energy to fulfill our desires of becoming Lord So just like sand castles are created by children Similarly so many forms are created by living entities for their own satisfaction That is called material world So the original material energy the transformation of Brahma, the spiritual energy, is called Mahat Brahm or Mahat Tattva. That is the original substance, the cosmic intelligence from which everything is later manifest. So then this entire manifestation consists of various energies, but original energy is called Mahat Tattva. Just like there is white light that is split into three lights, three primary colors, R, G, B, red, green and blue, and then they mix and then on the screen we see so many varieties of manifestations. Similarly, this manifest world here is nothing but expansion and combination of this original tattva which is called Mahat Tattva. So Krishna is telling Tasam Brahm Mahat Yonir Yoni means mother, source of birth. Just like the mother gives birth to children, but mother is not actually the source of the soul without which there is no possibility of generation and production of a body. The soul comes from father. Similarly, material nature is mother. Our bodies we see are coming out of the material ingredients. But material nature is not the cause of our birth. We are coming, Krishna tells here, Tasmin Garbham Dadami Aham I am the seed giving father. So the souls are coming from Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna in the form of Lord Shiva impregnates soul in this material world and then the bodies are given by the material nature. In this way the creation happens. Sarvayonishu kaunteya murtaya sambhavantiya tasam brahm mahadyonir aham bija pradafpita it should be understood that all species of life, O son of Kunti, are made possible by birth in this material nature and that I am the seed-giving father. Satvam rajas tama iti guna prakriti sambhava nibadnanti mahabaho dehe dehi namavyayam Material nature consists of three modes, goodness, passion and ignorance. When the living entity comes in contact with nature, he becomes conditioned by these modes. Tatra Sattvam Nirmalatvat Prakashakam Anamayam Sukha Sangena Badnati Jnana Sangena Chanagha now Krishna starts explaining how living entities are bound up in this material world. So this Mahat Tattva consists of three modes of nature, Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. And it is like having golden, silver or iron handcuffs. Person can be very happy seeing golden handcuffs ultimately, that is also bondage. So this golden handcuff is called Sattva Guna. How Sattvaguna binds the living entity, Lord Krishna has explained. O sinless one, the mode of goodness, being purer than others, is illuminating and it frees one from all sinful reactions. 
those situated in that mode develop knowledge but they become conditioned by the concept of happiness so the mode of goodness is purer than other modes rajogun and tamogun those who are in this mode satvoguna they come to the platform of knowledge and they are able to get freedom from the sense but this also binds the living entity by the concept of happiness so usually living entities who are there on this planet earthly planet all the human beings they are conducted by mode of passion mode of passion we will see in the next verse person works very hard sensual desires are very very strong and a person is uh, half mad because when the sensual desires are very strong person cannot think what is right and wrong gets carried away but when the senses are controlled mind is controlled person has goodness he is having good behavior controlled behavior one can rise to the platform of knowledge and when one rises to the platform of knowledge like philosophers poets scientists then a person is having experience of some happiness in this material world they are not very much affected by the miseries just like by so much scientific advancement we can counteract the onslaught of material nature it may be very hot but you can have some devices some gadgets arrangements air conditioners coolers fans we will not feel so much of heat similarly it could be very dark outside then we have light we are not affected by that in a similar fashion with advancement of knowledge we are able to counteract the material distress either philosophically or scientifically or poetically so then these people because they feel happiness the more you advance in sattva guna happiness also increases then a person thinks what is the need of having spiritual knowledge i am anyway increasing my happiness in this world so this happiness binds living entity into this material world other living entities who are not so happy why because they are conducted by the lower modes and what is their situation is explained in the next verse rajo ragatmakam vidhi trishna sang samudbhavam tannibadnati kaunteya karma sange na dehinam the mode of passion is born of unlimited desires and longings o son of kunti and because of this one is bound to material fruitive activities other people who are conducted by modes of passion as are the beings on this planet the human beings they work very hard and they are bound to material fruitive activities because there are so many desires in this mode of passion so many longing so much material attraction this mode is represented by attraction between man and woman the more there is attraction to the opposite gender we can understand the more we have mode of passion within the body and the more is mode of passion the more would be anxiety the more would be hard work because then uh, you enter into family longing the sensual desires are so so strong then you enter into family because the sensual desires longings are so strong and then one has to satisfy the needs of the family members and for this hard work is required to gain the material comforts and to maintain status in the society show off to others in this way it leads to hard work and a person gets entangled by the fruits of the activity fruits of the hard work it could be material comforts it could be name fame recognition we have earned in society to earn that maintain that one has to work very very hard and this person always remains in anxiety this is the situation of mode of passion then mode of ignorance what is their state tamastvagyana tam vidhi mohanam sarvadehinam pramadalasya nidrabhis tannibadnati bharata o son of bharat the mode of ignorance causes the delusion of all living entities the result of this mode is madness indolence and sleep which bind the conditioned soul the mode of ignorance causes madness delusion so these people sleep a lot sleeping more than 7 or 8 hours that means mode of ignorance 
or resorting to various kinds of intoxicants they want to forget the material reality the material world so those people who want to escape the truth of this material world they are considered to be in mode of ignorance so just like a rabbit is there when it is attacked by lion rabbit closes its eyes and feels happy lion is gone actually lion is not gone but rabbit wants to escape the harsh reality that it is going to die very soon in a similar fashion those people in the mode of ignorance spend a lot of time sleeping anybody who is fond very much of sleep long sleeping hours it means mode of ignorance or resorting to we will discuss all these things are very beautifully elaborately discussed the food items that we have the words that we speak the way we conduct ourselves by this one can understand whether a person is in mode of goodness passion and ignorance so the mode of ignorance results in misery always current misery and future misery also but a person because of hallucination bewilderment does not realize that one is suffering सत्वं सुखे संजयति रज कर्मणि भारत ज्ञानम आवृत्यतु तमः प्रमादे संजयत्युत द मूड ऑफ गुडनेस कंडीशंस वन टू हैप्पीनेस पैशन कंडीशंस सिम टू द फ्रूट्स ऑफ एक्शन एंड इग्नोरेंस टू मैडनेस सो इफ समबडी इज लाइंग ऑन अ रेलवे ट्रैक एंड वन इज स्लीपिंग और under the spell of intoxicants it is difficult to tell a person to move away sleeping man cannot be woken up or intoxication not able to understand that the train is coming i might get crushed any moment in this way because of madness they get bound and keep on suffering death life after life another person sitting on the railway track is suffering and then he is working very hard to get relief from the suffering and somebody is giving him instruction please move away from the railway track but the person is not listening because he is so much engrossed to get relief suppose he is very thirsty he is digging for water on the railway track or near railway track he does not realize that this is the position of death where i am situated water can be found elsewhere i need to move away from the track as soon as but if one is very much engrossed in digging he will not listen to the instructions the more one is thirsty the less there is possibility of him making understand move away from the track this is called mode of passion when a person is having very strong sensual desires they become half mad they get engrossed in their work i want to have money i want to have recognition i want this person in my life i want this position in society they are not able to rise to the platform of knowledge so people tell yes follow your passion this passion is so dangerous and then people want peace also so this passion is only the cause of all the anxieties that we have in our life simply if we come to sattva guna then a person would be very very happy but then what is sattva guna sattva guna means a person by virtue of knowledge has arranged very nice water for him on the track he has made very nice canopy or tent for himself an air conditioned canopy and he is living very nicely inside he has made power arrangements also nice gadgets listening nice music enjoying in his air conditioned tent but everything is on the railway track he will also get crushed now somebody is telling move away and the person is not feeling any need to move away because one is comfortable so in this way a person who is satvik he gets condition he does not move away from this material world but repeatedly keeps on taking birth as scientist as philosopher as poet as any intellectual the mode of passion anyway binds one to hard work to the fruits of the work and the one in mode of hallucination he is anyway in bewilderment madness so complete madness half madness or material knowledge all these things are not able to give relief to the living entities from repeated birth and death in this material world and even though the person in satva guna is happy now any time one can lose knowledge by contaminating rajoguna and tamoguna just like the fit people also can fall sick any time and when a person falls to the lower modes the life is much much more miserable so one should take advantage of satva guna when the material nature is not disturbing much take help of pure devotee and then move away from the railway track move away from repeated birth and death so although 
Satvaguna is good, it is purer than others, person is sane having knowledge, but unless a person comes in contact with a pure devotee with this knowledge in parampara, one cannot solve the problems of repeated birth and death. In this way, the living entity is bound in this material world, either by happiness in Satvaguna, by the fruits of activity in Rajaguna, or by madness, ignorance in Tamaguna. Rajasthamascha bibhuya Satvam bhavati bharata Rajas satvam tamaschaiva Tamas satvam rajastatha Sometimes the mood of passion becomes prominent, defeating the mood of goodness, O son of Bharat, and sometimes the mood of goodness defeats passion. And at other times the mood of ignorance defeats goodness and passion. In this way, there is always competition for supremacy. So we can see sometimes we are feeling very peaceful, very happy, and we have knowledge, we are seeking knowledge. Sometimes we have strong sensual desires, urges, I want to fulfill this, desires of the senses. We are working very hard. There is anxiety. And sometimes we are in ignorance, just like when we sleep at night, we are completely unaware of what is this material world, nature, who am I, where is my body, what am I supposed to do on waking up, complete ignorance. So sometimes there is Tamuguna, dominant in our body, sometimes Rajaguna, sometimes Sattvaguna. There is always competition among the three modes. Sarva Dwareshu Dehismin Prakasha Upajayate Gyanam Yadata Davidyad Vibriddham Sattva Mityuta The manifestations of the mood of goodness can be experienced when all the gates of the body are illuminated by knowledge. Sarva Dwareshu Dehe Asmin There are nine gates Dwara in this body. Which are the gates we have discussed before? This body is called city of nine gates. Eyes, two eyes, nostrils, ears, mouth, seven, and genitals and anus. So in this way, through nine gates, when we experience illumination, we experience happiness, we are able to see things in the right perspective, hear things in the right perspective, taste things in the right perspective. When we are uh, speaking, the only sattvic words, sattvic language, we are hearing sattvic sounds. When there is proper evacuation, person is cleansed inside and out, then that means a person is in the mood of goodness. There is happiness in all the nine gates in the body. How do we understand I am conducted by Rajoguna? That Krishna explains in the next verse. Lobhav pravirtirarambhaha karmanam ashamaspriha Rajasyetani Jayante Vivridhe Bharatar Shabha O chief of the Bharatas, when there is an increase in the mode of passion, the symptoms of great attachment, uncontrollable desire, hankering and intense endeavor develop. So when there is great attachment, uncontrollable desire, so thus we can see in today's society, advancement means advancement in the mode of passion. People say that you never ever become satisfied in your life. You will not grow. Always increase your desire. Have bigger desire. So this is foolishness, actually. Bigger desire, what is that you suppose? You are traveling somewhere in a flight or train and they tell you this flight is going to crash. Shall we desire to uh, now have anything very nice, name, fame, recognition in society, nice apartment for yourself? Or any achievement, will it hold any value? No, because you know, my plane is going to crash or the train is going to crash. A person will not aspire for any big, great achievement. So even though one is seeing my grandfather has died, I will die, my children also will die, but a person works very hard to have very big aspirations here. So now in this world we are living, it's just like traveling in a train which is going to crash, we are all going to die. But not understanding, realizing this fact, people work very hard. And if there is happiness, then that hard work is worth doing it. 
but then there is only hard work with little happiness that lord krishna explains we will see so that is why a person is called half mad these desires madden a person so when there are very strong desires strong hankering then it is to be understood that a person is in the mood of passion aprakasho pravrittischa pramado moha eva cha तमस्तानी जायंते विवृद्धे कुरु नंदना ओ सन ऑफ कुरु वेन देर इज एन इंक्रीज इन द मोड ऑफ इग्नोरेंस मैडनेस इल्यूजन इनर्शिया एंड डार्कनेस आर मैनिफेस्टेड सो मोड ऑफ इग्नोरेंस मीन्स पर्सन विल टेक टू मोर हेलिसनेशन एंड टॉक्सिकेंट्स एंड वेन अ पर्सन इज इंटॉक्सिकेटेड देन वन कैन नॉट डिस्टिंग्विश वॉट इज रियलिटी वॉट इज इल्यूजन mother sister person fails to recognize and so many heinous crimes happen in society so person becomes more and more mad and keeps on suffering but under hallucination person is not able to realize the time suffering there is misery now and misery in the future in mode of passion person gets immediate happiness long term is misery in sattva guna there is immediate distress but long term happiness but tamo guna is most dangerous current misery and future misery also but a person is not able to realize because of madness yada satve pravridhe tu pralayam yati deha bhret tadottama vidam lokan amalan pratipadyate when one dies in the mood of goodness he attains to the pure higher planets रजसी प्रलय गर्म संगिषु जायते तथा प्रलीन स्तमसी मूढ़ो निषु जायते वेन वन डाइज इन द मोड ऑफ पैशन ही टेक्स बर्थ अमंग दोज एंगेज इन फ्रूटिव एक्टिविटीज एंड वेन ही डाइज इन द मोड ऑफ इग्नोरेंस ही टेक्स बर्थ इन द एनिमल किंगडम सो वाई इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड द इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ मोड्स बिकॉज नॉट जस्ट इन दिस लाइफ it is shaping our future our destiny there are various planets various categories of life it is described very nicely in the scriptures like shrimad bhagavatam there are various planetary systems the entire universe is divided into 14 planetary systems bhur bhuvaswaha we are all aware of this term of the gayatri mantra so these indicate the three planetary systems where the living entities are there who want to enjoy this material world and beyond that there are four more planetary systems if we go above that is mainly for the people who have no sense of any material enjoyment they just want to make their spiritual life perfect so those renunciants brahmacharis vanprasthas and sanyasis who are able to follow the vows of their order very nicely they are promoted to these higher planetary systems which are not destroyed at every night of brahma we saw previously how it was mentioned that ratri agame avashah partha prabhavatyah ragame at the night of brahma the lower planetary systems are dissolved and on the day of brahma again the creation happens and the living entities who want to enjoy they are given bodies but the top four planetary systems they are not disturbed so the entire material cosmos is designed just to fulfill our desires so if you want to make spiritual advancement this proper facility we are not destroyed even at the time of universal dissolution every night of brahma and those planets are maharlok janlok tapalok and satyalok and the comforts of life are much much greater than those on these planets there are so many mystic powers living entities can fly in the air can take any form which is desired and their bodies are very very wonderfully operating but they are not at all attracted by all these wonderful display of mystic performances they are engaged in just making their spiritual life perfect so if a person is in sattva guna one will elevate to higher standards just like now also we see those people who show goodness good behavior and nice education responsibility they are given good position by the government similarly those people who are in goodness they will be made devtas in charge of the universal affairs 
एंड वेन दे शो इवन ग्रेटर गुडनेस देन हायर प्लैनेट्स महर लोक जन लोक तप लोक सत्य लोक लाइक दैट दे आर प्रमोट एंड इफ वन डजन शो रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी देन द कम्फर्ट्स आर टेक इन अवे नाउ अ पर्सन कैन बी रिस्पॉन्सिबल वन इज देवता बट देन इफ अ पर्सन डज नॉट एडवांस फर्दर वन फॉल्स डाउन इफ अ पर्सन डज रॉन्ग एक्टिविटी लस्टी ग्रीडी एक्टिविटी एक्टिविटी इज इन मोड ऑफ इग्नोरेंस वन फॉल्स डाउन टू एनिमल स्पीशीज ऑफ लाइफ एंड इफ अ पर्सन कंटिन्यूज द मोड ऑफ पैशन वन टेक्स बर्थ रिपीटेडली ऑन दिस अर्थली प्लानट इन दिस वे आर फ्यूचर इज शेप्ड एज पर द मोड्स डेट वी हैव कर्मण सुकृत हुहु सात्विक निर्मल फल रजसस्तु फल दुखम अज्ञान तमस फल बाय एक्टिंग इन द मोड ऑफ गुडनेस वन बिकम्स प्यूरिफाइड वर्क्स डन इन द मोड ऑफ पैशन रिजल्ट इन डिस्ट्रेस एंड एक्शंस परफॉर्म्ड इन द मोड ऑफ इग्नोरेंस रिजल्ट इन फूलिशनेस सत्वा संजायते ज्ञानम रजसो लोभ एव प्रमादमोह तमसो भवतो ज्ञानमेव फ्रॉम द मोड ऑफ गुडनेस रियल नॉलेज डिवेलप्स फ्रॉम द मोड ऑफ पैशन ग्रीफ डिवेलप्स एंड फ्रॉम द मोड ऑफ इग्नोरेंस फूलिशनेस मैडनेस एंड इल्यूजन डिवेलप so if you want to get real knowledge everybody is having knowledge the rabbit also has knowledge oh the lion has vanished but this is foolishness this is illusion and madness lion has not vanished that so called vanishment of lion is closing of the eyes of rabbit in a similar fashion the problems of life are not solved by sleeping more or by intoxication neither by working hard the problems of life are solved rather the problems increase so very important that is why we have to take shelter of bhagavad gita this is real knowledge we want to make solutions of problems of life by satisfying the desires of the senses that is mode of passion and by working in this manner krishna is telling from the mode of passion grief develops so person will increase grief misery in one's life if person works in mode of passion immediately there is and we all understand right we have experience of this for example we had desire to eat very nice food stuffs so when we started eating food stuff we started relishing and then we developed diseases and so many diseases we have because of this gluttony either you get colon cancer or you get uh, fatty liver or diabetes or so many problems all the problems most of the problems happen because of improper digestion people do not know and this modern medical science although advanced but uh, they do not know the root cause of the diseases that ayurveda very beautifully describes we go to any ayurvedic physician they'll first of all check the condition of the stomach because what is this body this body is nothing but the food that we eat if you eat nice food in a right manner proper manner there is a good body and if the food is not getting digested or getting transformed into toxins then those toxins get circulated in the body so that is why it is very very important to uh, control the senses nicely when the senses are uncontrolled mode of passion we eat a lot and then improper digestion toxins so many diseases in the body most of the diseases happen because of this thing gluttony so i wanted to enjoy i tasted also immediately i got nice satisfaction of tongue but then diseases i got similarly uh, sexual satisfaction and uh, syphilis and so many other diseases especially in the western countries they get affected a lot hiv and so many things happened why because of unrestricted sexual satisfaction so immediately definitely there is lot of pleasure but there is disease and in society there is disturbance how presidents of the countries they have faced so much embarrassment how the greatest of the sportsmen and celebrities they have faced embarrassment in their life because of this sexual enjoyment so immediately there was pleasure in the illicit sexual relationship but in long term it gave misery so this mode of passion always produces misery 
So if we want happiness in our life, actually we have to move to mode of goodness. We have real knowledge. When we act according to real knowledge, there is happiness. It's a very important message. Next, Lord Krishna explains. Urdhvam gachanti sattvastha madhye tishthanti rajasah jaghanya gunavritti stha adho gachanti tamasah those situated in the mode of goodness gradually go upward to the higher planets. Those in the mode of passion live on the earthly planets and those in the mode of ignorance go down to hellish worlds. So there are different planetary systems. Lower planetary systems are meant for people in ignorance. Middle planetary systems for passion. Higher planetary systems for goodness. Nanyam gunebhya kartaram Yada drishtanu pashyati gune bhyascha param veti madbhavam sodhi gachati. When you see that there is nothing beyond these modes of nature in all the activities, and that the Supreme Lord is transcendental to all these modes, then you can know my spiritual nature. So we want to do research here in this material world and we want to find God. But Krishna is telling here, Gune Bhyacha Param Veti. Param means transcendental, Veti means no. When you know that God is beyond these material nature, God's body is Satchidananda made of spiritual nature, spiritual energy. So here in this material world, just like frog in the well, frog wants to find other animals within the well. How he'll find other animals? He may find some small animals, other species. But there are many, many species. Only when the frog is out of the well, one can realize there is very big, huge Atlantic Ocean. In a similar fashion, we are frogs in the well living on this planet. With the help of Vedic literatures, now one may wonder, Oh, is it a fact? There is a world, Tirpad Vibhuti, which consists of 75% of existence, where there is no birth, death, old age, disease. So one has to understand very scientifically, very logically, one needs to have a deep reading of the Vedas, then we will be able to understand very logically how all these things are fact. And if we chant Hare Krishna mantra with attention and by following the rules and regulations, then all this knowledge will be revealed more easily from within the heart. So very good offenseless chanting, attentive chanting coupled with reading of Bhagavad Gita under proper guidance of spiritual master, we can realize all these things are factual knowledge. So Supreme Lord is not belonging to material nature, thus we may keep on doing research. In this material energy, we will never find Supreme Lord. Only when we know Supreme Lord is transcendental, we will understand Him. Dehi deha samudbhavan Janm mrityu jara dukhair Vimukto amrita mashnute when the embodied being is able to transcend these three modes, he can become free from birth, death, old age and their distresses and can enjoy nectar even in this life. So repeatedly Lord Krishna is telling human life is meant to become free, first of all become immortal. Whatever you attain here, it will all be lost. You are investing so much time, energy to get some position in the society that will be lost. You are trying to love your family members, people around you. That connection will be lost. We will never be able to meet ever again. Is this thing very pleasant way of living? No. So that is why one should first of all try to rise to the platform of immortality. And that is being explained here. If we are able to transcend these three modes, go beyond the clutches of these three modes of nature, Sattva Guna, Raja Guna and Tamu Guna, then one can become free from birth, death, old age and disease. Oh, who has seen that? This is post dated check. Has anybody returned from the other world and explained? Yes, people have returned and explained. Just like people have gone to the moon. I may not believe, you may not believe. So many people in Russia, they do not believe that US has gone to the moon. Even now, at least 50% of the people do not believe. And some time ago, 70-80% were not believing that uh, Americans have gone to the moon or other planet. So we are not discussing whether they have gone or not. Time will reveal. 
But if somebody goes to any place, either space station or we even do not know where is space station, is it fact or not? But somebody has gone and they have come back. They are very less in number. But we understand from the people of knowledge. They have come back, they have revealed and those people who have heard, they have explained the knowledge to others. If you approach them, they can give you all the proofs and verification. In a similar fashion, people have come from that world that is called Avatar. Lord Krishna comes from that world and his confidential servants, they also come from that world. And they come here as spiritual masters and they spread this knowledge. So yes, people have come back from the world of immortality. And just like we approach some astronauts, they give you this description of the space from where they have come back. These people, they give us description of the spiritual world also. We have to be sincere. If we are sincere, we will be guided to such people. The descriptions are there in the Vedic literatures. So one has to become free from birth, death, old age and disease. But this is not a post-dated check. Lord Krishna is telling Amritam Ashnute, a person can enjoy nectar even in this life. Even now we will experience liberation living within the body. The example given in Vedas is just like the coconut separates itself when it is ripened from its shell. Although it is within the shell, but it is detached from the shell. It can see itself earlier it is sticking to the shell. It looks like one unit, but when it is ripened, it is dried up, it is separated from the shell. And when you break it, you can take it out. In a similar fashion, when the spiritual knowledge increases in the body, the soul gets matured, it gets established in its spiritual identity different from the body. Although this body will continue as it is destined for some time, but the soul can understand I am different from this body. Just like the coconut fruit is separated from its shell. So long the body is destined to continue, it will continue but it will not be affected by the distresses or happiness imparted to the body. It will always remain within the body unconcerned with what is happening on physical or mental level. It will be different. So even now, Ashnute, that nectar can be experienced, that liberation can be experienced. The forces of nature are not affecting, person is always in spiritual bliss. So it's not a post-dated check. We have to just be very very sincere in our attempts to transcend these three modes of nature. So now Arjuna asks a very nice question. So Krishna, now please explain how do we transcend these three modes? And how do we find out a person who has transcended these three modes? Has anybody done that? Then we get faith that yes, I also can do. So what are the symptoms? How do we do it? That Krishna, that Arjuna is asking now and Krishna will reply. Arjuna Uvacha Kairlinga istreen guna netan Atito bhavati prabho Kim achara katham chaitans Treen gunan ativartate Arjuna inquired, O my dear Lord, by what symptoms is one known who is transcendental to those modes? What is his behavior and how does he transcend the modes of nature? Shri Bhagavan Vacha Prakasham Cha Pravrittim Cha Moham Eva Cha Pandava Nadveshti Sam Pravrittani Nani Vrittani Kankshati Udasi Navadasi No Gunay Yo Navichalyate Guna Vartanta Ityevam Yovatishthati nengate Samadukha sukha svasthaha Samaloshtashma kanchanaha Tulya priya priyodhiras Tulya nindatma sanstutihi Mana pamana yos tulyas Tulyo mitrari pakshayo Sarvarambha parityagi Gunati tassa uchyate. The Blessed Lord said, He who does not hate illumination, attachment and delusion when they are present, nor longs for them when they disappear, who is seated like one unconcerned, being situated beyond these material reactions of the modes of nature, who remains firm, 
knowing that the modes alone are active who regards a like pleasure and pain and looks on a clod a stone and a piece of gold with an equal eye who is wise and holds praise and blame to be the same who is unchanged in honor and dishonor who treats friend and foe alike who has abandoned all fruitive undertakings such a man is said to have transcended the modes of nature so a very important understanding how do we understand that a person has transcended these modes sattva guna raja guna and tamo guna so first understanding is he does not hate illumination attachment and delusion when they are present illumination means sattva guna sometimes we have illumination we are able to understand oh this is fact but other times that fact is fading away from our memory because of strong attachments we feel attachment to sense objects to watching something eating something or xyz and other times there is delusion so when attachment illumination or delusion are present a person does not hate and when they are not there a person does not long for them a person is situated unconcerned knowing these modes are there in the body as long as i am there in this body the modes will affect the body sometimes the body will experience attachment and uh, sometimes one has to sleep mood of ignorance will be heavy and other times knowledge will be there so a person does not lament that now i am going to fall asleep a person does not get affected oh the sense object is attracting me so much how does it happen because of krishna consciousness when a person is in krishna consciousness he can use all these things in the service of krishna so when a person is getting affected by the mode of ignorance it is heavy one feels sleepy so one takes rest so that body can be rejuvenated again in the service of krishna so in this with the sleep also becomes devotional service to krishna that is also for spiritual advancement and when a person is sleeping when because of wakefulness he was thoroughly engaged in the activities in the service of krishna in sleep also one only thinks of devotional service that is unaffected by the nature of the body the body is in tamas but the person is not in sleep also a person is continuing because entire day one was engaged in thoughts of krishna serving krishna chanting the names of krishna so in dream also person continues to chant it happens right if any activity we became very much engrossed during the day time it continues many times even in sleep in a similar fashion devotional service also continues in sleep so the soul is engaged in devotional service the body might be resting so the person is not in ignorance even though the body externally is appearing in the mode of ignorance So in this way, a person is unaffected. Let the body take rest, but I am not in ignorance. I am still in goodness, pure goodness, shuddha satguna. And when sometimes there is attachment, because we are there on in this body, the body will have certain attachment. There would be few items, food items which are favorable. Those in the mode of goodness, they eat nice vegetables and uh, sweet meats and other things. but still if something is not offered to krishna devotee will not feel any attraction towards those things although they are favorable for the body because a person is very committed unless something is offered to krishna i will not taste that thing so even though those things might be pleasant for the body there could be attachment for those things but a person is unaffected because of this strong vow of satisfying the tongue only by krishna prasadam the food stuffs which are offered to krishna in this way the attachment for certain things does not affect a person one might have attachment for a very peaceful just like satvik people they might have attachment for living in a hut and that is very congenial for one spiritual life but for preaching purpose sometimes the preacher the devotee has to live in city the city life uh, in houses which are made of granite marble bricks and cement they increase rajoguna within the body the city is increase mode of passion within the body but for the service of krishna devotee comes here lives in the houses which are made of predominantly in the mode of passion 
but a devotee is unaffected because he is always engaged in service of Krishna. Again, one is always thinking of Krishna. So if one is thinking of Krishna, either living in cities or while sleeping, one is always transcendental. One is not affected by the grief, by the anxiety created by the mode of passion. One is not uh, affected by the madness created by the mode of ignorance. One is not conditioned by the happiness which stops a living entity to inquire further, advance further into spiritual life. So this is possible only by Krishna consciousness. Then, so thus for a devotee, there is no need to stop sleep because when one sleeps in dream also, of obviously, yes, it is a fact, one should try to minimize these needs. And as we increase our devotional service to Krishna, these necessities of the body will be minimized. But a person is not getting affected by the state of the affairs of the body. Because a person in any state of affairs, a proper devotee under the guidance of spiritual master learns the art of how to always remain in Krishna consciousness and thus always experience the same spiritual bliss either in hard work which externally is a task of uh, mode of passion or one is sleeping which is the influence of mode of ignorance or while one is cultivating knowledge a devotee is always enjoying the bliss of Krishna consciousness. Who is seated like one unconcerned being situated beyond these material reactions of the modes of nature, who remains firm knowing that the modes alone are active, who regards the like pleasure and pain, looks on a clod, a stone and a piece of gold with an equal eye. So everything in this material world has no value for a devotee either gold or stone or anything else because one is satisfied simply by serving Krishna. This science is not known to people. Possessing gold does not make one happy. Otherwise, the owner of mines would have been the happiest people or the jeweler would have been the happiest person. No, it is not. But owning Krishna within the heart makes a person actually very happy. It is a Krishna consciousness. Uninterrupted absorption in the service of Krishna, always thinking of Krishna is what makes a person, a devotee happy. This science, this art is not known to the people. How to capture Krishna within the heart? By sincere service of the lotus feet of Krishna. So because a devotee is completely satisfied, he is on the stage of perfection. He does not have least bit attraction for anything else. Just like we have discussed many times, when we have eaten sumptuously, then we don't feel any need to anything whatsoever, how much ever delicious it could be. So devotee feels nothing lacking in his life. So stone or a piece of silver or uh, gold, it does not matter. It is all the same for devotee. Similarly, pleasure and pain, it does not matter on body, uh, physical platform. Sometimes it will be pleasant. So it is all right. If the health is good, we are having good conditions. Devotee very nicely, energetically engages in service of Krishna. Sometimes there is physical trouble. The preacher of Krishna consciousness, God consciousness, they have to be trouble at times. Haridas Thakur was beaten in 22 markets. Various uh, devotees have met with persecutions. Jesus Christ was also beaten, whipped. But they were not disturbed. As we have discussed, just like the mother lifts the child on the lap, there is definitely pain in the arms. But this pain is unnoticed because there is so much of pleasure in the heart. Similarly, pleasure or pain, it's all the same because devotee knows the art of using both in the service of Krishna. Is this consciousness not amazing? It does not matter. Now the whole world is trying to increase the pleasure. Now to increase that pleasure, they come in mode of passion and the result is long-term grief and misery or they want to mitigate the pain, they are working very hard for it and this hard work again induces pain in the life or when they are baffled, they simply take to intoxication, sleeping, they want to forget the misery but this, this mode of living, transcendental living, not so nice that pleasure or pain, a person is always situated in transcendental bliss there is no need to reduce pain because the pain is the source of your pleasure and there is no need to increase so-called pleasure because anyway, your source of pleasure is not the material pleasure but Krishna consciousness which can be continued in pleasure or in pain. 
So that is why a devotee is always peaceful and always blissful. So looks on pleasure and pain alike. Looks on clawed piece of gold stone alike. Friend and enemy both are same. The enemy, what does it do? Enemy, it uh, takes away our assets. So when the devotee's assets are taken away, enemy plunders the riches and puts you in captivity. The devotee realizes, oh, this material world is temporary. Everything is take, can be taken away any time. So he thanks enemy for advancing in Krishna consciousness. And uh, what is a friend? Friend helps you. But actually friends also can become enemy. Sometimes we see that uh, uh, when people follow Krishna consciousness very nicely, the family members get perturbed and they stop their relatives. They are afraid. They may not become renunciants. They may not leave us. And thus they stop their spiritual advancement. And because of this, they are putting their family members into repeated disease, repeated death, repeated old age. Thus the family members actually become enemies. So thus on Krishna consciousness platform, the friend can act like enemy if he is engaging you in sense enjoyment and the enemy also can act in a friendly manner by making you realize the ephemeral nature of this material world. So friend or enemy both are same for a devotee. Devotee can uh, advance in Krishna consciousness in the presence of enemy or friend. There is no distinction. So this is the great boon of Krishna consciousness. This is called liberation. Liberation means you are not affected. Either somebody is friend, a person feels very delighted seeing him, or there is enemy, person feels distressed. Devotee is not at all distressed seeing the enemy, does not feel any special delight on seeing the friends also. Devotee sees everyone as part and parcel of Krishna and acting helplessly under the modes of nature. Somebody is behaving as friend, causing harm to me, that harm is coming to me because of my karma. What is the need of getting angry with the enemy? Of course, it does not mean you tell enemy come and kill me. This body also belongs to Krishna as a matter of duty. We protect ourselves, but we are not disturbed. Somebody shouts on us. We are not disturbed on them. Why this person? We understand they are helpless. Helplessly under control of three modes of nature, just like the puppeteer. The puppet is dancing by the strings. In a similar fashion, people are dancing under the control of material nature. By the strings of Sattva Guna, Rajya Guna, Tamu Guna, they are helpless. Actually, living entity is not doing anything. Only the modes are active. This is what a person has to see. If we get body of a dog, we are bound to act like a dog. We could have acted as a king in previous life, but this body forces me to go and uh, find the food which is suitable for dog's body, to live in the dog's fashion, to have a dog's abode. In this way, we are forced. So everyone is forced to act in certain way. Happiness and distress is happening because of my karma. So devotee does not harbor unnecessary ill feelings towards anybody. He is always equipoised for everyone. Pandita Samadarshina has an equal vision. Everybody is spirit soul, helplessly acting under the modes of nature. If somebody is acting in a friendly manner to me, he is also helplessly acting in a friendly manner. Somebody is acting as enemy, helplessly acting as enemy. So a devotee does not praise anybody for good quality, does not criticize anybody for bad quality. Devotee knows only the modes are acting. Who has abandoned all fruitive undertakings. So here everybody works hard because they have some fruitive undertaking. They want to enjoy the results of their activity. Devotee knows the result of activity does not make me happy. But the activity done for Krishna and the result offered to Krishna makes me happy. So he does not work hard to enjoy the result of activity. He works hard only to serve Krishna, make Krishna happy. The results if it comes, it will be offered to Krishna, it doesn't come. Okay, less or nothing will be offered to Krishna. I am acting just for the satisfaction of Krishna. This is called liberation. Nothing disturbs a devotee. So by this we can understand that the person is transcendental now to the three modes of nature. So that Krishna explicitly explains, which we just discussed. So sometimes Prabhupada will explain in translation or purport few things which may not be exactly mentioned in the verse. Why? Because the Acharyas have complete knowledge. So you must uh, be wondering. So this is your extrapolation that we have to serve God, then this consciousness be, will be achieved. Is it not possible to achieve this in some other manner? So yes, because we have read Bhagavad Gita, we know it is possible only in this manner. And this Krishna explains now in this verse. 
So Krishna explained the situation. How this situation is possible? That is explained here. Mamchayo vyabhicharena bhakti yogena sevate saguna samtityaitan brahma bhuyaya kalpate. One who engages in full devotional service, who does not fall down in any circumstance, at once transcends the modes of material nature and thus comes to the level of Brahm. So here Krishna is explained. Avya Bhicharena does not fall down unalloyed, unbreakable devotional service. Bhakti Yogena Sevat, especially it is mentioned not Jnana Yoga. By Jnana Yoga, you cannot come to this transcendental position. Gunan Etan Atityatrin, you can be established in top platform of Sattva Guna. But if you want to transcend, it will not be possible by other things. By Jnana Yoga, one can elevate oneself to transcendental platform for some time, but one will not be able to stay on that platform. It is mentioned in Bhagavatam. Param Patam Patanti Adha. Just like if you go to space, but we don't have a shelter on any planet, we have to come back. Similarly, we have risen ourselves by a lot of hardships, tapasya, to spiritual platform. But unless we take shelter on any spiritual planet, unless we have relation, we want to engage in service of Krishna, we will not be entering on spiritual planets. One will fall down to material platform. One needs to be active on the spiritual platform. When there is activity, person will stay. Otherwise, one will come down to material platform. So actual liberation, permanent liberation from three modes is possible as Krishna has mentioned here only by Bhakti Yoga in a Sevate. Bhakti Yoga is the topmost yoga. And it should be Avyabhicharena, unalloyed devotional, unbreakable devotional service. So devotional service is conducted under the influence of the spiritual energy. The material energy functions only to take us away from Krishna. To put us into more and more forgetfulness of Krishna, absolute truth. So when God notices that this living entity wants to serve me, then we are surcharged with spiritual energy. So when we are engaging ourselves in the service of Krishna, this is not that of three modes of nature because material energy will never engage living entity in the service of Krishna. Because the living entity is desired not to serve Krishna, but they want to become Krishna, want to become God then the facility is created by material nature. That you please make the living entity forgetful and make him God, make him Brahma who is as powerful as Krishna and he can create his universe and control the living entities, manufacture their destiny and their bodies. In this way, enjoy the opulence which he wants. But if you want to serve Krishna, material energy does not allow that. Then service of Krishna is conducted under the influence of spiritual energy and if we continuously engage in the service of Krishna, then gradually our mind and body become spiritualized. Although it is made of material energy, this body, but just like the iron rod, if put in fire for a long time, becomes fire-like. It starts emitting heat and light, will burn if we touch it. It no longer is iron. In a similar fashion, this body becomes completely spiritualized by constantly keeping in touch with Krishna. And that is called Jeevan Mukta stage. Even though the soul is within the body, but one is completely liberated, unaffected by the laws of the nature. So thus there is no doubt Bhakti Yoga is the topmost yoga system. Avya Bicharana, but not that sometimes Bhakti Yoga, sometimes material service. Since enjoyment, we have to understand that this knowledge is so important. So now we can very clearly analyze in which mode I am acting, I was thinking passion will make me happy, but passion is the result of all grief that I have in my life. Intoxication anyway is no solution, sleeping is no solution, escapism. Sattva guna advancement in knowledge puts me in hallucination that I am knowledgeable now, I am anyway happy now. In this way the living entity is conditioned. Either one is happy, or if one is unhappy, one is working very hard to become happy, mode of passion, or one is frustrated and sleeping or intoxicated. So the living entity gets stuck in these three states, hopping from one state to another. Only when engaged in devotional service, one transcends. So how do we engage in devotional service? There are nine processes. One may ask that how to do seva 24 hours. That is why so many beautiful ways have been given in the scriptures. This is called Navada Bhakti. 
ಶ್ರವಣಂ ಕೀರ್ತನ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಸ್ಮರಣ ಪಾದ ಸೇವನ ಅರ್ಚನ ವಂದನ ದಾಸ್ಯ ಸಖ್ಯ ಆತ್ಮ ನಿವೇದನ ಶ್ರವಣ ಕೀರ್ತನ ಇಟ್ ಬಿಗಿನ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಹಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಹಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಶುಡ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಬಿ ಡನ್ ಆಲ್ ದೋ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ನೈನ್ ಪ್ರೊಸೆಸಸ್ ಅದರ್ ಏಟ್ ಪ್ರೊಸೆಸಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಪರ್ಫೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಡಿಪೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ಹಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಇಫ್ ಸಫಿಷಿಯಂಟ್ ಹಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಅದರ್ ಪ್ರೊಸೆಸಸ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಮಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟಿ ಸೊ ವನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಹಿಯರ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೆರಿ ನೈಸ್ಲಿ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ನಾವು ವಿ ಆರ್ ಹಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಹಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ವಟ್ ಐಮ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಲಿಸನಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ದ ಡಿವೋಷನ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ಹವ್ ಹರ್ಡ್ ಸಫಿಷಿಯಂಟ್ಲಿ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಪೀಕಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ದೆನ್ ವಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಚಾಂಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ನೇಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ವಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬಿಂಗ್ ದ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ದ ಪಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಟೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಕೀರ್ತನ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ವೇ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಈಸಿ ಥ್ರೂ ಔಟ್ ದ ಡೇ ಇದರ್ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ಕೀಪ್ ಆನ್ ಹಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಆರ್ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ಕೀಪ್ ಆನ್ ಚಾಂಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ನೇಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಶ್ರವಣಂ ಕೀರ್ತನ ಸೊ ವೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಟು ಚಾಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಇಯರ್ ದೆನ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಸ್ಟೇಜ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಸ್ಮರಣ ದೆನ್ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಇದರ್ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ ಆಥರೈಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ವೇದಾಸ್ ಆರ್ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಡಿಸ್ಕಷನ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಭಗವದ್ ಗೀತಾ ಆರ್ ಭಾಗವತಮ್ ದ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ರೀಕಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ದ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಭಗವದ್ ಗೀತಾ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ರೀಕಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ದ ಪರ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ದ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಸ್ಮರಣಂ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅರ್ಚನಂ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ವರ್ಷಿಪ್ ದ ಡಿ ಟಿ ಇನ್ ದ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ ವಂದನಂ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ಆಫರ್ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವೇ ಇನ್ ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ವೇಸ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಎಂಗೇಜ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಔಟ್ ದ ಡೇ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ವೇಕ್ಫುಲ್ನೆಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಎಂಗೇಜ್ ಆರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ನೈಸ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ ಸ್ಲೀಪ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಆರ್ ಎಂಗೇಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಿಲ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವೇ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಫೋರ್ ಅವರ್ಸ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಮೂಮೆಂಟ್ ವೆನ್ ದ ಲೈಫ್ ಇಸ್ ಸ್ಯಾಚುರೇಟೆಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ದೆನ್ ದೆರ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ರಿಯಲೈಸೇಷನ್ one understands that i am different from the body automatically gyana comes there is no need to uh, just like people think if we don't use discretion we cannot come to platform of knowledge no simply by engagement of course as far as possible we should try to understand otherwise we will leave devotional service but if a person has strong faith there is no need to understand simply by chanting hearing thinking of krishna one can get all knowledge but now we are very uh much engulfed in ignorance because we are away from this vedic knowledge sometimes we may doubt it is fact or not will it take me somewhere or not we may leave devotional service that is why we should try to hear we should try to read very deeply very scrutinizingly but if a person has complete faith in chanting chanting hearing will make smaranam thinking will make one's life perfect but in kali yuga especially this chanting and hearing is stressed it is most important then archanam vandanam dasyam sakyam other processes will be successful so here krishna has mentioned bhakti yogena sevate etavan eva loke smin punsam dharma parasmritah bhakti yogo bhagavati tan naam grahanadibhi it is mentioned in the sixth canto of bhagavatam that so many dharmas duties we have the topmost duties bhakti yoga all duties are meant to elevate a person to this bhakti yoga because unless a person comes to this platform so called duties of family and society will neither satisfy the one who is doing duty nor the object of duty or service will be satisfied but if one comes to bhakti yoga one will be satisfied and if one engages others in bhakti yoga they will also be satisfied so this is called the topmost duty punsam dharma parah smritah parah dharma the topmost dharma is bhakti yoga bhagavati engaging in bhakti yoga of whom not of any other demigods or goddesses other devi or devta but of the topmost personality supreme god and how does this bhakti yoga begin tan naam grahan adi bhi naam grahan by chanting his names just chanting the names of the god is glorified everywhere in all the scriptures so we can take advantage keep on chanting as much as possible and begin this beautiful bhakti yoga then krishna mentions brahmano hi pratishtham amritasya vyayasya
द लिविंग एंटिटी राइजेस टू द लेवल ऑफ ब्रह्म टू द लेवल ऑफ स्पिरिचुअल एनर्जी एंड द स्पिरिचुअल एनर्जी कृष्णा इज टेलिंग इट इज कमिंग फ्रॉम मी ब्रह्मणो ही प्रतिष्ठा हम द ब्रह्म ज्योति इज सिचुएटेड ऑन मी ऑन माई पर्सनैलिटी जस्ट लाइक द सन लाइट इज नॉट इंडिपेंडेंट बट इट इज सिचुएटेड ऑन सन प्लानट सन इज द फाउंडेशन ऑफ द सन लाइट इन अ सिमिलर फैशन दैट ब्रह्म ज्योति स्पिरिचुअल प्लेटफॉर्म ऑन विच यू विल राइज बाय फॉलोइंग ऑल दीज रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशंस दैट स्पिरिचुअल एनर्जी आई एम द सोर्स ऑफ इट इज सिचुएटेड ऑन मी and it is this platform which is the platform of immortality shashvatasya cha dharmasya sukhasya ekantikasya cha and of ultimate happiness so we are all hankering for that everlasting and unlimited happiness which never finishes but we are looking it on a wrong platform in ekapad vibhuti which is this material world we are spiritual beings it is a great science just like the fish out of water can never be happy simply put the fish in water and it is blissful similarly we have to simply enter again into tripad vibhuti again rise to the brahm platform spiritual energy that is what lord krishna is explaining here brahm bhuyaya kalpate one rises to the brahm platform shashvatasya cha dharmasya sukhasya ekantikasya cha that ekantika sukha ultimate bliss it is possible on brahma platform so by a constant engagement in devotional service one should rise oneself to brahma spiritual platform in this life one is happy and once we leave the body there is no more birth death old age and disease so i request please always keep on chanting the hari krishna maha mantra deep reading of bhagavad gita and hearing coupled with hari krishna mantra will enlighten us how to further engage ourselves in devotional service of krishna and then if we do this very nicely under guidance of spiritual master we will elevate ourselves to this brahma platform even while we are there within this body and we'll experience bliss never ending bliss at every moment so that was all with this very important chapter so i request please keep on chanting always हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे विल मीट वेरी सून एंड डिस्कस चैप्टर 15 द योगा ऑफ द सुप्रीम पर्सन हरे कृष्णा श्री भगवान वाच ऊर्धमूल मधशाखम अश्वत्थम प्राहरव्यय छंदसी ये पर्णा यस्त वेद स वेद वेद द ब्लेसिड लॉर्ड सेट देर इज अ बैनियन ट्री विच हैज इट्स रूट अपवर्ड and its branches down and whose leaves are the vedic hymns one who knows this tree is the knower of the vedas adashchordvam prasritas tasya shakha guna pravriddha vishaya pravala adhascha moolan yanushasitani कर्मानुबंधीनि मनुष्य लोके द ब्रांचेस ऑफ दिस ट्री एक्सटेंड डाउनवर्ड एंड अपवर्ड नरिश बाय द थ्री मोड्स ऑफ मटेरियल नेचर द ट्विग्स आर द ऑब्जेक्ट्स ऑफ द सेंसेस दिस ट्री आल्सो हैज रूट्स गोइंग डाउन एंड दीज आर बाउंड टू द फ्रूटिव एक्शंस ऑफ ह्यूमन सोसाइटी सो दिस चैप्टर बिगिंस विथ this cryptic information lord krishna is talking about a tree urdhva moolam adash shakham ashvattham prahur avyayam what kind of tree ashvattha the banyan tree fig tree so banyan trees are huge and few decades ago there was a huge banyan tree in the eastern part of india it was spread in many many acres of land 
and it was a challenge if somebody can find out the original tree the original trunk then so much money will be bestowed upon him so it was very difficult this is the uniqueness of the banyan tree from one tree branches will come out they will become secondary roots then so many other trees will come up then in that area from one tree so many trees will soon manifest and one cannot figure out which is the original tree so what is this tree which is being talked about here so this tree represents our entanglement in this material world so as the banyan tree is very very complex no one can trace out from where it began where are the original roots which is the original tree similarly it is very difficult to trace how the living entity came in this material world from where all this started but one must be wondering after hearing these verses banyan tree is all right why inverted banyan tree so yes this world is very very complex we all understand many times people ask this question why the life is so complex so banyan tree is very apt but why inverted this is very very significant urdhva moolam adah shakha moolam means roots the roots are urdhva means upwards adah means down and the second meaning is we are struggling in a hallucinatory existence it's not the real thing to suffer you can see very nice sweet fruit on the reflection of the tree but we shall never be able to taste that fruit or its sweetness we can only see it in a similar fashion we can only see enjoyment in this world but we cannot attain that enjoyment everyone is saying oh if i do this i'll be happy just do that i'll be settled but the settlement never happens that happiness is always escaping us so then lord krishna further describes chhandansi asya parnani the leaves of this tree are the vedic hymns so people are very fond of vedas when they come to us they tell in your temple can we get the vedas we just see bhagavad gita bhagavatam and some other upanishads here where are the other vedas so here lord krishna is telling that this tree is tree of hallucination upside down and the vedas vedic hymns are the leaves of this tree that means if a person is attracted by the leaves of this tree still one is an illusion so one who is an atheist the conclusion this mentioned in the conclusive portion of the vedas which is called vedanta one who is an atheist who does not have faith in the vedas and one who is very very strict in following the rules and regulations of the vedas vedanta declares both are equally in illusion yes a person who does not know the vedas and a person who is following very very strictly the vedas without coming to the conclusion of the vedas which is surrender to the supreme personality of godhead that lord krishna has explained in ninth chapter that lord krishna will explain now in this chapter he will repeat again this instruction at the end of bhagavad gita sarv dharman parityajya mam ekam sharanam raja unless one surrenders to supreme lord one comes to understanding of his personality both the strict brahmana who is following the veda and an atheist are equally illusioned but one who is following the vedas he is on a better platform because when you follow these vedic rituals mainly the vedas contain the karma kanda portion karma kanda portion means you do these rituals these sacrifices these yagyas homas you will get this result and you get material opulences in your life but still material opulences entangle you in repeated birth and death so even though such a situation is in hallucination these vedic hymns hold a person in this tree of illusion they are part of the illusory tree the vedic hymns but a person develops faith when he gets material results in his life by following the vedas and when one is not satisfied by those results he would further read the vedas why am i not satisfied he will come to gyan kanda portion and ultimately upasana kanda and the end of upasana kanda the worship and surrender to the supreme personality of godhead then once vedic study is successful so that is why in the second chapter also lord krishna told 
यावनर्थ उदपाने सर्वत संप्लुतोदके तावान सर्वेशु वेदेशु ब्रह्मणस्य विजानतः जस्ट लाइक इफ यू हैव अ रिवर देन यू नीड नॉट डिग सो मेनी वेल्स इन द विलेज इट सर्व्स ऑल द पर्पसेस इन अ सिमिलर फैशन वन नोस द कंक्लूजन ऑफ वेदास फॉर हिम देयर इज नो नीड टू गो थ्रू वेदास त्रैगुण्य विषय वेद निस्त्रैगुण्यो भवार्जुन द वेदास ओनली टॉक अबाउट थ्री मोड्स ऑफ नेचर एंड एज वी हैव सीन इन द प्रीवियस चैप्टर वन हैज टू राइज अबव द मोड्स so there is no need to go through the karmakanda portion and the most of the vedic hymns we have to come to vedanta time is very short in kaliyuga we cannot wait to follow the karmakanda portion fulfill our desires for hundreds and thousands of years after exhausting all our desires we go to gyankanda again spend thousands of years analyzing what is truth we are very short lived in satyuga people were having such long life and they would gradually progress through it which is called pravritti marg the marg of material enjoyment by enjoying then gradually developing detachment finally you can make your life perfect now it time is very very short so when is to take help of literatures like bhagavad gita shrimad bhagavatam and make one's life successful so chhandaansi asya parnani so the vedic hymns are the green leaves of this tree and yastam ved saved vit one knows this tree For him, all the Vedas are known because all the Vedas ultimately they aim to cut the knot of this material attachment, cut this hallucinatory existence within this material world where one identifies with the body. So that is why there is no need to go through the Vedas if we are able to understand this tree. And what is this tree that Lord Krishna explained here in couple of verses? Then Lord Krishna explained the roots of this tree as it is mentioned here. the branches of this tree extend downward and upward nourished by the three modes of material nature so the first understanding is that what is giving the nourishment to its roots if we have to come out of this hallucination first of all we have to understand what is sustaining this hallucinatory tree as the water sustains the tree here the three modes of nature sustain this tree of hallucination the inverted banyan tree that is why one has to rise above the modes as long as we are in the three modes the tree of material hallucination will keep getting nourishment for that one has to do unalloyed devotional service as mentioned in the last verse of the previous chapter then it is explained the branches of this tree extend downward and upward so the branches are compared to various planetary systems the living entity hovers in so many planetary systems as a person in the tree could be sitting on the top branch on the lower branches he can move around in a similar fashion we move around in various branches among the lower branches are the human species animal species etc and on the higher branches are advanced species like the gandharvas gandharvas are fairies so if we hear something very fantastic we tell it's a fairy tale fairy tale means because fairies do not exist that is what we have learnt and fairy tale means something which is imagination but the vedas describe no fairies are real those species are real so fairies are called gandharvas the celestial musicians there is a planet where living entities are very beautiful they have very melodious voices and uh, their features are very different they can travel fly from one planet to another that is their capacity so gandharvas they are higher species endowed with greater powers mystical powers magical features and then there are kinnaras there are kimpurushas there are devatas indra chandra varuna and then ultimately the main root of this inverted tree begins from brahma loka satya loka the abode of lord brahma the topmost planet So these species are situated on the upper portion lower branches when the consciousness degrades person falls to human species or lower than that animal species of life so these are various branches person keeps on hopping from one branch to another and what are the fruits of this tree the fruits are the four purusharthas mentioned in the vedas dharma artha kama moksha religiosity economic development sense gratification and liberation 
so these are so it is very important to understand this tree so please hear with uh, attention the objective of human form of life is called purushartha artha means objective purush means of a human being so what are the objectives vedas describe four kinds of objectives one aspires for first of all one wants to be religious follow these vedic hymns rituals very nicely because unless one follows the vedas nicely one will be criminal as per the laws of nature and suffering will continue so one will not be able to enjoy even material happiness one will be frustrated always so if one wants to enjoy at least material happiness then dharma so this is the first fruit of this inverted tree then by following the dharma nicely rules and regulations nicely there would be opulence so that is why because dharma was followed in this uh, bharat varsha which is also called aryavarta this country was so very filthy rich that is why the westerners were always eager to come to india somebody may ask if you are telling that economic development is the result of dharma why india uh, is lagging behind no india was not lagging behind it was called a golden bird that is why everyone was eager to come are we so eager to go to slums no we are eager to go to places where there is opulence so why somebody from europe and other places they were hankering to come there was fight who will come to india who will have trade with india frenchmen portuguese englishmen everybody was very eager to find a route to india india was very very rich because dharma was being followed now because india was under subjugation for uh, many centuries and all the precious gems stones jewels and all the riches were taken away and now dharma is also lost because the root of the dharma the spiritual education the gurukuls where the children would go in a jungle in a gurukul away from family stay for 25 years cultivate self realization that system was taken away because nobody was working for the britishers and they wanted some people to work from them they wanted clerks so clerical education system was introduced any person who undergoes vedic education will not take up any jobs because jobs uh, make a person like a servant you are bound by somebody's orders and ya vidya sa vimukta ye the vedas mention vidya knowledge is meant for liberation you should be free you should not be dependent upon anybody so anybody who is educated will remain independent will not serve anybody so now if you want to have some clerks to sustain the government you need to change the education system in this way dharma also went away opulence went away india became uh, a poor country otherwise if a person follows dharma nicely the result is automatically sustainable now economic development you can have but it is not sustainable the british empire was there everywhere but where is the british empire now it is all gone so many empires have come and they have gone sustainable economic development if you want then dharma is required anybody can become rich by stealing by bribery by unfair means but uh, government will capture that person put into jail all those things will be lost so for sustainable economic development dharma religion following the codes given in the vedas are important so first of all dharma one needs to imbibe in the life then artha economic development will follow automatically and why do we want economic development so that kama kama means we have lusty desires lusty desire means desire to enjoy the material senses so from that economic development money acquired we want to enjoy our senses that is all kama there is a third objective of human form of life and when we have sufficiently enjoyed the kama lusty desires sensual desires we will find ourselves utterly dissatisfied that is why the richest countries also are making suicide machines suicide capsules and people are in depression they are banning don't give them sleeping pills they will commit suicide taking more pills so once a person gets unlimited means of enjoyment one find one self more dissatisfied because a poor person is having a hope if i become rich by economic development i'll be happy those who are successful rich they have no hope what do i do further so they sink deep into intoxication and everything and they get very much depressed then a person comes to fourth level 
if a person is following nicely the vedic rules and regulations one will aspire for moksha yes the vedas were describing moksha but i was not interested in that now i have exhausted this dharma artha and kaam i have realized this material world does not make me satisfied so then a person goes to the fourth level which is called moksha or liberation from this material bondage but it is very important to note that all these fruits are the fruits of this tree which is inverted which is hallucinatory so all these fruits are also part of hallucination created in this material world so this dharma which gives economic development not the real dharma is hallucination that is why shrimad bhagavatam the final work of ved vyas the conclusion of vedas describes in the beginning dharma projahita kaitavo atra parmo nirmasaranam satam all such dharmas which are meant for economic development are rejected immediately dharma is not meant for physical enjoyment you do this you go to heaven you enjoy with so many women and wine and like that such dharma is rejected immediately because such kind of enjoyment will never satisfy you it will give some temporary relief to the demands of mind and body but we are spirit souls so such dharma is called kaitava cheating religion because ultimately dharma means to surrender to god to develop love of god that will satisfy spirit soul but a person is cheated because we anyway want material enjoyment let him have this material enjoyment so that he develops faith in the vedic injunctions or the religious codes but this cheating religion is rejected in the bhagavatam which directly points the topmost dharma so this bhag- dharma which promises material results is hallucination and the economic development is also hallucination being part of this inverted tree because nobody is satisfied by this economic development it is only foolishness just like the shirt is different from the body if i think let me have nice shirt and i do not eat will i be satisfied no in a similar fashion simply by taking care of body i will not be satisfied i am spirit soul i need spiritual food i need spiritual life so this economic development which just caters to the need of body is also hallucinatory and then sense enjoyment is any anyway hallucinatory because we are not the body it's just like the enjoyment experienced in dream because i am thinking i am body i am getting affected by the pains and pleasures of this world so the sense enjoyment which the whole world is working very hard to go to uh, better countries to get into better offices positions is all hallucinatory it is temporary once the body is gone everything is gone person may go to which species of life there is no knowledge no preparation and then most important liberation moksha which is described in the glorious words of the vedas that is also hallucination that is also kaitava dharma that is also cheating because when a person wants moksha then also person is selfish then also knowledge of absolute truth is not revealed so when a person is dissatisfied by enjoying the senses he thinks not enjoying the senses will give me satisfaction just like the person gets frustrated in marriage they take divorce and they are happy peaceful oh now i'm happy but then they again get dissatisfied they enter into second marriage again they enter they get frustration then again divorce then they cannot remain single also so then a person becomes clueless what do i do now that is why it is told bhakti moksha laghutkrit bhakti devotional service is actually the ultimate objective moksha laghutkrit it makes moksha liberation very very insignificant kaivalyam narkayate tridash push akash push payate this kaivalyam impersonal liberation is compared to hellish situation narakayate for a person who has positive knowledge of god because moksha means just going and merging in that effulgence light which is coming out of body of god so one remains floating as a particle devoid of any sensual activities so when there was opportunity to engage in positive talking laughing eating enjoying with god and his devotees in the spiritual world you chose to float as a particle in the brahma jyoti so this is spiritual suicide not having any spiritual activity so kaivalyam narakayate it is compared like hell to a person who has positive knowledge of spiritual life so this tree is inverted it means it is a reflection of original tree original life definitely exists 
original opulence definitely exists original enjoyment definitely it is there here sense enjoyment is hallucinatory in dream enjoyment is hallucination but enjoyment is not hallucination so enjoyment of senses should be done on spiritual platform in the spiritual world so this is another very important import of this analogy of inverted tree the inverted the reflection of the tree can only be perceived when there is a real tree otherwise there is no meaning of inverted tree reflection so that is what lord krishna will tell when has to search out that original tree and find the supreme person there who is the source of that tree so one who has positive knowledge of this tree one who has positive knowledge of life without death without old age without diseases without fatigue without any of the anomalies any trouble physical or mental of this material world why would one want to stop such activities and float as a particle only when one does not have knowledge that i am part and parcel of krishna just like the leaf is part and parcel of tree leaf cannot be green independent of tree severed from a tree in a similar fashion one who knows this science what is the science the soul is always linked with the supreme soul yatha taror mool nishechanena as one waters the root of the tree the leaf automatically gets nourishment so if you plan and work just for the satisfaction of supreme person god i automatically get that happiness which i am hankering for when the science of soul constitution of soul is not known then a person desires enjoyment and liberation keeps on hopping between these two situations so thus moksha or liberation is also hallucination and that we will see lord krishna is coming to it one has to go beyond moksha come to the level of bhakti love of god positive life in vaikuntha the spiritual world so primary root is from brahma loka the planet of lord brahma of this material existence then secondary roots are on this earthly planet this is called karma yoni in this human form of life we do karmas good or bad if we do good karmas then we go to better planets just like if we have money then we can go travel abroad as a tourist and once the money is spent we have to come back we cannot stay as long as money is there you can go outside and enjoy in a similar fashion the vedas describe punya pious activities if we perform that we can go to higher branches where you have lot of power control over the universal affairs mystic potencies lot of enjoyment less miseries and continue as long as you have punya in your account once that is exhausted shine punya martya loka mishanti you come to this mrityu loka and if you have bad karma then you go to suffer in the lower planets in the hell so you go sometimes up some just like if you have money then you go to good places to enjoy the money and if you have bad money then you go to jail you suffer and then you come out again in this way living entity keeps on traveling sometimes up and sometimes down like a ferris wheel he keeps on going up and down in this material world so these are the secondary roots once a person comes to this earthly planet's human form of life then one can again have punya and pap so this is secondary root because then the tree of this hallucination further expands then one will go to some other branch then some different branch in this way the material existence keeps on expanding so primary root is brahma loka secondary root is this earthly existence then the twigs are compared to the senses and the leaves also are compared to sense objects sometimes the leaves are compared as we have seen to vedic hymns here the leaves are compared to sense objects because lord krishna is quoting here from the vedas that is why lord krishna is told prahuhu if you read the first verse urdhva moolam adashakha ashvatham prahuhu it is said so lord krishna is also quoting authorities so because this is not a real tree but an analogy to explain our situation in this world so the comparisons may differ so thus uh, sometimes the vedic hymns are told as tree sometimes the sense objects are told as leaves so both understandings are correct and then the attraction towards pious and impious activities they are also subsidiary roots If anybody wants to do pious activities then one creates karma one gets rooted 
and material existence further expands. Or impious activity, one wants to break the laws of nature, again he creates bad karma, again he creates future bodies, again the material entanglement increases. So they become secondary roots. So pious activity, impious activity. And the hatred and desire in this material world, they form the secondary roots also. If we hate anything, we will work hard to avoid that experience. And as we work here for selfish interest, we are creating more karma. And then material entanglement increases, more bodies we create. And if we are attached to certain things to get those things, we again engage in work and that work produces more bodies and creates future destiny. So again, we become rooted in this material world. It further expands the tree of material existence. So in this way, attachment and aversion, they form the secondary roots. Other roots are attachment to pious and impious activities. So that is why if we understand this, the tree of this material world, then the purpose of Vedas is served. There is no need to read the Vedas. So what is this tree we understood? It is nourished by the three modes of nature. So one has to rise above the three modes, then there is no illusion. Above the three modes, we rise by engagement and devotional service. And which are the roots which are expanding our material illusion? Attachment and hatred. So one should remain indifferent in this material world. One should neither become very happy by so-called happiness, should not become very much distressed by so-called distress. Impious and pious activity both ultimately lead to misery because birth, death, old age, disease, they come with every body that we get here to reap the results of pious and impious activities. So one should remain as a neutral in a state of equanimity in this material world. Become free from the three modes of nature. Not get attracted by the Vedic hymns which promise material enjoyment. Don't eat the fruits of dharma, earth, kam and moksha. They are also hallucinatory. That is why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained the confidential objective of human form of life. Prema Pumartho Mahan or Prem Purushartho Mahan. The ultimate, the greatest objective of human form of life is Prema, love of God, beyond Moksha. That actually satisfies us. And the very important understanding is on what the tree is getting reflected. Without water also, there cannot be existence of this tree. The inverted tree cannot exist without the real tree, that is the spiritual world. And the inverted tree also cannot exist without water. So what is water in this case of the tree of material hallucination? That water is desire, material desires. If we have any desire not aimed at satisfying God, but aimed at satisfying our own mind and body, these are called material desires. So the tree is reflected on the water of material desire. If we finish our material desires, the tree will vanish. We will no longer remain in material entanglement. We will be free. These material desires are the basis of entire material existence. So obviously, if a person is hungry, one will chase the fruit, the form of the fruit, which is getting reflected in water, not knowing that that is hallucinatory. Just like the animals, if they are thirsty, they will run behind the water in mirage not knowing that water is hallucinatory. But if a person or animal is drinking real water, they will not run behind mirage. So if we do not have spiritual desires, we do not taste spiritual happiness in our life, we will have material desires. So we should cultivate spiritual life, we will have spiritual happiness, then we will be freed from material desires. And when material desires are not there, we come out of this tree of illusion. So if we have understood this tree, we are aware of the secondary roots, subsidiary roots. We know what is this water, dangerous water of material desire. Then all the Vedic purposes are served. We need not undergo huge Vedic study. That is a verdict of Lord Krishna. Next, Lord Krishna explains. Narupam asyeha tathopalabhyate Nanto na chadir na cha Ashvathamenam suvirudha moolam asanga shastrena dridhena chitva tatafpadam tatparimagitavyam 
यस्तावर्तंती भूय तम एव चाद्यम पुषं प्रपद्ये यत प्रवृत्ति प्रसृता पुराणी The real form of this tree cannot be perceived in this world. No one can understand where it ends, where it begins, or where its foundation is. But with determination, one must cut down this tree with the weapon of detachment. So doing, one must seek that place from which, having once gone, one never returns, and there surrender to that supreme personality of Godhead. from whom everything has begun and in whom everything is abiding since time immemorial na rupam asyeha tathopalabhyate the real form of the tree cannot be perceived in this world no one knows from where it began but one must cut down with the weapon of detachment we need not understand when did it start how many lifetimes ago it started what all transpired in between it is not required to know just like we don't trace the history of disease now we are disease we need to find out the remedy what is the solution so lord krishna is telling one should try to cut down this tree we cut the tree with an axe with a weapon so what is the weapon from which this tree of illusion can be cut down krishna is mentioning here asang shastrena dridena chitva asang shast asanga means weapon of detachment one should be completely detached from this world our attachment to this world temporary situation creates permanent misery for us eternal life after life we keep on suffering from miseries so one should cut down with the weapon of detachment an important word which is used here is dridhena with determination one must cut down because it is not easy this tree is very strong very thick trunk we know banyan tree so lot of determination is required to cut down this tree and then it is told tatah padam tat parimargitavyam yasmin gato na nivartanti bhuyah having cut down this tree one should not become satisfied so thus lord krishna is telling there is something more beyond liberation once your hallucinatory material condition is removed repeated birth and death you are freed from it still something is to be done more and what is that tatah padam tad parimargitavyam one should search out what should one search out yasmin gato na nivartanti bhuyah one should not again come back so krishna is telling you can come back to this tree this tree will get revived if you don't find a place from which nobody returns so thus from moksha person can fall down this is also confirmed in the 11th canto of bhagavatam aruya krichena param padam patanti adho anadrit yushmat angraya with great austerities one can come to the platform of liberation but patanti adha one falls down anadrit yushmat angraya one has not taken shelter of lotus feet of krishna if one does not have positive spiritual happiness one will fall down again to illusory activities so once your material attachment is finished you should not rest but parimargitavyam you should search out the place from where nivartanti bhuyah na nivartanti you don't come back again and in that place you should do one important thing what is that tam eva chadyam purusham prapadye Purush means you will find a person there. There is a real tree. You find on that real existence a person, Purusham, and who is that Purush? Adhyam, original Purush. So it is very difficult. Krishna is telling to find the origin of this tree, but still one should try to find out Purusham Adhyam. I have come from my father. My father has come from his father. He came from his father, great grandfather. In this way, if we trace, we will come to. Lord Brahma the first person of this universe and then this universe is a reflection will go to spiritual world and there if we keep on tracing Lord Brahma has come from Garbhodakshay Vishnu he has come from Mahavishnu 
In this way, we keep on tracing, we ultimately come to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna. Adhyam Purusham, the original person. So the origin of everything is not light or energy, but that light also has its origin in a person. That is what Lord Krishna told in the last verse of the previous chapter. Brahmanohi Pratishtaham, that Brahma Jyoti is coming from me. I am the basis of that spiritual effulgence. So spiritual energy, everything is happening in this world because of energy, but that energy is based on energetic. And he is Purush, he is a person. So one should surrender, Prapadya means surrender. Purusham Prapadya, one should surrender to that Supreme Person. Yatha Pravitti Prasrita Purani And he is the source of everything that is existing, the real tree or the hallucinatory tree. I'll repeat. So he is the source of everything that is existing, the real tree or the hallucinatory one. Just like a small child, if it tries to exert its independence, it will lose its life. Similarly, we are completely in ignorance in this world unless we surrender, just like a child surrender to the parents follows whatever the parents are telling, will be very safe. In a similar fashion, if we surrender completely to Krishna, follow the rules and regulations, the directions given in the Vedas, then we are very, very safe. Whatever desires we have of material enjoyment, that will also be satisfied. And at the end, we will go to the real tree. You want to satisfy yourself in this material world? Then the Vedas give direction, okay, follow this and satisfy yourself. And if you follow the Vedic directions, we will satisfy and then at the end we will return to the Supreme Personality of God. So surrenderance is required to the Supreme Personality of God. So this is the conclusion. So just see it is so very much clear. Where is impersonalism merging here and there? Clearly Krishna is telling. Once this material entanglement is over, Tata Padam, then from that platform, you should find out a place from where there is no return means simply from liberation there is return to this material world. But from the spiritual planets there is no return, there you will find a person. Why am I speaking of planet? Lord Krishna has not mentioned planet here, that he will tell further in the shlokas. So we can wait and we can discuss there. So on the spiritual planet Vakuntha Lokas, when you go there you will find a person who is the original person, surrender unto that supreme person. From there the spiritual life begins. निर्माण मोहा जित संग दोषा अध्यात्म नित्या विनिवृत्त कामा द्वंद्वैर विमुक्ता सुख दुख संज्ञैर गच्छन्त्य मूढ़ा पदम अव्ययम तत् वन हु इज फ्री फ्रॉम इल्यूजन फॉल्स प्रेस्टिज एंड फॉल्स एसोसिएशन हु अंडरस्टैंड्स द इटर्नल who is done with material lust and is freed from the duality of happiness and distress and who knows how to surrender unto the Supreme Person attains to that eternal kingdom. So here the process of surrender is being described. Nirman moha jit sang dosha So first of all one should be nirman one should be free, devoid of any desire to have personal honor in this world. Anybody who desires to be honored in this world cannot surrender to the Supreme Person, which is the objective, ultimate objective stated here in the previous verse. Because if you want honor in this world, as we discussed, it is temporary. We are traveling in a flight which is bound to crash. We see everybody is dying. I will also die. Everything will be left behind. Still, I work very hard to get honored without working hard for eternal life. This is craziness. So if you want honor, then we have to work hard. And if you work hard, there is no time and sense to understand the reality and attain eternality. So that is why Nirmana person should become very, very humble. One should not desire any honor in this world. Nirman moha, one should be free from illusion that I am the body, and this will, will be freed from the desire to have honored. Jit sanga dosha, 
one should be free from false associations when i am in moha i am in illusion that i am the body then i create various designations now this body belongs to certain tract of land that land has been given a name people may call it america sri lanka india australia france these are designations given by us and then if i think i am frenchman i am indian i am american i am british these are also false designations because you thought you are the body you picked up the designation given to the land and then further designations develop of family of uh, uh, castes of other affiliations so one should be free from all such temporary affiliations understand i do not belong to this material world at all i am pure spirit soul aham brahmasmi jit sang dosha one should be freed from such false associations i do not belong to any place any people any family these are temporary designations i have created this is called jit sang dosha then adhyatma nitya vinivritta kama when one is freed from all the designations understand i am a traveler traveling in this body i will leave this body and move on to different vehicle then one can understand the importance of adhyatma nitya the importance of spiritual life self realization and then when one advances on this path vinivritta kama one becomes freed from the material desires and then dvandvay vimukta sukh dukh sangyair one is freed from the dualities of happiness and distress one should aspire one should work hard to become free from happiness and distress which are hallucinatory in this world we have discussed this many times we can discuss again it is very important to know that we want to have happiness we want to avoid distress but one should remain indifferent to both happiness and distress this world is a world of duality now you are very happy oh there is birth but somebody somewhere is crying because one death has happened the same soul has transferred itself to a body so somebody is crying and rejoicing at the same time the body which the soul has left the people living in false designation oh we belong to this person he was our family member they are crying oh, our family member is gone and somebody under similarly false designations oh this is my family or oh, birth has happened in my family they are rejoicing so happiness and distress it is the same thing in material world somebody is happy somebody is distressed for the same phenomena transmigration of soul creates distress creates happiness both are hallucinatory and then now we are enjoying because of birth death will happen to the same person and then we'll be in distress if we became happy in birth of some person we'll become morose and distressed in the death of that person if you are not happy on somebody's birth we'll be undisturbed in the death of that person also so thus happiness and distress are two sides of the same coin so thus one should be very fearful and the exact word which is used in the vedas is detestful of this material happiness now the objective is to have material happiness of body and mind but the sane and sober person should be detestful why detestful because the so called happiness only is the cause of my repeated birth and death entanglement and misery this happiness only is misery two sides of the same coin if the presence of certain comforts in my life make me happy then the absence of those comforts will give me distress and absence is bound to happen because time does not let anything stay here permanently time creates temporary situations if presence of some people is making me happy those people will go away separation is bound to happen because this world is temporary then i'll come under distress the more i am happy in the presence of person the more i'll be hard broken in the absence of those people the more the quality of few people is making me happy those qualities also will change will give me distress if i cannot live without air conditioned room then absence of that will make me very uncomfortable so that is why tapasya was executed in the vedic culture live with bare minimum comforts of life then you are not affected by 
the waves of so called happiness and distress which are two sides of the same coin so it is so important so that happiness is actually our distress if we are enjoying that just wait time will take that situation thing person away and then you will be in distress so long it is there you will be in anxiety to maintain it you will be fearful that it may not go away in this a person is always perplexed in anxiety to maintain in fear of losing it and then finally there is death this is called power the material life so one should be free dwandvair vimukta sukh dukh sangya one should be free from this dualities which are given the names of happiness and distress actually they are the same thing happiness only is distress in this material world gachanti amuda padam avyayam tat such a person who is amuda unbewildered can actually attain that stage of the spiritual world and surrender unto that supreme person so this is the process of surrender न तद्भाषयते सूर्यो न शशाको न पावक यदत्वर्तंते तम पर मम दैट बोर्ड ऑफ माइंड इज नॉट इल्यूमिंड बाय द सन और मून नॉट बाय इलेक्ट्रिसिटी वन रीच इज इट नेवर रिटर्न्स टू दिस मटीरियल वर्ल्ड So here Lord Krishna is explaining the situation of the spiritual world. Na tad bhasayate suryo. The illumination in this material world happens either by surya, the sun, the moon, pavaka, fire or electricity. But Krishna is telling all these things are not required to illuminate my abode. Tad dhama. Dhama means abode or place of residence or planet of residence. Tad dhama param mama. my abode is supreme why krishna is mentioning here paramam dhama because actually everything belongs to krishna now are this dhama earth where we are living this earth is also actually property of krishna but one does not need to live in all the property that a person owns one can have many many flats apartments villas and bungalows but a person is willing to live in his best bungalow best house In a similar fashion, all the dhamas, all the planets belong to Krishna, but dhama paramam, the topmost planet, the topmost situation that Lord Krishna is explaining here, tad dhama param mama, the best abode of mine where I live, that is not illumined by sun, moon, fire, or electricity. Then is it dark over there? No, it cannot be dark, because Lord Krishna has explained previously. that all the effulgence of the sun and moon is coming from me so if krishna is the source of everything which is effulgent how the place where krishna is living can be dark so there everything is of the same nature as that of krishna because krishna is very effulgent prabha asmi shashi surya yo i am the effulgence of the sun and moon krishna tells so everything in the material world is of the same spiritual nature in this material world there is duality matter and spirit are mixed together as we understood in the description of purusha and prakriti in previous chapters but in spiritual world it is only spirit soul and the spirit is having same nature as that of the body of krishna which is completely spiritual it is sachidananda and it is effulgent So just like the sun is effulgent here everything in the spiritual world is effulgent there is no need of external light source like sun moon fire or electricity yad gatva na nivartante once a person goes there he does not come back the description of this material world was explained previously a brahma bhuvana lokan punaravartino arjuna even if you go to topmost planet brahma loka where there is no gross body person lives only in subtle body of mind intelligence and false ego still a person has to come back again come down again but here it is being mentioned na nivartante if you reach the spiritual abode where krishna personally lives the topmost planet then you do not have to come back tad dhama paramamama so in the purport it is explained that one should get captivated by this information so as a person opened 
new bakery next to our apartment so on the first day for certain time he announced it is free anybody who can come he'll get free whatever he cooks there he bakes there and people got captivated by this information oh, i'll get for free if i go there and so many people assembled there similarly one should know there is a place from which one does not have to come back to take more material body one will have permanent life of never ending enjoyment one should get captivated oh i'll be immortal there is no question of death there is no question of old age and disease yes this is the most confidential information that is why krishna has been telling now i am going to tell you the most confidential secret information because we hardly our science has reached the planet next to us we are searching sending some probes and robots but this description is of a place beyond the boundaries of the universe and there if we travel and reach there is no coming back we live have a permanent life so one should get captivated by this information and human life is meant to transfer ourselves to that abode and that happens by surrendering to the supreme person mama evansho jeeva loke जीवभूतः सनातनः मनःष्ठानेन्द्रियाणि प्रकृतिस्थानि कर्षति द लिविंग एंटिटीज इन दिस कंडीशन वर्ल्ड आर माय इटर्नल फ्रैगमेंटल पार्ट्स ड्यू टू कंडीशन लाइफ दे आर स्ट्रगलिंग वेरी हार्ड विद द सिक्स सेंसेस व्हिच इंक्लूड द माइंड हियर कृष्णा एक्सप्लेन्स व्हाट इज द पोजीशन ऑफ लिविंग एंटिटी वी थिंक वी आर एंजॉयिंग हियर but krishna tells no the living entities are simply struggling here karshati struggling how with six senses mana shasht indriyani six senses are explained here we all know five senses plus mind is considered the sixth sense with the six senses we are struggling very hard in this material world to become happy karshati and the living entity is my ansha eternally that is explained here if there is any fragment of impersonalism left in our mind we should read this chapter very carefully so very beautiful it is being mentioned here mama evansho jeeva loke krishna is not telling you are me krishna is telling you are my ansha you are my fragment mameva ansha so we can tell Oh yes now we are fragment but on liberation we will merge and become one with god we will become god as some philosophers say but that is not approved here by lord krishna he is telling here mam eva ansha certainly you are my ansha my fragment sanatanah sanatan means eternally always this is our situation you have always been my fragmental part now this fragment is not like material fragment material fragment can get detached and it can get attached it is being mentioned here nayanam chindanti shastrani nayanam dahati pavakah the soul cannot be cut into pieces the soul is eternal you cannot cut remove and then join again soul is eternal the situation of the soul is eternal so thus eternally krishna is mentioning sanatana you are my fragmental part i am infinite you are infinitesimal and you are struggling here because you do not know this knowledge that you are my fragmental part so this is again very important verse as a leaf is part and parcel of tree tree is huge leaf is small but the way leaf can derive satisfaction is not by asking for independent supply of water but only if the water is supplied to the root leaf is nourished automatically so only if we plan the service of god how to give pleasure to god all pleasure comes in our life material and spiritual there will be no lack of material comforts and we'll have spiritual pleasure permanent life also because this is the science we are eternal fragments of the supreme person shariram yad avapnoti yachapyutkramatishwarah गृहीतानि संयाति वायुर्गंधा वाशया 
the living entity in the material world carries his different conceptions of life from one body to another as the air carries aromas shrotram chakshu sparshanam cha rasanam ghranam eva cha adhishthaya manashchayam vishayanupasevate the living entity thus taking another gross body obtains a certain type of ear tongue and nose and sense of touch which are grouped about the mind he thus enjoys a particular sense i'll repeat the living entity thus taking another gross body obtains a certain type of ear tongue and nose and sense of touch which are grouped about the mind he thus enjoys a particular set of sense objects air is pure but air passes over a flower it picks up the fragrance of the flower it passes over stool picks up the foul smell of the stool in a similar fashion we pick up conceptions of life as per our association so this association is very important if a person is always having an atheistic association he is bound to have an atheistic conception of life if a person is born in materialistic association money is everything will make me happy he is bound to have this belief in vedic culture people would tell material riches brahmanas will tell it is maya so they will keep it only for the maintenance it creates hallucination in our life unless somebody is more advanced than a brahmana vaishnava man cannot properly accept money to use it in the service of god so for a person who does not have positive knowledge of god who is only at the brahmana level that i am not, not the body i am spirit soul for him he should just live a life of simple maintenance should keep away from money and other things it creates distress in our life so thus brahmanas were having concept money is the source of misery materialist has concept money is the source of happiness who is correct in a similar fashion people have various concepts all the concepts simply depend upon our association the people we are associated with so as the soul passes in different associations we create certain concepts in our life some people think material enjoyment is happiness some people think liberation is happiness some people think service of supreme lord personality is happiness now among all these conceptions which is a conception based on truth it is to be found out using this knowledge of the vedas which are coming from the supreme person approved by the seers of truth but as we develop various conceptions we develop various concepts of happiness and distress we develop various desires to enjoy the world in a certain way and the nature arranges suitable bodies to facilitate our enjoyment as we discussed the nature is designed just to facilitate our enjoyment but we need to have the right desires of only having spiritual enjoyment then we reach to spiritual abode utkramantam sthitam vapi bhunjanam va gunanvitam vimudha nanu pashyanti pashyanti gyan chakshushah the foolish cannot understand how a living entity can quit his body nor can they understand what sort of body he enjoys under the spell of the modes of nature but one whose eyes are trained in knowledge can see all this so the passage of soul transmigration acceptance of various bodies elevation or degradation cannot be seen by these eyes because these eyes can just see matter so how do we understand the phenomena on spiritual plane by gyan chakshusha as we have discussed we don't see what is happening on the space station gyan chakshusha those people who have knowledge they tell us we don't see what is happening whether global warming is happening climate change is happening what is happening understand gyan chakshusha we don't see how the soap is killing the bacteria in our hand gyan chakshusha the wise men have told bacteria is getting killed by using soap so we have faith and we follow and we see we are getting result so it must be true in a similar fashion by gyan chakshusha these eyes unless spiritualized by advanced devotional service cannot perceive and see spirit in advanced stages it is possible so otherwise it should be seen from gyan chakshusha 
by the eyes of knowledge by the vedic injunctions by the directions of people who have knowledge of truth yatanto yogi nashchainam pashyantyatmanyavasthitam yatanto api akritatmano nainam pashyantya chetasaha when devering transcendentalist who is situated in self realization can see all this clearly but those who are not situated in self realization cannot see what is taking place although they may try to so thus unless a person takes to yogic practices for self realization formalities will not work in formality i am worshiping the deity or the form of the lord in the temple in formality i am doing some yoga practices for some mental peace without any desire to understand absolute truths or for reducing belly fat then such people cannot understand this phenomena how it is happening even though they may try to so only when a person is situated in self realization one can see all these things clearly yada ditya gatam tejo jagat bhasayate khilam yat chandramasi yat chagnau tat tejo vidhi mamakam the splendor of the sun which dissipates the darkness of this whole world comes from me and the splendor of the moon and the splendor of fire are also from me so this is the beginning of krishna consciousness we cannot see god krishna directly but we can think of him in this manner whenever we see any light here we understand it is coming from krishna we see sun we see moon we should immediately think of krishna or krishna has told the splendor of sun and moon is from me in this manner simply by this understanding we make tremendous advancement in our spiritual life so somehow or other we have to absorb ourselves in the thought of krishna's form that is called krishna consciousness the topmost perfection of yogic realization as explained in the 6th chapter yogi naam api sarvesham mad gate anantar atmana when he is always meditating on the form of krishna within his heart in all one's activities throughout the day he is the greatest topmost yogi so even though we cannot see krishna directly we can understand as by seeing uh the creation or by seeing the painting one immediately thinks of painter by seeing this wonderful creation splendorous sun moon one can immediately think of krishna in this way our thought of krishna begins and we make tremendous advancement gama vishya cha bhutani dharyamy hamojasa pushnami chaushadhi sarva somo bhutva rasatmakah i enter into each planet and by my energy they stay in orbit i become the moon and thereby supply the juice of life to all vegetables so it is because krishna has entered not just within our hearts in these bodies krishna has entered in the planets also that is why the planets are able to maintain their orbits and krishna is the source of moonlight which gives the taste in vegetables so this is also subject matter of scientific research material research that the taste in vegetables is because of the moonlight krishna is mentioning here aham vaishwa naro bhutva prani nam deham ashritah prana pan samayuktah pachamy annam chaturvidham i am the fire of digestion in every living body and i am the air of life outgoing and incoming by which i digest the four kinds of food stuff so krishna is so much taking care of us we are so completely dependent on krishna the inward breath and the outgoing breath both are krishna there is fire heat in the stomach which digests the food stuff without that fire hunger we cannot taste food stuffs even if we eat we cannot digest we will not be able to maintain the bodies 
So first of all, Krishna creates the vegetables, give tastes in the vegetables by the moonlight, and then Krishna creates proper digestive fire so that we can taste while eating the vegetables and we can digest them and the body gets nourished. Inhaling breath, exhaling breath. So thus we are completely dependent upon Krishna in all activities of ours. In this way we can improve our Krishna consciousness. When I am eating something or oh, this taste is because of the moonlight which is coming from Krishna. I am able to feel hunger, I am able to digest because of Krishna present as Vaishvanara, fire in the belly. So in this way in every aspect always we are seeing chapter after chapter Krishna is telling us how we can think of him directly or indirectly. Sarvasya chaham ridhi sannivishto matta smritir jnanam apohanam cha vedaishta sarvai rahameva vedyo vedanta krit vedavideva chaham I am seated in everyone's heart and from me come remembrance, knowledge and forgetfulness. By all the Vedas am I to be known. Indeed, I am the compiler of the Vedanta and I am the knower of the Vedas. Very important verse again, Krishna is telling Sarvasya Chaham Ridhi Sannivishto. Ridhi means in the heart. Of all the living entities, I am seated in their hearts. And what do I do in the heart? Mata smritir jnanam apohanam cha I give remembrance, knowledge and forgetfulness. So we have various desires and to fulfill those desires, Krishna has made laws of nature. Now how do we act as per those laws? Krishna gives inspiration from the heart, Krishna gives the knowledge and Krishna gives the forgetfulness also. So if we have certain desires, Krishna will tell us, inspire from the heart, how to do that activity rightly. He'll make us meet the right persons. He'll take us through those literatures to engage in those activities and thus fulfill the desires of enjoyment that we have. And if it is required that we should take next life for that enjoyment, then in the next life, Krishna will give us remembrance that in previous life you had a desire so I inspired to do right kind of work and now I have given you this body. So Krishna gives knowledge. Now you act in this way and then you will be able to satisfy your desire. So Krishna gives the knowledge and Krishna gives the remembrance. And then Krishna also gives forgetfulness. We become forgetful of previous life. Because if I remember that I am not the body, I am spirit soul. And I keep on changing bodies life after life then I cannot enjoy these hallucinatory desires. So because I have a desire to enjoy on material platform, I need to be kept in hallucination that you are the body. So Krishna makes us forgetful of the past life. But those who are advanced spiritualists like Bharat Maharaj, they were able to remember their previous lives because they did not want to forget. They wanted to attain the permanent eternal kingdom of God. So Krishna gave them remembrance of previous life and previous two lives and thus Bharat Maharaj attained perfection. So, if we want to get knowledge of previous lives, want to have self-realization and we are willing to pay the price, we are willing to sacrifice anything for it, Krishna will give us remembrance. All our births will be remembered and self-realization will happen. And if we want to enjoy material life, we have material desires, then immediately there is reflection of this inverted banyan tree, we get in, entangled in its complexities. So thus, knowledge, forgetfulness and remembrance, everything is coming from Krishna. We want to become atheist, Krishna will give best of the logics from the heart. How to become atheist? So thus, we have to be conscious what we should desire, what will make me happy and satisfied. And thus, to help us cultivate the right desires, Krishna is telling, Vedantakrit Ved Videva Chaham, I create Vedanta. The Vedas also are cheating you to material desires. But I have composed Vedanta, Vedantakrit Vedavid Eva Chaham. So Maharshi Ved Vyas has composed the Vedanta to tell us which are the right desires. Athato Brahma Jigyasa. Therefore, now is the time to inquire about absolute truth. This should be the desire. I should be very, very inquisitive to know what is truth of life, what is fact. 
So Maharshi Ved Vyas is the incarnation of Krishna. Krishna has declared here, I have created the Vedas. Vedanta Krit, Ved Vid, and I am the perfect knower of the Vedas. And from all the Vedas, I am to be known. So this people miss out. So thus, if we have to find a spiritual master, we have to find a person who is a devotee of Krishna, who has perfect knowledge of Krishna, because very clearly Krishna has mentioned here what is the objective of the Vedas. Veda is just Sarvair, Aham Eva Vedyo. From all the Vedas, ultimate objective is to know Krishna. So one who has known Krishna, the purposes, all the purposes of reading the Vedas, it is fulfilled. If a person knows Krishna, so thus one should go to the literature like Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, which give positive knowledge of the real world and of personality of Godhead. And if we get this knowledge, there is no need to go through gradual process of cultivating Vedic knowledge. So thus it is very simple. Thus the Vedas mention Shat Karma Nipuno Vipra Mantra Tantra Visharada. One can be very expert in six duties which a Brahmana is supposed to execute. Mantra Tantra Visharada, he is very expert in mantras and tantras. But a Vaishnava Guru Nasyat, if one is a Vaishnava, not a devotee of Lord Vishnu, Krishna, he cannot become Guru. He can remain Brahmana. But he cannot be called Guru. Guru should be Vaishnava, one who is a lover of God, one who has positive knowledge of God. He only has right to give Vedic knowledge to others because the knowledge of Krishna is the ultimate objective of all. Now let us see few more very very interesting shlokas which will even give much more clarity that how there is no concept of the spirit soul being one with God or becoming God after liberation. So in this verse, Krishna explains, Dvavimau purushau loke sharas chakshara evacha sharas sarvani bhutani putas thokshara uchyate There are two classes of beings, the fallible and the infallible. In the material world, every entity is fallible. And in the spiritual world, every entity is called infallible. Dvav, Imau, Purushau, Loke. There are two kinds of living entities. Kshara and Akshara, those who fall down and those who do not fall down, we keep on falling down. And those who are in the spiritual world, they don't fall down, they don't come again for material suffering. Kutastha, Kutastha means who are fixed in oneness. Oneness means not that they have become merged with God, one in agreement, one in purpose, one in identification. Now we think we are body, those who think they are anshas of Krishna, they are pure spirit souls like Krishna's spirit, that is called oneness. There is agreement, service of Krishna. Just like in the time of war, the entire country becomes one. All the citizens become one. Does it mean they have mixed to become one person? No. All the citizens have become one means one in agreement. Yes, we have to stand together in the time of crisis. So we have to understand properly the use of language in parampara. So we think citizens have become one means they have become one man, all the citizens of the country. No, that is wrong understanding. So fixed in oneness, kutastha means fixed in constitutional position, agreement that yes, we shall work only for serving Krishna. Everybody agrees. I do not want my independent enjoyment. They don't fall down to this material world for independent enjoyment. Now beside both the living entities, Kshara and Akshara, there is one more living entity who is Utta Mahapurusha, topmost personality. What is his situation? That is explained here. Utta Mahapurusha Paramatmeti Udahritaha Yo lokatrayam avishya bibharti avyaya ishvaraha. Besides these two, there is the greatest living personality, the Lord Himself, who has entered into these worlds and is maintaining them. So here we can see Uttama Purushaha tu Anyaha. Besides the liberated personalities, and conditioned personality, there is Uttam Purush, the topmost personality. And what is the position 
the special feature of this personality it is being mentioned his name is paramatma and lokatrayam avishya he has entered into all these worlds and bibharti for the maintenance of the worlds i by entering within this body am able to control the activities of this body i cannot claim that i have entered everywhere so this uttam purush has entered all the three worlds and he is maintaining by entrance in the worlds so thus it is very very clear by being liberated we don't become god god always remains god he is called parmatma we always remain atma we are akshara atma or akshar atma we are liberated or we are conditioned but beyond both the conditioned and liberated there is parmatma the lord himself who enters the worlds and who maintains the worlds so why people tell that we are god on liberation we will become god we are to merge it is not supported by vedas or bhagavad gita at all yasmat sharam atito ham अक्षरादि चोत्तम अतस्म लोके वेदे चथित पुषोत्तम बिकॉज आई एम ट्रांसेंडेंटल बी ऑन बोथ द फैलेबल एंड द इनफैलेबल एंड बिकॉज आई एम द ग्रेटेस्ट आई एम सेलिब्रेटेड बोथ इन द वर्ल्ड एंड इन द वेदास एज दैट सुप्रीम पर्सन so somewhere lord krishna is quoting the vedic authorities that supreme person that person you should surrender tam purusham prapadde as if that person is different from krishna no he is not different because krishna is quoting authorities prahu it is said that you do this and surrender unto supreme person just like any advocate he gives quotations he gives references indian penal code section this section this this is the law so thus the vedas are law books and krishna is quoting the vedas thus he talks sometimes in third person surrender to third person and then he gives live instruction so surrender to me i am that supreme person so here lord krishna is telling that direct instruction yasmat sharam atito aham because i am transcendental beyond both the akshara and akshara so i am celebrated in both the worlds and in the vedas as that supreme person so vedas purushottama many times the vedas will glorify purushottama and who is that purushottama govinda madhi purusham tam aham bhajami he is govinda he is krishna krishna is telling aham i am celebrated in this world and in the vedas both the places as the supreme person so krishna has made it very clear i am god i am the supreme person beyond both conditioned and liberated souls यो मेवम असम मूढ़ो जानाति पुरुषोत्तम स सर्व विद भजति माम सर्व भावे न भारत हु एवर नोज मी एज अ सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉडहेड विदाउट डाउटिंग इज टू बी अंडरस्टूड एज द नोअर ऑफ एवरीथिंग एनी देर फोर एंगेज इज इम सेल्फ इन फुल डिवोशनल सर्विस ओ सन ऑफ भारत असम मूढ़ विदाउट एनी डाउट यो माम एवं वन हु अंडरस्टैंड मी एज द सुप्रीम पर्सन एज दैट पर्सन उत्तम पुरुष विदाउट एनी डाउट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वर्ड यूज हियर इज स सर्व विद भजति माम सर्व विद ही इज टू बी कंसिडर्ड एज नोइंग एवरीथिंग ऑल द वेदास सो हु इज कंसिडर्ड द नोर ऑफ द वेदास not one who is lost in the karma kanda portion rig yaju sam atharva ved mention mainly karma kanda portion but a person who knows krishna he is sarva vid he is knower of everything so one should know krishna as supreme person and bhajati maam such a person will engage in bhajati in devotional service of krishna thus we are looking for a spiritual master most knowledgeable person so we should find a person who is bhajati maam who is engaged in service of krishna bhajati means bhajan rendering service so the perfect spiritual master most knowledgeable person who is sarva vid what he'll be doing is bhajati maam he'll be worshiping me krishna is telling so the most knowledgeable person will worship krishna sarva bhavena bharata in all respects 
he'll completely worship. So thus, one should only accept a worshipper of Krishna as the spiritual master. Iti guhya tamam shastram idam uktam mayanagha etad buddhva buddhiman syat krit krityascha bharata this is the most confidential part of the Vedic scriptures, O sinless one, and it is disclosed now by me. Whoever understands this will become wise, and his endeavors will know perfection. So, Krishna gradually has built up this philosophy, and now we see yoga of the Supreme Person. Now, clearly, the knowledge is being given the Supreme Truth is a person, and yoga. How to get connected to that person is explained very clearly in this chapter. So one may ask why Krishna in the beginning of the Gita itself did not reveal this knowledge because Arjuna Krishna thought would take otherwise. When Krishna explained his eternality itself in the fourth chapter Arjuna asked how do I understand that you spoke this knowledge to sun god? We are comrades, we took birth together, we have played together. So thus gradually Krishna has given information. So thus Vedas also give gradual information till Vedanta and Bhagavatam, the explanation of Vedanta. That is a perfection of knowledge. But unless one reaches this point, the perfection of knowledge, knowledge of Supreme Person, one's knowledge remains incomplete. And very important qualification to get understand this knowledge is, the word used here is Maya Anagha. Iti Guhyatamam Shastram, this most Guhyatamam, topmost secret that this material world is hallucinatory, the things which we think will give us happiness are the secondary roots which entangle us in this existence. Desire is the water, real world, the reality, positive life, people without death, old age, disease, eternal, ever increasing happiness. This is Guhyatamam, very confidential. God is a person living on that planet which is self-effulgent. Now this is explained to Arjuna because he is addressed as Anagha. Agha means sin, Anagha means sinless. So to understand spiritual knowledge, one has to become free from sins. The sins cover our intelligence, Jnana, Vijnana, Nashanam. They destroy the knowledge and we know that when we have sinful tendencies. right? People commit so many abominable crimes and then later they cry when they are arrested. Why? Because they became mad. Their knowledge was destroyed by the desires. So thus one has to become freed from the sins. So anything actually which is not for satisfaction of Krishna is sinful because everything belongs to Krishna, nothing is our property. Still, there are four main pillars of sin. If we can break these pillars, then other small sinful activities will be stopped. And which are these four sins? It is mentioned in the Vedas, in Mahabharata, Bhagavatam, many places. Striya Suna Dyuti Pana Yatra Papas Chatur Vidha Illicits connection with the opposite sex, opposite gender. Animal killing or meat eating. Intoxication and gambling. So if we can break these four pillars of all sinful activities, then one can become Anagha and one can understand the spiritual concepts. So I request all of you, please understand this material world is a world of duality. That what we are considering happiness, one should be detestful of that. Because we understood, if you have heard this carefully, that is another side of distress. Happiness, distress are two sides of same coin. And unfortunately, what to speak of material happiness? Gross sinful activities are taken as the very source of happiness. So it is a great science, there are laws operating in this nature. Please take help, apply in your life. Please become sinless, do not break these four principles. Now people are very much fond of sex. Every night and day they are enjoying sex. But has sex made them happy? When there were no contraceptives, child will come out if you have sex. So people will not enjoy much sex in life. But now so much of sex is there. The society is also permissive. But has unlimitedly doing more sex made a person unlimitedly more happy? No, but more miserable, more conditioned. 
So please, we have to rise above the materialistic association, materialistic conceptions of life. It is common sense and very logical. But just that, we are so much haunted by our material desires. We either do not have time or we do not have sanity because material desires, they drive us crazy. So I request, please try to avoid these four principles of sinful life, meat eating, intoxication, gambling and illicit sex. And these things become very easy to be followed if one engages in positive aspect of devotional service. If we engage ourselves in the service of Krishna, then easily we can give up these four things because we want some enjoyment. So if we seriously engage in service of Krishna, we'll get positive enjoyment, higher taste and strength to withstand the attractions for these sinful activities. And the devotional service begins with attentive, careful chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare. So please always keep on chanting, engage in service of Krishna, avoid sinful activities and then we'll be able to have yoga with the Supreme Person. Thank you so much for hearing. We'll meet soon with the next chapter, Divine and Demoniac Natures. Till then, always keep on chanting. Hare Krishna. श्री भगवान वाच अभयम सत्व संशुद्ध ज्ञान योग व्यवस्थिति ही दानम दमश्च यज्ञश्च स्वाध्याय स्तप आर्जवम अहिंसा सत्यम अक्रोधस त्याग शांतिर अपैशुनम दया भूतेश्व लोलुप्त्वं मार्दवं हृर चापलं तेज क्षमाधृति शौचं अद्रोहो नाति मानिता भवन्ति संपदं दैवीं अभिजातस्य भारता The Blessed Lord said, Fearlessness, purification of one's existence, cultivation of spiritual knowledge, charity, self-control, performance of sacrifice, study of the Vedas, austerity, and simplicity, non-violence, truthfulness, freedom from anger, renunciation, tranquility, aversion to fault finding, compassion and freedom from covetousness, gentleness, modesty and steady determination, vigor, forgiveness, fortitude, cleanliness, freedom from envy and the passion for honor. These transcendental qualities, O son of Bharat, belong to godly men endowed with divine nature. Material world has been addressed as Dukhalayam, Ashashvatam, Anityam, Asukham, Lokam. That this world is full of miseries. That is why so much struggle is happening. Struggle is happening between the countries to defend their territories. Struggle is happening within the country, either to oust the government from which the people are dissatisfied or either to leave the jobs which are bringing them dissatisfaction or to score very nicely in a system which is very competitive. There is constant struggle in everybody's life. Science is also struggling very hard to counteract the onslaughts of material nature. In this way, everybody is struggling here. So this is not the right way to become happy. It is just like you are in a jungle and your path is strewn with many thorns and pebbles. In order to have a smooth walk, you are trying to remove all the bushes, thorns and pebbles from your path. That is not a sane way to have a smooth walk. The solution is wear shoes. As simple as that. In a similar fashion, 
This analogy is given actually in the Srimad Bhagavatam that one should wear shoes in a similar fashion. Why we are trying to remove all the thorns and all the pebbles? There are unlimited thorns and pebbles in this material world. It is called Dukhalyam. And there is no means, even if you throw all the thorns and pebbles out of the way, hypothetically, although it is not possible, still more thorns will be given by the material nature. More pebbles will come up because Krishna tells, material nature is not automatic, it is controlled by me. Even though it appears to be automatic, this automation is set into place by Krishna. It is under Krishna's control always. That is why Krishna tells, Mam Maya Duratyaya, you cannot overcome, counteract this material energy because it is controlled by me. Maya Adhyakshena Prakritihi, it is acting under my supervision. So thus Krishna tells Duratya, it is very difficult to overcome. But in only one case, one circumstance, it can be overcome and that is Maam Evye Prapadyante, if you take shelter of mine, you surrender unto me. Then you can cross beyond all the troubles of this material world. So the solution is not to invent light so that you can counteract darkness and then that light is creating so many other problems. Then there is light pollution, there is so much disturbance in the uh, biological activity within our bodies. In order to counteract the misery of having a slow ride on animals or other natural means, you have invented automobiles, but then automobiles are creating other problems. So much of uh, non-degradable waste, so much of global warming and uh, unlimited problems are coming up. So if we analyze, we are not solving the problem, we are shifting the load from head to shoulder, shoulder to waist. If you don't study, then there is problem, there would be criticism, there won't be resources to maintain yourself. But then if you study, that is another struggle, we do not want to do, but we are forced to do it. Then if you have automobiles to solve the problem of slow transport, it creates dozen other problems. Waste which cannot be decomposed. The waste is creating global warming. And then so many other troubles. There is traffic and then there is pollution. And because of pollution, so many diseases. So one solution you make and dozen more problems are created. So in this manner, if we analyze, the problems are increasing. And by this hard work to make this earth a nice place to live, the life on earth sustained for so many thousands of years. But now they are telling we have brought ourselves to the point of no return because of this industrialization. So as Stephen Hawking told that we have 100 years on this planet. So by this contribution of wonderful intelligence to make this world a better place to live, we have rendered it uninhabitable. 100 years is the deadline now, you move to other planet. And we are hoping against hope, this earth which was full of resources, even now it is full of resources, we are telling we cannot save it, but we have a hope that on a planet on which resources are not there, we will make it habitable. So all these things will happen if you try to solve the problems of life without taking shelter of the Vedas, which tell us what are the laws of nature, which are the right things to do, which are the wrong things to avoid. Problems will simply keep on increasing, compounding in our life. So that is why we should not try to solve the problems of life by taking out pebbles and thorns one at a time. Rather wear the shoes. And this is called liberation. All these problems are because of the nature around us. Nature forces us to become old. I don't want an old body. Nature forces us to die. Nature forces us with so many problems. That is why the Vedas tell Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. You follow the rules and regulations of the Vedas, then there would be economic development. And after economic development, you can try to satisfy your desires only to realize that it doesn't bring you any lasting satisfaction, the fulfillment of all the desires, then we realize, oh yes, 
actually the greatest happiness lies in liberation from there the spiritual life begins and when a person is very much advanced on the liberated platform one can understand what is god and experience the spiritual bliss in life so the purpose is to become liberated this is very important nothing in the world should affect me whatever disturbances are being created by the nature or by the other living entities or being created by my mind and body there is no other disturbance only three disturbances adhyatmik adhibhautik and adhidevik i should not be affected by anything at all yasmin sthito na dukhe na guru na api vichalyet the greatest calamity also should not shake me this is called the stage of freedom liberation this was sought after by all the sages of the varnashrama culture which is known as hindu culture today so every intelligent person should aspire to understand what is that technology what is that way of life by which i can come to a platform where i can become free from the laws of nature human life is meant to attain this end complete freedom from the clutches of the laws of nature now who is given freedom here freedom is given to gentlemen those who possess good qualities divine qualities and whose freedom is curtailed of that of demoniac people they are put into jail the more crimes they commit the more freedom is restricted initially there would be imprisonment of few years and then uh, if they create further offenses then their hands and legs are shackled further offenses they are put in a dark cell they will not be able to see sunlight or it will be moist dark it is moist dark and it is very very horrible over there for many many days and weeks a person will not be able to see the light of sun so the more we degrade ourselves to the base qualities our freedom is curtailed and if we behave nicely better freedom and resources are given by the government so thus we understand there are laws of nature operating here we follow the principles of hygiene we remain fit healthy we don't follow we fall sick so in a similar fashion lord krishna here gives us all these wonderful qualities which guide us to the path of liberation so we have to cultivate all these qualities so let us understand little bit about these so that we can practice to develop this in our personality the first quality is fearlessness so in this varnashrama dharma the scientific division of society in four spiritual and four social orders is ultimately meant to take a person to the platform of liberation then if one is fortunate on liberated platform one can meet a pure devotee of lord and then understand the truth of the existence of god but minimum at least one should reach the platform of liberation so among these orders sanyas or the order of renunciation is the topmost a sanyasi renunciant is the spiritual master of all the other divisions and the first quality so these qualities should be cultivated by everybody all the devotees should have these qualities but still people in specific situation in the varna and the ashrama are supposed to put stress on some of these qualities like the first uh, three qualities are supposed to be followed very strictly by the sanyasis others may also aspire to develop but a sanyasi must have these qualities and the first quality in renunciation if we want to become sanyasi is abhayam fearlessness because a person has to give up all the connections of family as long as we are attached here we will keep on taking birth here life after life if we want eternal life we need to have detachment if we practice detachment there is always fear i have to leave my family now my family was taking care of me i have got old now in old age i need all the more support but no a sanyasi is supposed to have such a level of realization that one understands the supreme soul is sitting in my heart in every one's heart and he will take care of me even in the very horrible dangerous jungles filled with ferocious tiger snakes and many other insects i will be unharmed if the super soul protects me and if the super soul wants me to leave the body then i should agree because he is a supreme controller 
my pleasure lies in obeying his orders in this way sanyasi is always fearless maro bhi rakho bhi jo ichha to hari you want to kill or save god as you want to do with this body which actually belongs to you you can do it as long as it continues i will try to serve you with this body in this way when a person has realization of god who is present in every atom heart of all the species one remains fearless thus it was a natural course after 50 years of age everyone would take shelter of jungle that is called vanaprastha they go to jungle to practice austerities so this is called fearlessness now it is very very difficult to conceive in old age how somebody can live independently in a far off place isolated and dangerous place but no in the womb when i could not cry for help i was protected i was given all the supplies when i came out i could not know what is good for me but the right kind of food stuff child cannot take anything other than milk milk was provided immediately in the breasts of the mother so this arrangement has been there in the womb out of the womb it is there always so a sanyasi is supposed to be fearless then purification of one's existence impurity means lust and greed rajaguna and tamaguna tendency to enjoy independent of god this is impurity enjoyment tendency to enjoy is not bad but this enjoyment comes when we only plan enjoyment for god a thief's heart is considered impure because he thinks i should enjoy others property so human life is only meant for purification as lord shabdev told tapo divyam putra ka yen satvam shuddhye dyasmat brahm sokhyam tvanantam rishabdev is uh, king of the planet and he is telling he was also taking renunciation sanyas before taking sanyas he is guiding his children hundred sons what is the right conduct of life and he is telling do tapasya that is also one of the items will be mentioned here voluntarily accept discomforts in life because that leads to the purification now people have forgotten what i am supposed to do what is the right thing right culture right quality which will give me liberation so self purification it happens by tapasya voluntarily accepting discomforts it happens by control of the senses it happens by giving charity it happens by control of mind it happens by reading the scriptures so every activity leads either to purification of consciousness or degradation of consciousness either it increases my tendency to enjoy independent of god or it increases my tendency to serve god and minimize my independent enjoyment that is called purification so self purification this is supposed to be practiced by everyone especially by a sanyasi then cultivation of spiritual knowledge so sanyasi is supposed to be very very humble that is why they go begging door to door we also approach people for donations but it should not be misunderstood that sanyasi is beggar especially in india uh, many times we find beggars who have taken this as a very nice means to earn livelihood sometimes you'll find them in the places where people assemble sometimes you'll find them in the uh, trains or bus stops or many other places where people assemble and they will be wearing saffron and they'll be begging because in india there is a culture you are supposed to give maintenance money to the sanyasi so some beggars thought it is very nice i don't have to do any work simply wear this dress and sometimes you may sing the names of god and people will give you money but no sanyasi does not approach house to house because he is dependent on the householders for their maintenance they are abhayam they know i will be maintained in every situation but why they approach because humility has to be practiced going and begging somebody a morsel uh, for your subsistence it is not very easy begging people don't want to beg but sanyasi is supposed to have this humility cultivate this humility and beg and why because when the householders who are very busy in sense enjoyment in maintaining their family they automatically advance by giving charity to the sanyasis so do not have time for direct spiritual cultivation they spend time in earning money and that money is given to sanyasis that is as good as spending time for krishna so by giving this money charity or food to the sanyasis they advance in spiritual life so for their spiritual advancement it is duty of sanyasi to go house to house 
एंड डू मधुकरी मधुकरी मीन्स इट डज नॉट मीन सन्यासी शुड गो एंड टेल वन फैमिली नाउ यू फीड मी विथ नाइस डिशेज एवरी थिंग ही गोज हाउस टू हाउस इन लिटिल लिटिल इट टेक्स फ्रॉम एवरी वन सो दैट नो फैमिली इज ओवर बर्डनड एंड एवरी वन गेट्स चांस ऑफ स्पिरिचुअल एलिवेशन एंड अपार्ट फ्रॉम गिविंग इन चैरिटी द फूड और मनी डोनेशंस दे ऑल्सो इंक्वायर फ्रॉम दैम अबाउट स्पिरिचुअल सब्जेक्ट मैटर एंड द सन्यासी वेन ई गोज ही इज ऑफर रिस्पेक्ट he gives uh, householder gives charity householder becomes capable by rendering service we become qualified to get spiritual knowledge without service even if one hears spiritual knowledge it will take very long time to manifest into realization so he becomes qualified and then they discuss spiritual subject matter in this way householders who otherwise have no time to dedicate to spiritual life directly they can advance in this way so sanyasi is supposed to maintain this thing uh, cultivation of knowledge it is very very important so he should go and spread knowledge to everybody and sometimes if a sanyasi has prematurely taken this renounced order then he should spend all the time in hearing dedicate himself to hear the scriptures and cultivate knowledge it is very very important it is a prime duty of sanyasi the duty of householder as we will see is to give charity because they are engaged in cultivation of money the duty of sanyasi is cultivation of knowledge because they only have time and maturity the austerity and all these principles by which knowledge can manifest so those who have knowledge should spread knowledge those who have money should give money so these three things are supposed to be followed specially by the sanyasis and the next charity danam self control damah performance of sacrifice yagya these are supposed specially to be followed by householders the householder is glorified by the charity because other three orders social divisions brahmachari vanprast and sanyasi do not earn anything so just see how nice is this varnashrama dharma it is specifically dedicated to attain liberation so only in household life for 25 years you can satisfy your senses so that you realize actually that is not bring satisfaction to my heart first 25 years strict education in the gurukul next 25 years household life you can enjoy worldly uh, enjoyment but that also through serving krishna and then after 50 years then you wind up the activities go with wife because attachment with wife is very strong you go with wife to jungle practice austerities but no sex life after 50 years and then after that as soon as you are purified you can live independently take sanyas women cannot be uh, given sanyas because they always need protection you know there are always so many dangers for them so they always if the husband is there together they can live in jungle but when husband wants to take sanyas women should be given protection by her sons so in this way everyone is very conscious what is my ultimate duty so householder is glorified by the charity so now this misconception is there whatever money i have it belongs to me this is wrong just like the cashier cashier is having lot of money but that money belongs to bank out of that little will be given to the cashier whatever is due as per his salary in a similar fashion this body mind doesn't belong to me what money i have earned that is uh, uh, i don't become the rightful owner of all of it i can enjoy up to 50% of it but not more than that 50% should be used in krishna consciousness charity is also in three modes sattva guna rajoguna and tamoguna the charity done in rajoguna and tamoguna is not recommended in the vedas that we will see what it is and charity done in sattvaguna for spreading krishna consciousness this most important knowledge which gives people liberation if you do some temporary seva uh which anyway is going to come to the people as per the arrangement of laws of nature that is but temporary there are endless miseries the real seva is bringing people to the platform of liberation krishna consciousness this charity should be done to krishna conscious people who are spreading krishna consciousness so 50% of the wealth should be spent in such charity it does not belong to us if you want to accumulate more than 50% it will only bring miseries in our life 
and 50% is also maximum actually one should be satisfied simply by keeping body and soul together but it may not be practical so all the scriptures give very practical instructions but remain satisfied with 50% of your income that's it so this is the most important duty of householder charity after charity self control damaha everyone is supposed to follow sense control but specifically the householders because there is lot of opportunity for sense enjoyment brahmachari who is living in jungle he has no earning vanprastha has no earning sanyasi has no earning no resources in jungle what you can enjoy so anyway enjoyment is restricted but householder he has all the opportunities for self enjoyment so his self control is not there then he will be lost so thus damaha sense control self control is very much required next yagya ha performance of sacrifice this is also specially recommended for householders what is sacrifice we have discussed if you have been hearing these sessions krishna has mentioned in second chapter third chapter fourth chapter fifth chapter lot about sacrifice describe different kinds of sacrifices and all the work it is explained should be done only for sacrifice for lord krishna yagya arthat karmano anyatra lokoyam karma bandhana we will get entangled in karma bandhana means laws of nature if we work just for sacrificing the results of activities then we will get freedom from the laws of nature yagya arthat karmanah activity should be done for the artha for the purpose of yagya for sacrifice and fire sacrifice agnihotra is traditionally recommended in the vedic literatures and because only the householders have money this yagya requires lot of money and resources tons and tons of grains and ghee is required and other resources and who can afford it in today's age it is very expensive and apart from being very expensive we need qualified brahmanas who can ignite the fire simply by the mantras where are such qualified brahmanas available so because of lack of such arrangements intelligent people it is told in shrimad bhagavatam will take to a special kind of yagyas there are so many yagyas but as krishna has told in the 10th chapter yagya naam jap yagyo asmi of all the yagyas i am jap yagya chanting of the holy names of lord and it is told in shrimad bhagavatam 11th canto yagya sankirtana prayer yajanti hi sumedasah the most intelligent people will engage themselves in sankirtan yagya together chanting and hearing the names of god sumedasah very intelligent person only will be able to understand this kind of yagya performance so this is very simple anyway we don't have much resources and no resources are required just sit with the family members friends as many people gather the better it is and sing and hear attentively the names of god and thus yagyas are performed we'll be free from karma bandhana stringent laws of nature and all the natural supplies of the materials will be kept intact there will be no scarcity of food there will be no scarcity of water and everything will be maintained very nicely so yagya sacrifice is very important for purification of existence for satisfaction of lord vishnu for becoming free from the laws of nature and for maintaining the supply of natural ingredients without sacrifice one cannot have supply of natural ingredients thus despite so much of advancement we see drought famine there is scarcity of food grains scarcity of water all these things are depleting yagya is required next is study of veda swadhyay austerity tapah and simplicity arjavam these uh, things are specifically to be practiced by the brahmacharis so brahmacharis are supposed to do swadhyay student means simply one should study as now also students keep on studying but this education is not this mundane education reconfiguring the matter shilp napunam that is called this is called an art this education technology what we are studying actually we think that this is the summit of uh, the activity of the gray cells in our head but this technology if we analyze what it is it is simply reconfiguring the matter 
putting this atom from this place to another place, this electron from this orbit to another orbit, diode transistor putting from here to there, putting one chemical layer here. It is simply reconfiguring the matter. Shilpinapunam, just like uh, it is an art to put paint, put one paint here, configuration of paint that is called art. So this technology is also considered but an art in terms of the Vedic knowledge. The knowledge as we have seen in previous chapters is to understand what is spirit, what is matter and who is controller of both. So this kind of knowledge was cultivated in Gurukul. So Swadhyay is required to cultivate this knowledge of spirit and matter and the controller of both. Next is Austerity, Tapaha. Voluntarily accepting discomforts in life is very, very important. So these discomforts in life, austerities, they cleanse the soul of hallucinations and illusion. And then the knowledge of the soul being different from the body automatically awakens. That is why Lord Krishna tells, who is qualified to understand this Bhagavad Gita? Krishna tells, do not speak this knowledge to the people who are not austere or who are not devoted. Either a person should be austere, he should be taking voluntary discomforts in one's life or one should be devoted to Supreme Lord. Then only a person can understand. So everybody likes enjoyment. If a child, day in and day out, child is playing sports or some computer games, he will never realize the importance of education. He will get lost, spoil his career. In a similar fashion, if we don't practice restraint, we will be indulged in sense enjoyment. We will never understand I am eternal soul. Ultimately, I am creating so many problems of repeated birth, death, old age and disease because of my ignorance, because of this sense enjoyment. So to understand oneself as spirit soul different from body, understand I am eternal, it is not easy. One has to do tapasya, then automatically one will understand all the subject matters which could be difficult otherwise to know. So to come to platform of knowledge, tapaha, brahmachari is engaged in education, so it should be coupled with tapasya. Then next is simplicity. Simplicity means arjavam. So not just brahmachari, but Everyone should be very simple. Now we want to accumulate resources, show off to others. No, this is not proper conduct. I should not try to attract the attention of people. If a person is attracted towards me, how will it benefit him or her? But if a person is attracted towards God, that is the beginning of life of unlimited bliss and knowledge. So one should have very, very simple existence, simplicity. Next comes non-violence, ahinsa. How much ever weapons we can have, missile shields we can invent, very nice bulletproof jackets we can invent, helmets we can invent, very nice cars we can invent where there are all the mechanisms for safety. We have very nice system of traffic control. We have very nice advancement in the science of medicine, we will not be able to avoid distress as we can see how it is happening. We have conquered five diseases and 50 more diseases have sprung up. Newer diseases are coming every day. How much ever United Nations we can have, it has been an utter failure to prevent wars. So how much ever we can plan, if we are giving harm to other living entities, nature will plan to inflict harm to us. So it is very simple to understand there are laws operating in this nature. Now people are very much fond of eating meat. But so much pain is being inflicted to other living entity. Meat is called mansa in Sanskrit. So Sanskrit is the language of enlightenment, the most reformed people. So mansa, every word has got a meaning. Mansa means mamsa khadati iti mansa. As I am killing you, eating you, you have the right to kill me next life. So, so much pain is inflicted to the living entities in the slaughterhouse. We will have to undergo the same pain. We may blame, oh, these people are having bad mentality. How cruel these terrorists, they cut the people, chop the people into two portions. 
and how bad are these people fanatics in the name of religion they are creating so many troubles how bad is this uh, national leader he created concentration camps we may blame all these people how bad is the government they cannot protect the citizens we can blame all of them but we have to understand we are enjoying and suffering our own karma instruments could differ but we get lost in correcting the instruments and forget the suffering to me is happening because i have given the suffering to other living entities any pain that is being afflicted to us somebody is using very harsh words upon us we have used similar words upon somebody and inflicted similar punishment to them so rather than showing anger upon the instrument of immediate suffering person realizes oh how bad i was i inflicted similar pain to others may not be in this, this life in previous many lives so if we read the vedas so there are so many stories and they are not stories actually uh, people call them stories they are histories so so many such incidents are there where people were able to recollect oh i have been given this punishment because in my previous life and not just human beings if uh, there was a saint who when he was child he was piercing an insect with a thorn and when he got a human form of life he was erected on an iron nail very big nail they would have like a lancet it will go through the rectum and come out of the head such great pain this was one way of punishment where thieves would be punished by the king and then uh, when he inquired why he was given this punishment then yamraj told him that you don't remember when you were small you pierced an insect with the thorn so nature does not tell that no only small living entities you are killing you will be spared no the same living entity is there in the small body if somebody is riding a bicycle does not mean we a truck driver who is having a big uh, vehicle is entitled to kill no killing is killing same punishment so the bodies of insects may be small but you kill an insect you kill a hen you kill a rat goat dog camel punishment is same we will also be killed but yes if we kill conscious very very who are advanced in consciousness brahmana spiritualists if we kill them there would be much more punishment but minimum we will be killed for any killing that we have done this people do not know so if we increase this meat eating tendency if we increase the slaughter houses more war pestilence epidemics covid all these things will happen and people will be slaughtered by the nature so we have to understand god has made this perfect mechanism you inflict harm you get harm you give help to others you will get help you give wealth to others you will become wealthy you give education to others you become very learned man this is the law of nature this is called the law of karma so i request please try to spread this knowledge be non violent don't give harm to other living entities and uh, understand these laws of nature and transcend the laws of nature by developing all these qualities next is truthfulness satyam falsity is violating the laws of nature but unless one is brahmana one understands my happiness in distress is any way supposed to come why should i and indulge myself in falsehood so only such people can practice this truthfulness even if enemy comes and asks they will still speak the truth because a brahmana is fearless he understands happiness and distress is predestined i should do my duty in this life so that future distress can be avoided i can become liberated so as far as possible one should be truthful and truthful more importantly means apart from the morally being truthful or being false truthfulness means understanding absolute truth krishna from the scriptures and spreading this knowledge to others of absolute truth next is freedom from anger so this anger is very very dangerous as we become angry our entire body becomes contaminated contaminated with the chemicals which are very dangerous for our health now the science has also found out ayurveda always told have a very tranquil and peaceful mind and then there would be no diseases so 90% of diseases they happen because of mind when the mind is disturbed agitated angry lusty it gives rise to so many 
unwanted hormone chemical secretion in the body and then there is so much disease because of that psychosomatic diseases disorders medical science also has understood now we have ulcers in the mouth when there is so much stress we have diabetes when there is so much of stress and uh, actually ayurveda tells 90% of the diseases are because of this mind everything is being governed from here from mind and mind is being governed from spirit so if we follow spiritual life automatically everything is taken care but yes as a matter of duty this anger should be avoided as far as possible anger should be done we cannot stop anger altogether so that is why it is told in the vedas anger can be used upon those people who are envious of god so some people naturally they want to accuse god they are outlaws by nature by natural instinct they become angry as soon as they hear the name of god want to oppose the activities of god consciousness then yes if you become angry with such people just like lord hanuman became angry that is nice that increases our relationship with god so in such ways avenues we can use our anger that helps in advancement of spiritual life but otherwise for my personal interest i should not be angry at all next quality is renunciation we discuss it is very important to have detachment in this world tranquility a person should always maintain tranquility attraction to anything and hatred towards anything both are actually entangling both capture our mind if our mind is absorbed in the subject matter of material world then we have to take birth again if we hate a person we are thinking of the person if we love a person we are again thinking of a person and if the object of love and hatred is any material living entity we are bound to come back here so one should remain tranquil neutral neither hatred nor any attraction for anything or any person entity of this material world tranquility next is aversion to fault finding a passionam now people want to find faults the media the social media is abundant with fault finding and criticism of course calling a thief thief is not considered fault finding but unnecessarily criticizing when it does not bring any change either in my life or other person's life one should restrain from fault finding compassion and freedom from covetousness so one should have compassion for other living entities and of course compassion for the body is sign of ignorance compassion should be there for the spirit soul so one should not think oh this life is so bad if uh, i renounce the sense objects no even though it could be troublesome for the body but it is very good for the spirit soul surgery is very painful for the body but it saves a person so compassion should be for the spirit soul when krishna killed so many people on the battlefield of kurukshetra krishna killed means under krishna's direction arjuna killed pandava killed so it appears to be an act of violence but that is not act of violence that is compassion for the spirit soul so those who are killed by the pure devotees like arjuna or in the presence of krishna who left their bodies they immediately attain liberation which a person attains by doing lot of tapasya cultivation of knowledge for many many lives so even though the bodies got destroyed when arjuna was shooting arrows on their bodies this pain was purifying them and when they left their bodies they got liberation so now there is no more birth and death so these are the very fine things which we have to understand what is real compassion so real compassion is elevating people to the platform of liberation or krishna consciousness so in this way one should have compassion by spreading this knowledge to others this is the greatest act of compassion freedom from covetousness gentleness one should be very gentle modesty one should not do anything abominable and steady determination there would be fall downs because these qualities rules and regulations may not be easy to follow so one should not lose hope and patience by such failures such failures are there in every field everybody fails but one should be determined keep on practicing and then eventually there would be success vigor now this is to be followed by kshatriya kshatriya should have vigor they should have strength capacity to defend the subjects from the onslaughts of enemy 
forgiveness fortitude cleanliness shaucham cleanliness is specially to be followed by the mercantile community we have discussed before how shaucham is supposed to be practiced internally externally externally one should uh, take bath minimum twice a day recommended thrice a day and then uh, internally one has to always uh, evacuate very properly and chant hari krishna mantra very nicely and apart from this cleanliness should be practiced in one's dealings also so especially the mercantile class they can indulge in so many wrong practices indulging in black marketing hoarding and so many other illicit trade activities so one should be very very clean not just in one's body and mind but in one's dealings also this is called shaucham next is freedom from envy and the passion for honor these transcendental qualities o son of bharat belong to godly men endowed with divine nature so all these qualities we should cultivate if we cultivate these qualities then nature gives us more and more greater freedom and eventually we are liberated when we are liberated then we can understand what is krishna what is god and then there is awakening of spiritual bliss in our life and also important word which is used in the last line here is bhavanti sampadam daivim abhijatasya bharata abhijatasya means one who is taking birth in such family i'll repeat so abhijatasya means one who takes birth with such qualities takes birth with qualities qualities are supposed to be cultivated when a person comes outside no within the womb and even before conception this is a science which people do not know in varnashrama system this system is called garbhadhan sanskar in order to cultivate the spirit soul with all these good qualities to have a birth with all these good qualities purification of consciousness is recommended for the parents Now of course those rituals cannot be performed so we do that garbhadhan sanskar by chanting hare krishna maha mantra every day minimum 16 rounds and on the day of conceiving the child minimum 50 rounds 50 should be chanted and uh, the parent should only take krishna prasadam the food which is offered to lord krishna that is pure food it uh, purifies our existence and charity should be given to the devotees scripture should be read in this way parents can purify their consciousness and with such pure consciousness the soul will be naturally born with all these godly qualities so this people do not know now the child is the result of sex life earlier child was the prime motto and sex enjoyment was by product putrayate kriyate bharya putra pinda prayojanam having child was the purpose of marriage because people were understanding ultimately i need to have liberation if i get stuck because laws of nature are very stringent if i get stuck somewhere in lower species ghostly species then if my child performs these rituals pinned down very nicely i will be liberated from those life forms so everything was there with an uh, ambition with a clear idea that i should ultimately reach the platform of liberation and obviously enjoyment is a by product of it but now sex enjoyment is the main activity and child is a by product then we should not be disturbed if so many varna sankaras are coming varna sankara means unwanted population child was not required required was sexual enjoyment child came into picture without purification of consciousness such children born will be naturally inclined to demoniac qualities we will see all those qualities now and they will be very very lusty and greedy and will create havoc in society so arjuna told women are not protected these religious codes are not followed varna sankar unwanted population will overburden this earth so we should protect them and we should desist resist from this war so this is a great science purification of consciousness then abhijatah man takes birth with such qualities दंभो दर्पो क्रोध पारुष्य मेवचा अज्ञानं चाभिजात 
पार्थ संपद मासुरी एरोगेंस प्राइड एंगर कंसीट हार्शनेस एंड इग्नोरेंस दीज क्वालिटीज बिलोंग टू दोज ऑफ डिमोनिक नेचर और सन ऑफ प्रथा तो हियर कृष्णा बिगिन्स टू मैंशन डिमोनिक क्वालिटीज एरोगेंस प्राइड तो पीपल आर वेरी मच एम्बिशियस टू टेक प्राइड दे टेक प्राइड इन देयर आइडेंटिटी दे टेक प्राइड इन देयर फैमिली मेंबर दे टेक प्राइड इन देयर पोजेशंस बट दिस प्राइड इज अ डिमोनियक क्वालिटी पर्सन अंडरस्टैंड्स एवरीथिंग इज बेस्टोड बाय गॉड फॉर द सर्विस ऑफ गॉड एंड एनी मोमेंट इट कैन बी टेकन अवे व्हेन जड भरत भरत महाराज हु वाज रूलर ऑफ एंटायर प्लैनेट ही वाज एक्टिंग एज कैरियर ऑफ पैलिंक्विन and the king was criticizing him as servant so he told now in this life you are criticizing me as servant you are thinking you are king but next life the roles could be reversed the person always understands one humble position any time i can become animal i can become pauper or i can become king all this is bestowed by god so one remains prideless anger we discussed it is a bad quality conceit harshness people are very harsh in their speech their behavior and ignorance lack of knowledge all these are demonic qualities daivi sampad vimokshaya nibandhaya suri mata maashu cha sampadam daivim abhijato si pandava the transcendental qualities are conducive to liberation whereas the demonic qualities make for bondage Do not worry, O son of Pandu, for you are born with the divine qualities. So here Krishna is mentioning divine qualities lead to liberation, and demonic qualities lead to bondage. Dwau bhut sargau loke smin, daiva asura eva cha, daivo vistar shaf prokta, asuram partha me shrino. O son of Pritha, in this world there are two kinds of created beings. One is called the divine, and the other demonic. I have already explained to you at length the divine qualities. Now hear from me of the demoniac. Pravrittim cha nivrittim cha jana na vedura sura na shaucham na pi cha charo. न सत्यम तेषु विद्यते दोज हु आर डिमोनियक डू नॉट नो वॉट इज टू बी डन एंड वॉट इज नॉट टू बी डन नी द क्लिनलीनेस नो प्रॉपर बिहेवियर नो ट्रुथ इज फाउंड इन देम दे डू नॉट नो वॉट इज टू बी डन एंड वॉट इज नॉट टू बी डन लाइक द सोसाइटी टूडे दे थिंक इट ऑल डिपेंड्स अपॉन सोसाइटी दिस काइंड ऑफ एक्टिविटी वॉज कंसिडर्ड अ मोमिनेबल नाउ इट इज एक्सेप्टेबल they do not know what supports liberation and what creates bondage pravrittim nivrittim do's and don'ts they are not aware na shaucham na pi chacharo the rooms are very unclean the houses are very unclean even sometimes some of our devotees they try to approach their friends in colleges very best colleges and they tell their rooms are so dirty and messy so what is this that in the best institutions of the world people are not trained to keep even their rooms tidy themselves tidy do not take bath for many many days being unclean is quality of demons that always leads to miserable life na shaucham na pi chacharo proper behavior na satyam truthfulness every person is starting their day with falsehood so these are all demoniac qualities these qualities or bad qualities should be avoided by any person who wants to avoid bondage and misery asatyam apratishtham te jagadahur anishwaram aparaspar sambhutam kimanyat kam hai tukam they say that this world is unreal and there is no foundation and that there is no god in control it is produced of sex desire and has no cause other than lust 
So there are some philosophers and so called religionists saints who tell this world has come by chance anishwaraha asatyam this world is unreal they tell the philosophize they tell they philosophize just like in dream you have a world you have people you have waters you have trees automobiles everything but actually the dream exists in your brain although in dream it appears that you were existing in that world in a similar fashion some philosophers tell this entire world is asatyam it is false you are not existing in a world the world is existing in your brain in your consciousness when you become liberated you understand the entire world is false asatyam so krishna is telling here those people who preach such philosophies they are actually demons ultimately they want to tell this is your hallucination this entire world which you are seeing there are no varieties here there is only consciousness which exists there is one thing in existence consciousness yes that is fact there is consciousness only but that consciousness so that is fact there is only consciousness which exists but that consciousness has got varieties but they tell all the varieties are illusion created in your uh your mind contaminated mind and anishwaram it is not created by god it is not in control of any god there is not one supreme creator or person ishwaram who is controller and they will tell you only are god so such philosophies krishna has told here it is demoniac earlier demons were attacking krishna and trying to kill krishna so such demons they take birth as philosophers and want to kill krishna in philosophy so that people cannot approach god so externally they might be wearing the dress of saints but with the help of bhagavad gita we should understand such philosophies are actually demoniac in nature they want to kill god in god's existence and want to take people away from god asatyam apratishtham te jagad ahur anishwaram so then how this world has come into picture it is produced of sex desire man and woman they mate and then there is production of children in this way there is combination of natural ingredients and all the varieties they develop so in this way they give various philosophies for development of varieties in this world but there is no ishwar there is no controller so we should be very very careful not to mistake them as saints and religionists or spiritualists etam drishtim avashtabhya डिस्ट्रक्शन because of cultivation of demoniac qualities so no amount of poetry philosophy or scientific advancement will help us if we don't cultivate the science of god don't cultivate these divine qualities any advancement will but create destruction in the form of dynamite nuclear bombs global warming pollution and all such things kamam aashritya dushpuram इम्पर्मनेंट important words used here is kamam aashritya they take shelter of unsatiable lust dushpuram how much ever we may work hard one is never satisfied one wants to accumulate wealth but those who have accumulated the desired wealth they are also not satisfied the richest people of the world are also not satisfied because this kamam the tendency to satisfy the senses independent of god it is dushpuram it is insatiable one is never satisfied by such effort 
dumbh mana madanvita but out of pride in one's abilities false prestige yes i can do it they keep on treading this path of satisfying lust tendency to enjoy senses independent of god and thus illusion are always sown to unclean work attracted by the impermanent चिंताम अपरिमेयाम च प्रलयांतामुपाश्रिता कामोपभोग परमा एतावद इति निश्चिता आशापाशतैर्बद्धा काम क्रोध परायणा ईहंते काम भोगा they believe that to gratify the senses unto the end of life is the prime necessity of human civilization thus there is no end to their anxiety being bound by hundreds and thousands of desires by lust and anger they secure money by illegal means for sense gratification chintam aparimeyam cha they are fraught with unlimited anxieties why because in the previous verse we saw they get attracted to asat something which is temporary anything which is temporary it creates anxiety to attain it and then if you have it to maintain it to protect it and then when you lose it unlimited lamentation chintam thus there are unlimited anxieties for one who is attracted to anything on temporary platform does it not make sense why we should be attracted to anything on temporary platform either situations position people or material acquisitions because all of them will leave us they are not with us we have to work very hard take anxiety to get them then there is fear to maintain them anxiety to maintain them and then when they are lost they will be lost because they are temporary then there is lamentation but one may ask how will i enjoy them yes the enjoyment that we have should be done on permanent platform all this enjoyment one can have by increasing one's attraction in the service of krishna so the demoniac people having no knowledge of service of god chintam aparimeyam cha they are fraught with various anxieties and pralayantam upashrita kamopabhog parama until the time of destruction of this cosmos they want to enjoy the senses or till the end of their life as long as they live their last breath they want to enjoy the senses kamopabhog enjoyment of the senses is considered the highest aim of life and helping others means helping others also in enjoyment of the senses but does it not make sense that it is mentioned here asha pasha shatair baddha that this sense enjoyment entangles us we tell oh this world there is no freedom there is so much entanglement so this material desire only entangles us as we saw in 15th chapter this desire is the water on which illusion of this material world is created so it is dushpuran kaman we saw in the previous verse the desires are never satiated a child is never satisfied with one toy similarly we are not satisfied with bigger toys bigger cars opulence or name fame prestige money we always want to have more we always want to eat more always want to see more is it not simple that is find the senses itching propensity bhagavata mentions you scratch it itching increases all the more so what is this that we are doing creating more dissatisfaction in our life asha pash shatair baddha these hundreds and thousands of desires they bind us now for that i am forced to do hard work in that hard work if i don't get success i am forced to face depression sometimes people hang themselves for being unsuccessful in the material world and then i am conditioned if my husband and wife they deal behave nicely with me i am happy if they don't behave nicely i get distressed so much distressed my boss subordinates behave nicely i am happy if they don't i become distressed baddha this is called entanglement i have uh, given my remote control to others 
as they are pulling pushing the buttons or pulling the ropes i am behaving so human life is meant for ya vidya sa vimukte liberation i am not handing over my control to anybody but these desires i have handed over my control i am completely de- dependent upon externals for my enjoyment i don't get up my morning tea or coffee as i get up oh i become uh, disturbed in my mind this tea coffee was not the culture at all of india it was considered intoxication civilized people gentle people will not take it it was introduced by the britishers and now everyone is addicted to it unnecessarily artificially increasing the necessities of life getting addicted to it these are demoniac activities one should have a simple living minimalistic living so asha pasha shatair badha thus there is no end to their anxiety bound by hundreds and thousands of desires by lust and anger lust forces one to engage in so much of hard work then anger person is told anything unfavorable desires are not fulfilled people are disturbed they get controlled by anger they become servants of lust and anger and then they secure money by illegal means for sense gratification this is the life of demons so if we see that actually uh, we are doing all these things material desires and uh, these material desires they bind us and all of us want to earn money by illegal means idam adhyamaya labdham इमं प्राप्से मनोरथम इदम अस्तीदम अपि मे भविष्यति पुनर्धनम असौ मया हत शत्रु अनिश्ये चापरानपि ईश्वरो हम हम भोगी सिद्धो हम बलवान सुखी आढ्यो अभिजनवानस्मि कोन्योस्ति सदृशो मया यक्षे दास्यामि मोदिष्य इत्यज्ञान विमोहिता द डिमोनियक पर्सन थिंक्स सो मच वेल्थ डू आई हैव टुडे एंड आई विल गेन मोर अकॉर्डिंग टू माय स्कीम्स सो मच इज माइन नाउ एंड इट विल इंक्रीज इन द फ्यूचर मोर एंड मोर ही इज माय एनिमी एंड आई हैव किल्ड हिम and my other enemy will also be killed i am the lord of everything i am the enjoyer i am perfect powerful and happy i am the richest man surrounded by aristocratic relatives there is none so powerful and happy as i am i shall perform sacrifices i shall give some charity and thus i shall rejoice in this way such persons are deluded by ignorance so this is mentality of practically everyone who is being educated in the contemporary education so much wealth do i have today and i will gain more according to my schemes this is blind faith materialist may accuse spiritualist of blind faith that you have not seen god you have not seen spiritual world why you are having faith on something you have not seen so an intelligent spiritualist should counter argue that sir your situation is more fallen than that of mine god and spiritual world for argument sake okay may or may not exist can you tell it does not exist have you went all across the existence no may or may not exist agreed but what is your faith your faith is if i have money i will be happy but you are seeing pashyana pina pashyati those who have money they are not happy so this is called bigger blind faith in one situation that may or may not be true but this is definitely not true and you are following it still you are following it you have got more money in your life and you have seen that has not made you more happy you see people who have so much of money and they are also not happy in their lives and still you chase money is this not a bigger blind faith something which is definitely not true and you are following that but the most intelligent people in the best universities as they take admission not all of them some are there but that count is very few most of them they talk about jobs and placements how much money will i have so when the best brains of the world are after money 
they have this blind faith they don't see money is not making happy the simple sense is not getting awakened because of so much negative culture materialistic culture what is the hope of happiness and liberation so this is called blind faith so much money i have and so much more i'll gain according to my schemes this is demoniac mentality devotee doesn't wish to accumulate money he will have money so that he can spend for god he or she can spend for god so much is mine now and it will increase in the future more and more they think by accumulation of assets everything that they see around them it is meant for their enjoyment they don't understand aham sarvasya prabhu matta sarvam everything is coming from god so he is the natural proprietor bhoktaram yagya tapasam sarva lok maheshwaram krishna tells i am the ultimate enjoyer you should not envy so everything should be used for god and then i'll be happy god will be happy they think everything that i see it belongs to me so so much i have i will accumulate more so this is the mentality of thieves putting eye on others property i will increase in the future more and more they want to increase their assets so increasing the assets for one's own enjoyment this is also demoniac mentality he is my enemy and i have killed him and my other enemy also will be killed so either killing uh, physically or defeating one in competition that is also called killing the enemy so either i want to kill my enemy or defeat somebody in competition so we all are living in a competitive environment and competition can happen only in a society which is envious heart burns seeing other person advance so this country topper was giving interview he had this dream that in my city i will be the first person to top the country because he had good credentials he was hoping he will top but then one fine day he sees in the newspaper one person from his city has already topped in that examination in the country and he explains i got devastated that day so just see seeing other people succeed makes a person feel devastated this is called envy and this is true with all of us even in family such envy exists so we talk of brotherhood loving each other and then we have this competition in the society competition cannot exist without envy mother will not compete with the child for food if there is limited food mother will go hungry so when love is not there then competition this thing and without love a person will not be happy so just see this is called demoniac mentality i want to have more i want to accumulate i envy others i want to have competition i have defeated my enemy i will defeat others also can a mother think like that i have defeated my child i will defeat him tomorrow other children also no this is very bad mentality very fallen mentality no gentleman will have such mentality of defeating others so just see if a mother thinks like that this child i have defeated today i will defeat other children also tomorrow that mother will be called a witch similarly all of us are same uh, brothers and sisters we are all children of god parts and parcels how we can envy each other it means we are envying god because everyone is part and parcel of god so this is called envy this envy is very third class mentality and the best in the best cultured societies the best brains they are into this competition where is the sense where is love what is this knowledge which does not awaken us to these common sense phenomena i have defeated i will defeat more so this is demoniac mentality yes devotees also compete but the competition is to become servant better servant for oh, this person has served god so nicely let me work hard and become a better servant competition is to become more and more humble not to defeat others and put others down i am the lord of everything i am the enjoyer i am perfect powerful and happy i am the richest man surrounded by aristocratic relatives there is none so powerful and happy as i am i shall perform sacrifices i shall give some charity and thus i shall rejoice 
so it is not necessary that they are uh, enjoying everything that they have they want to do sacrifices they want to do charity also but ultimate objective is and thus i shall rejoice this is the ultimate uh, attitude of a demon that demon thinks i want to enjoy i don't want to make others enjoy i don't want to give enjoyment to god who is my source eternal maintainer and lover i want to enjoy independently so for this i will give charity because i enjoy doing charity i feel very nice taking the position of god god is supposed to maintain everyone if i maintain others i get godly feeling or just see i am taking care of so many people so charity is not done in that mood yes giving food and clothes is okay so that those who are hungry and this thing their demands can be met so that they can advance in krishna consciousness so for this dana charity is recommended but not in the mood of i shall enjoy so that they can advance in spiritual life i am not doing anything this wealth anyway belongs to god and it is meant for others who do not have just like sanyasis they spread knowledge to others who do not have similarly wealthy people those who are householders should know that wealth does not belong to me it should be used for others who do not have it in this mood so that we will discuss krishna is mentioning these different modes of charity so a demon will do charity will do sacrifice but so that i shall rejoice i can enjoy when bali maharaj was engaged in such yagya with shukracharya and uh, Lord Krishna came in the form of Vaman Dev, and Shukracharya told that he is Vishnu, and do not promise him anything. He will cheat you, take away all your wealth. So then Bali Maharaj told, so this sacrifice is meant for satisfaction of Vishnu only. So now Vishnu is coming, and you are telling, do not give. You are hypocrite. You are telling against the injunction of the Vedas. So demons do sacrifice yagya. All those sacrifices meant for the satisfaction of Vishnu. but by doing yagya you get the material benefit so it is okay i will do sacrifice so tendency to do sacrifice for one's own enjoyment is demoniac so if somebody is doing yagya puja havan very nicely going to temple but the desire is so that i can enjoy that is demoniac mentality so one should be careful not do yagya and sacrifice for i enjoy so these are very very important instructions and practically we can see all of us are being trained in this attitude and then we can see asha pasha shatair baddha we are entangled we are helpless we are uh, miserable so we should very carefully now reverse this training from demoniac to divine aneka chitta vibhranta moha jala samavrta prasakta kam bhogeshu patanti narakeshu chao thus perplexed by various anxieties and bound by a network of illusions one becomes too strongly attached to sense enjoyment and falls down into hell so they break so many laws of nature unnecessary troubles they give to other living entities and thus they create a very dark future in hell hell is not false as we discussed previously laws of nature are very perfect if you kill somebody you can be killed if you kill 100 people or 100 insects punishment is same killing so how you can be kill 100 times so there is a place which is existing in this nature created by god which is called hell and there the bodies are given where so much harassment will be given but a person will not die so thus nature has done perfect arrangement If you kill somebody hundred times, you will be killed hundred times in suitable bodies. That your body breaks apart, but you will not die. So ultimately, these people they reach such very dangerous situations. Atma sambhavita stabdha, dhan mana madan vita, yajante nam yagya iste, dambhe na vidhi purva kam. self complacent and always impudent deluded by wealth and false prestige they sometimes perform sacrifices in the name only without following any rules or regulations so as we discussed they will perform sacrifice they are very proud complacent 
but those sacrifices rituals externally they may claim that i am very religious but it is mentioned here they do these things in the name only yajante naam yagya iste dambhe na vidhi purvakam and they don't follow the rules and regulations they will create their own rules and regulations for worship for religious rituals that is why it is told in bhagavatam one should see from the result what is the result yes i am very duty bound person i am doing my work very nicely so if we do our work very nicely as per the rules and regulations given in the scriptures then bhagavatam mentions neha yat karma dharmaya na viragaya kalpate na teerth pad sevaya jeevan api mrito hi sah if a person is doing one's work very nicely it should lead one to dharma to a religious life if one does activities as per manashrama dharma duties nicely one automatically will become religious oh yes i am born religious i am born in a very nice cultured family i do all this puja rituals worship so are we getting the result of religion what is the result of religion the result of religion is viragaya kalpate vairagya renunciation if a person follows religion very nicely detachment from this temporary platform awakening to permanent spiritual platform should happen in life vairagya renunciation after following all the religion very nicely i am very much attached to this world it means i am not following the rules and regulations that is demoniac principle i am following for my enjoyment or i am complacent i don't want to follow very strictly and then yes i am a vairagi i am renunciant i am living in himalayas for many many years have we got the result of renunciation and that bhagavatam mentions is na teerth pad seva ya teerth pad seva means engagement in the service of krishna so ultimately renunciation just detachment from temporary platform is not sufficient as we have amply sufficiently discussed what is required is attachment to positive platform of unlimited pleasure otherwise we'll fall down to this platform of flickering material enjoyment so that one can attain by teerth pad seva understanding our constitutional position as eternal servant of krishna so unless a person reaches the stage of teerth pad seva renunciation is useless so it is very nice shloka neha yat karma dharmaya if karma does not lead to dharma dharma does not lead to religion does not lead to renunciation strong detachment and detachment renunciation does not lead to teerth pad seva service of lotus feet of krishna then jeevan api mrito hisa although a person is living he should be considered dead because living person is supposed to make progress in life dead man cannot make any progress so jeevan api although such a person may show symptoms of consciousness one is dead so if one is following religion very nicely but detachment has not happened in this world dead person is dead person is detached but one does not engage in service of krishna jeevan api mrito hisa so they'll be doing sacrifices in name only without following rules and regulations they will never develop detachment and service of krishna ahankaram balam darpam kamam krodham cha sanshrita mam atma par deheshu pradvishanto bhyasuyaka bewildered by false ego strength pride lust and anger the demon becomes envious of the supreme personality of godhead who is situated in his own body and in the bodies of others and blasphemes against the real religion tanaham dvishata kruran sansareshu naradhaman shipami ajasram ashubhan asurishveva yonishu those who are envious and mischievous who are the lowest among men are cast by me into the ocean of material existence into various demoniac species of life asurim yonima panna mudha janmani janmani mam aprapya eva kaunteya 
तथो यांती Attaining repeated birth amongst the species of demoniac life such persons can never approach me gradually they sink down to the most abominable types of existence so here it appears that krishna is uh, unfavorable krishna is angry upon the demons shipami ajastram ashuban asurishvev yonishu I'll throw them in the darkest regions of material existence in demoniac species of life eventually they will go into lower species of life but we have to understand yes krishna shows transcendental anger anger is not bad but it should be on spiritual platform transcendental anger and that is beneficial just like we discussed apparently actions of anger by arjuna and krishna on the battlefield of kurukshetra appears to be act of enviousness they want to kill others but actually it was same as benevolence because all those who died they all attained liberation so krishna's activities are on absolute platform krishna's love and krishna's anger both are beneficial for the other living entity so that is why here even though krishna is apparently becoming angry but such degradation into lower species of life is beneficial for such demons and such demons uh, when they are favored by krishna they are killed by him personally then they get liberation which otherwise is the prerogative of very advanced spiritualists so thus degradation in lower species also it is mercy shown by krishna upon these atheistic demoniac mentalities so externally we should be very very cautious we cannot judge unless we go through the eyes of scriptures and understand the acts of apparently envious nature behavior uh imitating the normal people i'll repeat so although externally the devotees may appear to behave like ordinary people but we should not get mistaken we should see from the eyes of the scriptures narad muni cursed nal kuvar muni giri become trees but that becoming trees gave them pure devotion and liberation to the spiritual world so in this way so called curse so called angry behavior which leads a person into degradation it elevates spiritualists but that anger should be strictly shown only in the service of krishna त्रिविधम नरक द्वारनमात्म कामक्रोधस्तथा लोभस्तस्मादेत्यजे देर आर थ्री गेट्स लीडिंग टू दिस हेल लस्ट एंग एंड ग्रीट एवरी सेन मैन शुड गिव दीज अप फॉर द लीड टू द डेग्रेडेशन ऑफ द सोल so otherwise if not for the service of krishna not on the people who are envious of krishna there should not be any bit of anger no anger because my desires are not getting fulfilled no anger upon people because they are not behaving properly not because they are harming me no in such cases i should not be angry at all so although protective measures should be taken care our interest should be protected because we have to serve krishna but anger should not be shown upon reverse behavior which we can see in this world that is because of my karma so one should be completely free from anger otherwise anger leads one to hell lust anger and greed and now we see all these things are increasing entire entertainment industry increases our lust but what is the result of this increased lust increased disturbance in society in health when you lose semen you lose your vital life force and so many diseases they come and those who enjoy sex life unlimitedly there is very very miserable old age they die horrible deaths so people do not know this ayurveda mentions ahar nidra brahmacharya if we take care of three things we will be healthy eating the right food at the right time nidra having proper rest at proper times and brahmacharya celibacy and if one uh, indulges in sex pleasure for producing children krishna conscious children 
then that is also considered as brahmacharya breath. But if a person indulges in unrestricted sex, oh how can I control? Life will be miserable. No. Now, because of atheistic technological advancement, we have invented contraceptives. Otherwise, when contraceptive pills and other devices were not there, child will come out if you indulge in sexual pleasure. You cannot have unlimited children. Thus, very very limited number of times people will have sex in their lives. So, what we are discussing is not very difficult. So, people have to practice restraint because child will come out of such activity. But now we have got addicted because of these contraceptives and that is creating so much destruction in spiritual life and so much destruction of one's mental sanity. People become insane when they indulge in so much of sex. And of course, degradation in health. Why so many diseases have come up which were not existing few decades ago? Because of this thing, very important thing. So maintaining good resistivity, I'll repeat. So for maintaining good resistivity in the body, we need to protect semen, conserve semen. It is important. So lust. Everybody is increasing lust. Entire industry, media, everything to increase lust. Anger anyway. Because you have so many desires, when the desires are not fulfilled, we will feel anger. And greed, nobody is satisfied. Accumulate as much as possible. No. Vedic culture was, minimize the needs as much as possible. Reverse way. If you accumulate as much as possible, then resources are limited. We will destroy the earth. Not sustainable growth. So neither materially, nor socially, nor spiritually, these three qualities are favorable. One should be very, very cautious. These are considered the gates of hell. They will take us to unlimited suffering in this world and to the hellish planets. So we should by all means control lust, anger and greed. Etair vimukta konteya Tamo dvara istribhir naraha Acharatyatmana shreyas Tato yati param gatim The man who has escaped these three gates of hell, O son of Kunti, performs acts conducive to self-realization and thus gradually attains the supreme destination. Yashastra vidhim usridhya vartate kama karataha nasa siddhim avapnoti nasukham na param gatim. But he who discards scriptural injunctions and acts according to his own whims attains neither perfection nor happiness nor the supreme destination. Tasmat Shastram Pramanam Te Karya Karya Vyavasthitao Gyatva Shastra Vidhanoktam Karma Kartum Ihar Hasi One should understand what is duty and what is not duty by the regulations of the scriptures. Knowing such rules and regulations, one should act so that he may gradually be elevated. So when we discuss these rules and regulations, they may appear to be difficult. But we have to understand, skipping rules and regulations may appear to be giving us freedom. Oh, I want to remain free. I don't want to lose it. But no, actually it is binding us. Just like if we follow the simple rules and regulations of civic body government, we can enjoy so many facilities of government. But if we want to unduly increase our freedom by violating the laws, then we will be put in jail. Our freedom is. So absolute freedom is only with God. We have to follow rules and regulations nicely. So if we follow rules and regulations Krishna tells here, then we elevate ourselves to the platform of liberation. And how to understand those rules and regulations? By understanding the do's and don'ts mentioned in the scriptures, which are the user manual given by God. Otherwise, yasha sirvidim usridhya, those who leave the scriptures, nasa siddhim, they don't attain perfection of life, na sukham, they are not happy. That is why we see, and we are not seeing, the data is chilling. The world is more miserable than the misery after world war. People are more depressed now. So people have not become happy. 
because uh, there is no independence we are becoming more and more entangled and on the other hand you see this life the life of devotees so uh, we are living a life so it is not just some motivational talk from the platform motivational speakers they come and carry so much and they themselves are demotivated and they have so many issues in their life no there is not such artificial talk so prabhupad went to america and they were accusing india india is a poor country so prabhupad told you think having more money will make you happy then your country is super rich america why you are producing hippies in 1960s there was counter culture movement hippies hippie means who are dissatisfied they left their institutions school colleges marriages no rules and regulations they wanted to follow so these are dissatisfied so your best research institutes best gdp and economic development has left them dissatisfied so money power gdp does not make you satisfied it is required to keep the body and soul together so na sukham one will not be satisfied then prabhupad gave them krishna consciousness prabhupad brought them from america into indian villages vrindavan mayapur now there is some development otherwise they were complete villages back then and there were snakes on the fields there are no toilets they have to go to the field to evacuate so uh, mosquitoes are there snakes are there and indian uh, uh, climate weather such uh, conditions it was difficult for them temperatures heat they were getting malaria diarrhea so many diseases but they never left even now you go to these places you'll find many westerners settled very nicely uh, so prabhupad made them get settled in the villages with bare minimum uh, maintenance and they left cities like new york chicago the most rich cities of the world the most opulent nations so prabhupad wanted to show them it is the krishna consciousness which is missing in one's life that will make them happy so if you see the life of a devotee the devotee violates all the conceptions which people harbor to get happiness the devotees do not have any source of income no money we don't get any salary and uh, so first of all no money money is not required for happiness no salary is being given living conditions are simple sometimes very troublesome you have to go to spread this message in war torn countries unfavorable situations devotees are ready to go in such situations sometimes they get killed problems are there no problem so uh, living conditions are simple uh, we don't live in uh, palaces although we can have good temples to attract people but for devotees living conditions are always simple eating we do not eat in the restaurants outside uh, the devotee always eats very simple food stuffs which are offered to the deity without offering one cannot take anything and that is also very very simple food and then uh, security for future no security because there is no bank account there is no bank balance and uh, uh, tomorrow anything can happen so uh, one does not have any accumulation of wealth and uh, no security of people so then family makes you happy no there is no family also but happiness yes so much happiness is there vacations no vacations the devotee works always uh the seven days in a week and uh, thus there is complete defiance of anything which we perceive as oh this will give me happiness but there is happiness oh you are a monk you can be happy in that way how we can follow householders no we have many householders also monks are very less but majority of the people who follow krishna consciousness they are householders and there are some householders who dedicate themselves to preach this mission and there are some householders who work as a regular industrialist as a government civil servant or as a, a cab driver or in whatever situation possible but they are very much satisfied i repeat but they are very much satisfied in whatever situation they are because even though one is running an industry one is driving a cab one is teaching in institutions one is not doing so that i can rejoice this mentality is not there so that krishna can rejoice so that others can be brought out of their miserable condition they work so that 
at least 50% of their wealth can be used in the service of krishna and then even though we are situated in an industry in a government enterprise or anywhere we will be enjoying the consciousness of a sanyasi or an ancient yes this is krishna consciousness it can be practiced anywhere and everywhere you can defy all the conceptions which are required for happiness but your life is full of happiness when prabhupad was asked how can i believe you you are telling us so many things which our senses cannot perceive prabhupad told the proof is happiness if you follow truth if you follow the laws of nature you will be happy if you break you will come in distress so by the simple thing we can understand who is getting more distressed he is in ignorance who is increasing one's happiness unalloyed happiness he is on the path of truth so i request all of you please take guidance of these rules and regulations of the scriptures krishna is telling if you don't follow na sukham there is no happiness there is no perfection of life and if we follow we are happy in this life we cultivate divine qualities and then we are liberated we get freedom from the laws of nature so thank you so much for hearing all this begins the freedom all these divine qualities they begin with chanting of the holy names of the lord so please chant always as much as possible hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare and very soon we will meet with the 17th chapter hare krishna अर्जुन उवाच ये शास्त्र विधि मुसृज्य यजंते श्रद्धयान्ता निष्ठा तो का कृष्ण सत्व आहो रजस्तम अर्जुन सेड ओ कृष्ण वॉट इज द सिचुएशन ऑफ वन हु डज नॉट फॉलो द प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ स्क्रिप्चर but worships according to his own imagination is he in goodness in passion or in ignorance some people do not worship at all nothing doing but some of them they worship but not as per the rules and regulations mentioned in the scriptures and many people especially in india you'll find they'll say as many paths so many ways it means there is no particular way to achieve god realization or self realization so many paths are there on any path you can put faith it is faith which is important if you can put your faith on any path that path will take you to self realization and this question arjuna is putting forward to krishna so krishna is it a fact as many paths so many ways people can manufacture their own path those who do not follow the standard rules and regulations of the scriptures but still they are worshiping what is their destiny so let us see what lord krishna answers the top most authority the origin of entire existence nobody can be more intelligent than him so lord krishna replies shri bhagavan vacha trividha bhavati shraddha देही नाम सा स्वभाव जा सात्विकी राजसी चैवा तामसी चेति ताम शृणु द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड सेड अकॉर्डिंग टू द मोड्स ऑफ नेचर अक्वायर्ड बाय द एम्बॉडीड सोल वंस फेथ कैन बी ऑफ थ्री काइंड्स गुडनेस पैशन और इग्नोरेंस नाउ हियर अबाउट दीज सत्वानुरूपा सर्वस्य श्रद्धा भवति भारत श्रद्धा मयो यम पुरुषो यो यदस्व सह अकॉर्डिंग टू वंस एक्जिस्टेंस अंडर द वेरियस मोड्स ऑफ नेचर वन इवॉल्व्स अ पर्टिकुलर काइंड ऑफ फेथ द लिविंग बीइंग इज सेट टू बी ऑफ अ पर्टिकुलर फेथ according to the modes he has acquired so here very important explanation is given by lord krishna 
So here very important explanation is given by Lord Krishna. Every person is having some faith, Krishna is telling. Nobody is faithless. But the faith is as per the modes of nature living entity has acquired. By one's association with goodness, passion or ignorance. So nobody is faithless. A moth is convinced, if I can jump into fire, I will get bliss. But the end result is death instead of bliss. But this is the faith of moth. This represents the faith in mode of passion and ignorance. Person thinks, sense gratification will make me very very happy materialist things. If I enjoy senses, my life would be blissful. And thus materialists work very very hard with this faith that enjoying the senses as we saw in previous verse, beg your pardon, previous chapter Lord Krishna mentioned. If I can satisfy the senses till the time of devastation, that is the ultimate success of life. This materialist mindset is demoniac. There are both kinds of materialists. There are devotee materialists also, who are not pure devotees, but they understand Krishna is a supreme personality. Everything is coming from God. And uh, they go to the temples, they worship God so that they can satisfy their desires. And they want to serve Krishna, but they want to take some commission. By serving Krishna, I can enjoy in my life. But the other kind of demoniac people, so they just want to enjoy till the end of life. That is the perfection of their life. So this is also one faith which a person develops by mode of passion. Mode of ignorance, rabbit. Rabbit closes the eyes when tiger pounces upon it. And rabbit thinks, oh, tiger is gone. The so rabbit has closed the eyes. Tiger has not vanished. This is the faith of the people in mode of ignorance. So they want to take to some kind of escapism, either intoxication, sleep or some entertainment to forget the miseries of life. And then there is sattvic faith also. In sattva guna, person can see things as it is. What is this material world? And then they also have some faith. So in this way, nobody is faithless. But it is very important point to be noted, one's life should not be driven by one's whimsical faiths. Because the faith is directed as per the modes of nature we have acquired. A person who is in sleep, he is firmly convinced, he or she is firmly convinced, I am living in reality, I am talking to real people, I am watching real trees, gardens, streets, whatever we can see in dream. But that is false, that is illusion. Such kind of faith puts a person into temporary happiness or misery, but all that is based on a platform of illusion. Mirage. Animals are chasing the mirage in the desert. Convinced, oh, water is very near, I'll be satisfied if I drink it. But then this faith is faith in illusion, mode of ignorance. Why then are we giving so much importance to the faith as long as we are stuck on this material platform? I should understand, I should not give value to such faith. When I transcend the modes of nature, the material nature is not affecting me, then yes, then I can put faith on my faith. Otherwise, one should not put faith on one's faith, believes the sensual perceptions because they are the result of modes of nature. So we have to understand this point very, very carefully. Then we will not be confused in life because our mind sometimes will create confusion, will create such artificial faiths which lead us to disaster. As moth is led to disaster by jumping into fire, as materialists are bringing disaster upon themselves by thinking sense enjoyment means happiness. That is why the scriptures tell, happiness and distress is all the same. They are on illusory platform in this world because we are not the body, we are spirit soul. 
So this another kind of faith which is false is created because of ahankar, a subtle energy which Lord Krishna has mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. Bhumi rapa nalo vayu kham mano buddhirevacha ahankar itiyamme. This ahankar, fine subtle energy, puts a false faith in us that I am this body. So satisfaction of body becomes the aim of life. So this is also false faith that I am this body. I will die with the death of body. This illusion is also created by the material nature. That is why human life is meant for liberation. Once we are liberated, then we can understand about God. That is why the Upanishads don't directly mention about God in many places. First effort is to take a person out of the clutches of material nature. Then we will be able to understand transcendence. Otherwise, transcendence, spiritual subject matter, remains inconceivable, just like this gross world is inconceivable to the person who is dreaming, cannot understand what is happening in the gross world, totally unaware. In a similar fashion, we stuck in bodily platform now are totally unaware of spiritual existence. So I hope it brings clarity, this description of Lord Krishna. Everyone is having certain faith depending on the modes of nature one has acquired. Yajante Satvika Devan Yakshrakshansi Rajasah Pretan Bhut Ganashchanye Yajante Tamasajana Men in the mood of goodness worship the demigods, those in the mood of passion worship the demons, and those in the mood of ignorance worship ghosts and spirits. Because people are governed by varieties of modes of nature and their combinations, that is why there are varieties of religion and varieties of worship. Because as per the modes of nature people have, these faiths have been introduced to gradually bring them to transcendental faith. So how we can understand what kind of faith I am having, goodness, passion or ignorance, that Lord Krishna is explaining here. In the mode of goodness, those who are sattvic, they worship the demigods, devatas. So devata worship, devatas are fact. It is not that they are imaginary personalities which some people tell. And once you reach spiritual perfection, then you can forget these forms. No, that is the case with the impersonalists. So two kinds of people, they worship the devatas. One set is impersonalist who are telling actually this world is entirely a dream. And uh, as we have discussed previously, they tell you are not existing in the world. The world is existing in your imagination. As soon as you are self-realized, your mind becomes purified. You will realize there are no varieties around. There is only consciousness. Just like in dream, the varieties are only because of illusion. So the impersonalists say, you have to become detached from this material world and attached to spiritual platform. So how one can become attached to spiritual platform, which is simply an energy? We can get attached to people, personalities. So they tell, you can imagine the personalities. Vishnu, Shiva, Surya, Durga, Ganesha. This is called Pancho Pasana. They recommend worship of these five demigods. So you can worship any form you like, but you understand these forms are imaginary. And that impersonal absolute truth has taken all these forms. So you can meditate on these forms because we cannot meditate on impersonal energy. So you meditate on these forms and when you are absorbed in these forms, so much so that you become oblivious of the surroundings, then you can forget these forms also. You have to practice detachment even from these forms because these forms are also not truth, but they are imaginary. But you can use them as a ladder to climb the wall. And then you don't carry the ladder along with you. Once you have climbed the wall, then you can leave the ladder. Task is done. In a similar fashion, these demigods are like ladders, these forms. They may worship Vishnu, Krishna also. But for them, these forms are also imaginary. So you worship very nicely. And once you have reached the platform of liberation, then you become detached from these forms as well. There is another kind of personalities 
who worship the devatas for material benefit not necessary impersonalists but they worship the devatas they have faith that yes devatas exist on their planets but they worship the devatas for uh, some material benefit so we have to understand that this impersonalist theory is not fact the world is not simply imagination the varieties are not your hallucination but the varieties are fact that is why lord krishna has told bhumi rapo nalo vayu kham mano buddhir evacha earth air water fire sky mind intelligence these are my energies krishna is not telling these are hallucinations only brahma is energy yes brahma is energy that brahm transforms into mahat tatva as lord krishna has described and mahat tatva then further transforms itself into these eight elements five gross and three subtle so earth air water fire sky krishna is telling these are real energies these are my energies this material world is not false but it is temporary this material body is not false but it is temporary thinking that i am this material body is false so material body is not false the snake which we are seeing on the road is false but something is there that is rope rope we are perceiving as snake so that is false but substance something is there the way we are perceiving that is false so this material body exists made of cup pith and vat but thinking that i am material body that is false this is the proper understanding so impersonalists are in immature stage of spiritual understanding but still they are in sattva guna so these impersonalists and other materialists they worship the devatas then comes the next class those who are in mode of passion they worship demons and they worship some concocted gods they are very expert in creating gods making gods after world war uh, there is a case somebody was worshiping hitler because of this war his business grew so much that he started worshiping hitler some people who are not able to understand the form of supreme lord they deride temple worship deity worship in the temples but then such people make the statue of their leader and they erect it on uh, places of public meetings and then they will put garlands and all such things so in another way they are also doing deity worship but no you cannot worship the deities in the temple but worshiping the form of uh, your leader that you can do very nicely so there are many such people who are worshiping celebrities sportsmen so such people are considered in the mode of passion or some person who can show little magical power i repeat or some person who can show little magical power they give them god status so concocted gods or worshiping demons it comes in the mode of passion then there are some people who are in mode of ignorance they worship ghosts and spirits especially in the villages in india you will find and other places also black arts black magic so in mode of ignorance person wants to destroy other person so they take to worship of ghosts as soon as they come to know that ghost is living in this tree they will go and start worshiping the tree offer some sacrifice over there so everybody is worshiping but as per the modes of nature they have acquired अशास्त्रिहितम घोरम तप्यन्ते ये तपो जनाः दंभाहंकार संयुक्ताः कामराग बलान्विताः कर्षयन्त शरीरस्थम भूतग्रामम अचेतसः मां चैवान्त शरीरस्थम तान विद्यासुर निश्चयान those who undergo severe austerities and penances not recommended in the scriptures performing them out of pride egotism lust and attachment who are impelled by passion and who torture their bodily organs as well as the super soul dwelling within are to be known as demons so austerity penance tapasya voluntarily accepting discomfort it is recommended for purification for coming to transcendental faith 
but those people who take to austerities and penances in a whimsical way the word used here is ashastra vihitam ghoram not recommended in the scriptures so austerities and penances voluntarily accepting discomfort is recommended in the scriptures under certain rules and regulations those who are lazy or who want to ignore for some reason and invent their own ways of austerities and penances and who do it not for purification of existence not for self realization but sometimes we see to attain political end people go on fasting so krishna has used a very strong word here last line you can see asura nischayan so they are considered demons so one may feel bad about it hearing such words but then lord krishna has used the word here asura nischayan so this is not to be done because it pains god this body belongs to god we are children of god if a child unnecessarily hurts himself or herself will parents not feel bad so the super soul parmatma residing within the heart feels very much hurt so they hurt themselves and because we are part and parcel of god god also feels the hurt feels the pain so we are giving pain to god but some people skip to the other extreme they tell oh lord krishna appear today janmashtami why you are fasting today some people or some spiritual organizations uh i don't know might be they have not even read bhagavad gita because it is so clear austerities are required so their logic is because you are part and parcel of god why you are punishing yourself on on this day or any other day you should be happy you should be satisfied you satisfy your senses and because you are part and parcel of god satisfying yourself means satisfaction of god so there is no need of any austerity and tapasya it is violence unnecessarily hurting creating problems for yourself so we have to take the right path both extremes are wrong telling that all austerity all discomfort in life is bad and satisfying your senses is satisfaction of god so enjoy the world another extreme unnecessarily torturing oneself for any other purpose than self realization for material or political ends that is also not good so just like hard work studies is an austerity even for material success a person has to do so if the child is taking such hard work such austerities for studies for career parents would be happy but the same child is taking such hard work unnecessarily for sense enjoyment parents might be worried they will feel the pain child is spoiling his future in a similar fashion as per the rules and regulations of the scriptures one has to follow austerities and penances आहारस्वी सर्वस्विधो प्रिय यज्ञस्तपस्तथादानेदमशिण इवन फूड ऑफ विच ऑल पार्टेक इज ऑफ थ्री काइंड अकॉर्डिंग टू द थ्री मोड्स ऑफ मटीरियल नेचर द सेम इज ट्रू ऑफ सैक्रिफाइस ऑस्टेरिटीज एंड चैरिटी लिसन एंड आई शेल टेल यू ऑफ द डिस्टिंगशन ऑफ दीज सो वन मे आस्क how do i take myself to transcendental faith beyond the faiths created by material world in sattva guna rajoguna or tamoguna so these three things are required lord krishna mentions here so we should take note of these three things yagya dana and tapaha animals cannot change the modes of nature they are helplessly forced to act in that way for entire life generation after generations but human being has got freedom human being can change the modes of nature and must change the modes of nature one is acquired from birth by birth everyone is in the mode of ignorance janmana jayate shudra now one can further increase the ignorance and degrade to chandal mlecha yavana become more animalistic or one can rise above gradually to passion sattva guna and transcend sattva guna to become shuddha satvik or on vasudev platform then god realization is possible which is purpose of human existence so to attain this platform these three things are very much required yagya dana and tapaha 
and one more very important thing that is called ahar the food that we are eating so three modes influence us through this mind and body that we have and this body is nothing but the food that we eat so food also is very very important which we do not know we do not know the purpose of eating actually so there are three purposes of eating lord krishna describes first is to increase the duration of life that we understand it is common sense if we don't eat we will die so to increase the duration of life second is to get strength and third is purification of mind and existence this is not known food purifies mind yes food has got a direct relationship with our mind with our consciousness so this science is not known to the people now so that is why eating is given great stress thus lord krishna in the middle of battlefield he is discussing about eating eating is so important before yagya dana and tapa lord krishna has mentioned eating this eating is very important so these things we have to be very very cautious of and follow very nicely yagya dana tapa and ahar eating yag dana means charity and tapa means austerity so lord krishna describes these four things also are conducted by three modes of nature if our ahar yagya dan and tapa is in sattva guna we will become sattvic if it is in rajoguna we will become passionate rajasic or we can fall into tamoguna if they are tamasic so let us see lord krishna how does he describe varieties of food yagya dan and tapa आयु सत्व बलारोग्य सुख प्रीति विवर्धना रिग्धा स्थिरा हृदय आहार सात्विक प्रिया कट्वम्लवण तीक्ष्ण रुक्षा विदाहीन आहारा राजसेष्टा दुख शोकामय प्रदा यातयाम गतरसम पूति पर्युषित चयत उच्चिष्ट अध्यम भोजन ताम स प्रिय फूड्स इन द मूड ऑफ गुडनेस इनक्रीज द ड्यूरेशन ऑफ लाइफ प्यूरीफाई वंस एक्जिस्टेंस एंड गिव स्ट्रेंथ हेल्थ हैप्पीनेस एंड सैटिस्फैक्शन सच नरिशिंग फूड्स आर स्वीट जूसी फैटनिंग एंड पैलेटेबल foods that are too bitter too sour salty pungent dry and hot are liked by the people in the modes of passion such foods cause pain distress and disease food cooked more than 3 hours before being eaten which is tasteless stale putrid decomposed and unclean is food liked by people in the mode of ignorance so foods in the mood of goodness increase the duration of life ayur sattva bala arogya it aids to bodily strength arogya it keeps us fit free from diseases and it purifies one's existence one gets health happiness and also satisfaction by such foods so now we are seeing so many chronic diseases and basically many of them are lifestyle disorders because we are inventing new kinds of foods so the vedas have a great science called paka shastra paka shastra means the science of cooking so how to cultivate the seeds how to harvest them and how to cook them it is a great science that is called paka shastra so ayurveda the system is so nice if you follow these rules and regulations the pak shastra we can taste the most palatable dishes at the same time we can have very good physical strength and just by adjusting the spices the items that we are consuming in our food we can take nice food and it will act as medicine also so this is a great science so thus there were no plants in the vedic culture how the diseases were being cured just by using all these natural ingredients by simply 
some adjustments in our food, in our diet, or by collecting the herbs, the roots from the jungle, the leaves. Nothing is there in the creation by chance. Everything has got a purpose. So any plant, any creeper, any root, anything that we see in the existence, nothing is vestigial. As we hear vestigial organs, means organs which have no use. So the scientists were telling that pituitary gland, the master gland in the body, is a vestigial organ. Not to blame them because the science is evolving. So that is why there was no research in the Vedic times because research is very dangerous. We take knowledge directly from the creator. But now we got to know pituitary gland is master gland of the body which was considered vestigial earlier. Useless. So nothing is vestigial. Everything has got a purpose. Just like in an automobile. Every part, everything, every nut, bolt and screw is having a purpose. In a similar fashion, this machine, Yantra, every element has got a purpose. But we do not know it. So if we understand everything nicely, all the food, grains, ingredients, we have sattvic diet, then we can have nice satisfaction by eating food. It will give us very good health and it will purify our existence also. Also, the food should be freshly prepared. After cooking the food, we should Consume it within 3 hours. If we keep it for a longer time as it is mentioned here, it comes in the mode of ignorance. And such foods in the Sattva Gund, they are juicy, fatty, wholesome. The vegetarian foods, milk, sugar, these are all called Sattvic foods. And any transformation, you can bake them, you can cook them, it remains in Sattva Guna. But it should be consumed within 3 hours and the remnants should be discarded. The remnants of food, now people are very fond of having it, but the remnants are also considered in the mode of ignorance. Of course, unless they are remnants of the Supreme Personality of Godhead or of very advanced spiritualists like the spiritual master, pure devotees. The remnants of the Supreme Personality is called Prasadam or Yagya Shishta and such kind of food stuff is best. Such food, even if it is old, it has become stale. Still, it can be consumed after 3 hours, 4 hours, 5 hours or even after a long time. It does not become contaminated. So if you want to keep the food very fresh, uh, antiseptic and uh, it should purify our existence, then it should be offered in the temple to the Lord and then it should be eaten. Then it remains pure. Otherwise, more than 3 hours we cannot have, otherwise remnants we cannot have. And those who are in the mode of passion, for them, they like foods which are too bitter, too sour, salty, pungent, extreme tastes and overly palatable, very very satisfying to the tongue, pulling the tongue, very very addictive. So such strong tastes like fast foods, wafers and so many things which are there in the market now. So these are Rajasi foodstuffs. These foodstuffs create disease. So this kind of food stuff should be avoided as far as possible. And then what is tamasic food stuff? Food cooked more than 3 hours before being eaten which is tasteless, stale, putrid, decomposed and unclean. Non-vegetarian food stuffs. Very foul, very bad smell comes out of it. Of course if a person is very very tamasic such people are attracted by such smell. But a person who is in higher mode, sattvic person or even rajasic person may puke at the smell of such foods. But such decomposed foodstuffs, they are liked by the people in the mode of ignorance. But such a food is very very dangerous. It makes a person dumb and very dull. So a person cannot understand even material world properly what to speak of spiritual life. So thus it is very important. It is a great science. If we eat such foodstuffs, then we come in the mode of ignorance. And same thing holds true for even onion and garlic. Some people ask, why do we avoid onion and garlic? In many spiritual communities it is avoided. Because onion and garlic also produce the same effect as tamasic foods. They are tamasic in nature. They also agitate the senses. Uh, they incite the passion or make us very dull. Like non-vegetarian foods. So they also should be avoided. So there are some exceptions. Even though it is written here, foods that are very hot, they come in the mode of passion. 
बट मिल्क शुड बी कंज्यूम्ड वाइल इट इज वेरी हॉट मिल्क शुड बी सो हॉट दैट वी शुड नॉट बी एबल टू ड्रिंक इट बट ओनली सिप इट एंड सच मिल्क गोज टू ब्रेन अदरवाइज इफ यू टेक कोल्ड मिल्क इट गोज टू ड्रेन सो देर आर सम एक्सेप्शंस दीज आर जस्ट द बेसिक्स गिवन बिकॉज भगवद गीता इज ए बी सी डी ऑफ स्पिरिचुअल लाइफ इफ यू वॉन्ट मोर डिटेल्स वी शुड कॉन्टैक्ट द स्पिरिचुअल गाइड्स द टीचर्स एंड देन अप्लाई इन आर लाइफ अंडर प्रॉपर गाइडेंस सो देर आर ऑलवेज सम एक्सेप्शंस वन माई टेल ऑफ दिस फूड इज वेरी ओल्ड बट नो इट इज प्रसाद हम इट इज ऑफर्ड इन द टेम्पल टू कृष्णा सो इट डज नॉट मैटर इट इज नॉट तामसिक सो वन शुड टेक नॉट जस्ट सात्विक फूड स्टफ्स बट मोर देन सात्विक दैट इज कॉल प्रसादम विच वॉज मैंशन इन थर्ड चैप्टर वर्स नंबर थर्टीन यज्ञ शिष्टाशिणा संतो मुच्यंत सर्व किल विषय सो ईटिंग जस्ट वेजिटेरियन फूड इज नॉट इनफ दैट वेजिटेरियन फूड शुड बी ऑफर्ड इन सेक्रीफाइस और इन द टेम्पल टू द डी टी एंड देन दैट फूड इज वेरी एंटीसेप्टिक वेरी प्यूरिफाइंग एंड वन कम्स टू द स्पिरिचुअल प्लेटफॉर्म बाई ईटिंग सच रेमिनेंट्स one more important thing regarding the food it is also important what is the consciousness of the person who is cooking food thus in vedic culture people were very very cautious sometimes in large functions when cooking has to be done it was done by the brahmanas the brahmanas would be invited brahmana means a person who maintains satvaguna always one who understands i am not the body so such brahmanas only will be invited would be requested to cook prasadam and if you are in india then you know uh, they were called maharajas maharaj means king usually and king means one who controls others so one who has controlled one senses they are also called maharaj so thus the brahmanas are sometimes addressed as maharaj and such brahmanas or maharaj would be invited to do the cooking those people who have perfectly controlled their senses when such people come and cook food we will also automatically develop sense control forgiveness truthfulness cleanliness all these sattvic qualities now we eat food in the restaurants and unmentionable places being cooked by people who have very very low tendencies very tamasic very lusty very greedy so automatically we are getting their vibes their energies which are tamasic and rajasic and without working very hard we will feel very lusty very greedy and we'll get carried away by these base qualities so one who is cooking food is very important now father mother both are working nobody is there to cook food at home and then we get a person who don't maintain very clean habits very good character who are indulging themselves in illicit sex meat eating intoxication such people cook food then automatically we will get such stressed mindset and we will also have illicit desires in our life and the whole life will be put into chaos so it is very important sattvic person should cook food sattvic food should be eaten after offering it to lord krishna when it becomes shuddha sattvic then that is the best food which is to be consumed afala kaankshi bhir yagyo vidhi drishto ya ijyate यष्टव्यम एवेति मनः समाधाया स सात्विक और सैक्रीफाइसिस दैट सैक्रीफाइस परफॉर्म्ड अकॉर्डिंग टू ड्यूटी एंड टू स्क्रिप्चुरल रूल्स एंड विथ नो एक्सपेक्टेशन ऑफ रिवॉर्ड इज ऑफ द नेचर ऑफ गुडनेस नाउ आहार इज ओवर नाउ कृष्ण इज मैंशनिंग यज्ञ और सैक्रीफाइस As we discussed previously, yajna arthat karmano anyatra loko yam karma bandana. The purpose of one's actions is to do sacrifice. Otherwise, karma bandana ha a person gets entangled in the laws of nature. So when one acts only so that one can sacrifice the results of one's actions, such action is liberating. an action should be done only to get liberation so if a person is performing sacrifice according to duty basis one situation in the varnashrama system different duties are prescribed for different people so according to duty and to scriptural rules 
and with no expectation of reward i am doing this yagya not for getting material benefit so whatever material facilities we are having in our life it is illusion that it is because of my hard work no it is because of yagya dana and tapaha that we have done in this life and previous lives so yagya dana tapa is very important yagya means sacrifice dana means charity and tapaha means austerity now in this life of course uh if you do not do anything how much ever yagya dana tapa we have done we will not be able to get the results nahi supta se singa se pravishanti mukhe marga so one should not go to the other extreme let me keep on sleeping so the scriptures are mentioning nahi supta se singa se if a tiger is sleeping tiger is thinking i am very strong let me sleep and open my mouth and animals would enter it is not going to happen tiger has got strength by the previous work but still tiger has to go out for hunting and then it can get its food in a similar fashion we have done yagya dana and tapa now we have to do regulated work it is just like a government job uh, usually in government job the promotions they happen regularly and uh, you do not get such overtime payments and your work hours are prescribed 9 to 5 you go and do a job and then you'll get your salary which is fixed so in a similar fashion as per the job as per the body we have acquired now scriptures mentioned just like a government job you put regulated hours in your work maximum 8 hours we should put in one's work and then whatever is destiny it will unfold now in this life if you think let me keep on working harder and harder i'll achieve more results it will not happen as per destiny as per yagya dana and tapa we have performed previously we are going to get the results but in this life also we need to act in a regulated fashion so it should not be with the expectation of such results let me do now yagya dana and tapa charity let me do now so that i'll become very wealthy so that i'll get fame in this life recognition no it should not be done without expectation of any reward when we do sacrifice then that is in the mood of goodness abhi sandhaya tu phalam dambhartham api chayvayat ijyate bharata shreshtha tam yagyam vidhi rajasam but that sacrifice performed for some material end or benefit or performed ostentatiously out of pride is of the nature of passion o chief of the bharatas so simply for show off or to get some material benefit if we do it in the next life i'll get a good family riches education spouse followers then that is in the mood of passion vidhihinam asrishtanam mantrahinam adakshinam श्रद्धा विरहित यज्ञ काम संपरिचक्षते एंड दैट सैक्रिफाइस परफॉर्म्ड इन डिफाइंस ऑफ स्क्रिप्चुरल इंजंक्शंस इन विच नो स्पिरिचुअल फूड इज डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड नो हिम्स आर चैंटेड एंड नो रिम्यूनरेशन आर मेड टू द प्रीस्ट्स एंड विच इज फेथलेस दैट सैक्रिफाइस इज ऑफ द नेचर ऑफ इग्नोरेंस सो इंपॉर्टेंट वर्ड्स यूज हियर आर विधिहीनम not as per the rules of the scriptures if we do it and these three things are missing so any worship any sacrifice we are doing these three things are important which three things asrishtanam food should be distributed sanctified food which is offered to the lord distribution of spiritual food stuff annam second is mantra mantra heenam if mantras are not chanted spiritual food is not distributed and third thing dakshina charity donations are not made to the priests then such sacrifice is in the mode of ignorance so one should follow the rules and regulations and these three things should always be accompanied one should chant the mantras one should distribute spiritual food stuffs and one should give charity donation to the priests so in india that is why this is a culture in any performance because still the even though varnashram system is almost lost but the packaging is there the culture is still remaining but unfortunately instead of distributing 
spiritual foods people are now just taking it as a form of party just like in western countries also you invite people for marriage you throw a party and there is just distribution of some general tamsik or rajasik food similarly it has become now in india also but otherwise earlier brahmanas will be invited to cook the food will be offered and that food would be distributed spiritual food needs to be distributed mantra should be chanted and the donations once hard work should be used in the service of god and god has various agents they are priests the brahmanas or the devotees who work on behalf of god spreading krishna consciousness so such people should be invited to chant the mantras to sing uh, the glories of the lord and then they should be given charity in this way we are doing charity for lord for lord service and by doing these things one can attain the perfection of doing sacrifice देवद्विज गुरु प्राज्ञा पूजन शौच मजव ब्रह्मचर्यंसा च शीर तप उच्य लॉ लॉर्ड कृष्ण इज डिस्क्राइबिंग तप ही हेज मेन्शन सैक्रिफाइस फॉलो द रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशन डू द थ्री थिंग्स एंड डू इट विदाउट एक्सपेक्टेशन ऑफ फ्रूटिव रिजल्ट do not think oh what is the use of going to temple now i do not have anything to ask for no one should visit the temple one should visit the places of worship and uh, give the donations over there give the food stuffs the fruits for the pleasure of the lordships simply for the pleasure of lord one should do these activities similarly when we are doing tapaha here it is mentioned this tapasya also should be done only for spiritual advancement and not for some material end this is very important and this tapa is of three kinds they should be performed austerity should be performed at the level of mind body and speech here lord krishna is describing the tapasya of physical level the austerity of the body consists in this worship of the supreme lord the brahmanas the spiritual master and superiors like the father and mother cleanliness simplicity celibacy and non violence are also austerities of the body so human life is only meant for austerities without voluntarily accepting discomfort we cannot purify our existence purifying existence means freedom from the three modes of nature and unless we are free from the three modes of nature we will keep on tossing in this material world sometimes having satvik faith sometimes rajasik faith sometimes tamasic faith and faith on spiritual existence reality will never come about so tapasya brings us to spiritual platform so how tapasya should happen on physical platform deva dvija guru pragya poojanam shauchamam arjavam the austerity of the body consists in this worship of the supreme lord the brahmanas the spiritual master and superiors like the father and mother cleanliness simplicity celibacy and non violence are also austerities of the body so worshiping the supreme personality of godhead superiors like father mother and brahmanas spiritual master worshiping them need certain regulations to be followed like it is told as soon as you see spiritual master or your father mother you should fall down flat so that is an austerity and you have to follow many other standards also like you have to keep yourself very very clean if you have to worship the supreme personality minimum two times recommended is three times bath has to be taken and like the so many other rules and regulations are there it makes the worship austere but nevertheless such austerity should be taken and keeping oneself clean otherwise also is an austerity that is why it is a culture now uh, those people who do not know the importance of spiritual life they think okay let us save water and let us not take bath but they do not know it is bringing them into tamaguna low moods depression it is all because of not maintaining satvaguna so taking bath cleanliness is very very important so one should keep one's body inside and outside both ways it should be clean there should be no constipation no trouble proper evacuation should be there and externally one should take bath 
and the heart also should be very clean by always thinking of lotus feet of krishna or by chanting hare krishna maha mantra in this way inside outside one's place of dwelling the room everything should be very very clean shaucham so that is austerity nobody is uh, self driven unless trained to keep the things very clean so training culture is required so everything should be speak and span very very clean that reflects the situation of our heart that means heart is also in clean satvik state so cleanliness is an austerity but it should be undertaken then simplicity we want to become center of attraction because here all of us have come to compete with god god is the center of attraction but here i want to attract others by being very flashy and stylish so the simplicity is also austerity and that should be undertaken simple living and high thinking celibacy brahmacharya it is very very difficult to control the force of genitals reproductive organs that is why celibacy is recommended for everyone even householders have to follow celibacy the sexual activity one should indulge in for producing children that too with rules and regulations as we discussed garbhadana sanskar purification of consciousness is required so even the householders if not for producing children they should abstain and brahmacharis vanprastha sanyasis students they should maintain perfect celibacy it is very very important this is tapasya of the body and last element mentioned here is non violence simply for satisfaction of tongue we are killing so many animals so this is violence so one should not consume meat that is austerity of the body and also if we have strength we want to beat the other person sometimes such aggression is not good yes for self defense violence is required for maintaining law and order violence is required in the service of krishna violence is good but not otherwise not simply for satisfying one's ego or to bully others no one should not do violence so non violence brahmacharya celibacy worshiping supreme lord brahmana spiritual master and superiors like father and mother these are all austerities of the body body becomes pure by executing these principles satvik in nature अनुद्वेगकम वाक्यम सत्यम प्रियहित चयध्यायाभ्यसन चय तपोच्यते ऑस्टेरिटी ऑफ स्पीच कंसिस्ट्स इन स्पीकिंग ट्रूथफुली एंड बेनिफिशली एंड इन अवॉइडिंग स्पीच दैट ऑफेंड्स वन शुड ऑल्सो रिसाइड द वेद रेग्युलरली ना हाउ वन कैन प्रैक्टिस voluntarily discomfort at the level of speech by always talking beneficially we want to gossip and chatter for no use so all this we are seeing so much of social media people keep on typing so much of chatting is happening so we should be very careful every talk should be dovetailed in the service of krishna either we should chant the names of krishna discuss the philosophy of krishna explain krishna consciousness or if it is required for our vocational duties jobs and business it should be done but it should be minimized unnecessarily one should not talk so talk should be beneficial and if it is not done for that reason then such talk is harmful such talk decreases the duration of life such talk is very very detrimental in control of mind and senses so talk should be beneficial that is austerity it is difficult to do only beneficial talk then it should be truthful one should not speak false and very important anudvega karam vakyam avoiding speech that offends sometimes we become agitated and we want to hurt the other person by talking something and other times for no reason consciously unconsciously we offend others such speech should be avoided we should be priya karam should be very very pleasant it should not offend others even if there is agitation one should try to control and be sober devotee does not get offended agitated by other speech and does not speak in a way that is offensive 
Of course, exception is spiritual master. Spiritual master should be very very straightforward with the disciples because disciples have surrendered themselves to know the truth. So if you read Shrimad Bhagavatam, just like here, it is told those people who fast for political purpose, other material reasons, Krishna has told Asuri, demons, if I have done this in ignorance or for whatever reason, it may hurt me. But because Krishna is speaking to Arjuna, Krishna is being very, very direct. So to the student, the teacher should be very, very direct. But those who are not students, even if you have knowledge, you should not speak so that the others become agitated in their minds. Thus, it is told among the 10 offenses while chanting the holy names, one offense is to instruct a faithless person about the glories of the holy name. The holy name of Krishna is Krishna himself. But if we speak to the person who is faithless, he will commit offenses and will degrade in spiritual life. So one should not try to preach to the person who is not surrendered, who is not faithful, who is not austere, who is not devoted because they may get offended, upset. So one should not create such speech which can be offensive. Very, very important. This is called austerity of speech. Next, austerity of mind. Manav prasada samyatvam maunam atma vinigraha bhava samshuddhir ityetat tapo mana samuchyate and serenity, simplicity, gravity, self-control and purity of thought are the austerities of the mind. It is difficult to keep the mind very serene. Mind is like a monkey always jumping from one thought to another. So serenity, simplicity, gravity. Gravity means mind should be controlled from thoughts of making more money, enjoying more material senses. This is called gravity in thought. Gravity also means person cannot understand what the other person is thinking. So this gravity is very, very important. Unnecessarily, one should not think about sense enjoyment. The more we think about sense enjoyment, the more mind becomes unstable. So in order to have these qualities in the mind to practice such austerities, self-control, purity of thought. Purity of thought means, uh, impurity means rajaguna and tamaguna. Sense enjoyment, bodily concept of life. Purity in thought means meditating upon these wonderful instructions of the scriptures or meditating upon the form of the Lord or service of the Lord. In this way, purity of mind should be mentioned. So all these things are possible when a person is in constant touch with either the Hare Krishna mantra, the names of God or the form of God. Then mind can be always kept serene, very peaceful. Purity will always come. If you are thinking about God, then we can act in the service of God. Then mind can be controlled. Many people ask how to control mind. Arjuna also was telling Krishna, I cannot control the mind. Krishna gave the solution. Ma Manusma Yudhyacha, thinking of me you fight. So thinking of Krishna always, constantly, every second is the way of controlling the mind. Is the way of developing all the good qualities of the soul. Next, Lord Krishna explains, Shraddhaya paraya taptam tapas tat trividham narae afala kangshi bhir yuktae satvikam parichakshate. This threefold austerity practiced by men whose aim is not to benefit themselves materially but to please the supreme is of the nature of goodness. So one should practice these threefold austerities. Voluntarily discomfort should be accepted at three levels, mind, body and speech. I feel like talking harshly, I should not talk. Mind is jumping from one thought to another, sense enjoyment, it should not be allowed. Body doesn't want to worship Supreme Lord, so many rules and regulations are there, I feel tired. No, one should worship. Mind doesn't feel like bowing down, one should bow down to elders, to the superiors like Brahmana, spiritual master and the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Cleanliness must be maintained. So these austerities, if performed, not for any material benefit, but for the satisfaction of Supreme Lord, 
then such austerities help us to gain transcendence. Satkarmana Poojartham Tapodam Bhena Chayvayat Kriyate Tad Iha Proktam Rajasam Chalamadruvam Those ostentatious penances and austerities which are performed in order to gain respect, honor, and reverence are said to be in the mode of passion. They are neither stable nor permanent. So these austerities which are done for gaining respect, sometimes people go to Himalayas, undergo long spell of austerity so that they can get some powers and they can attract followers. So that is not good. Or they want to show off so that people can worship them. So it is mentioned here, such austerities, if done for gaining recognition, fame, honor, they are in the mode of passion. One should not desire any honor, any respect from others, only for the satisfaction of Supreme Lord. Then it is in the mode of goodness. Mudha grahen atmano yat pidaya kriyate tapaha parasyot sadhanartham va Tattamasam udahritam And those penances and austerities which are performed foolishly by means of obstinate self-torture or to destroy or injure others are said to be in the mode of ignorance. Just like Hiranyakashipu performed or other demons, they perform austerities out of obstinacy. So God comes not because he is very much pleased but he is getting disturbed. Entire universe got disturbed, so Lord Brahma came there and he told, what do you want? So such people, they want to destroy. The demons want to destroy the demigods, the powerful devotees who are controllers in charge of the affairs of universe. With this end, they engage themselves in austerities. So such austerities are in the mood of ignorance. Datavyam iti yaddanam Diyate nupakarine Deshe kale cha patre cha Taddanam satvikam smritam That gift which is given out of duty at the proper time and place to a worthy person and without expectation of return is considered to be charity in the mood of goodness. Krishna has described yajna, sacrifice. Krishna has described tapaha, austerity. Now Krishna is describing Charity, donations are to be made at proper place, time, time, place and the candidature has to be considered. So the charity should be performed, it is mentioned, in the place of pilgrimage or at the time of eclipses or at the end of month or to the brahmanas or in the temples to the devotees. If a person does charity without following the rules and regulations so that one can have uh, material comforts in life, then that is not in the mood of goodness. Strictly as per the rules and regulations of the scriptures, two proper candidates who are representatives of the Supreme Lord, the Brahmanas and the devotees, to them charity should be done. That charity brings us to the mood of goodness. Yattu pratyupkarartham Palam uddishya vapunaha diyate cha pariklishtam taddanam rajasam smritam But charity performed with the expectation of some return or with a desire for fruitive results or in a grudging mood is said to be charity in the mood of passion. If I think because it is mentioned in the Vedas, if you do charity, the same money you will get in next life, it is not lost. If you give to a qualified person, like a Brahmana, you can get back 10 times or 100 times depending upon the qualification. And if we give it to the devotees, the pure devotees, the money comes back unlimited times and we get blessings of the Supreme Lord. So if a person thinks, oh let me do now so that I get good returns in future 10 times, 100 times, then such charity is in the mode of passion. If the charity is done in a grudging mood, oh, uh, because of pressure, somebody forced me, so much money I have given, I, it should not be given. 
then that charity is also in the mode of passion. Adesh kale yaddanam apatre bhyascha diyate asat kritam avagyatam tattam sam udaritam. And charity performed at an improper place and time and given to unworthy persons without respect and with contempt is charity in the mode of ignorance. Improper place, improper time, improper person. So charity it is a science at proper place, at proper time, to proper persons it should be given. If these injunctions are not followed or even if it is done to devotees and brahmanas you do without respect then such charity is considered in the mode of ignorance. So we should be very, very careful. With great respect, with awe and reverence, thinking that this money does not belong to me, it belongs to God, so thus it belongs to the representatives of God. So I should give it to them. So feeling bad that I am not able to give more, actually everything belongs to God and His representatives. But I am so much in bodily concept, I have to keep something for my maintenance. In this way, in such humble state, charity should be given. And if we are doing it uh, in a way that is not very respectful to improper candidates, sometimes out of material sympathy, one may think, oh, this person is poor, let me give money to that person. And he or she indulges in intoxication from that money. Many beggars do that. They take begging as easy means of livelihood. But it is mentioned in the scriptures, Dhumrupan Rate Vipra Danam Kurvanti Enara. If a person is engaged in smoking and you give charity to that person, then that person will suffer. He will go to hell, and we also have to take hellish bodies, animal bodies. Because we gave money, he broke the laws of nature, he did intoxication. So we became the cause of his degradation. So you should be very, very careful. If wrong use happens of the money we are giving in charity, we also will suffer. Om Tat Sat Iti Nirdesho Brahmanastri Vidhasmritaha Brahmanastena Vedascha Yagyascha Vihitavpura From the beginning of creation, the three syllables Om Tat Sat have been used to indicate the Supreme Absolute Truth, Brahm. They were uttered by Brahmanas while chanting Vedic hymns and during sacrifices for the satisfaction of the Supreme. Tasma do mityudharitya yagya dana tapakriya pravartante vidhanokta satatam brahmavadina Thus the transcendentalists undertake sacrifices, charities and penances beginning always with Om to attain the Supreme. So Om Tat Sat has to be chanted while doing any act of sacrifice, penance or austerity. These were chanted by Lord Brahma in the beginning of creation and thus in displic succession everyone in executing any spiritual endeavour should execute it while chanting Om Tat Sat. What does it mean that is explained here? Om Tat Sat represents the Absolute Truth. Tasmat Om Iti Udharitya All the transcendentalists, they utter the Vedic mantras beginning with this word Om. What is this Om? Krishna has mentioned previously in the Bhagavad Gita Pranava Sarva Vedeshu Shabda Khe Parusham Nrishu I am the first syllable of all the Vedic mantras, that is Om. Just like Brahma Jyoti is representation, effulgence of Supreme Lord. If you see the sunlight, sunlight is representing sun. Although sunlight does not mean I am actually seeing the sun globe or the sun god. In a similar fashion, Brahma Jyoti represents Krishna. Brahmanohi Pratishtaham, that is coming from Krishna, the Supreme Lord. In a similar fashion, when the Supreme Lord is presented in alphabets, that is Om. Om is impersonal representation of Krishna. So those people who do not appreciate the personal feature of Supreme Lord, for them it is very very difficult to understand how Krishna 
a supreme personality but everyone can understand that there is some energy so they don't mind chanting om so thus for those people the majority of them the brahmanas om is recommended to be chanted however there is no difference between chanting om and chanting hare krishna krishna and om are the same and we chant krishna because we understand the highest form of understanding absolute truth is the personality of absolute truth as it is mentioned in shrimad bhagavatam vadanti tat tatva vidas tatvam yaj gyanam advayam brahmheti parmatmeti bhagavan iti shabdyate tatva vidas tatvam vadanti tat vadanti means it is thus spoken by tatva vidha those who have seen the truth these people speak about truth in the following three aspects brahm parmatma and bhagwan the first understanding of absolute truth is brahm energy so that impersonal brahm is represented as om and then when a person advances further one can understand the localized aspect of absolute truth parmatma that that supreme absolute truth is present in our heart as a supreme spirit and then ब्रह्मेति परमात्मेति भगवान इति शब्द्यते इट इज द स्पोकन इट इज कॉल्ड द हाइएस्ट फीचर ऑफ एब्जुल ट्रुथ इज भगवान भगवान मीन्स वन हु पोजेस भक वन मीन्स द पोजेसर भक मीन्स ऑप्यूलेंसेस विच अट्रैक्ट अदर्स ऐश्वर्य से समग्र से वीर श्रेय ब्यूटी नॉलेज रिनंसिएशन विजडम these things are very very attractive so one who possesses all these six features in completion he is called bhagwan one who is most beautiful most rich most wise most strong and most renounced also at the same time he is called bhagwan so this feature bhagwan feature only a person can be beautiful only a person can possess wealth only person can possess fame so thus bhagwan feature is the highest understanding so the topmost transcendentalists they chant that is why krishna tells sarva guhyatamam bhuya the topmost understanding is this my personal feature so everyone is not expected but this everyone in the training proper brahmachari training in the gurukul everyone is expected to learn at least the impersonal feature om is the absolute truth so that is why this is the general recommendation which is mentioned here you chant om so om is there in all the vedic mantras to indicate that unless om is present the absolute truth is present everything else is rendered ineffective janmadi asya yataha absolute truth is the cause of creation maintenance and annihilation so that is why om being representation of the absolute truth makes all the vedic mantras effective so chanting om means i am doing any activity of yagya dana and tapa on behalf of absolute truth the second word which is used to indicate absolute truth is tat vadanti tat tatva vidah tatmam tad vigyanartham sa guru me abhigachet tat vigyanartham and it is mentioned in fourth chapter also tad vidhi pranipate na tad tad means that that indicates supreme truth absolute truth tatva masi you are that you are not this body you are that you are that same supreme brahm absolute truth so tat indicates the absolute truth that is what lord krishna is mentioning in this verse tad iti anabhisandhaya palam yagya tapa kriya दान क्रियाश्च विविधा क्रियन्ते मोक्ष कांक्षी भी वन शुड परफॉर्म सैक्रिफाइस पेरेंस एंड चैरिटी विद द वर्ड तत् द पर्पज ऑफ सच ट्रांसेंडेंटल एक्टिविटीज इज टू गेट फ्री फ्रॉम द मटीरियल एंटेंगलमेंट सो वेन वी आर चैंटिंग द वर्ड तत् इट इंडिकेट्स द पर्पज ऑफ द एक्टिविटीज तद विज्ञानार्थम विज्ञान मीन्स द साइंस स गुरु में अभिगछेत यू शुड अप्रोच गुरु टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट साइंस तद विज्ञानार्थम अंडरस्टैंड साइंस ऑफ दैट एब्जुलू ट्रुथ सो तत् इंडिकेट्स एब्जुलू ट्रुथ सो चैरिटी पेनेंस एंड ऑस्टेरिटी 
should be performed with the word tat to indicate that what is the purpose of all these things the purpose is absolute truth then what about the last word sat sad bhave sadhu bhave cha sad ityate tat prayujyate prashaste karmani tatha sat shabda parthayujyate yagye tapasi dane cha sthiti sad iti chochyate karma chaiva tadarthiyam sad ityeva vidhiyate The absolute truth is the objective of devotional sacrifice and it is indicated by the word sat. These works of sacrifice of penance and of charity true to the absolute nature are performed to please the supreme person O son of Pritha. So when we chant Om Tat Sat it means Om means the absolute truth Tat means it indicates what is the nature of absolute truth and that is sat sat means eternal so om tat sat when we chant it means the absolute truth is eternal and om means i am doing this activity of yagya dana tapa on behalf of absolute truth tat means i am doing these activities for the purpose of pleasing absolute truth and sat means these activities what is the nature of all these activities these are sat activities sat means eternal What is the meaning of eternal activity? They give us eternal results. These activities don't end up in some temporary money, temporary fame, temporary sense enjoyment, but they give us enjoyment which is permanent. They give us opulence which is permanent. Thus these activities are sat. These activities are on permanent platform. So thus the word om tat sat should be used with all the penances, austerities and charities and of course chanting the word om tat sat needs qualification also the devtas can chant this and the brahmanas can chant this who are very advanced in spiritual life ordinary people now many people they chant om but they are indulging in sense gratification then such people when they chant om it will not be effective we may keep on chanting for a long time yes because it is satvik sound some effect it can have some temporary peace it can bring but it will not result in spiritual advancement so only advanced spiritual personalities they are expected to chant om and vedic mantras and the mantras like om tat sat and other people what they are recommended that is why it is told harer naam harer naam harer naam ev kevalam kalau nastyav 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 gatir anyatha in kaliyuga you cannot follow all these things So what is the solution? Krishna is recommending you chant Om Tat Sat, but I am not qualified to chant any mantra beginning with Om or Om. So what do I do? So scriptures are telling, "Kalau naaste ven kaliyoga." There is no other way, no other way, no other way. Hari Ram, Hari Ram. The names of Hari is the only way. Hari is another name of Krishna. Hari means one who takes away all the distresses of the devotee. So chanting the names of Hari or God is the only way in kaliyoga. Hari Ram ay ve kevalam. So there is no loss if we chant the names of Hari, and as we always discuss the Hari Krishna mantra, Shodeshak Nam Nam, these sixteen words, Kali Kalma Shanashnam, destroy all the ill effects of Kali Yuga. So we get the same result of chanting Om Tat Sat. So that is why all the devotees, uh, those who follow the Bhagavad Gita, they might be doing any activity, might be cooking in kitchen, they keep on chanting Hari Krishna mantra. So instead of Om Tat Sat, keep on chanting Hare Krishna mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. You are taking bath, you can keep on chanting. You are walking, you can keep on chanting. Because all our activities are yagya only. We are doing it for the satisfaction of Supreme. So thus, all the activities are sacrificed, and they should be accompanied by chanting of the names of God. If not Om Tat Sat, then chanting the names of Hari. हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे एंड द कॉन्शियसनेस शुड बी आई एम डूइंग दीज एक्टिविटीज ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड फॉर द प्लेजर ऑफ सुप्रीम लॉर्ड ऑन द प्लेटफॉर्म ऑफ इटर्निटी अश्रद्धया हुतम दत्तम तपस्तप्तम कृतम चयत असद इत्युच्यते पार्थ न च तत्प्रेत्य नो इहा 
but sacrifices austerities and charities performed without faith in the supreme are non permanent o son of pritha regardless of whatever rites are performed they are called asat and are useless both in this life and the next so it is told a person is following rules and regulations very nicely but if yagya dana tapa sacrifice austerity penances are performed without faith in the supreme such activities are useless and are called asat so the faith is very important factor that is why lord krishna tells ashadda dhana purusha dharmasyasya parantapa aprapya mam nivartante mrityu sansar vartmani if one does not have faith one does not attain me one falls down to this material world repeated cycle of birth and death so without shraddha you follow rules and regulations very nicely it would be fruitless asat activity it will be called so now again it's a catch without seeing krishna without perceiving the spiritual life how do i develop faith and if i do not develop faith i anyway don't make spiritual advancement i am not able to do these activities on sat platform unless i do on sat platform i do not develop faith so how to do it so that is why uh, this krishna consciousness this entire the corpus of instructions which is given by lord krishna it is there to develop faith that is why lord krishna tells we will see in the next chapter न च तस्मा मनुष्यु कश्चिन मे प्रियतम नो बडी इज डियर टू मी देन द पर्सन हू प्रीचेस दिस नॉलेज टू अदर्स हू स्प्रेड दिस नॉलेज टू अदर्स सो इट इज वेरी वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू मेक एनी एडवांसमेंट फॉर द पीपल हुर फेथलेस बट हाउ अ पर्सन बिकम्स फेथफुल एज वी सॉ फेथ डिपेंड्स अपॉन द मोड्स ऑफ नेचर सो वेन दे कम अक्रॉस द शुद्ध सत्वगुणा द होली नेम्स ऑफ कृष्णा और द प्रसादम ऑफ कृष्णा then they advance very nicely in spiritual life so one may not be willing to understand philosophy may not be willing to visit places of worship temples and all but if we go out and chant the names of krishna and people here that is why you will find devotees all across the world singing and chanting hari krishna dancing on the streets and why it has been the culture in all the spiritual traditions they chant sing the names of god everyone even christians they chant hallelujah even in islam they chant allah akbar loudly they chant so that others can hear so why it is chanted specifically very loudly because when people hear the name of god now they cannot close the ears simply hearing they are coming in contact with the names of god which are purely spiritual in nature beyond satvaguna so thus by contacting shuddha satvaguna they are advancing in purity of existence and then the food stuff which is distributed which is spiritual which are remnants of the deities people don't mind eating tasty food and when they take this food that is why it is a culture of distributing free food in all the temples so it is not mundane philanthropy that people are hungry and take no so that is why those people who know these traditions even you'll find a very rich man but he is standing in a queue for a long time just to take few morsels of little prasadam because he understands what is the value of prasadam i am very rich i can make best of the dishes in my house but this prasadam is spiritual it liberates me frees me from all the sinful actions purifies my mind my intelligence my existence so thus the temples distribute these food stuffs because by eating this food person comes in contact again with the supreme transcendence the modes of nature change and by hearing the names of krishna and by tasting these spiritual food stuffs when the person has attained sufficient purity then one can appreciate the philosophy of krishna consciousness thus in the initial phases it is not recommended that we should directly go and preach philosophy not everyone will be able to understand i am not the body and all these things so first of all let the person simply chant and hear anyway there is no harm and no money has to be spent and there is no deterioration of health we get a uh, good peace of mind so let us sing and chant with attention let us make an experiment and once singing and chanting or uh, meditation on the holy name is sufficient sufficient purity is developed 
then automatically all these things the philosophy will make sense person will be able to assimilate and advance then yagya dana tapa if it is done with faith then a person advances little faith is required in the beginning and that little faith is created by this endeavor of spreading this message to others so simply if you present this book person touches the book person purchases the book he makes that small advancement little inquisitiveness so let me read i have paid for this book what is written inside you distribute sing uh, out uh, wherever there is possibility there is any occasion in your place invite the devotee sing the names of god little so that everybody is hearing so this is the greatest activity of benevolence of philanthropy in this way little faith is created and with that little faith they engage in little yagya dana and tapa then their faith increases with greater faith they engage in yagya dana and tapa faith increases much more and this spiritual life is nothing but increment of one's faith nothing else increasing one's faith in supreme transcendence is called spiritual life in the supreme spirit and that has got nine steps first step is adav shraddha little faith shraddha little faith then second is sadhu sangha associating with the people who have strong faith sadhus the devotees spiritualists in their association third stage is bhajan kriya person becomes inclined to follow oh these people are so blissful they are following this thing let me also try bhajan kriya person picks up spiritual practices then comes fourth stage anarth nivritti then a person becomes free from all unwanted drives and habits so now we are being harassed by so many unwanted things we are getting carried away we will get freedom from the clutches of laws of nature all the unwanted things will go away from our lifestyle that is called anarth nivritti freedom from anartha unwanted things in life then a person becomes very peaceful when all such drives have gone away four regulative principles we are able to follow nicely then comes next level fifth stage that is called nishtha then a person develops very firm faith as we discussed as per the modes of nature our faith differs so when anarth nivritti has happened then a person is on a very high sattva guna then nishtha strong faith is developed in the spiritual life and then when a person advances further ruchi one starts getting taste in the spiritual life initially spiritual life may not be very pleasant because uh, so many rules and regulations are there to get up early in the morning to take bath and uh, do this do not do this could be little trouble some in the beginning but after nishtha once firm faith is established then we will get taste till then sometimes we may get taste we may not get does not matter a sick person does not get taste in the tablet always it may be very bitter the medicine still we take it so we have to take it and then after nishtha strong faith that faith transforms into taste in spiritual activities then asakti bhava prema emotions for god and finally love of god then one's life is successful then a person can see god face to face always 24 hours so we should be patient we should not worry the most important thing we understood is everyone is having faith but the faith differs as per the modes of nature we have acquired so do not put faith in your faith like a moth like a rabbit or like an ignorant person dreaming thinking that this is fact this is real life similarly now because of these material modes we are thinking i am the body and we have no knowledge of the real spiritual existence so we have to come quickly to the stage of anarth nivritti by strictly following the rules and regulations of spiritual master then strong faith nishtha will come nobody can shake our faith we will be able to convince others very scientifically and logically then we have taste in spiritual life and once we have taste in spiritual life then life becomes advancement becomes very very fast because then voluntarily we would be eager to execute so we have finished 17 chapters in the next session we will start the final very important conclusive 18 chapter of bhagavad gita till then always keep on chanting hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare see you soon hare krishna
अर्जुन उवाच सन्यास महाबाहो तत्व मिछा वेद ऋषिकेश पृथक केशी निशूदना अर्जुन सेड ओ माइटी आम वन आई विश टू अंडरस्टैंड द पर्पज ऑफ रिनाउंसिएशन त्याग एंड ऑफ द रिनाउंस्ड ऑर्डर ऑफ लाइफ सन्यास ओ किलर ऑफ द केशी डीमन ऋषिकेश तो दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड द पर्पज बिहाइंड एनी एक्टिविटी A person who is a king is supposed to enjoy life at retirement as people aspire for now. Let me on nicely when I retire I will enjoy a very opulent rich comfortable life. But the Vedic culture is pancha shordham vanam rajet after 50 years when you are at the peak of your career or opulence you leave your house and you go to jungle and this appears very very strange why at this time when a person might need support one is going to get old he is supposed to withdraw oneself from the social life and take shelter of forest or a temple what is the purpose of this sanyas order why it takes so much hardship and then even while one is engaged in the occupational duties even when one is a householder one is not supposed to enjoy more than 50% of one's wealth for one's maintenance or sense gratification at least 50% should be used for serving the supreme personality of godhead or for general charity if a person does not have knowledge about supreme personality of godhead but 50% minimum should be given up so why so much stress is given on tyag renunciation you give up and there is a renounced order of life after 50 years go to jungle and after some time give up everything what is the purpose so let us see how lord krishna replies shri bhagavan vacha kamya nam karma nam nyasam sanyasam kavayo viduhu sarva karma falatyagam Rahustyagam vichakshana. The Supreme Lord said, "To give up the results of all activities is called renunciation, tyag by the wise, and that state is called the renounced order of life, sannyas by the great learned men." So the point which is to be noted is Krishna is not telling giving up activities is called renunciation. Krishna is telling. to give up the results of all activities that is called renunciation activity is not to be given up which was arjuna's misconception let's see how krishna explains further tyajyam doshavat ityeke karma prahur manishinah yagya dana tapah karma na tyajyam iti chapare Some learned men declare that all kinds of fruitive activities should be given up but there are yet other sages who maintain that acts of sacrifice charity and penance should never be abandoned Nischayam shinu me tatra tyage bharat sattama tyago hi purusha vyagra trividha samprakirtitah O best of the Bharatas, hear from me now about renunciation. O tiger among men, there are three kinds of renunciation declared in the scriptures: Yagya dana tapah karma, na tyajyam karya meva tat, yagyo danam tapas chayva, pavanani manishina. Acts of sacrifice, charity, and penance. are not to be given up but should be performed indeed sacrifice charity and penance purify even the great souls so here lord krishna is giving his verdict lord krishna as explained in bhagavad gita vedaischa sarvair aham eva vedyo vedant krit ved videv chaham 
all the vedas direct living entity towards me only i am the objective of all knowledge i am the creator of vedanta i am the perfect knower of the vedic rules and regulations so that is why lord krishna's verdict should be taken as final some people tell no you give up all activities even stop charity you stop tyag you stop yagyas sacrifices whereas other scholars sages they tell no no these things should always be continued so here lord krishna's verdict is yagya dana and tapa should never be given up these three things purify even the great souls so all our happiness in our life depends upon these three things so all of us can note these three things very carefully and try to implement in our life on a daily basis yagya dana and tapa yagya means sacrifice dana means charity and tapa means austerity voluntarily accepting discomforts in life human life should be based on foundation of these three principles and then there is happiness if we follow these principles there is happiness in material life and in spiritual life as well etanyapi tu karmani sangam tyakva phalani cha कर्तव्यानीति मे पार्थ निश्चित मत मुत्तम ऑल दीज एक्टिविटी शुड बी परफॉर्म विदाउट एनी एक्सपेक्टेशन ऑफ रिजल्ट दे शुड बी परफॉर्म एज अ मैटर ऑफ ड्यूटी ओ सन ऑफ प्रथा दैट इज माई फाइनल ओपिनियन सो दीज एक्टिविटीज आर परफॉर्म फॉर टू बेनिफिट्स मटीरियल एंड स्पिरिचुअल so krishna is telling these activities should not be performed for any result sangam tyaktva phalani cha one should abandon all attachment to the results because the results should be given up then it is yoga if you want to enjoy the results then it is bhoga bhoga means enjoyment and yoga means communion with the supreme personality of godhead so bhoga material enjoyments gives immediate happiness and long term misery because you are trapped in this body of repeated birth and death and yoga communion with supreme personality of godhead gives us liberation permanent life of happiness and enjoyment if i am engaged in these activities if i am doing yagya so that i can get elevation to heavenly planets i can get opulence wealth then that is not right if i am doing tapasya austerity so that i can get mystical powers then that is not right if i am doing charity understanding that as per the laws of nature all this wealth will come back to me many many times over if i give to qualified people brahmanas and devotees so i am doing charity this should not be the purpose the purpose should be to purify one's existence to eliminate rajas and tamas from the body and keep pure sattva guna shuddha sattva guna in the heart so with this end all these activities become spiritual so activity should not be given up it should be spiritualized by abandoning all attachment to the results niyatasya tu sanyasah karmano nopapadyate moha tasya parityagas tamasav prarikirtitah prescribed duties should never be renounced if by illusion one gives up his prescribed duties such renunciation is said to be in the mode of ignorance dukham mityeva yat karma kaya klesha bhayatyaje sakritva raj santyagam naivatyaga phalam labhe anyone who gives up prescribed duties as troublesome or out of fear is said to be in the mode of passion such action never leads to the elevation of renunciation karyam ityeva yat karma niyatam kriyate arjuna sangam tyakva phalam chaiva satyagas satviko matah but he who performs his prescribed duty only because it ought to be done and renounces all attachment to the fruit his renunciation is of the nature of goodness o arjuna 
giving up one's activities is not always glorious so here krishna describes three kinds of renunciation in goodness passion and ignorance sattva guna raja guna and tam guna sometimes a person may fear when people come in krishna consciousness they are new they are understanding this philosophy how materialistic results opulences recognition relations they don't satisfy the soul so people tell why bother so much about working in the office factory business let us give up and settle in uh, vrindavan jagannath puri mayapur some holy place or in or around a temple and let us serve krishna nicely chant his name and worship him all day but such renunciation if the foundation is oh my activities are full of trouble so i need to give up then that is in the mode of passion it leads to misery it should not be done some people they give up duties out of illusion they do not know what is done what is not to be done simply they give up such ignorance is not allowed renunciation is allowed only in the mode of goodness when it is done in perfect knowledge so anybody is working in factory very nicely and offering the results to krishna they are the best renunciants as it will be explained now by lord krishna so one should not give up the activities thinking it is trouble some or out of fear oh i am dealing with so many materialists i will get entangled in the laws of karma no that is not fact if anybody is working in a factory only for the krishna and is offering the results to krishna then such a person is not associating either with the factory or with the workers of the factory such a person is in constant association with krishna there is no difference between krishna and his service so such a person always feels the presence of lord in all one's activities throughout the day and such a person even though he might not be wearing the dress of a sanyasi but one can have the consciousness of a sanyasi because one is not willing to enjoy the results but offer the results to krishna so all those hardships they become tapasya in the service of krishna so this is very very important point one should not be willing to seek a comfortable life a comfortable life has not brought any spiritual advancement tapasya is required so one should not give up the duties out of fear or i'll get materially attached materially entangled no attachment will come if i am always acting under the direction of the spiritual master for the satisfaction of krishna and i am offering the results to krishna such activity is very glorious and it is real renunciation nadveshti akushalam karma kushale nanu shajjate tyagi sattva samavishto medhavi chinna sanshaya those who are situated in the mode of goodness who neither hate inauspicious work nor are attached to auspicious work have no doubts about work the typical example is arjuna when he was ordered to kill even though killing is inauspicious activity he did not hate it because that was the order of krishna similarly prahlad maharaj following the instructions of one's father is very auspicious activity but he was not attached to that auspicious activity when father told do not worship krishna he left the auspicious activity of following father which gives you lot of material advantages and comforts but he was not keeping such attachment and he continued worshiping glorifying krishna because a devotee understands auspiciousness in auspiciousness ultimately it is designed to take a living entity to the lotus feet of krishna and if i am engaged in the service of krishna i should not worry about anything else so thus a devotee has no doubt what work should be done what should not be done because he is only acting for the pleasure of krishna nahi deh bhrita shakyam yaktum karmanya sheshatah yastu karma falatyagi satyagitya vidhiyate it is indeed impossible for an embodied being to give up all activities therefore it is said that he who renounces the fruits of action is one who has truly renounced yastu karma falatyagi karma should not be renounced karma falatyagi the results of karma should be renounced 
अनिष्टमिष्टमिश्रम चिविधम कर्मण फल अत्यागिना प्रेत न तो सन्यासीना क्वचि पवन हु इज नॉट रिनाउंस्ड द थ्री फोल्ड फ्रूट्स ऑफ एक्शन डिजायरेबल अनडिजायरेबल एंड मिक्स्ड अक्रू आफ्टर डेथ बट दोज हु आर इन द रिनाउंस्ड ऑर्डर ऑफ लाइफ हैव नो सच रिजल्ट्स टू सफर और एंजॉय सो वन में आस्क अ क्वेश्चन हियर Any activity that we do gives result that is either full of happiness or full of distress or mixed it is desirable undesirable or mixed Now how is it possible that a person is acting it is okay one is giving up the results but one is acting still one is not bound to suffer the reaction how one is able to escape this law of nature So to answer Lord Krishna explains the Sankhya philosophy पंचायतानि महाबाहो कारणानि निबोधमे सांख्ये कृतान्ते प्रोक्तानि सिद्धये सर्व कर्मणाम अधिष्ठानम् तथा कर्ता करणम् च पृथक् विधम् विविधाश्च पृथक् चेष्टा दैवम चैवात्र पंचमम ओ माइटी आम डर्जुना लर्न फ्रॉम मी ऑफ द फाइव फैक्टर्स विच ब्रिंग अबाउट द अकम्पलिशमेंट ऑफ ऑल एक्शन दीज आर डिक्लेयर्ड इन सांख्या फिलोसफी टू बी द प्लेस ऑफ एक्शन द परफॉर्मर द सेंसेस द एंडेवर एंड अल्टीमेटली द सुपर सोल शरीर वांग मनोभिर्यत कर्म प्रारभते नर न्याय वपरीत वंचयते तेतव वट एवर राइट और रॉन्ग एक्शन अ मैन परफॉर्म्स बाय बॉडी माइंड और स्पीच इज कॉज बाय दीज फाइव फैक्टर्स सो द करेंट फिलोसफीज यू वर्क वेरी हार्ड एंड यू विल अटेन ऑल सक्सेस दिस इज कंप्लीटली रॉन्ग एज एक्सप्लेन बाय लॉर्ड कृष्ण हियर वर्क or endeavor is called cheshta it is one of the five factors in bringing about any action or success in any action which are these five factors they are karta karanam adhisthanam cheshta and devam what is karta karta means doer two people are doing the activities both have different skills and abilities different output will come even though efforts are same and other situations are all the same it depends upon karta the doer second is karanam karanam means instrument if you tell a soldier to fight with a broomstick he will lose the fight you have to give him good instrument a nice gun or if a sportsman is there a batsman is there you give him a stump to bat with he will not be able to do it he might be the best batsman of the world so proper instrument is also important third is adhisthanam which means the place of action you are very expert salesman you have all the background technical knowledge as well but if you are doing business gold business in a poverty stricken area you will not get any profit so choosing proper place of action is also important then of course cheshta means endeavor nai suptasya singhasya pravishanti mukhe mriga tiger doer is capable it has got the ability to catch its prey and the place of action is also right he is in the jungle so many animals are there who can be captured and tiger has got nice instruments also he has got nice teeth canines he has got very sharp claws by which he can hunt the animals but if cheshta is not there tiger thinks let me sleep in my den rabbit will come and enter in my mouth that is not going to happen so work is also one of the factors that is called cheshta but it does not mean let me keep on putting cheshta unlimitedly and i can attain whatever i want no because there is a fifth factor which is called providence or devam it is a sanction of the super soul who is seated within one's heart not a blade of grass moves without the lord's sanction and lord sanctions as per one's desire and what a person deserves as per one's karma 
because we are eternal we are doing this karma activities for a very long time if i am bound to suffer because of past actions then how much ever hard i may work i cannot escape that suffering and if i have some enjoyment that also is governed by my karma i cannot get more enjoyment than that this is called providence one may work very hard but if one is not destined to enjoy more destiny will not allow one may work very hard to come out of suffering but if destiny does not allow us to come out of suffering we have to suffer thus this devam sanction of super soul is most important and powerful factor so supreme soul seated in the heart has got two functions anumanta and upadrishta so the super soul seated within the heart has got two functions upadrishta and anumanta witness and the sanctioner but in the case of devotees lord rishikesh the master of senses also acts as director of the senses he takes charge of the devotee controls the senses of the devotees and because the devotee's mind and body act under perfect direction of krishna the devotee is not responsible to enjoy or suffer the resultant material reactions thus what he gets is spiritual reaction and he is aloof thus he is always in a liberated state that is how even though the devotee might be engaged in all kinds of material activities which apparently are materialistic oh he or she is also going to office and they are earning money this is the activity of a materialist but because they are doing strictly under the direction of spiritual master who is acting under direction of krishna they are completely free because i am not responsible the doer has not decided to do this activity the doer now becomes only an instrument one will not praise or curse a pen for writing a wonderful piece of literature the glories come to the writer and the criticism also comes to the writer the pen is only instrument thus a devotee is not given punishment by the laws of nature if there is any inauspicious activity encountered in serving krishna nor does he have to take birth to enjoy so called material happiness also because devotee acted simply as instrument thus this is the secret when one acts under direction of krishna one is not enjoying the results one is not responsible for the reaction tatraivam sati kartaram atmanam kevalam tu yaha pashyatya krita buddhitvan nasa pashyati durmati hi therefore one who thinks himself the only doer not considering the five factors is certainly not very intelligent and cannot see things as they are yasya na hankrito bhavo buddhir yasya na lipyate atva pi sa imalokan nahanti na nibadhyate one who is not motivated by false ego whose intelligence is not entangled though he kills men in this world is not the slayer nor is he bound by his actions gyanam gyeyam parigyata trividha karma chodana karanam karma karte ti trividha karma sangraha knowledge the object of knowledge and the knower are the three factors which motivate action the senses the work and the doer comprises the threefold basis of action gyanam karma cha karta cha tridhaiva guna bhedatah rochyate guna sankhyane yatha vachinu tanyapi in accordance with the three modes of material nature there are three kinds of knowledge action and performers of action listen as i describe them sarva bhuteshu yenaikam bhavam avyayam ikshate avibhaktam vibhakteshu taj gyanam vidhi satvikam that knowledge by which one undivided spiritual nature is seen in all existences undivided in the divided 
is knowledge in the mode of goodness. Prithakve na tu yajgyanam nana bhavan prithak vidhan veti sarveshu bhuteshu tajgyanam vidhirajasam that knowledge by which a different type of living entity is seen to be dwelling in different bodies is knowledge in the mode of passion. Yattu kritsna vad ekasmin karye saktam mahaitukam atatvartha vad alpam cha tattam sam udahritam And that knowledge by which one is attached to one kind of work as the all in all without knowledge of the truth and which is very meager is said to be in the mode of darkness lord krishna explained the three modes of nature in the 14th chapter and in 17th chapter lord krishna explained different types of worships done by different people who are under control of these three modes of nature so one is expected to move from tamogun mode of ignorance to rajas mode of passion finally to sattva guna mode of goodness and transcend goodness to the mode of shuddha sattva guna on that platform god is realized once original identity is realized once relationship with lord is revealed now to attain that platform one has to very carefully understand all the shlokas nicely one has got various deliberations various kinds of knowledge the knowledge should be in the mode of goodness although goodness is also not pure in this material world it also holds a person back but goodness is favorable for liberation as long as a person is in college one cannot take up a job but the higher classes of college higher semesters the final semester makes a person most eligible to join a job if one does not pass through lower semesters one cannot there is no possibility so thus one is encouraged to go to final semester but not get stuck on that platform in a similar fashion one should try to come to mode of goodness but not get stuck on the goodness nevertheless coming to goodness is very important because from goodness only one can transcend to shuddha sattva guna so for our practice lord krishna is describing here knowledge in the three modes one should avoid the knowledge in rajoguna and tamoguna and practice knowledge in sattva guna similarly lord krishna will describe lord krishna has already described renunciation krishna has described knowledge here now krishna will describe different kinds of doers different kinds of actions different kinds of intelligence different kinds of determination all as per the three modes so the intelligence determination action doer all these things should be there in the sattva guna to understand to have a situation which is favorable to understand krishna as it is and thus attain perfection of life so here as lord krishna describes three kinds of knowledge to summarize when a person is able to understand the same spiritual nature which is pervading everywhere when one does not get illusion by the external coverings one does not think oh here is a dog here is an elephant this is a bad person this is a good person when one understands these are not the real natures only one spiritual nature is all pervading then such knowledge is in the mode of goodness and when a person sees oh there are different identities one identifies as per body and one concocts various theories and philosophies there are so many philosophers who philosophize about existence of soul the purpose of creation and there are contradictions so on sattva guna there is clarity on the mode of passion there is lot of contradiction person concocts various theories and philosophies or they come to a conclusion that there is only one soul one consciousness which is all pervading which has taken so many forms this is also knowledge in the mode of passion and knowledge in the mode of ignorance when one simply thinks about making one's life comfortable like uh, most of the knowledge today just have a luxurious comfortable life that's all such knowledge is in the mode of ignorance takes one to the animal kingdom very very abominable species niyatam sangrahitam 
अरागद्वेषत कृत अफल प्रेप्सु न कर्म यत्सात्विकुच्य एज फॉर एक्शंस दैट एक्शन इन अकॉर्डेंस विद ड्यूटी विच इज परफॉर्म विदाउट अटैचमेंट विदाउट लव और हेट बाय वन हु हैज रिनाउंस रूटिव एक्टिविटीज इज कॉल्ड एक्शन इन द मोड ऑफ गुडनेस यत्तु कामेप्सु न कर्म साहंकारेण वा पुनः क्रियते बहुलायासम तद राजसम उदाहृत बट एक्शन परफॉर्म विद ग्रेट एफर्ट बाय वन सीकिंग टू ग्रेटिफाई हिज डिजायर्स एंड व्हिच इज इनएक्टेड फ्रॉम अ सेंस ऑफ फॉल्स ईगो इज कॉल्ड एक्शन इन द मोड ऑफ पैशन दैट इज व्हाट पीपल डू when action is done to enjoy one senses and there is lot of effort involved under false ego when people think i am this body and the bodily connections belong to me all these people they belong to me he does not know we are just travelers who assembled for this life we will separate maybe never to meet again but one thing so oh, these are my people always they will be with me and the money which i am earning all belongs to me and all this should be used not for god's service should be used for my sense enjoyment and let me work very hard for it such action is in the mode of passion and as we have seen in the 14th chapter what is the result of mode of passion anxiety and distress so because most of the people are passionate people are always in distress people are always anxious mode of goodness means one acts just as a matter of duty without attachment to results because the results have to be given up now what is tamasic mood that is discussed here anubandham kshayam hinsam anapeksha cha porusham mohat arabhyate karma yat tat tam samuchyate and that action performed in ignorance in delusion without consideration of future bondage or consequences which inflicts injury and is impractical is said to be action in the mode of ignorance harming others killing animals simply for satisfying the tongue mode of ignorance a person cannot consider future bondage i will have to take so many births and get killed in similar fashion this is action in the mode of ignorance so one does not need any external arrangement this is science happiness is the result of this energy which is called sattva guna mode of goodness so one has to simply see that one's action is in mode of goodness one is in mode of goodness one's intelligence is in mode of goodness one's determination is in mode of goodness and renunciation also is in mode of goodness then a person is happy if any of these things oh i have given up everything one assumes i'll be happy no if renunciation is in mode of passion one will increase anxiety so it is a great science so we have to note carefully and perform all these things in goodness satguna mukta sango na hamvadi drityutsaha samanvitah siddhya siddhyor nirvikarah karta satvika uchyate the worker who is free from all material attachments and false ego who is enthusiastic and resolute and who is indifferent to success or failure is a worker in the mode of goodness ragi karma phala prepsur lubdho hinsatmako shuchihi harsha shokan vitah karta rajasaf parikirtitah but that worker who is attached to the fruits of his labor and who passionately wants to enjoy them who is greedy envious and impure and moved by happiness and distress is a worker in the mode of passion ayukta prakritas tabdhah shatho naishkritiko lasah vishadi dirg sutri cha karta tamasa uchyate and that worker who is always engaged in work against the injunction of the scripture who is materialistic obstinate cheating and expert in insulting others who is lazy always morose 
and procrastinating is a worker in the mode of ignorance so we can understand whether we are acting in ignorance passion or goodness buddher bhedam dhritesh chaiva गुणतस्त्रिविधम शिणु रोच्यमानम अशेषेण पृथक्वेना धनंजय नाउ ओ विन ऑफ वेल्थ प्लीज लिसन एज आई टेल यू इन डिटेल ऑफ थ्री काइंड्स ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड डिटर्मिनेशन अकॉर्डिंग टू द थ्री मोड्स ऑफ नेचर प्रवृत्ति निवृत्ति कार्य कार्य भया भये बंधम मोक्षम च या वेत्ति बुद्धिस्सा पार्थ सात्विकी ओ सन ऑफ पृथा दैट अंडरस्टैंडिंग बाय व्हिच वन नोस व्हाट ऑट टू बी डन एंड व्हाट ऑट नॉट टू बी डन व्हाट इज टू बी फियर्ड एंड व्हाट इज नॉट टू बी फियर्ड व्हाट इज बाइंडिंग एंड व्हाट इज लिबरेटिंग that understanding is established in the mode of goodness yaya dharmam madharmam cha karyam cha karyam eva cha ayathavat prajanati buddhissa partha rajasi and that understanding which cannot distinguish between the religious way of life and the irreligious between action that should be done and action that should not be done that imperfect understanding of son of pritha is in the mode of passion adharmam dharmam iti ya manyate tam savrata sarvarthan viparitaascha buddhi sa partha tamasi that understanding which considers irreligion to be religion and religion to be irreligion under the spell of illusion and darkness and strives always in the wrong direction o parth is in the mode of ignorance dhritya yaya dharayate manav pranendriya kriya yoge navya bicharinya dhritissa partha satviki o son of pritha that determination which is unbreakable which is sustained with steadfastness by yoga practice and thus controls the mind life and the acts of senses is in the mode of goodness yaya to dharma kamarthan dhritya dharayate arjuna prasangena phalankangshi dritissa partha rajasi and that determination by which one holds fast to fruitive result in religion economic development and sense gratification is of the nature of passion o arjuna yaya swapnam bhayam shokam vishadam madameva cha na vimunchati durmedha dritissa partha tamasi and that determination which cannot go beyond dreaming fearfulness lamentation moroseness and illusion such unintelligent determination is in the mode of darkness so just determination is not sufficient one should be determined in the mode of goodness now very important happiness is also in three modes sometimes we think oh let me just become happy no happiness also should be enjoyed in the mode of goodness to actually have real sustainable happiness sukham tvidanim trividham shinu me bhar tarshabha abhyasadram te yatra दुखातम च निगछति यदग्रे विषमिव परिणाम मृतोपम तत्सुखम सात्विक प्रोक्त आत्मबुद्धि प्रसाद जम ओ बेस्ट ऑफ दि भारत नाउ प्लीज हियर फ्रॉम मी अबाउट द थ्री काइंड ऑफ हैप्पीनेस विच द कंडीशन सोल एंड जॉयज and by which he sometimes comes to the end of all distress that 
which in the beginning may be just like poison but at the end is just like nectar and which awakens one to self realization is said to be happiness in the mode of goodness when we have to follow the spiritual rules and regulations it could be troublesome first of all getting up early in the morning much before sunrise and taking cold water bath and reading the scriptures and chanting trying to focus on each and every word every mantra for a long time could be little troublesome eating certain kind of food stuffs which are only offered to krishna could be little troublesome offering once money one can think oh let me enjoy immediately could be troublesome so all these rules and regulations could be troublesome and the beginning may be just like poison oh it is so troublesome let me enjoy mind will tell but if a person tries to follow the end result is nectar and if a person is successfully able to execute it opens the door to liberation permanent happiness and one begins to enjoy the spiritual happiness end of all material distress so such kind of satvik happiness can be like poison in the beginning so many rules and regulations can be suffocating at times but nevertheless we have to understand even in ordinary course of activities even uh, if a person needs to earn money for a long time 20 25 years when has to work very hard if that time one wants to enjoy then future is very bleak and dark so one needs to understand i am following the instructions of god even though it could be tough no intoxication no meat eating no illicit sex could be tough no gambling it could be difficult to control my senses in the beginning but let me follow because these are the instructions given by god how one can suffer when one follows the god more so when everyone who has been following this path they are so happy and blissful not at all concerned with any of the distresses of this world so with this patience we should try to follow this happiness which can be poison in the beginning but the end result is nectar vishayendriya sanyogat yat tad agre mritopamam pariname vishamiva tat sukham rajasam smritam that happiness which is derived from contact of the senses with their objects and which appears like nectar at first but poison at the end is said to be of the nature of passion when a young man and woman are attracted to each other they feel like seeing each other talking to each other touching each other and enjoying sexual pleasure but the end result of such pleasure is so much of misery as we see in the world there is separation there is divorce there is sorrow there are so many suicides depression and what not sometimes even killings this is the result of happiness enjoyed in the mode of passion i think i will live happily ever after and there is misery ever after so one does not know this basic science there are different kinds of happiness any kind of happiness which one gets by sense enjoyment it appears like nectar in the beginning oh this is so full of bliss but the end result is poison and what is happiness in the mode of ignorance let us see now yad agre cha anubandhe cha sukham mohanam atmanah nidra lasya pramadottham tat tamasam udahritam and that happiness which is blind to self realization which is delusion from beginning to end and which arises from sleep laziness and illusion is said to be of the nature of ignorance let me sleep laziness why a person is lazy he feels some enjoyment some happiness in being lazy but such happiness is illusory when a person sleeps wants to sleep for a long time his problems are not solved there is happiness neither in the beginning nor at the end there is only illusion for a person in mode of passion there is some ephemeral happiness in the beginning but for a tamasic person ignorant person there is no happiness anywhere he lives in illusion na tadasti prithivyam va divi deveshu va punah satvam prakriti jayar muktam 
There is no being existing either here or among the demigods in the higher planetary systems which is freed from the three modes of material nature. Brahmana Kshatriya Visham Shudranam Cha Parantapa Karmani Pravibhaktani Swabhava Prabhavair Gunae Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, and Shudras are distinguished by their qualities of work or chastiser of the enemy in accordance with the modes of nature. There is no being on this planet or higher planets anywhere in the universe who is freed from the control of three modes of nature. So to help a living entity to proceed towards mode of goodness and eventually surpass goodness to become liberated, the society has been divided into Varnashramas. Just like we have schooling system, as per the capacity of the students, there are various classes, various standards so that gradually they can become wise. Similarly, in order to bring the real wisdom of Supreme Personality of Godhead, wisdom can only come when a person is in Satpuguna, this very nice classification of society is done, as Lord Krishna mentions here as Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya and Shudra. Those people who are in goodness, they are meant to be doing the duties of Brahmana. So once duties are decided as per the modes of nature. If one person is in Rajoguna, then the duties of Kshatriya. If one is having a mix of Rajoguna and Tamoguna, then the duties of a mercantile man, Vaishya. And if a person is in ignorance, then duties of Shudra. In this way, if they do their duties nicely, gradually they can proceed towards higher modes of nature. From Tamoguna to mix of Tamoguna and Rajoguna, then to Rajoguna, mix of Rajoguna, Satvaguna, finally Satvaguna, and they can eventually transcend. So what are these special qualifications which distinguish them is being explained here. Shamodamastapashaucham Shantir Arjama Vevacha Jnanam Vijnanam Astikyam Brahma Karma Swabhavajam So this is not a caste system very clearly we can see it is as per the qualities, qualifications. So what are the qualifications of a Brahmana? Peacefulness, self-control, austerity, purity, tolerance, honesty, wisdom, knowledge, and religiousness. These are the qualities by which the Brahmanas work. First of all, Shamaha, the Brahmana should be peaceful, mind should be in control. Damaha, senses should be in control. Unless one can control one's mind and senses, one cannot be called a Brahmana simply by wearing a dress or having a shikhar sitting in a temple exhibiting worship. And then tapaha, austerity, voluntarily having discomforts in our life. Brahmana cannot live in luxury. Shaucham, purity, tolerance, arjavam, honesty, jnanam, vijnanam, scientific understanding of God, scholarship, all these are the qualifications of Brahmana. Shauryam Tejo Dhritir Daksham Yudhe Chapya Palayanam Danam Ishwara Bhavascha Shatram Karma Swabhavajam Heroism, power, determination, resourcefulness, courage in battle, generosity and leadership are the qualities of work for the Kshatriyas. Krishi Goraksha Vanijam Vaishya Karma Swabhavajam Paricharyatma Kam Karma Shudrasya Pi Swabhavajam Farming, cattle raising, and business are the qualities of work for the Vaishyas, and for the Shudras there is labor and service to others. Sve Sve Karmanya Bhirataha Sam Siddhim Labhate Naraha Swakarma Niratas Siddhim Yatha Vindati Tachrino By following his qualities of work, every man can become perfect. Now please hear from me how this can be done. Now this great secret is being revealed by Lord Krishna. 
man need not wait for a gradual shift of duties in ordinary varnashrama system shudra if he does the duties very nicely gradually he can become vaishya he can become kshatriya and after a long time one may become brahmana but this very scientific procedure lord krishna describes in which there is no need to change one's occupation and one can make one's life perfect so the human society does not know is it possible usually we think oh, i have to change my job change the way i work uh said so this job cannot make me rich i have to become a businessman to become rich and unless i become rich i cannot actually be called a perfect man so in this way people are trying to do some activity which might not be favorable for them the academicians are trying to have their own startups they are no more interested in research they want to make money they think now the society thinks money is all in all so everybody is there into one kind of activity but krishna is telling no and sometimes it leads to frustration because my orientation is to do research but in research there is no money and uh, there is lot of confusion so krishna is telling no everyone can make one's life perfect whether a person is shudra doing menial jobs or a person is brahmana a priest a philosopher or one is a kshatriya administrator politician it does not matter where you are our minds and bodies are designed to work in a certain way let it work in that way but if one follows the instructions of lord krishna as described here man need not wait for gradual progression in one soul situation in the respective modes of nature one can make one's life perfect perfect means attain freedom from birth death old age and disease get full knowledge happiness and eternal life how this is possible krishna explains यत प्रवृत्तिर्भूता येन सर्वद तत स्वकर्मण्य सिद्धि विंदती मानव बाय वर्शिप ऑफ द लॉर्ड हु इज द सोर्स ऑफ ऑल बींग्स एंड हु इज ऑल प्रोवेडिंग मैन कैन इन द परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ हिज ओन ड्यूटी अटेन परफेक्शन सो द सीक्रेट इज स्वकर्मणा तम अभ्यर्च्य वर्शिपिंग द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड बाय द रिजल्ट ऑफ वंस एक्टिविटीज वन कैन अटेन द सुप्रीम मेक्स वंस लाइफ परफेक्ट श्रेयांस्वधर्मो विगुण पर धर्मास्वनुष्ठिता स्वभाव नियतम कर्म कुरवन्नाप्नोति किल विषम it is better to engage in one's own occupation even though one may perform it imperfectly than to accept another's occupation and perform it perfectly prescribed duties according to one's nature are never affected by sinful reactions arjuna was trying to act as a brahmana even though he was a kshatriya so here krishna is telling one should never try to perform another's duty even though you may claim i will do it perfectly no these duties for respective people are designed in a scientific way for purification of the heart so purification of heart is very important just like for different maladies different diseases there are different medicines similarly to purify a person who is tamasic different rules and regulations are mentioned that is why different worships are recommended different puranas are there for tamasic people there are tamasic puranas For Rajasik people, Rajasik Purana. Sattvic people, Sattvic Puranas. For pure devotees, Shrimad Bhagavatam. In this way, different literatures are there meant for different category of people. All the books are important, but if a child who is going to kindergarten moves around with a book of algebra, oh, this is also A B C and one two three. One can never learn even basic A B C or one two three. Even though algebra is very nice, but it is not meant for a child of kindergarten. So for tamasic people, tamasic literatures are there. Worship of some ghastly forms are there, like Kali or Kal Bhairav and other things are mentioned. By doing these things, their tamasic tendencies will be satisfied. Arts will be purified. They will be able to elevate themselves to Rajaguna and Satpuguna. So thus, one should never try to perform another's duty, even though you can claim you can do it perfectly. No, stick to your duties very tightly. And what is the need of changing? 
then you can attain the same perfection if you worship the supreme personality by the results of the activities sahajam karm kaunteya sadosham api natyajet sarvaram bhahi doshena dhuminagnir ivavrita every endeavor is covered by some sort of fault just as fire is covered by smoke therefore one should not give up the work which is born of his nature for son of kunti even if such work is full of fault arjuna was giving the argument i don't want to fight because it involves killing killing is faulty yes killing is definitely faulty but a kshatriya will not be entangled by killing if he kills as per the duty so one should not be worried about fault because krishna is telling there is fault in every action so thus there is fault everywhere in this world sometimes people want to find a proper situation let me try to find a business or job where there is no problem let me have a, a life partner where there is no problem let me live in a place where there is no problem in this material world there is problem there is fault everywhere but if one chooses a place where one can have association of devotees that place is perfect it does not matter the whatever the imperfections are if a person chooses a life partner so that both can advance in the service of krishna all the imperfections lead one to perfection of life so thus all the imperfections they help a person attain perfection if service of krishna is the aim so one should not be worried by such faults but just try to serve krishna by the results of the activities asakt buddhi sarvatra जितात्मा विगत स्पृह नैष्कर्म्य सिद्धि परमा संन्यासेनादिगछति वन कैन ऑप्टेन द रिजल्ट्स ऑफ रिनंसिएशन सिंपली बाय सेल्फ कंट्रोल एंड बाय बिकमिंग अनअटैच्ड टू द मटेरियल थिंग्स एंड डिसरिगार्डिंग मटेरियल एन्जॉयमेंट्स दैट इज द हाईएस्ट परफेक्शनल स्टेज ऑफ रिनंसिएशन Now Krishna has given his final conclusion Arjuna you want to leave your duty of fighting do not do that the real renunciation is simply by self control and by becoming unattached to material things and disregarding material enjoyments so don't think oh, i will kill my people and i will enjoy very nicely no do not think like that remain unattached to material enjoyment and simply try to be self controlled let me kill this person because he is shouting on me no whether krishna wants this person to be killed then i can kill them for my personal interest it does not matter i am perfectly self controlled i am not agitated for my personal insult i am not happy on my personal praise my senses should be perfectly under control when krishna tells fight i fight when krishna tells stop i stop so when a person is self controlled not willing to enjoy the material resources and willing to offer the results of activities to krishna then one can enjoy all the results of a person who is living in jungle one need not go to jungle thus living in the midst of householder life in the midst of one's occupation one's duties one can get all the results of renunciation and this is real renunciation सिद्धि प्राप्त यथा ब्रह्म तथा निबोध मे सामसे नौंते निष्ठा ज्ञान से या परा सन ऑफ कुंती लर्न फ्रॉम इन ब्रीफ हाउ वन कैन अटेन टू द सुप्रीम परफेक्शनल स्टेज ब्रह्म बाय एक्टिंग इन द वे विच आई शेल नाउ समराइज Usually people think I have to stop all activities sit down and meditate or read the Vedas and contemplate to attain brahma stage to understand I am not the body and enjoy spiritual bliss same bliss can be attained living in a house of concrete by seeing the people who are materialists same happiness a person can always enjoy brahma bhuta prasanna atma na shochiti there will be no lamentation in life that is called spiritual realization there will be no hankering i want this i want that because a person would be full of satisfaction so this is a great secret nobody has got it 
no president no prime minister no celebrity no body has attained this state and krishna is telling you can attain this stage by doing your duty you can be a street cleaner you can be a sweeper you can be a baker you can be an administrator you can be a fighter you can be a teacher you can be a student you can attain that state beyond or lamentation and hankering how one can attain that that is called brahma stage how one can become brahma realized krishna explains please hear carefully बुद्ध्या विशुद्धया युक्त धृत्यात्मा निम्य चब्दादीन विषयाग्वेशुद विवक्त से लग्भाषी यत वाकायमस ध्यान योग परो नि वैराग्यम समुपाश्रित अहंकार बल दर्पम काम क्रोधम परिग्रह विमुच्य निर्म शांत ब्रह्म भूयाय कल्पते बींग प्यूरिफाइड बाय इज इंटेलिजेंस एंड कंट्रोलिंग द माइंड विद डिटर्मिनेशन गिविंग अप द ऑब्जेक्ट्स ऑफ सेंस ग्रैटिफिकेशन being freed from attachment and hatred one who lives in a secluded place who eats little and who controls the body and the tongue is always in trance and is detached who is without false ego false strength false pride lust anger and who does not accept material things such a person is certainly elevated to the position of self realization brahma bhuta prasannatma न शोचति न कांक्षति समस्सु भूतेषु मद्भक्ति लभते पराम वन हु इज दस ट्रांसेंडेंटली सिचुएटेड एट वंस रियलाइजेज द सुप्रीम ब्रह्म ही नेवर लिमेंट्स नॉट डिजायर्स टू हैव एनी थिंग ही इज इक्वली डिस्पोज टू एवरी लिविंग एंटिटी इन दैट स्टेट ही अटेन्स प्योर डिवोशनल सर्विस टू मी भक्त मिजाती यावान्यस्मी तत्व तथो मत्व ज्ञा विशते तदन वन कैन अंडरस्टैंड द सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी एज ही इज ओनली बाय डिवोशनल सर्विस एंड वेन वन इज इन फुल कॉन्शियसनेस ऑफ द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड बाय सच डिवोशन ही कैन एंटर इन टू द किंगडम ऑफ गॉड So Lord Krishna had described in the fourth chapter, "Janm karma chame divyam, evam yoveti tatpataha." In the ninth verse, Krishna explained in fourth chapter, "My birth and my activities are transcendental divyam." One who understands it, he becomes freed from this repeated birth and death. But Krishna did not explain who will be able to understand. A yogi may think I can understand. एन अष्टांग योगी अ राज योगी कैन थिंक आई कैन अंडरस्टैंड अ ज्ञानी कैन थिंक आई कैन अंडरस्टैंड बाई रीडिंग द वेदास और अ कर्मी कैन थिंक आई कैन अंडरस्टैंड हियर कृष्ण एज टोल्ड भक्तिया माम अभिजानाति या वन यश्चा अस्मी तत्वता एज इट इज साइंटिफिक नॉलेज ऑफ कृष्णा ओनली अ डिवोटी कैन अंडरस्टैंड एंड हू कैन अटेंड डिवोशनल सर्विस ब्रह्म भूता प्रसन्नात्मा ना शोचति ना कांक्षति when a person attains brahma realization what is brahma realization we saw these details when a person's mind and senses are fully under control one eats very little he remains with the devotees he does not intimately mix with the materialists in this way when the mind and senses are controlled one is completely detached from all material desires that is called brahma bhuta stage when we reach that stage there is no lamentation hankering in life then मत भक्ति लभते पराम वन अटेन्स डिवोशन टू कृष्णा वेन अ पर्सन अटेन्स डिवोशन टू कृष्णा स्पॉन्टेनियस अट्रैक्शन वेन ऑटोमैटिकली वन डिजायर्स टू सर्व कृष्णा जस्ट लाइक वन लाइक्स टू सर्व वन फैमिली मेंबर्स और पेट्स देर इज सम अटैचमेंट स्पॉन्टेनियस अटैचमेंट वेन अ पर्सन स्पॉन्टेनियसली वॉन्ट्स टू थिंक ऑफ कृष्णा ऑलवेज एंड सर्व कृष्णा दैट इज कॉल्ड पराभक्ति 
and only when such para bhakti is awakened in the heart one can understand krishna and when one understands krishna vishate tad anantaram vishate means enters anantaram means the world of which there is no cessation eternal world there is no destruction there is permanence over there so there is no anxiety no death no old age no disease there is no need to worry oh i am having good health now but health may go away i am having wealth now wealth may go away no we are having all opulence in life everything we simply have forgotten and we have stuck in these bodies in this material world so when one understands krishna vishate tad anandaram one regains restarts one spiritual life सर्वकर्माण्यपि सदा कुर्वाणो मद्व्यपाश्रय मत्प्रसादादवाती शाश्वत पदम्यय दो एंगेज इन ऑल काइंड ऑफ एक्टिविटीज माई डिवोटी अंड माय प्रोटेक्शन रीचेस द इटर्नल एंड इम्पेरिशेबल अबोर्ड बाय माय ग्रेस शाश्वत पदम अगेन कृष्ण एज मेन्शन शाश्वत but there is a position which is eternal there is no loss of happiness there is no loss of knowledge there is no loss of strength there is no loss of opulence shashvatam permanent position of happiness life and knowledge that a person attains a devotee attains by my mercy my grace although one is engaged in all kinds of activities arjuna do not leave your activity of fighting to attain the end of liberation you will attain the stage of liberation permanent liberation life on the vaikuntha planets by my mercy my grace but this position can be attained only by the devotees bhaktiya krishna has mentioned so there should be no doubt that anybody apart from bhakta an ashtang yogi a dhyan yogi a karma yogi or a gyan yogi can attain that position it is not possible that position is reserved only for bhakta as krishna has mentioned here भक्त्या माम अभिजानाती चेतसा सर्व कर्माणी मई सन्यस्य मत्पर बुद्धि योगम उपाश्रित्य मच्चित्त सतत भव इन ऑल एक्टिविटीज जस्ट डिपेंड ऑन मी एंड वर्क ऑलवेज अंडर माय प्रोटेक्शन इन सच डिवोशनल सर्विस बी फुली कॉन्शियस ऑफ मी so here krishna is telling chetasa by intelligence sarva karmani mai sanyassa give up your activities unto me work under my protection my protection means strictly execute what i tell you to do then you will be protected by me because i am responsible for all your actions laws of nature will not touch you i will save you from material energy for this mai sanyassa all the activity should be given up unto me just you should act under my direction mat paraha and i should be the ultimate goal of all the actions buddhi yogam upashritya lord krishna mentioned in second chapter buddhi yoga buddhi yoga means acting in consciousness of krishna that krishna has engaged me in this duty and the results of this work should be given to krishna he is supreme proprietor this is called buddhi yoga so take shelter of buddhi yoga and work in this consciousness and then Machitta satatam bhava. While you are doing this work, one should always think of Krishna. That this duty has been given to me by Krishna. So one should work for Krishna, strictly under the direction of Krishna. One may ask, how can I have direction of Krishna? Arjuna was fortunate. No, that is why spiritual master is given, and the spiritual master also sets up an institution. so strictly following the instructions of spiritual master all the institution set up by the spiritual master it means strictly following the instructions of krishna just like if one is strictly following the instructions of king the soldier follows his immediate commander that means following the instruction of the king so following krishna means it does not matter if one is not able to talk to krishna directly if one is able to satisfy one's immediate spiritual authority then that is obeying the instructions of krishna this is called mai sanyasya doing all the activities strictly as per directions of krishna in this way a person becomes brahma bhuta this is a great secret anyway we are giving up the results of activity 
we are giving up the results of activity now either for our personal enjoyment or for the enjoyment of family members or some pets that we keep around us or some philanthropy so yes it is necessary to keep the body and soul together but all the money should not be spent on such frivolous enjoyment body and soul should be kept together but at least half of one's wealth if it is spent for krishna then such a mode of action elevates one to the stage of brahma bhuta prasanna atma to the stage of liberation this is a great secret and on the stage of liberation person is always joyful full of bliss machitta sarva durgani mat prasada tarishyasi अथ चेतमहंकारान नाश्रोष्यसी विनंश्यसी नाउ कृष्णा इज गिविंग अ ग्रेट गैरंटी विच नो बडी कैन गिव वॉट इज दट गैरंटी वी ऑल हैव वेरियस इम्पेडिमेंट्स ट्रबल्स इन लाइफ नो बडी कैन टेल यू फॉलो मी एन ऑल ट्रबल्स यू कैन पास अ चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट कैन टेल फाइनेंशियल ट्रबल्स आई विल हेल्प यू टू सेल थ्रू आई विल ट्राई समटाइम दे ऑल्सो फेल Lawyer may help us to sail through some legal struggles, although there is no perfect guarantee. A doctor can help us sail through physical struggles, psychiatrist mental struggles, but nobody can tell you follow me and I will sail you through all the struggles that Krishna is telling. And what secret Krishna is telling here? Machchata, if you become conscious of me, you will pass over all the obstacles of conditional life by my grace. If however you do not work in such consciousness but act through false ego not hearing me you will be lost so great promise great guarantee and great warning is also given Krishna is telling much chitta if you become conscious of me sarv durgani Krishna is not telling alp durgani sam durgani no sarv durgani all the obstacles you can pass if you simply become conscious of me Becoming conscious of Krishna means becoming conscious of Krishna's name, Krishna's form, Krishna's signs, Krishna's position. And in this way when a person is always knowing one's eternal relationship with Krishna, always thinking of Krishna, trying to satisfy Krishna, then all the obstacles of conditional life are passed by Krishna's grace. And if one does not listen to God, one does not follow user manual these wonderful instructions then krishna is telling vinangshyasi you will be lost you will be destroyed just like in this world there are so many laws if a person does not take help of a lawyer one will be lost in setting up his business if a person does not take help advice of a doctor one cannot cure himself so many diseases problems maladies are there so just like we consult a doctor we consult a lawyer in order to become overall happy in our life one should consult krishna or his bona fide representative a pure devotee spiritual master and then when we become conscious of this krishna consciousness is the result of all the vedic knowledge if we become conscious of krishna we can cross over all the durgani all the obstacles of life and if we are not conscious of krishna then we are lost यदहंकारश्रि नोत्स्य मनसे मिथ्यश व्यवसायस्ते प्रकृतिस्वामी इफ यू डू नॉट एक्ट अकॉर्डिंग टू माई डायरेक्शन एंड डू नॉट फाइट देन यू विल बी फॉल्सली डायरेक्टेड बाई योर नेचर यू विल हैव टू बी एंगेज इन वॉरफेयर तो कृष्णा टोल्ड योर नेचर इज अ फाइटर If you do not fight now later material nature will engage you in fight but that will not be under my direction that will lead to bondage swabhav jena kaunteya nibaddha svena karmana kartum nechasi anmoha karishyasya vashopita under illusion you are now declining to act according to my direction but compelled by your own nature you will act all the same o son of kunti ishwara sarva bhutanam riddeshe arjuna tishthati brahmayan sarva bhutani yantra rudhani mayaya 
The Supreme Lord is situated in everyone's heart, Arjuna, and is directing the wanderings of all living entities who are seated as on a machine made of the material energy. So Krishna tells this body is yantra, this body is a machine made of mayaya, illusory energy which makes you feel that you are this machine. And we cannot control this machine. So many actions are going on. The food that we eat, how it transforms into energy, we do not know. Any damage in the body is there. It is already healed. How does it happen? We do not know. Reproduction, how does it happen? We do not know. Body temperature, how is it being maintained? We do not know. One cell is like a city. One cell creates another cell. City is creating another city before destruction. How it happens, we do not know. Mystically, this body is acting. All this is happening because of the presence of Paramatma, Ishwara, the Supreme Controller who is seated in the heart. As per our desires, He is a loving Father. He is guiding us. Okay, you want to become the richest person of the planet? He guides us. Now you do Yajna, you do Tapasya, you do sacrifice. And in this way, you will be able to become rich in next life or whenever it is possible. And then in next life, Krishna tells, now you desired to become rich now in this life also you continue this activity in this way he is always guiding us like a father he gives instructions through his representative or in bhagavad gita what kind of happiness he should aspire for but still if he insists for wrong happiness krishna guides he is so loving and kind so brahmayan sarva bhutani living entities wandering among various species and krishna from the heart is guiding Tameva Sharanam Gacha Sarva Bhave Nabharata Tat Prasadat Param Shantim Sthanam Prapsya Sishashvatam O Sion of Bharat, surrender unto him utterly. By his grace you will attain transcendental peace and the supreme and eternal abode. Iti Te Gyanam Guhyad guhyataram maya vimrishyaitad asheshena yate chasi tatha kuru. Thus, I have explained to you the most confidential of all knowledge. Deliberate on this fully and then do what you wish to do. So, Krishna has told the Supreme Lord is seated in the heart and He is giving all the good counsel, but we keep on rejecting. Krishna begs the living entity from Conscience, one's conscience do not indulge in sinful activities. But when one neglects the voice of Krishna in the form of good counsel, conscience, one falls into nefarious activities, sinful activities and creates suffering. So one should listen to Krishna in the heart. The same instructions Krishna comes, incarnates here millennium after millennium. So Krishna is telling one should surrender unto the Lord of the heart. In this way you will be happy. And if one doesn't listen to Krishna, then Minakshasi, one is destroyed. But still here Krishna is telling, I have explained to you the most confidential of all knowledge. Deliberate on it fully and then whatever you wish you do. Krishna always gives the freedom. I have told you what is right, what is wrong, what is happiness in mode of goodness. Initially it will be poisonous. Later it will lead to great happiness. Sense enjoyment. Initially it will be nectar. Later it will make your life poison. Otherwise, you can choose to remain in illusion, intoxicated or sleepy or lazy. Krishna describes very carefully all these things, what will lead you to happiness. But still, yate chasi, ultimately it is your desire. So some people tell, why Vedas are so dogmatic? No, it is not dogmatic. Freedom is given. There is nothing imposed. And further, it is not blind faith that a person has to resort to. Krishna is using the word, please note, Vimrishya etat asheshena. Vimrishya means think about it, not think and decide immediately. Asheshena, completely deliberate upon it. Think completely about it, whatever we have discussed, and then whatever you wish you do. So, thus, the Vedic knowledge is not dogma, it is not forceful. But if a person takes advantage, one is benefited eternally. Sarva guhyatamam bhuyaha. Shrinu me paramam vachaha, ishto si me dridamiti, tato vakshyamite hitam. Because you are my very dear friend, I am speaking to you the most confidential part of knowledge. 
hear this from me for it is for your benefit so knowledge that i am different from the body aham brahmasmi it is confidential this krishna shared first if you give up the results of your activities you will attain this liberated platform brahma bhuta stage i am not the body you will realize then higher than that is knowledge that god is present in my heart as super soul always directing me giving instructions that is more confidential knowledge now krishna is giving most confidential knowledge sarv guhya tamam bhuya there is no greater secret than this knowledge krishna has explained about acting without attachment about cultivating knowledge about pious and impious activities about various forms of yoga now krishna is giving top most knowledge which krishna explained in the ninth chapter at the end now again krishna is repeating the same verse so every verse of bhagavad gita is very important but the most confidential knowledge is so important because it is the crux of entire bhagavad gita krishna has repeated it twice now krishna is telling please hear carefully sarv guhya tamam understanding i am not the body is confidential god is seated in the heart is more confidential but this is most confidential what is this knowledge manmana bhav mad bhakto madya ji mam namaskuru mame vaishyasi satyam te prati jane priyosi me always think of me and become my devotee worship me offer your homage unto me thus you will come to me without fail i promise you this because you are my very dear friend so this is the most important knowledge sarva dharman parityajya mame kam sharanam vraja aham tvam sarva papebhyo mokshayashyami ma shuchah abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me i shall deliver you from all sinful reaction do not fear this is the only way this is the crux please try to understand we have gone to school taken so much hardship thinking that if i get money i'll be happy in my life this is wrong why it is very simple to understand this world is following pattern there are designs everywhere as we just discussed the functionings of the body so many species of life food chain ecosystem every cell is wonder wonderful city self replicating city there is no limit to the design that we have in this world from micro to macro behind design there is designer the supreme controller because design cannot happen by chance so one should ask what is the purpose of this design every design every product has got a use every system has got an ultimate objective to be achieved what is there is i'll repeat every system has got certain objective to be achieved what is the objective of this entire creation and the design also necessitates a supreme designer so everything is under his control so if we are suffering we are his children only why he will make us suffer we are suffering because we have broken some laws of nature and we cannot come out of that suffering by any amount of education any amount of earning money any amount of earning power position recognition in the society thus the powerful people if you are powerful you can recognize or at least our power is increased we were small child no power but am i more happy by growing up increasing my influence in society the answer would be no i am more miserable so please try to realize this fact education this thing it is materialistic hedonistic thought just like we have heard the story of midas the king he thought if i have this power whatever i touch turns gold i'll be very happy and then poor king the fruit he is touching any edible he is touching they are turning into gold he cannot eat gold finally his daughter came to embrace him daughter became gold 
and then he thought what have i desired in life this is happening with all of us in our limited sight we are not knowing what is for our benefit so please try to understand we suffer because we break the laws of nature in the past that sit and nothing else instruments could be very many i could be suffering because of the bad governance bad systems could be because of uh, my family members could be because of my subordinates could be because of my superiors could be because of bad weather diseases anything xyz but nothing happens by chance because everything is under control of god this ignorance of god has put living entities human beings into so much of distress an ignorance we are trying to get relief of the instrument of suffering the thief is trying to kill the policeman because the policeman arrests me every time will the thief be able to save himself from arrest no greater force will come more punishment will be given thief thinks let me kill the advocate he argues against me and i have to go to jail let me kill the advocate let me give the judge he write sentence against me in prison for certain time he will be more implicated in this way without knowing the absolute truth ultimate cause of my suffering i try to remove the immediate cause and i become more implicated and simply increase my suffering so everyone knows suffering is increasing in one's individual life and at the macro level at the world level also but nobody knows why it is happening it is happening because we inquire relative truths we don't know absolute truth the ultimate cause of suffering and that has to be removed and the ultimate cause of suffering is forgetfulness of god our natural relationship is a very strong loving service of god when we forget that ultimately we all need love in life as the one of the richest person of the planet has recently told success is not measured by how much money you have it is how much love you get in life everybody knows this but love in this world does not satisfy that is why half of the marriages fail on paper other half they fail individually they don't reveal in public but it fails because krishna has told this is happiness in the mode of passion immediately there is pleasure for a couple of days or weeks or months or maybe couple of years maximum there is some pleasure then there is poison there is embarrassment person wants to give away 50% of the wealth please leave me alone and there is divorce and separation why you were not able to live without this person why you want to get rid of him or her now this is called mode of passion entire sense enjoyment means nectar in the beginning poison in the end that's at the end everybody they are simply suffering so please understand this carefully we are spirit soul we cannot be satisfied unless i revive my memory my revive my relationship with god so when just like in this world young man and woman when they are in love with each other they don't eat don't sleep they run away from house they don't care about parents society they are completely satisfied but that love does not last in this material world but it is eternal on spiritual platform so we have to give up the envy of god because when we forget this relationship with god now senses demand pleasure when there is no love between boy and girl then they cannot give up their material comforts then you need entertainment you need sense enjoyment you need so many other things without love you need all the demands of the senses to be fulfilled so when a person forgets krishna in life then material senses become active and there is demand and the senses are so dangerous the more you satisfy the more they hanker for and then a person commits criminal activities person is not satisfied by legitimate wife and husband they have extra marital affairs then they are not satisfied with the other relationships also there is relationship within the family members that is called incest then further a person degrades and starts enjoying such pleasures even with animals in this way there is no limit then there are other so many crimes in the society senses are never satisfied it is like trying to satisfy your itching propensity by scratching the more you scratch if a person is having eczema that itching increases this is the nature of senses the more you give them pleasure the more they ask for it they are never satisfied and a person's life becomes miserable all this is happening because love of god is missing in one's life so the senses demand and then crime break the crime and then you suffer 
and then you try to remove the immediate cause of suffering by creating more pap in your life and then in this way the suffering goes on increasing and one's life becomes miserable so the science needs to be understood by us sarv dharman parityajya mam ekam shranam raja thus because a person now one may ask why a person has forgotten god why this relationship we forgot as spirit souls because we became envious father is kind loving but sometimes the son becomes envious oh i don't want to be controlled by father i want to go away but then he realizes i cannot be happy without father in this manner the living entity sometimes becomes envious of god why i should serve you let me become god god is very kind he tells okay i will make you god of the material universe you go there you rule you work hard you do right karma you become brahma you control entire universe you become as powerful as me you forget me but then when a living entity realizes this material world is not satisfying me even as brahma i need to revive my loving relationship with god then one surrenders to god but because there is envy knowledge of god is not given why krishna finally is giving this top most secret simply think of me man mana bhav mat bhakto and not officially think of me in loving devotional service worship me offer your respects to me just like the father teaches the son offer respects to me in this way loving relationship is established but this cannot be given to living entity unless one becomes non envious of god because we are envious there is cheating process suppose the son has gone away from house so father still sends the money to the child but indirectly because directly if the father sends son will not accept because son is envious of father i don't want any help from you i don't want to live with you so father will send help through some friend son is unemployed father will arrange from some other friend some employment for his son father only is arranging but directly he does not tell he does not reveal so knowledge of god is not revealed unless a person becomes non envious so thus there are so many varieties of religion present on this planet when people are envious of god how do we understand i am envious when i have tendency to become god become god means richer than the richest stronger than the strongest defeat everybody in competition no so that is why first training of spiritual life is becoming servant of servant not try to become god try to become servant servant of everyone in this way when the servant attitude is cultivated humility is cultivated as lord jesus also told kingdom of god is meant for meek and humble when a person becomes meek and humble i want to become god that is a cause of my suffering here let me now try to become servant practice this humility then knowledge of god is gradually revealed and this final secret one is able to understand man mana bhav mat bhakto so the conclusion of all vedic knowledge is simple one should mold one's life and activities in such a way that one is always able to think of god and think not officially like we think of our boss but bhav mat bhakto in a devotional attitude and offer respects to god worship god because he is our supreme father god does not need worship but when we worship god our heart becomes completely satisfied completely full of bliss because that is our relationship we have forgotten so sarv dharman parityajya mam ekam sharanam raja one has to surrender unto krishna this is the conclusion of bhagavad gita and unfortunately people do not teach that so the secret has to be taken down in parampara one has to completely surrender to krishna some people ask can i not be just a good man why following bhagavad gita is required it is just like telling a smuggler or a don tells that i am very nice person i take care of my family i do charity to society i give away all my wealth what i am earning what is the need of uh, following government no sir if you do not follow government then you could be very nicely taking care of all other responsibilities you will be called criminal thus if you do not follow god we can be doing any other thing very nicely we will be called criminal and a criminal always suffers so we have to become obedient so sarv dharman parityajya unless we surrender unto krishna there is no question of being a good man if we do not follow supreme authority we remain a criminal and laws of nature continue to haunt us and there is proof anybody who has surrendered to krishna let the whole world persecute them become against them blaspheme them they are always in bliss 
Prahlad Maharaj, Mirabai, so many saints, Saridas Thakur, given poison, poison is not acting, persecuted, badly whipped in public places, no impact, completely in bliss, spiritual happiness. So human life is meant for this. So we have to try to read these instructions carefully and surrender means completely follow all these instructions with great meticulous details. And then Krishna is telling, Sarva Pape Bhyo Moksha Ishyami, you are suffering from sinful actions. Moksha Ishyami, I will free you from all the sinful actions. And when the sinful life is finished, the reactions are taken away. Where is misery in life? And Krishna is telling, do not worry in surrenderance, there is always doubt. Now, what is Krishna's instruction? You chant my name always, by this you will be able to think of me. So one may wonder, if I give time to chanting always and other spiritual duties, I may have loss in my business or studies, Krishna is telling, no, it will not happen. Do not worry, there will not be any loss. Ma Shucha, you will come to me at the end. You will have success in spiritual life and success in material life also. You will have a very comfortable life. Krishna is taking care of animals also, everybody. Will he not take care of devotee? And Krishna has mentioned, Yoga Kshemam Vahami Aham Ananyaschintayantumam One who without deviation is thinking of me, always engaged in my service. I take care of him. I carry what one lacks and preserve what one has. So materially one is always protected by Krishna and spiritually also one is successful. This is the way of becoming perfectly happy in life. One has to get rid of sinful actions. Please understand we are eternal. We have done many many wrongdoings in the past. Now nobody can stop that. One who has killed, nobody can stop him unless one surrenders to precedent. Precedent can give relief. In a similar fashion, nobody can save us from distress unless we surrender to Krishna. Simply if we surrender to Krishna, then there is happiness in life. This is the conclusion, the most secret knowledge of all numerous lakhs and lakhs of verses which are mentioned in the Vedas. Krishna is now revealed to Arjuna. Idam te na tapaskaya na bhaktaya kadachana na cha shushrusha vevachyam na cha maam yobhyasuyati This confidential knowledge may not be explained to those who are not austere or devoted or engaged in devotion service nor to one who is envious of me. See, Krishna is explaining here. So if a person is attached to sense enjoyment, one cannot understand this knowledge because one becomes mad. Sense enjoyment is intoxicating. Intoxicated person cannot understand truth. So one who is not austere, do not explain this knowledge to them, Krishna is telling. And one may be very austere following all the rules and regulations of the Vedas, but if one is not, Na bhaktaya kadachana, one is not a devotee, again simply austerities will not help one to have this knowledge. Again one can be official bhakta, but Krishna is telling, Na cha shurushru shave vachyam, one is not inclined to render service. One again cannot understand Krishna. Official bhakta, I love Krishna, but I engage in serving other people here. No. So one should be austere, sense should be regulated. One should be a devotee and one should practically engage in rendering service to Krishna. So to such people, knowledge of Bhagavad Gita can be given who are non-envious of him. So thus devotee has two duties. First, one has to engage people in devotional service. One has to make them devotees, teach them austerity and then explain Bhagavad Gita. Otherwise, uh, there is no audience in the world because hardly anybody is austere here now in today's world. Hardly anyone you will find devotees. Of course, in India there is some culture. But otherwise, it is very, very difficult. So first of all, we have to make people lost here. You have to uh, make them devotees, engage in service of Krishna, and then give them knowledge of Krishna. Then they will be able to understand. Now again, one more very great secret is being revealed here. Krishna has given the topmost knowledge. Now, how to attain that platform that Krishna explains here, the final order, and that is Yaidam paramam guhiyam madbhakte shvabhidhasyati bhaktim mai param kritva mame vaishyatya sanshayaha 
for one who explains the supreme secret to the devotees devotional service is guaranteed and at the end he will come back to me na cha tasman manushyeshu kashchin me priya kritamah bhavita na cha me tasmad anya priyataro bhuvi there is no servant in this world more dear to me than he nor will there ever be one more dear so krishna has explained now that entire process depends upon his mercy mad anugrahat by my mercy you will be protected by my mercy all the knowledge will be given to you tesham aham samuddharta mrityu sansar sagarat i am the swift deliverer so bhakti yoga is the topmost process and the success of bhakti yoga depends upon the mercy of krishna so one cannot think of krishna unless krishna is merciful one cannot get service of krishna unless krishna is merciful one cannot surrender to krishna unless krishna is merciful unless krishna reveals that he is supreme lord unless he gives faith from the heart that krishna is supreme lord why a person will surrender so upon whom that mercy will fall that krishna is giving here na cha tasmad manushyeshu kashchin me priya kritama mercy will fall to a person who is dear to him and there is no person more dear to krishna than the one who preaches this knowledge to the devotees so first we have to make the people devotees and then we have to preach this knowledge such a preacher is most dear to krishna such a preacher makes very quick advancement in spiritual life and all spiritual knowledge is revealed and such an advanced devotee never falls down who is always thinking how to spread this knowledge to others so thus i request all of you to try to realize the importance of these instructions implement in our life become devotees and then spread this knowledge to others only when we actually start spreading this knowledge we relish the nectar of spiritual life there is very fast growth otherwise also we become dear to krishna by doing other things for krishna but preaching is very very special and very unique for a preacher krishna is always present to help to give protection to give special enthusiasm and direct instruction krishna is telling and in future also bhavita na chame tasman in future nobody will be dearer to me than the preacher of this knowledge because people are suffering here only because of lack of ignorance if any person takes lost son back to the father father would be so much obliged nobody is dearer to him than this person who has brought the lost son back so thus everybody here in the material world are lost forgotten children of krishna if this knowledge is given to them they become very very dear to him and if anybody becomes dearer to god then where is the trouble in life अध्येष्यते चयम धर्म संवाद आवयो ज्ञान तेनाहम इष्टस्यामिति मे मति एन आई डिक्लेयर दैट ही हु स्टडीज दिस सीक्रेट कॉन्वर्सेशन वर्शिप्स मी बाय हिज इंटेलिजेंस श्रद्धावानन सूयश्च क्षिणुयादि यो नर सोपि मुक्त शुभालोकान्प्नुयात पुण्यकर्मण एंड मनु लिसंस विथ फेथ एंड विदाउट एन वी बिकम्स फ्री फ्रॉम सिंफुल रिएक्शन एंड अटेन्स टू द प्लैनेट्स वेर द पायस डेल कच्चिदेतुत पार्थ वयकाग्रेण चेतसा कच्चिद अज्ञान सोह pranatasthe dhananjaya o conqueror of wealth arjuna have you heard this attentively with your mind and are your illusions and ignorance now dispelled arjuna uvacha nashto moha smritir labdha tvat prasadan maya chyuta chitosmi gat sandeha karishye vachanam tava arjuna said my dear krishna o infallible one my illusion is now gone i have regained my memory and by your mercy i am now firm 
and free from doubt and am prepared to act according to your instruction sanjaya uvacha ityaham vasudevasya parthasya cha mahatmanah samvadam imam ashrausham adbhutam rom harshanam sanjaya said thus have i heard the conversation of two great souls krishna and arjuna and so wonderful is that message that my hair is standing on end vyas prasadashrutavan etad guhyam maham param yogam yogeshwarat krishnat sakshat kathayata swayam by the mercy of vyas i have heard these most confidential talks directly from the master of all mysticism krishna who was speaking personally to arjuna rajan samsmritya samsmritya samvadam imam adbhutam keshavarjuna yo punyam rishyami cha muhur muhu o king as i repeatedly recall this wondrous and holy dialogue between krishna and arjuna i take pleasure being thrilled at every moment tacha samsmritya samsmritya rupam atyadbhutam hare vismayo me mahan rajan harshayami cha punah punah o king when i remember the wonderful form of lord krishna i am struck with even greater wonder and i rejoice again and again yatra yogeshwara krishno yatra partho dhanur dharah tatra shrir vijayo bhute dhruva nitil matil mama wherever there is krishna the master of all mystics and wherever there is arjuna the supreme archer there will also certainly be opulence victory extraordinary power and morality that is my opinion we want victory we want opulence we want supreme bliss sanjay the perfect disciple of ved vyas ved vyas is incarnation of krishna he is giving his verdict and what is the verdict yatra yogeshwaro krishna yatra partha dhanurdhara so we all want victory opulence success happiness in our life we approach so many gurus we approach so many books of knowledge but we fail to approach bhagavad gita and fail to add this one very important person the supreme person krishna in our life so sanjay the disciple of ved vyas original spiritual master perfect student is telling us please have krishna in your life and along with that one more thing is required krishna was present with everybody on the battlefield of kurukshetra but one has to become qualified disciple like arjuna arjuna was a soul who completely surrendered to krishna karishye vachanam tava whatever you say krishna i will execute it so i have to become a soul completely surrendered to krishna and add krishna in our life either krishna directly if we are qualified we can have him or there are so many merciful incarnations of krishna krishna's deity form is there in the temple we can have a small form in our house you can have a picture of krishna form of krishna is same as krishna we can chant the names of krishna chanting name of krishna is non different from krishna taking shelter of spiritual master is same as taking shelter of krishna or reading bhagavad gita is same as associating with krishna when we read bhagavad gita it is krishna's personal instructions that he is giving to us the more we are qualified the more bhagavad gita reveals it to us in this way we have to add simply krishna to our life and become perfectly surrendered soul and then we become qualified to take the instructions and when there is combination of krishna and arjuna perfect spiritual master supreme personality of godhead and his devotee his student who is completely surrendered there is no misery there is eternal happiness and once we leave this body there is transference to eternal abode of krishna which is the aim of human form of life so i request all of you 
please try to understand this knowledge and try to spread this to others become very dear to krishna and when we become dear to god who has audacity in the world to disturb us which power in the world can surpass the control of krishna if krishna is pleased with us there is always all happiness joy and bliss so thank you very much for being with us in this wonderful journey more important is to apply these instructions so please keep on hearing it over and over again simply by hearing as we understood here one gets rid of the sinful actions it does not matter we do not have strength to follow the instructions simply by hearing we will get strength it does not matter we are not able to have proper understanding simply by hearing over and over again proper understanding also will develop this hearing is very very powerful process hear the message of bhagavad gita hear the holy name and in this way even though we may be very very unqualified entangled in all the bad habits not able to follow even the basic rules and regulations all strength will come automatically just keep on hearing chanting always hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram ram ram, ram hare hare and engage in the service of krishna under guidance of proper bona fide pure devotee spiritual master and make your life successful thank you so much hare krishna